What is up, YouTube? Welcome in to another edition of Bucky and BK, live on Texas Sports Unfiltered and on the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, 20 and 24, and the Buck and I are with you for the next two hours. On today's show, Texas will be playing for a Big 12 championship today. We will preview the Longhorn women's basketball team's matchup against Iowa State. Plus, NFL free agency is unofficially upon us. The legal tampering period has begun in the NFL, and all hell broke loose yesterday for 31 of the 32 teams. we got to figure out if Jerry Jones is alive in Dallas right now. We'll talk about the Cowboys, the Texans, and the rest of the big moves from around the NFL. We've got a lawsuit being filed by Dak Prescott we've got to talk about. We are one week away from the start of Texas spring football. Longhorn baseball is back in action tonight. We've got a lot going on, and we are excited to bring it to you on a Tuesday morning. What's going on, Buck? And it's another beautiful Tuesday morning, BK. I'm doing just fine. How about yourself, man? Man, I always struggle with the time change. I'm exhausted right now. I got a good night's sleep last night, but because it's so dark outside and I'm not used to it being this dark at this time, I am like struggling to get my bearings this morning. I hate the time changes. I, I don't know what it is, but you know, last night I went to bed probably around, it was about nine o'clock and dude, at one thirty, I was still up. I was still struggling to have my eyes totally closed. And then the dogs went at it and then I made my way. You know, I made my way up, upstairs to the sandwich, shh, two pieces of bread wrapped around me in the middle. I'm the meat in the middle, the scarecrow in the middle. And I couldn't, I, I tried to sleep up here and I I rested for about two hours. I went back downstairs and got into bed and slept for probably about an hour and a half. That's That's it. That was my night. I just don't, I don't know what it is that's doing that. And I got plenty of exercise over the last two days of being out in the air and moving stuff around in the yard. I'm just not tired enough. You know what I mean? That my mind just stays going. What do you got tomorrow? What's going on? What's the next day? When are you going to have this surgery? When are you going to Tampa? It just, it won't stop. You know, I tried to slow it down with one of my hardcore pills last night. I think it worked the exact opposite way. Mm. You know, if I, and plus after, after doing all that stuff, I had some little bit of pain and I'm thinking, this will knock me out. I'll sleep like a baby. What I need to do is give myself some NyQuil. There you go. That'll do it. But I don't like to, I don't like to, that stuff, I don't know when I wake up in the morning, though. You know, that stuff makes me groggy in the morning. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just the time change. Maybe I'm, I'm like you. Maybe that just that hour is screwing with me a little bit. And I'm used to getting up and then the sun coming up in about 20 minutes or so. And here it starts to come. And now, like you said, it's still, I feed the dogs. It's still dark out. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a weird feeling, but yeah. you know what? Other than that, life is good. Life is grand. And now that we have free agency and tampering and fun out there and whatever it was, it was a madhouse yesterday in the NFL. Good morning to the soldiers at Fort Cavazos, Texas, the soldiers in the state of Texas and all those that fight for us each and every day. Thank you for what you do. It is appreciated to you and your families and thank your families for sharing you with all of us, keeping us free. We appreciate it. And do be safe out there. Amen. Yeah, we've got to bring daylight savings time to an end. Just pick one. I don't care which one you pick. Just pick one time every year for the entirety of the year. I'm tired yeah, of the spring forward, team. fall back bit. And I think there's some stuff in the air, too, because, you know, you see me duck over and, and have to in the mornings with my nose. I, I think there's something extra added out there. I think the fact that I'm outside now doing a bunch of outside stuff is is just – get me and oh it, yeah and it comes to get me in the morning that's when i feel it the most i'm congested early in the morning and i don't take anything for that i've just never had to i've been fortunate enough to, to have some kind of allergy in december it goes away but every day i have the sniffles is just from the air out here so it's country living yeah country living yes in dripping springs texas yes remember 15 minutes that. away from downtown austin four cows next to me Numerous mm. goats, chickens, turkeys, couple of geese, stinking ass rooster. Mm. Yeah, that's not going to help you go to sleep. I would nice. say what didn't help me either is the dogs were 
on the howl last night at that 1.32 o'clock. Something was going on. I don't know if the coyotes were after the chickens or coyotes or coyotes suck because they just tease my dogs. They come to the fence knowing the dogs can't get on the other side, knowing that they can't get in. But what they do is they sniff around the outskirts of the fence because the, my neighbors have all these chickens. They can't get in there. So they, they must come around every night to try to find a way. Well, how are they going to slither through the fence? Well, you're not because if you go this way, my dogs are going to eat you. If you go the other way, you're a coyote, and those cows will probably just lay on you and kill you, the whole pack of you. <laughs> but they drive my dogs absolutely nuts. Oh, um, and, when, and, and, I, and I hear my dogs bark because I'm used to those that sound, Yep. that big, deep voice. I'm like, oh, my God. So I, and I'm playing the days of golf day, so I, don't, I got an excuse for why I'm going to play like shit. I already got a built-in excuse. There you go. Well, I don't know if you need one of those because – you always are playing like shit these days, it sounds like. No. Hey, listen, on my card today, on my, my gin score, you will see I will be I will be no worse than 90, period. That's it. That's it from now on. No worse, no matter where I play. I can't be, I have to be in the 80s at least. What are you moving up to the ladies' tees today? No, I'm not moving up till I'm 70. Now I'm only gonna be 69 in June. That magic number is 69. Nice. Following year, I'm moving up forever on every hole, on every course. I'll be there until death do me part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. When's the last time you've broken 90? About a year and a half now. Okay. And you're making the claim that you will always break 90 from here on out. Yes, that's it. I'm <laughs> Wolf Dancer, all those places, or the golf club at <laughs> Lost Pines. I don't care where I play. Barton Creek. Lakeside, I'm, it's, I mean, that used to be my thing. It used to be, you know, okay, I'm going to shoot 83, 84 and feel bad about that. Now it's, if I can, if I can shoot a damn 94, I feel good. It's just, it's, it's a struggle. I don't know if it's a mental thing. Well, I'm not, well, first of all, I'm scarecrow. Scarecrows don't hit it that far. Yeah. I'm hitting it straight enough. You're just getting old. You can't hit it as far as you used to. Is that just getting old? I think so. Or is it the fact that I get out of the car and get in the cart and just start swinging at the first tee? And there, there is no, there's no such thing as getting loose. I'm loose because I made it through another day. That's what I figure. When I, like you say, when you say good morning, when I say good morning, I'm on this show. That's another day, so I'm already loose. I don't need to be any looser than that, right? I've lived. Did you ever stretch out back in the day? No, I never stretched when I was a football yeah. player. I, when I, when I, when I played in college. Stretching time before practice was a time to talk about the chicks. <laughs> such and yeah. such on campus today. Did you? Well, nobody was stretching. It was all about. Well, I also watched soap operas at that time, so we'd get in line and we'd be talking about the soap operas of the day before we went to practice. I mean, football players were in the soap operas back then. Everybody watched soaps before. You know that one o'clock on or high noon was soap opera time on campuses in the in the seventies. Times have changed because that yes. is no longer a thing. No longer a thing, is it? No, no, it is not. Well, we know you're alive, and we're grateful you're alive. I'm grateful, too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're, Thank we're you. not sure if Jerry Jones is alive because the Dallas Cowboys have not done anything in free agency yet. They're the only team to have not agreed to a deal with a free agent. Of course, no deal can become official until tomorrow. That's when the new league year officially begins in the NFL. But obviously, if you've been uh, – on social media or just watching TV or on the internet, you know that tons of players have agreed to free agency deals with every other team across the NFL. 31 teams have agreed to deals, but the Dallas Cowboys have yet to sign anybody, Buck. And I bring you back to the NFL Combine where Jerry Jones was meeting with members of the assembled media talking about the Dallas Cowboys. And, well, here's Jerry talking about the Cowboys going all in this year, and contracts. it will be going all in on different people than you've done in the past. Okay. We'll be going all in. We've seen some things uh, uh, out of some of the players that we want to be all in on. And uh, yes, I would say that you will see us uh, 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 this coming year not building for the future. Is the best way I don't say it. 
you know, I know I, as I get older, I babble a little bit more. Like, you know, some of the stuff I say, that dude is a babbler now, all in. I see some things in people. What the hell are you talking about? You see dead people? What is it that you're seeing in people? Not anybody on your team. There's nothing. We know what you have on your team. We know them all. We know what you, I see, I see things in people. I see dead, I see dead people. You better see Derrick Henry tomorrow. And you better pay for him. You better get a running back in there to help out your quarterback who is now having some out of off the field issues messing with him. But my goodness, Jerry, people are making moves all over the place and making really good moves, too. You know what I mean? I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles just got well. You didn't even I, I guarantee you they never even talked to Saquon Barkley. But you know who I think they'll end up grabbing after all of this? I think they'll be talking with Derrick Henry. Maybe. I mean, there are a number of teams out there that still need a running back, right? Yes. Baltimore has been linked to Derrick Henry. They have yet to sign a running back. Houston, a lot of Texans fans are upset. Even though the Texans did make a few moves yesterday, you know, they did not acquire a running back, and they lost Devin Singletary in free agency to yes. the Giants. So they're trying to figure out what they're going to do at tailback. And, yeah, obviously the Cowboys are out there as well. So, yeah, Derrick Henry's still there. The Bengals are about to release Joe Mixon. He's still out there. I mean, there yep. are still a few running backs who the Cowboys can go after, but you saw a number of different running backs agree to deals yesterday. So the Cowboys, uh, they've kind of lost their pick of the litter, and they're sort of shopping at the scrap heap right now. Let me ask you this. If they went after Snead from Kansas City, would that bother you? The they'd corner? Have to, they'd have to pay a boatload, but would they need him in the secondary? I mean, he's – no, 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 thanks. I mean, I, look, I would love to have Legarius Sneed. He's one of the That's best corners. That's going to cost too much money. Yeah, I mean, you got to trade. You're probably giving up a second round pick, maybe more, to go get him, and you're going to have to sign him to a long term contract. So, sure. I mean, the Cowboys already have a ton of money invested in Trayvon Diggs at corner. Uh, Stephon Gilmore is a free agent, so if they don't bring him back, they're going to need to bring in a cornerback, but. I don't think that's the biggest area of need for the Cowboys to where they should be spending all of their assets towards that. No, they better continue to make sure that their offense can score points because who knows what's going to happen with their defense. We've we've seen what happens to the defense at the latter part of the year when they can't stop the run. So they better make sure they can continue to score at a record pace like they were last year over the last couple of years. Score, 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 and pray that your defense can hold somebody, you know, you, you can't go backwards on your offense, right? Right. Well, the good news is, look, free agency is not even close to over. And sometimes the teams that spend the biggest on day one in free agency are the teams that have the most buyer's remorse, right? Like you see all sorts of ridiculous money thrown around right when free agency opens. And usually the teams that uh, spend the most are you know, teams that – they don't end up competing, right? They feel desperate because they've struggled, so they just throw money around to try to figure things out and solve their problems, and sometimes it can lead to even more problems down the road. So I'm not you know, I'm not sitting here devastated that the Cowboys weren't flinging ridiculous amounts of cash around yesterday, but it is weird when your owner slash general manager is talking about going all in, and that's not a cut from 10 years ago, although it sounds like it could be. It's a cut from a couple of weeks ago. And you're the only team in the league that has not signed anybody yet. And every other team in your division got better. Hell, every other team around the league feels like it got better with what it did yesterday. Yes. And you clearly need to do something because they've had regular season success. They've won 12 games in a row in each of the last three years. They're not a bad team. They don't need monumental changes. But clearly no. what they're doing is not enough. And to just sit idly by while everybody else improves its roster – that's a, that's a weird look and a frustrating look when you're a Cowboys fan watching your team, you know, just continue to fall further and further back into the abyss going on three decades now. Yeah, I can see Derrick Henry with the big star on the side of his helmet. That would be unbelievable. What it would remind me, it would bring me back to days of Calvin Hill mm. when he was running the ball for the Dallas Cowboys. Big back like that. I mean, keeping the chains moving, keeping Dak from throwing picks, Dak being accurate. Cowboys playing good defense. I mean, that would – I don't know. I mean, Derrick Henry can't – he can't ask for the moon, but he is on his way out. You know what I mean? So if you can get two – say if you got two good years out of him, two to three good years, and I mean good years. I mean, I'm not talking about 700 yards. I'm still talking about 1,200 yards, 1,300 yards because that guy only needs – you know, he only needs a couple games where he can – that dude can go over 200 
after mowing people down, especially if the line gets a little bit better. I, I just think you need that. You need that running back. I just don't know who it is. I mean, I like Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's just a, is a hard nose. I mean, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can do a lot of things, you know. Uh, still young enough. You no know, downhill runner for the Cowboys will be tough enough. I mean, if 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 he's available, so be it. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, sooner, but yeah, I mean that that works too. Yeah, I mean, he's got to. Kinda... You got to have another guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, look, I, I would have liked the Cowboys to have brought in a running back. I didn't want them to be in the mix for Saquon Barkley. And honestly, I've got a pretty strict budget for a guy like Derrick Henry, right? Like my hope sure, was absolutely. the Cowboys are going to sign you know, a, a, an average to above average running back, maybe spend 4 to $5 million a year on said running back, and then they would draft the future of that position with their second round pick at number 56 overall. That's still potentially on the table for the Cowboys, but a lot of those guys who were those number one, number two free agents that I'm talking about, they've already agreed to deals with other teams. So, and this, how about this tweet from Michael Gelkin of the Dallas Morning News covers the Cowboys. This can't make Cowboys fans happy this morning. Said, quote, Cowboys were in the mix for running back Zach Moss. Ultimately, the price extended past their comfort point. Moss agreed with the Bengals on a two-year, $8 million contract. So that was out of the Cowboys' price range. So you talk about Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's signing a much bigger deal than two years, $8 million. I and mean, that guy might be getting $8 million a year, if not more than that. I guess so the Cowboys was, yeah. weren't willing to pay $4 million a year, but $4 million a year. I know, Zach Moss is nothing for me. No, I know. But, like, if they're not willing to spend that much on that position, why would you think they're going to spend – two to three times that on Derrick Henry. Because Jerry doesn't see anything in Zach Moss. You know, he sees things in people. Right. He's still um, seeing dead people. You Derrick know? Henry's over 30 as a running back. He might as well Speaking be Speaking of dead. seeing dead people. Yeah, he might as well be dead at that age, at that position. I mean, that's incredible. You see that. You see the amount of money that was tossed around yesterday. Guys signing these ridiculous contracts, some upwards of $20 million a year. And the Cowboys balked at four mil a season. Yeah, Are you kidding yeah, me? That's not all in. That, no. deal, that deal by Saquon was, you know, Tiki Barber can be mad at him and and say he's dead to him or not. But you know, guys talking about other guys' money. I mean, that was a smart move by Saquon Barkley. You're not. He's not going to. You know, he's not going to the Vikings. He's going to a team that's a contender. I mean. And a good offensive line. That is a great move. Plus, he's from Pennsylvania. Are you kidding me? And you got a guy on the radio slamming that dude. I'm like, you're dead to me. What do you you want? You want his loyalty? How how long? How many years does he have to spend in New York? In that dead beat ass Giants organization. Well, welcome to the New York media market, right? Wow, there. that was they, that was like, why are you after that guy? Yeah. Well, look, I, I get why the fans are pissed. I, I could well, see a number fans of fans, fans tweeting it. Yeah. Yeah, Saquon Barkley saying you're dead to me. But, yeah, for a professional radio host to go out there and say something like that, that feels Played in the bit. league for a lot of years. Yeah. No, oh, he, he did stay in New York. Well, yes, he did. I, I don't know if he was the best teammate ever throughout his entire career in New York, but he did stay with the Giants. So, I guess he's got that leg to stand on. And, yeah, look, Saquon, he took the money. He took the best deal. And it just happened to be a division rival that offered him the best contract. So, I get why people are pissed. It's annoying to watch your favorite player go sign with any other team. It's even more annoying to watch him go sign with one of your biggest rivals. But this is a business, after all. This ain't the first time, and it won't be the last time, where a guy is more loyal to the money than he is to color of jerseys. Especially at, at the running back position? Right, 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 right. That's uh, It's short-lived, and I'm a little surprised Saquon even got a deal as big as he did. That's a nice agent. deal right there. Yeah, the Texans were apparently in the mix for Saquon. They offered three years, 33 mil for his services, but uh, the Eagles were able to get the deal done. Three years, 37.75 mil. So, yeah, that being well, close to home and close to his family is a big deal. Yeah, and maybe he wants to stick it to the Giants a little bit. You know, uh, and maybe that's part of oh, he's why he's going with the, with the Eagles. He's going to stick it to that group. Oh, twice a year. Every <laughs> yes. Year. Every yes. Year. For the next three. So, yeah, look, I, I get why Giants fans are pissed. Uh, they should be pissed. But, once again, this happens in sports. Guys will take the money. They will take the best deal. And 
as much as we hope that our favorite players and our role models are just like us. Like, yeah. oh man, like uh, they like the team as much as we like the team. That's not usually the case. And Saquon is exhibit, I don't know, 2,300,421 of that happening. Yeah, that yeah. 200, that, that dude make more money and got closer to his home and to the people that he knows. And he's sure. going to a contender. I mean, it's like, okay, I'm stupid if I don't take this deal. I put it out there. They said yes. And then what am I supposed to go back and go, no, I think I'll stay with the effing Giants. Not a chance. And the Giants didn't even make an offer to Saquon. Now, they did offer him something last year. I think they offered him a four-year deal. And mm -hmm. Saquon turned it down. And boy, it was looking like the wrong move last offseason. But now it's looking like the right move for him. But, yeah, like the Giants didn't even try this offseason. They were basically saying goodbye to Saquon Barkley. Yes, and, you know, it gave Saquon the opportunity to go sign anywhere he wanted to. And, once again, maybe part of his frustration with the Giants was that they didn't offer him anything this year. So he's like, the all right. Cowboys offered Tony Pollard anything? Tony Pollard signed with the Titans. He's gone. I know, but do you think they, that, the, that the Cowboys said, hey, here's uh, what we'll do for you with your loyalty? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe there were some discussions there, but Tony Pollard signed pretty quick with Tennessee. And look, I'm glad the Cowboys didn't match that deal. No. Um, and and it's a little different, I guess. I mean, the Giants spent the number two overall pick on Saquon Barkley. Like Tony Pollard was a mid-round pick who was a backup for most of his career in Dallas and was played on the franchise tag last year. So, and look, uh, Cowboys fans would be pretty pissed if Tony Pollard signed with Philly or with the Giants or with sure Washington. But now it's like, eh. Uh, he wasn't very good for us last year. He went to the other conference with Tennessee. Like, fine, we're good. Uh, I think if Saquon Barkley signed with the Texans, like Giants fans would be upset because they're losing him. But it's like, okay, we needed to move on. He's going to the other conference. No big deal. Sure. But because he, yeah, like T Tiki Barber wouldn't say Saquon Barkley was dead to him if he was in Houston right now. No, because not he, at all. Because he went to like the team's biggest or probably second biggest rival behind Dallas. That's where uh, the animosity and hatred is coming from. No doubt about it. There's no what doubt about, about it. what about your Vikings, Buck? We'll get oh, back to the Cowboys and the Texans, yeah. but the maybe the biggest name free agent signing yesterday was Kirk Cousins. He is leaving Minnesota to take his talents to Atlanta. Well, he's going to a team that he's got a, a real. I mean, for a guy who doesn't need a fresh start, who was playing some pretty good ball over the last couple of years. That's a great move for him, you know, to go to a, Fal a young Falcons team. And, you know, they that it's it, it was the right thing. I thought I didn't think they, that Minnesota was going to have a chance to keep him. I was hoping out of nowhere they would. And plus they got old McDonald. So that's great. McDonald. Old Sam McDonald. Yes. Oh, Sam Darnold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, got, they got that dude. So. Yeah, that news wow. dropped overnight. The Minnesota Vikings agreeing to a one-year contract with Sam Darnold, the former number three pick in the draft. Who and he's coming in there as, really, he's coming in there as the starter. Forget the other two guys that are hanging around there. It, that guy's coming in to to get another chance at being a starter somewhere for what five games until they find out how bad he is, and then mm -hmm. they replace him and they paid him for a year, and he'll be at it with another team the following year. Yeah, Minnesota is now a team to watch in the upcoming NFL drafts. They've got the 11th pick right now, and they could stick and pick and draft a quarterback there, but uh, they could be trying to move up to draft a quarterback. Sure. So, yeah, Sam Darnold is the guy right now, but once again, it's a one-year contract. I think we kind of know what Sam Darnold is at this Absolutely. point. My guess is Minnesota is going to draft a quarterback, whether it's at 11 or somewhere in the top 10. Maybe Darnold starts the first few games. Maybe he starts a whole year, and then you hand the reins over to the rookie. I don't know, but, yeah, I mean, Sam Darnold can't be the long-term plan. Minnesota's no. got to figure out something at the most important position on the field now that Kirk Cousins is gone. And for Kirk Cousins, good for him. I mean, this guy needs to give his agent a raise. The amount of money that Kirk Cousins has made in his career to just be Kirk Cousins is spectacular. This guy... It's a four-year, $180 million deal. Man. It includes a $50 million signing bonus. $100 million of that contract is guaranteed. Kirk Cousins 
has made $330 million in guaranteed money in his NFL career. He's got a few homes. Homes. Fuck. He has won one playoff game. Dak Prescott, who has been shat on relentlessly by everyone and their mother, literally with CeeDee Lamb's mom dunking on Dak Prescott earlier in the offseason, he's won two playoff games, and he's been in the league for less time than Kirk Cousins and has made less money than Kirk Cousins. Yet Kirk Cousins, who's a very good quarterback, don't get me wrong. Yeah, Dak don't wear that goal like Kirk Cousins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dak don't know how to wear that goal. Kirk Cousins uh, don't know how to wear that goal, man. Yeah, I, I, you know, never as a guy had his stock raised by injury as much as Kirk Cousins did because people didn't get to see Kirk Cousins play that much because he missed most of last season. And all of a sudden, we got to give him $100 million more in guaranteed money. So, look, we'll see. It's an upgrade for Atlanta. It's, it's way better than anything they've had at QB in the last five years. They really? Needed to do something. Yeah, right. they, need, they needed to do something. But, all right, now the question for – Kirk Cousins, it's the same question for Dak and Dallas. Can you win in the playoffs? We know you're really good in the regular season. We know you put up numbers. We know you can win games. But can you have success in the postseason? Got a chance in that division. Got a chance in that division. Well, he can win the division. He's done that before. Can, can he beat good teams in the playoffs? Dak can win the division. He just can't beat good teams in the playoffs. Like, that's uh, – yeah, the, the Atlanta's absolutely the favorites now in the NFC South, but okay, when they when they get to the postseason, they got to play Philly or San Francisco or yeah, Dallas they, or they, somebody. They can, they can stumble into one win. That's it. Week two, they're gone. Well, Kirk Cousins couldn't stumble to a win against the Daniel Jones and the Giants at oh. home in the playoffs last year. So that's the thing. Like I, I don't know if they can because Kirk Cousins in primetime games, he comes up small always. Yeah, that's so, – hey, Tyrod Taylor has a job again, so just think of that. He's back in New York. Yeah, He's, the other New York. He went He went across town. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor is going to be – Well, he'll Aaron be the starter because up. the other guy's not playing, so. Well, Tyrod gets hurt every year too, so if that's Aaron Rodgers gets another hurt. guy. They got two guys that are always getting hurt. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Wow. Know, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is usually healthy, but – Obviously, tore his Achilles on the first possession of the Jets' season last year. Yeah, but, Aaron Rodgers uh, is one bad golf swing away from being on the shelf again. One bad golf swing? Oh, yeah. Is he's he going to play at the darkness retreat or something? Yeah, he's got to be careful when he's in his hut burning up and sweating and stuff. And you've been staunch on this take that Aaron Rodgers is done playing professional football. You're sticking to it, huh? I'm still sticking to it. That guy's not playing for the Jets. He he's going. He's going else? to. I'm not saying he's not going to attempt to play, but we know in a matter of a first or second series what that can be for that guy. Yeah. Too much wear and tear. If there's ever a guy that has wear and tear, it's that dude. Yeah, but he's on the ayahuasca, man. He's taking all the. Medicine that's going to I don't get him care right. Dating Hiawatha, I don't care. Who? It doesn't matter. Who? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who Hiawatha is. I think it's a Native American. Mm. I think yeah. Hiawatha is the one I was trying to explain yesterday. That's the dude that sounds like a. Uh, uh, it should be like the queen of the uh, tribe. I think Hiawatha is a dude, and somebody will correct me because they always do. I'm and they should tell you they somebody is should. somebody is offended right now. I'm not sure which group or groups, but someone is bothered by you know those what? They're, gonna have, they're just gonna have to get over that <laughs> because before the show's up, somebody else is gonna get it. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. That show, that's how it works. Yes, in Texas sports unfiltered. That's what we get, do. Get used to it early because later on, somebody else will get offended. Yeah, hey, I'm happy for Bijan Robinson. I mean. Uh, to go from Desmond Ritter to Kirk Cousins, that oh, is a yeah. major upgrade. And yeah, Atlanta's crazy. a little desperate. They've never won a Super Bowl before. They've got an owner who's getting up there in age. They, of course, just brought in a new head coach in Raheem Morris. Like, they're trying. Uh, Dallas and doing jack. Atlanta's trying to make something happen. And Kirk Cousins was the best free agent QB in this yeah. class. So uh, it makes sense that they're going after it. And, look, they got weapons in Atlanta. They got Bijan. They got Drake London. Yes. Got Kyle Pitts. I mean, they've invested into that offense. Now they're investing into the quarterback position. 
is, like you said, Atlanta should be the favorites in the NFC South. And if things yeah, go right, favorite. they've got a chance. Their owner's not running around telling people that he sees dead people or sees things in people. He didn't see shit in that team. That's why he went out and made that move. Yeah. He saw his team blow a 28 to three lead in the Super yeah. Bowl. And he's like, yes. okay, we got to get back here and actually win it this time. So he's on a mission to. No, uh, I don't know. Sure. Jerry's got something up his sleeve. I'm saying that. And that's going to, within 24 hours or so, I think something big is going to happen for him because I can't imagine them going and not doing a thing and thinking they're just going to go into this season and, you know, make trades later on to, to help this ball club. Something's yeah. going to give some, or, or he's got something planned in the draft, of course, but they're going to do something. That's that guy's show. I mean, that guy's Ringling, Ringling Brothers, Barnum, Bailey. He's the whole deal. And for him to just sit idly by this part of the year, that's just intriguing to me. And as you said, when he's talking about he sees things in people, I, is he talking about his own team? He's got to be talking about somebody else from some other team, right? He can't I, be talking I, about I, his guys. You can't, you can't say you're going all in and then not sign any free agents. Now, the Cowboys will sign free agents, plural. Like, uh, as of now, once again, the only team that hasn't signed a free agent, but they will be bringing in external players over the next couple of days. It's just bound to happen. But it's once again, it's odd when – you should be desperate, considering where your franchise has been for going on three decades now. You talked about being desperate, and you're not acting desperate, right? Actions speak louder than words. You could say you're all in all you want, but if you don't sign anybody on the first day of free agency while every other team in the league does, then you don't really look like you're that all in. Jerry, you look like you're trying to make headlines and get people talking about you. You don't look like you're trying to win games. Right. I agree. So, yeah, they'll, they'll sign somebody today. Odds are, and they could still have a very good off season. There's still enough big name players out there that, Hey, the Cowboys could bring in a couple of guys who can help get this team over the hump. But obviously it's not like, Oh, everyone spent all of their money yesterday. So now the Cowboys will get the last laugh because they'll be able to get all these dudes on the bargain bin. Cause there's no competition. Now other teams still have a lot of money to spend and they will be going after these guys as well. And money talks, the Cowboys brand doesn't carry the same weight that it used to. Guys aren't going to be taking a lot less money to go play for the Cowboys. Like they're yeah, going to take the be best deal. About, yeah, and your coach can't be talking about such a winning culture. You're a regular season. You got a regular season culture, and that's it. And right. that's not what the Cowboys are built for. That's not what they're all about. That culture, a regular season culture, that's nice for the fans until the playoffs start when they really start honing in on what they want. They want a Super Bowl championship. So you can talk about culture, but their culture is a regular season culture. It's not built for the playoffs. We haven't seen that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would have loved Aaron Jones. The, the Vikings just signed oh, Aaron yeah. Jones. That happened right before we got on the air this morning. Like Aaron Jones was released. Yeah, a guy who's nailed your team. I mean, it's. I'm thinking, won't they just go ahead and flip that around and have Aaron Jones on their side for a change? I would have done it. It was a one year, seven million dollar contract with. The Vikings. So he, he stays in the NFC North. Maybe he wanted to stick it to the Packers. I mean, boy, this this is a tough business, right? This is another reason why I never get mad at players for trying to get their bag. I mean, the the Vic, or excuse me, the Packers just screwed Aaron Jones. Like they could have released him two days ago, and then he would have been a free agent all day yesterday, and he could have signed with any team that ended up signing a running back. But instead, the Packers signed Josh Jacobs yesterday, and then they released Aaron Jones last night. So there's like 10 other running backs that got to sign with teams that Aaron Jones could have signed with. And oh, instead, yeah. the Packers are like, sorry, we're not going to cut you until right now. So you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. I mean, that guy was there for, what, seven years and did great things for them? Yeah. They just kicked him to the curb like that? Goodness another gracious. Another team the Texans would have loved to have had that dude. Yeah, a lot of Texans fans were hoping Houston would go after Aaron Jones, and maybe they called. Uh, I don't know how it works, but yeah, I mean, the Bengals with Joe Mixon, they did the same thing. It's like you know, they they waited until after free agency started before they released their running back, and it's like, damn, that is – it's a cold world out there, man. This is a, a harsh business, so don't, don't be uh, defending the owners too much. Don't be bootlicking too much and get mad at the players for trying yeah. to get their bag because owners can do this the drop of a hat. They can just let somebody go whenever it's convenient for them. All right, we'll get back into free agency. Uh, plenty to get into. We haven't talked about the Texans yet. 
Well, you, of course, have some Longhorn conversations to get into as well. But uh, before we shift gears, Buck, how about our first sponsor shout out of the day? Our good friends over at Leaf Landscape uh, Supply Services, Monterey Oaks and 290 South, and of course, Pond Springs Road. And that's up north. And folks, they get, and you see, I was there on Saturday. It's a packed house. People getting shrubs, they're getting trees, they're getting those red oaks put in right now, getting their gardening supplies all ready. And they've got gardening equipment there for you also. And they've got all the fertilizers, all the uh, mulch, everything that you need at both locations. They also have experts there. I'm not going to presume I'm an expert when it comes to, you know, flowers. I'm a vegetable gardener now. I've given up on the flowers. I, I've tried too hard with doing flowers in the wrong part of the country. So I'm a money waster when it comes to that. But I'll give it a shot and I'll go back and do it over and over again, just like a lot of you do. But ask the experts at LEAF when you have an opportunity, what should be planted in this type of soil, what fertilizers that you need. And as I said, they've even got vegetables there now. They don't do a lot of vegetables, BK. They do a lot of shrubs, you know, roses, trees, and they've got it all. They just ask the experts there about what you should plant, different parts, even different parts uh, of the area, you know, north of the river, south of the river. They know it all. Uh, but I know one thing they do is they give you great service over at LEAF. And as I said, they've got two great locations 290 South at Monterey Oaks there and at Palm, uh, Palm Springs up north. Just go check them out. Love Leaf. Go to uh, leaflandscapingandservices.com and find out more information on what you need to do. Talk to the whole gang over there. Everybody that it's like it's, it's like it's like going to the old fashioned car lot when the when when you, you show up, get out of the car and like eight guys are coming to you and, and start asking you, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? They are there to help you. They don't. You can wander around and look at all the stuff that you want to, but somebody's going to come and say to you, "Can I help you? Can I help yeah. serve you?" You know, right? They're not grimy used car salesmen. No, they're not no. going to force you to buy stuff. No. They're going to help you. They're going to you help need. you. That's what I mean. They're, but they're going to be there. They're going to ask you questions. What are you yeah. looking to do? What what side of the house are you wanting to put plants on, or shrubs, or bushes and stuff? They're going to ask you those type of questions. They're not going to just. They're not going to just say, "Okay." Here, here's something I think would look nice for their, for, if they were their home, they're going to ask you about your home where, you know, where the sun is, where the, where it gets shade. You know, there's shaded areas that you need to put certain plants in and certain plants when that sun hits them, when that Texas sun hits them, they're going to die. They gonna they're going to die. Gonna, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll ask you all the questions that you need and the proper fertilizers. I love the folks at LEAF. I've been going to LEAF uh, since the first year I came to the state of Texas. So, Actually, over 30 years now, I've been going to Leaf Landscaping and Supplies, and I still go in there, as a matter of fact. There you go. Go check them out. Two Austin area locations to best serve you. Shout out to our friends at Cabo Bob's. We got yeah. another $50 gift card to give away today. Thanks to our friends at Cabo Bob's, the best burritos that you can find in the city. To enter, all you have to do is hit us up on the code of text line, 512-222-9328, or leave a comment. On the YouTube live chat. It's that simple. Doesn't matter what you say. Doesn't matter how many times you enter. We're only going to count one entry per person. You send us a text or you leave us a comment and you will have a chance to win a $50 Cabo Bob's gift card. We gave one away yesterday. We will give one away today. Our friends at Cabo Bob's hooking us up all spring long. Great partnership with Texas baseball and Texas softball. Whenever the Longhorns win a series over the weekend, Cabo Bob's will be giving y'all a $50 gift card. So since baseball won a series in Lubbock and softball won a series in Houston, we had two gift cards to give away this week. Once again, the second one coming up today. You know, it's a, that great part of, of, of the, the spring, BK, when we get in the 70s and maybe some of the 80s, and it's a great time for barbecuing. And you know where we like to go when we're looking for good meat, Highway 79 up in Round Rock. Good stock. Just want to say hello to Terry mm -hmm. and the gang over at Good Stock. And I'm going to be going up there in a, I, probably next week and grabbing grabbing some chicken, some sausage, and some of that wonderful steak that they have up there and some of that rub to put on my steak too. But the folks at Good Stock and Nolan Ryan Meats, nobody does it better, folks. If yep. And if you want to ship it all around the country, anywhere in the world you can ship it. They'll ship it for you over at Good Stock. But that location out there on Highway 79, love going out there saying hello to the folks and and I love the sausage. Maybe I shouldn't say it that way. Sorry about that. Well, we've known I that. I should get around you that way. 
what, what does me being Jewish have to do with this? <laughs> I love the sauces that they have. I love that mild sausage. I don't, I don't like the hot stuff. I'm not yeah. down with the hot stuff. I'm a mild sausage guy. You don't like the hot sausage. You want your sausage cold. <laughs> yeah, I like. No, I don't like my sausage cold. I like it medium, mild. Mm. Okay. You like it? These nuts. <laughs> like those two? Yeah, no, they can be cold. They can be frozen. I don't care. You love sausage. All right. Well, we'll turn that into a drop. Thanks oh, for. Sorry about that, folks. Hey, not that there's <laughs> anything wrong with that. You can love yeah. whoever you want to love. That's right? right. Love on whoever you want for sure. As our guy Tom McKay of Audiovisual Consultation says, make love to whoever the hell you want. Love the one you're with. There you go. Uh, Thank you, the there, Tom. The game. Yep, 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 yep. Shout out to all of our great sponsors here at Texas Sports Unfiltered. Uh, quick shout out to our friends at Sue Patrick. The Buck and I will be there yes. tomorrow morning from 8 to 10. The store doesn't open until 9.30, but uh, come by and see us. Get your Longhorn gear. Get those snow globes. Get all the great gifts and trinkets that they have at Sue Patrick. I think we'll be sporting some new hats that Jay's expecting and hoping to have in by tomorrow. So get ready. Get ready to be sporting. A new ball cap. They've mm -hmm. got them all. Perry from Goodstock is tuning in this morning, and he asks you an important question. Do you love Trey's sausage? He's my doctor. I don't do any sauce. We don't do any sausage exchange. Oh, so he's looking at your sausage. That's what you're saying. No, what he does is he recommends certain things for me, certain things for my diet. Scarecrows needs a, a, the right type of diet to get back to being a tin man. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize the scarecrow had to be gay to. No, the scarecrow is not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but. No, no, of hey, course not. He's not. Scarecrow is not gay. Well, now the Jew is not sure anymore. Oh, boy. Let me get myself back up. There's anything wrong with that. Get away, birds. Caw, caw, get away. Get out of my garden. Wait, the birds call. You're not supposed to call. The birds are going to stick around if you call. I'm just gonna, I guess I just scream at the birds. When I'm up on that stick here next week in my garden, growing those tomatoes, you know what I'm saying, from leaf, wait till I get up there and start screaming, and I film that. Uh, Me being my own scarecrow, stuffed with straw. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Hey, shout out to the Texas women's basketball team. Yeah, right? man. They've got a chance to win a Big 12 championship today. Come on, Vic. They're going for the tournament title for the second straight year. Matter of fact, it is a rematch of last year's Big 12 tournament final where Texas beat Iowa State. They will take on Iowa State again this year with a chance to uh, cut down some nets up in Kansas City. Hell of a win yesterday for Texas in the semifinal. 71-64, the final over Kansas State. It's a great game. And Texas was... In control for most of it. They led by as many as 14 in the first half, but K-State came all the way back. Aoka Lee, their All-American candidate, she was a beast down low, and she helped bring the Purple Cats back into the game. Kansas State actually took a lead with just under four minutes to go. The game went back and forth down the stretch. It was tied with just over a minute left. And Westlake's own, Shay Holly, grew up in Austin, played at Westlake, now a member of the Texas women's team. She hit a huge three with just over a minute left to give Texas the lead. She then had a layup after a beautifully designed inbounds pass. Texas got a stop. They got a ball back. They had an inbounds play out of a timeout, and Shea Holly broke free, was wide open for a layup to extend the Texas lead to five, and the Longhorns were able to ice the game at the free throw line to advance to the Big 12 tournament final for the second straight year. Hell of a win, a gritty win by Texas after they let K-State back into the game. Big-time performance down the stretch to hold off the Purple Cats and, once again, find their way back into the conference championship game. Very nice. Very nice. On the way out. Kick them on the way out. Yeah. They, they couldn't win the regular season title, unfortunately. They lost that one to Oklahoma. who All well, the Sooners get the last laugh of winning the last regular season title on their way out the door to the SEC. Uh, Texas got screwed in that. Last game in Norman, but that's a story for another day. But yeah, the Longhorns looking to uh, win the tournament title on the way out the door. And once again, it'd be the second straight year. And it looked like they were going to play Oklahoma. Oklahoma was the one seed, but Iowa State upset OU yesterday. So Texas will get the Cyclones instead of the Sooners. Kind of like football, you know. Oklahoma won the regular season matchup, but they were too scared. Yeah, they got scared. 
for a rematch in the conference title, so they lost yeah. to other teams. Yeah. You know, they just wanted to brag about beating Texas. They they point, knew what would happen if they had to play UT again, so they just they lost to somebody like, else instead. Point, just a little point shaving on the way. They yeah. don't want anything to do with the horns. I guess so. I guess so. Accusing Oklahoma of point shaving. I love yeah. it. Sorry that about is fanta- that. Fantastic. Madison Booker led the way for Texas with 17. It was a, a balanced attack for the Longhorns. Aaliyah Moore had a great day. Shaylee Gonzalez, not her best performance, but hit some big shots late for Texas. Once again, Shay Holly, who uh, she played 40 minutes yesterday, Buck, didn't sit. She's wow. always great on defense. She's very tough, smart player. Jim Rat, she is white. So sneaky speed. Let me make sure I get all of those in there. Coach's daughter. Shoots great free throws. Shoots great free throws. Uh, she uh, hit some huge shots down the stretch. Not always known for her offense, but came up big on the offensive end in the last minute and change. All good. So, All good yep. for the Horns. All good. And we'll see. I, I think Texas is locked into a two seed in the NCAA tournament at this point. They've got an outside shot at a one if they win this game today. But from the uh, the bracketologies that I've read, it feels like Texas is – more than likely going to be a two, win or lose today. But obviously, it'd be nice to, once again, win a conference title in your last ever game as a member of the Big 12. That's 8 o'clock tonight on ESPN2 if you're looking to watch Texas and Iowa State women's basketball. So we were a week away from spring ball, huh? We were a week away from Texas spring football. Wow. Yep, starts next Tuesday, the 19th. Of course, the UT students on spring break right now. Texas could have started practice before the break and then taken the break and then resumed it afterwards, but instead, and they've done this every year, so no surprise, this has been Sark's bit. They are waiting until spring break is over. And, well, that's always a wake-up call, isn't it? You you could tell pretty quickly which players had a good time, maybe too good of a time during spring break and which guys, you know, focused on. Oh, yeah, on. and it's generally those round-shouldered gentlemen that come back 15 pounds overweight, and that first good workout, they're throwing up on the mats all over the place. Yeah. Fat. Round-shouldered gentlemen. Mm. You know, yeah, that's those are the ones that really kind of struggle with spring break. And that, and I I like the fact that Sark waits till after that. You know what I'm saying? Not break, not have a not have practices and then let let them go for spring break. And then they come back all juicy and pussy and round-shouldered. You know what I'm saying? Hussy. Yeah. You know, all swollen and stuff. Jaundice mm-hmm. looking, you know, from, from the islands or wherever they go to. Maybe they head to Fort Lauderdale to the poop deck. No. That's right. No. I don't think so. Don't Texas think kids it's... don't go to Florida, do they? Well, some they of go them to... go to Florida, but I don't think they're going to the poop deck. Okay. I don't know how many. It'd be a big story now with uh, cell phones being everywhere in the era of social media that we live in. If a number of Texas players were found sleeping on a gay nude beach, I think we would know about it. (laughs) First of all, it's not a nude beach. It's not actually a gay beach. It's a public beach in front of a a well-respected, I guess, hotel. Just happens to be called the poop deck. But... But dudes on towels, dudes with oil, oiling up dudes. It's just, okay. it's a del- Which is it's fine. Little- Perfectly fine. It's just weird that you would go out of your way. You drove across the country as a quote unquote straight man to go to a gay beach. That was your spring break. That's what you did. My crew happened to roll in there at about three o'clock in the morning, fell asleep on the big blanket. Four of us, no big deal. On four men on a blanket, just sleeping, just sleeping, you know, just sleeping. You just Shorts. said two minutes ago you love sausage, man. That's okay, you know. <laughs> Embrace who you are. It's twenty twenty four. Ain't no shame in that. All right, dude. And it just happens that when we finally woke up, a friend of mine from my hometown walks past us, and there I am with my guys, my wide receiver crew from Boston College, my roommates, as a matter of fact, you know. With our, and we did have cut, cut off jean shorts and stuff, but that was it back in the 70s. You're allowed to do that then. You know what I'm saying? That's where the holes in the jeans started with me. But I had the cut off shorts. Oh, oh, where were those holes placed? <sighs> and so my friend comes by and he says, hey, Bucky, what you doing? As I'm sitting on the blanket, 
not noticing the other dudes on dudes with the blanket, other dudes. And he says, what are you doing here? I said, I just got in from, from Boston. We drove straight through for spring break. We're going to hang out here, uh, meet some of the ladies from Boston that have come down here. And, and he said, well, no, what are you doing here in this particular area? And I'm like, well, we drove and we just pulled them right here. And he said, well, do you see the hotel? And I looked back and there it was, the poop deck. And then I started noticing at around 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, there were a lot of guys with other guys on blankets, just like me, just yeah. like me, just like me. You know and what I'm saying? Wondering, why why well, did I wake up so sore today? <laughs> from all shapes and sizes and colors. And we were just, <laughs> just there. And I told that dude, you better, oh, not, just better not ever get back to anybody in Pennsylvania. And then no. you decided to. Tell everybody on the radio. Of course. I just thought it was odd. Very. It was a coincidence, but, you know. Hey, that happens. Uh, I don't know if Texas players are going to the poop deck for spring break, but I'm sure guys are going on trips. And look, you could you could go on trips, have a good time, and still be Cancun's ready to go. Cancun's still a destination. Yeah, for Cancun, students, Cabo. Students. Cabo. Destin is the place in Florida, at yes. least when I was in school. Alabama. A long time now. Gulf Shores was a spot that people went to. Padre, you know, if you're trying to keep it in state, I'm sure some people still go to Padre. So yeah, like those trips still happen, and I like it doesn't mean you're not bought in. It's still your off season, but hey, make sure you maybe get a couple of workouts in while you're run the run the beach, big boy. Run the beach, sure. You can drink, have a good time. Hook up, do what you got to do there, but make sure you're uh, you're staying in shape. Otherwise, hey, it's not going to be us who are mad at you. It's going to be your coaches who are pissed at you. Oh, and, dude, and they're going to crush you when you get back because they know. They'll look at your body and go, oh, I see. I see yeah. what you did over the last week. Well, we, uh, we always talk about competition breeding character and competition breeding excellence. Like, this roster is loaded with talent now. I mean, there were times maybe five, ten years ago, if you were a very good player, you weren't worried about the guy – behind you on the depth chart no you didn't have to be nowadays yeah if you come back and you're struggling and you're not ready to go right off the bat there's going to be somebody behind you ready to take your job absolutely so, these all guys better be motivated yeah i mean this the, your texas is two and three men deep at just about every spot on the roster right now yeah and they don't have time, they don't have time with some of the the nuances that they have to do and some of the people they have to replace and going into the sec to wait for you to get back in shape in another week and a half during spring. They just they just flip the book. They flip the page on the next group of plays. They go on the next group of players, and they move right along. So, yeah, it's it's 24-7. I mean, it's all year round business. That that spring break is a time to just kind of relax, like you say, have a couple of drinks. But it's not a time for football players like it used to be. They don't just go down there and just get just pound and pound and pound beers and get ridiculously drunk and throw up all over the place and then come back and you got to get up at six in the morning for a workout. Oh, mm. I've been around those things that have been brutal before. I mean, there's puke flying everywhere. Yeah, it'll happen. And they don't slow up. The coaches don't slow up. They just, you throw up, go throw up in the corner over there, get back over here on this mat. Let's go. We got mm -hmm. things to do. Yeah, that's it. You're right. You're absolutely right. Oh, with I know. the facilities they have, they probably make you clean it up. Yourself. There you go. That's accountability say, right there. Get your ass over to get that bucket and clean up that mess you just made. Yeah. I threw up during uh, basketball tryouts in middle oh. school once. I went and cleaned it up to try to show the coach that I'm accountable for my actions. Well, I was the prolific guy every summer because we had to do that stupid two-mile run. I hated oh. that. That was the most worthless. That's the most worthless. That's just a discipline thing. I'm not Kip Kino. I'm not a I'm not a distance runner. Never was. I only got to run 100 yards for a touchdown. And I used to, dude. I used to finish that thing. And I would have to. I didn't finish on the, the right time that the wide receivers had to do when I got to Boston College when I was a, when I was a freshman, dude. When I was a sophomore, I didn't finish that thing until I was a junior in the right amount of time. I couldn't run distance. I wasn't a distance runner. But but since I couldn't do it all during fall camp. BK, I would have to get up once a week and try to run that thing and break it. I would be the the, the one up early in the morning with the co wide receiver coach and have to break uh, some kind of two-minute whatever it is. Yeah, what was the time? I can't remember, but no. it was 
it was slow. I mean, it was, it was, I just, after about th two laps around that track, I was like, damn. And I got to get, here's the time I get to go with the rest of these wide receivers. These little lightweights, you know, they were all scarecrows. I mean, so I should have flown around that thing, but that wasn't my thing in the summertime. I wasn't sitting around running miles, you know? Right. Yeah. Running oh, sucks. No, nobody, I was running nobody. sprints and catching balls and going to the pool and chasing chicks. I was, you know, that was, that was part of my deal. So I spent my, most of my camps for three years trying to get in tune with the wide receivers. Dude, they don't, there wasn't plenty, there was a lot of buckies around in those days. They got plenty of buckies around now on teams. They got the second guy who's behind you just waiting to take your place. Sure. We'll break the record in the two mile run. And spring football doesn't last forever. I mean, it's one month and it's X number of practices, right? That's They're not right. even out there every single day. So, uh, yeah, you got to make your mark and you got a lot of intriguing position battles that we'll be talking about here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. But, yeah, you got to earn your keep. I mean, you go down the list and you look at running back, you look at receiver, you look at tight end, you look at some of the spots on the offensive line, you look at the D line, you look at linebacker, you look in the secondary. I mean, pretty much every position, maybe outside of quarterback and kicker, in a couple of spots on the offensive line, sure. they kind of feel like they're up for grabs right now. Like, we don't know who the number one running back is. Maybe it's C.J. Baxter. Could be Jaden Blue. I thought Jaden Blue was better down the stretch last year. You also have a five-star freshman in Jarrett Gibson in right now. Saw him working out with B. John Robinson the other day. That's pretty good. That's a good way to spend your spring break, working out with nope. B. John. Not bad. Uh, wide receivers, right? Your top three guys are gone. Tight end, your top guy is gone. D-line, your top few guys are gone. Linebacker, top guy, second. Like, there are a lot of open spots right now to where, yeah, they, they, these guys better be ready to hit the ground running. They're obviously going to have fall practice too, chances to impress the coaches there. But, you know, for the early enrollees, this is their first impression with this coaching staff. For the transfer players, this is kind of their first impression for this coaching staff. Like, there's going to be some jobs won and lost here yes. in these next few weeks. And there will be some leaders built here too during the course of these these winter workouts because that's that's when the rah rah guys come into play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's that's when you need to find out who some of these leaders are. And they they've got they'll lead by example. They'll lead by, uh, you know, how their energy level is at six o'clock in the freaking morning. I mean that that's important. That's that's team building right now. So, you I mean you can't have a slow up there when you're coming off of a championship and then entering in the SEC. You got to keep on going. Got no time to wait for the guys who are straggling behind. Just doesn't work that way. Right. Uh, yeah, you know that better than I do. So it'll be fun. We'll be all over it once again a week from today. Texas spring ball begins, and I am uh, fascinated to see how some of these position battles unfold. And uh, even though we know Quinn Ewers is the starting quarterback, Steve Sarkeesian has already come out this spring and mentioned that. I, I do want to hear about how Arch Manning is doing. I do want to hear if he's closing the gap on Quinn Ewers a little bit. And I don't think anything would happen that would cost Quinn Ewers his job. But you know, we've talked about it a lot. Ewers has missed time in each of his first two years here at the University yes. of Texas. Oh, no. He's going to – Arch Manning is going to be playing some football this year. Yeah. We, that's just the way it goes. I'd love to hear stories about how good Arch looks. Now he looks ready for the big time right now because, uh, you know, he's the future of the program, obviously, but the future might be upon us earlier than, uh, than we anticipate. Every year that's the case at that position. Yep, especially here. Yes. At this school. So uh, looking forward to spring ball without. I think a, I'm more intrigued uh, by that wide receiver room to see who steps up. I mean, I know there are some guys with, with you know, that have some experience, but who's going to be the dynamic one? You know what I mean? That person, you know, is that the big freshman, the five star coming in here? Does he step in and have all the all the abilities of a guy who's been in college looking like a guy who's he's got the college body? But is he is he going to be a guy who catches like a college player? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ryan Wingo, the five yeah. star. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is he that guy? Does he come in and look just like the guy that you that you've seen on film and from high school? Is he that 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 level of player, or is it going to take him a while to fit in? You know, some of them are just naturals. You know, you just can tell immediately when you see him reach up and grab a ball and run. Now you can do that on film from a, for a high schooler, but it's different once you step onto the college field. It just it just changes. It's just like when you go from college to, you know, college to the pros, it's a different world. So, you know, you like to, you like to see those guys. It's almost like, you know, there are, there are a couple wide receivers that came out of high school 
Odell Beckham, when he left as a when he was at LSU, he looked like a pro immediately. That's yeah. one of the guys that when I saw him immediately as a freshman, I said, that guy is an NFL type of player. He's a freshman in college. He looks like a veteran wide receiver that can play in the NFL now. I mean, there's not there's not much to his game. Just polish it up enough, you know, get out there, get hit at that level. But other than that, he made the catches. He, you know, the break coming out of breaks and stuff. You just knew that guy was going to be a, a fantastic pro, you know. So does Wingo look like that type of guy, you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It might be tough for him to find playing time. Like it, it feels like Steve Starkeesian has run a meritocracy at every other position on the field, except for receiver. Like yes, John Tech Cook could barely get on the field last year, and by all accounts, that guy is a stud. And he was ready to go. Now he was playing behind three NFL players, so yes, it's not like we were that critical of Sark for starting the guys who he started. And Texas, thankfully, was able to stay healthy at wide receiver. Yeah, we'll only be critical of Sark if that guy catches, you know, twelve touchdowns this year and has a bunch of yards. We'll be we'll be continuing to say that guy couldn't get on the field somewhere last year. Right, we'll question right. that part of it. So, so I, mean, I don't know. I mean, Texas went and got three transfer wide receivers. So, like, it might be tough for Ryan Wingo to play, right? He's got to compete against Isaiah Bond and Matthew Golden and Silas Bolden and also, you know, the guys who were on campus last year, like Jonte Cook and yes. DeAndre Moore and Ryan Niblett. So, like, I think Ryan Wingo is going to be a great player at Texas, but it might be Jonte Cook part two where it's like we just – we won't see it until the following year. That might yeah, be how that, it is. That's why that, that's why that position intrigues me because that's such a key position – and what they do offensively. I know what to expect from this offensive line. That's I'm not going to be surprised at any of the moves they made. They've made some great moves. They recruited some really fantastic players, big kids. They wanted big kids. They got them. They had, they've got kids with movement. We know they can run block. We know that for sure. And there was a pretty good pass protection group last year too. And now they're going into year three together, kind of growing in this thing together. There's some, there's some All-Americans that be, need to be coming out of this offensive line. We talk about – what happened on the defensive line last year and, and, and what we've seen in the NFL, there needs to be some NFL offensive linemen that will start to really, really rise to the occasion this year in their third year together. Yeah. I mean, Kelvin Banks is that guy. Well, they, we, we know he's that guy. It's the, who are the other guys? Well, I don't know if they'll have multiple all Americans on that O line, but uh, I think it's going to be a very, very good unit up front. And now we got to figure out what their plan is at right tackle. Because that's the guy they lost, right? Four starters are back, but Christian sure. Jones is gone. He was pretty good last year for Texas. So I don't know what uh, I don't know if they plan on moving Hayden Connor around. I don't know if Cam Williams is ready to start at right tackle. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. That's that's really the one sort of intriguing thing to look for on the offensive line, which is good that it's only kind of one position that you have to worry about. And for, this, for the last twelve years, you'll have the same center again. Yeah, that's a good thing. You sound Howdy, depressed. Howdy. Jake Majors is great. Yeah, they've been trying to get rid of him forever, but no, he's that. As long as I can keep that guy going, the the quarterback on the offensive line, that's huge for them. Yeah, that the one game big. Texas lost in the regular season. I don't think it's a coincidence that Jake Majors right. got hurt in the first quarter and didn't get to play the rest of the way. So, uh, yeah, they were they missing him. They did not him look the same without him. They just no, didn't look no, they the didn't. same on their offensive line. You're right. They did, they did not at all. So, yeah, getting Jake Majors back for a 15th, year or whatever you said that it oh my was goodness. we'll take it we will take it so yeah the uh, the o-line was very good last year you'd like to think it can be even better this I think, year i think even better which yeah. is that's saying a whole lot but you need even better going into the sec because they've got some animals over there on the defensive line throughout the sec and you're going to learn before the sec like michigan for as, as many questions as michigan oh. has having to replace as many people and coaches and cheaters as they do, uh, they are going to have one of the best defensive lines in the country next year. Like oh, that's yeah, of course they that, will. That's probably their strongest returning position, right? They lose all five O linemen, quarterback, running back, receiver. Like they lose important pieces everywhere else, but that D line is going to be salty. So yeah, that Texas offensive line in week two is uh going to be very, very tested. We'll learn a lot about that group. We'll learn a lot about the whole team, of course, but especially up front. Uh, from Texas going to Ann Arbor on September 7th, 6th, 7th, 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 final, final answer. Uh, all right. We'll get back into some Texas football later. Once again, one week away from spring wow. ball beginning here in Austin, Texas, USA, America. 
We've got some Texas baseball to discuss. We've got plenty of NFL to talk about. Also, a weird moment at a press conference, something I don't think I've ever seen before, happened at a college basketball conference tournament presser. I'm going to get the Bucks' thoughts on that. But before all of that, how about another sponsor shout-out? Folks, if you're seeking that specialized patient-focused orthopedic care, contact the Texas Orthopedics. Our good friends over there, their physicians offer surgical and non-surgical orthopedic care for children and adults, spinal care, sports medicine, trauma care, joint replacement, rheumatology, and more. Dr. Christopher Daney, I coached at the University of Texas. Uh, Dr. Chris Stockton, which I did not coach at the University of Texas, are dedicated orthopedic surgeons, and their goal is to get you right back into that good health and that great quality of life that you definitely deserve. Texas Orthopedics is the largest independent orthopedic service in the state of Texas. For more information, go to txortho.com. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Texas Orthopedics. Also, some love to our great friends at 7-Eleven. Yeah, man. If you're on your way to work this morning, need a little pick-me-up, stop by 7-Eleven, get you that uh, hot cup of coffee. Then give you the iced coffee, too. You can get the energy drinks, the Monsters, the Red Bulls, whatever. Get you a donut, too. Get you that sugar rush to start off your day. Of course, they'll have the pizza and the wings and the rollers and all of the other hot and fresh foods ready for you. They got the prepackaged snacks as well. They've got the Olipop at some 7-Eleven locations, too. I mean, they are fully stocked all the time, ready to fuel you for your day. 7-Eleven all over the state of Texas. We love our guy, Ashish. We love our gal, Wendy. Uh, they hook us up here on Texas Sports Unfiltered, and you will be hooked up every time you go in there, especially if you have that 7-Eleven app downloaded on your phone. You can cash in on the 7 Rewards program every time you stop in. Go see our great friends at 7-Eleven, the best convenience store in the world, Buck. Today I'll be having my mocktail, my big hat mocktail, margarita mocktail, while I'm on the course, while those guys have their Allstat, their Jack Daniels, their Tito's. I mean, anything that they can find with alcohol in it, they will be guzzling down with if they make a birdie. And that's all of them combined. If one makes a birdie, they all drink up and they stay that way. So for me, can't have alcohol. So I got this mocktail drink that our good friends at Big Hats, they have made. And it is delicious. The taste of ginger, orange, lemon, lime. It is thirst quenching and it is good for you. That ginger is good for your digestive system, folks. And I will have, I will probably have two of those. And I used to sit out there and have two Coca Colas, but not now. I like my mocktails over ice. Really tasty. It's sort of like my Olipop. Olipop is when I want, if I want that the taste of, of a soda, I go Olipop. No more Coca Colas. The big man's been doing well. Scarecrow's been doing pretty good there. Has still put on a couple more pounds. I'm out of the out of the 40s. I'm back into my 150s. So I'm no longer a jockey, you know. So I can. I can work at a carnival or something, but I I, I, used, I was getting to the weight of a jockey. Mm. But with, that, with that mocktail from Big Hat, believe me, they've got everything in it. All the ingredients are good for your digestive system. I need it. Uh, I Well, I don't need it as much as I used to because I'm eating pretty well right now off the sugar. And that's got a low, low amount of sugar in it. And you will love it too. For those that are interested in having a, a drink or two, but you don't want the alcohol taste. And it tastes not as... Nothing to do with alcohol. There's just so much good stuff in it, and they are tasty. Believe me, there's a bunch of people that are trying them. You can get them. Every once in a while, you're going to see 7-Eleven will carry them, but you're going to see them in HEBs. They have displays in the HEBs. The one out here in B Cave, they got a nice display from Big Hat, and those folks are fantastic, and so is that drink. And so are the other drinks that Big Hat has that have the alcohol in them. I just can't do it. No, you can't. Are you reading a script for that live read? No. Okay. Couldn't tell. No. <laughs> no. That was all over the place there, of but we love I Big Hat. Uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Shout out to Big Hat. Also, uh, shout out to Covert Bee Cave as yeah, well. We'll do a live read for Covert Bee Cave today. It's the best car dealership in the world. Covert Auto Group, they've been around Austin since 1909, the year before Bucky was born. They are the best at what they do. Covert Bee Cave, their newest dealership. They've got three dealerships out at Covert Bee Cave featuring seven different brands. Mm. They've got the unbeatable selection. They've got the phenomenal service. They've got the best prices anywhere in the city. It's all at Covert Bee Cave. Go see our man, Dan Covert. Go see Stacy. 
Go see Mike. Go see Jerome. Go see the whole squad out there. They treat us like family. And if you tell them you heard about them from Texas Sports Unfiltered, they're going to treat you like family as well. And, Buck, what do they say about the Coverts? Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now, not ever. And no. believe me, I was almost out there on the grounds on Sunday, but now you've made me nervous. I'll, 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 somebody will shoot at me if I'm on the grounds there. I have been told that I can come through the gate if I'm walking because I can't get in the gate with a car on a Sunday, but I need to go and stroll because I'm looking for a caddy right now. Ooh. Yes, indeed. What are we talking, the Escalade? No, quit it with the big car. You know, I put too many miles, and I drive to – what does it cost to fill up an Escalade? 80 bucks? Probably, if not I'd be more. Done in two, I'd be done in a day and a half. Yeah. No. I like yeah, those small ones. Great mileage. Yeah. They've got the ones that look like the Subaru, but without the, without the carpet part of it. You know what I mean? The munching and stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave my, by the way, leave my Subaru alone. Very safe. Are. What you're munching carpet inside your Subaru? Let me just say this: I love my little Subaru, but it's time to go ahead and move up in class. And I'm a caddy guy, so mm. and I, I like the little hatchbacks where I can put my golf clubs and my plants and everything else. There you go. And eventually, the dog has to get in the back seat, so I've got to put the cover in there. I hate the fact that if you get something brand new, you still got to put the dog in the car. You got to you got to be rich to be able to have that dog. I love when I see a dog sitting in somebody's car. They've got a nice brand new car and there's the dog's ass just sitting there hey get a pickup truck just put the dog in the bed and you'll be good i got one of those but that dog can't get up in that bed you know i barely can get up in there i need a step ladder to get up to, to my truck into that 88 silverado it just that's hard to get into for me mm. i'm not giving that up you know there that's is. that is in my will you know for my son for aj nice that dude wants that truck he should it's a great truck Yes, it is a great truck. Yeah, it's old, That's but it'll sitting, last forever. Yeah, metal bed. I don't have to worry about putting anything in the bed, worry about denting the bed. I just throw the stones in the back. I throw every, just throw it in there. Let's go. Yep. They don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't make them like they used to. No, they, they don't. Say. And yeah, dog hair. Dog hair gets everywhere, dude. That's the worst part of a dog is you get a dog that sheds and it doesn't matter how many times you vacuum or sweep or both. That dog hair is going to be everywhere. I love it when you're sitting in the front seat driving, you take a deep breath and all of a sudden you suck in hair from the back seat. You know, yep. you can but try to put a it. towel down or a blanket. I put a blanket. Blanket, work. blanket works for my dog. Nice. I've got this. I got this special dog blanket that really works. Sucks up all the hair. I can go get all that hair off, but still every once in a while, take a deep breath and some, and it's not the hair from my nose. It's the hair from the dog was shooting up my nose, and I, like, freak out in the middle of the drive, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the blanket, uh, it only does so much, but somehow, some way, the hair will find its way into, into the rest of the car. So oh, man. How she goes. All right, shout out to all of our great sponsors. A quick one to our friends at Jack Allen's Kitchen. Yes. Five Austin area locations. A fantastic dining experience at all five. They've got the burgers, the chicken fried steaks. Of course, they start you off with that house-made pimento cheese and crackers. That stuff, that's don't ever, hey, The thing about that is don't ever let me go. Ask Foss. If I get to a restaurant, which I generally do because most people are going to be late, I if I get there first and they bring the pimento cheese out and you're saying you're expecting another person, that other person's not seeing that that cracker and that pimento cheese. No. It's gone. Yeah, we went together a couple of weeks ago, and I got there 20 minutes early, and you were <laughs> already there, done with the pimento cheese. Dude, I said it. So I just tell it. I was asking the server, not man servant, because we did have a male who was serving us, but the server. Notice how I say that. Yeah. Uh, I just, I said you're gonna have to bring some more pimento cheese back. I said this right here. He's on his way, but if you bring that in front of me, they're not gonna see that. I don't think he believed me. He was thinking like, oh, this guy's just kidding. He's going to share that. Like, no, dude, that thing was gone. Gone. Long gone. Oh, yeah. It's good. Well, they, got, they got everything, man. They, the, the great Mexican-style food. They got the, uh, what's it, the green chili pork tacos, the enchiladas that are fantastic. The trout. Mm. They got fish dish. I mean, they got everything. It's, it's southern food, but it's done right. Got a little Tex-Mex twist to it. If you've been there, you know exactly what you're talk, what we're talking about. If you haven't been there, you are missing out. Seriously, Jack Allen's Kitchen, phenomenal dining experience, great food, great drinks, great atmosphere, great service. Man servants, female servants, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> they got it all at Jack Allen's Kitchen.
Have you been down to Hay City Store lately? Have you have you seen the folks down there? Have you been to their new place again? I know you went there about two months ago. You haven't been back. I need to go, man. I need to get to Hay City Store. As a matter of fact, that might be a move this week. Go uh, go see our friend Travis and Tamara down there at Hay City Store. Yeah, I Store. need to go to there. I need to take my wife to the place downtown for dinner for you know a formal little formal meal down there with her. There you go. Yep, Taste on Main. That's the new yes. spot in uh, downtown Buda. Awesome. 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 Okay, how about this, Buck? A quick video before we um, get back into the NFL storylines of the day. This comes from the Mountain West Women's Basketball Tournament. Utah State played a game in that conference tournament. They lost, ultimately ending their season, right? They're not good enough to be in the NCAA tournament. So uh, it was the last game of their year. And look, win or lose, every coach has a press conference after the game. That's standard procedure. I'm not breaking any news to anybody with that one. Well, Utah State's coach, Kayla Ard, is her name. And after her team lost its conference tournament game, she walked up to the podium for her post-game press conference, and something happened that I've never seen before in my life. I'm curious to hear if you have. Check this out. And how do you plan to rebuild for next season? I'm not going to be rebuilding. I just coached my last game at Utah State. I spoke with Diana, and they're going in a different direction, and I respect her decision, and I hope they get a really good coach in. I'm assuming that's going to be the last question. All right. Okay. Thank that's you. All. Thank you, Coach. Whew. Dude. You don't want to make that dude mad. I mean, wow. That dude. No, that's – I mean, she's, she just she just retired herself just about, didn't she? She got fired. Well, she you got fired in the locker room right after the game then, You didn't huh? hear – okay, I'll, I'll play it again. I, I, heard, I heard her say, this is my last game, and I told her going in a different direction. I, I, mean, I think you got fired. You were so focused on whether or not that was a woman or not that you didn't listen to what she had to say? Oh, I heard her say it. She didn't retire. She got fired. Well, how how would you do how, like come on you can't do that to your coach you fire her before the press conference and then you make her go do the press conference are you kidding well, I me you, I don't know if they made her do the press conference she sounded like she was going to tell the, the whole world that's how they did that that's how they just did her well they should I mean, no they should have done it after the press conference or said hey you're done don't go do the press conference they should yeah, have prevented her from going that. that's a horror like I look, Utah State women's basketball, probably not a great program. No. But if I'm a coach who's, like, considering maybe taking a job at Utah State. You not think classy. I'm gonna, not real classy. You think I'm going to consider it anymore? Not real classy spot right there. That wasn't a real classy move. And then you go out there and have to do a press conference. Yeah. And she let them know that I just got fired backstage here. But yeah. I still I was still having to come out here and do this. She may have wanted to do the press conference. That may have been on her. They probably gave her, you know, the option of, you know, you don't have to do that. Because I wouldn't have. Right. I'd have packed my shit and been on my way. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a bad bit. You, like, you can't wait till after the press conference to fire the coach. And you, you, could, you could wait a couple of days, really, to fire the coach. You don't have to do it right then and there. But you didn't have the decency to let her do the press conference and talk about the end of the year before you canned her like that, and then you make her face the music? I've never seen that. Have you seen that before? No. I've never seen a coach start off a press conference by saying, I just got fired. Didn't Manny Diaz have to walk home after the BYU game? He should have. <laughs> he didn't get on the plane or something. <laughs> he should have had to walk home. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, that's that's absolutely insane. So, randomness from uh, the world of women's college basketball, I, I can't believe that. How do you think Kim Mulkey would have taken that? She would have murdered <laughs> the athletic <laughs> director. Yeah. yeah. They'd be yeah. cooked. He would have never made it out of the building, huh? She would have murdered the AD and then eaten him. Yes. Backstage and then done the press conference. Yeah, and said, come out with a big We're going to need a new AD. Something just happened to ours. Yes, yes. Here you Actually, is. actually, I mean, I'm, I'm the AD play. now. I'm the head coach and the AD <laughs> now. <laughs> and all you little sissies, if you got something to say. That's right. You can see no me sissy. out back. 
Because, yeah, she's no sissy for sure. Catch me outside. How about that? No, she would not have gone down that easy. That would have been that would have been awful for yeah. anybody that would approach her after a game to tell her you're now retired from this job. Yeah, you're done. Go Sorry do the press that, conference. Kimbo. No. She would have gone full Kimbo slice if that happened to her. Oh, you know she was. This lady was very nice about the way she went about her business. Yeah. And like I said, I, she probably she probably said, I'd like to do this. I'd like to say goodbye. I mean, how do you say goodbye? You've been fired. You're not saying goodbye. Right. Yeah. And the first question is, how are you going to rebuild for next year? Well, I'm oh. not going to be doing it. Somebody knew Somebody knew to get that first question, and that was like set up. I don't know, man. I mean, that, that seems like a fair question, right? Like, it wasn't going to be a super long press conference anyways because it's the Mountain West Women's College Basketball Tournament. But and that here's your standard morning. question. Your season's over. Uh, what are you going to do to be better next season? That's I'm that's going fishing. <laughs> Like, yeah, she handled it with class, and she's like, I, yes. I wish success to whoever replaces me. Like, she didn't have to do that. She could have been like – she could have gone Trey Elling Manifesto there. Oh, my goodness. There was another cat that you didn't want to have do that to. Yeah. It's that would have like, been ugly. They they just fired me. They didn't have the decency to wait till after my press conference. My AD just fired me right now. This school sucks. Here's all the dirty laundry about Utah State. You should never coach here. I hope the AD dies. Oh, she, my she could have gone full heel if she wanted to, but give her credit. No, I got to I got to believe that they gave her an option there. Smart AD would have given her the option. They would have never said. What do you do? So you have to send somebody to the podium there. Cause like there, there's people expecting a press conference. So I guess the AD could have gone up and said, we just fired her, but that's also like, what that, that just happened. Like that'd be a headline too. Wouldn't it? Would you walk in the locker room right after they lost and they've sucked all year long and you said it right there in front of the team. Did you bring the whole team together in a big I, pile out for everybody with their arms around each other? Hey, your coach is gone. Maybe that's how they found out. Like I've heard of fired on the tarmac. I've never heard of fired on the in the tunnel I'm going <laughs> to the press conference. I yeah, guess. that's awful. That was not good. No, no. Random, uh, random story there. All right. Uh Texas baseball back at it tonight, Buck. Yes, the Longhorns sir. at the dish taking on incarnate word. It's a 630 first pitch. Grant Fontenot will get the start for Texas. Of course, the Longhorns coming off that series win in Lubbock over the weekend, a much-needed series win for Texas. And despite the two losses the Longhorns sustained last week, they did move up a spot in the D1 baseball poll. They went from number 24 to number 23. So they did win that series on the road against a top-20 Texas Tech team. And the Longhorns now back home to start their longest homestand of the year. Ten games at the dish. Once again, incarnate word, the opponent tonight. But an opportunity for Texas – we don't need to deep dive too much into this game tonight, Buck, but an opportunity. Uh, Texas is better than the teams that they are about to play over the next 10 yeah, days. This is opportunity to get, get on a little bit of a roll right now. I was about it to really say, is. it's like the start of the season, right? Texas's first eight games of the year were against inferior competition. And you're like, okay, 8 0 might be too much to ask for because sure. uh, baseball and anything can happen. But hey, Texas went 7 and 1. They were off to a great start. Texas probably not going to go 10 and 0 here, but if they can go, I don't know, eight and two over these next 10 games, even I'll seven and seven, three, I'll take seven and three. If they could do seven and three or better, uh, then yeah, I, I think uh, the narrative surrounding this team would change. But what, yeah, what would you think they'd have to work on, BK? More is still their pitching, still trying to find out what rotation fits. Yeah, I think so. I mean, their offense, like they struggled on Saturday against Texas Tech, but they scored 22 on Friday, nine. Yep. On Sunday, they scored a bunch of runs in Houston in two of those games that they lost. The only game they didn't score a lot of runs was against LSU's Friday night starters, one of the best pitchers in the country. So, yeah, the offense is there right now. They've got to figure out the pitching. The defense needs to be improved, but if you're asking me what the biggest issue is for this team right now, it's unquestionably the pitching. And it's starting pitching. It's relieving. I mean, it's it's everything. And, you know, LeBaron Johnson hasn't been as great as you would have liked to open up the year. You're still trying to figure out what your rotation looks like and whether or not Tanner Witt can be a part of that rotation. But also, yeah, if you can find a couple of reliable bullpen arms in these next 10 games, that would be great. Now, it, is, Tanner Witt, is Tanner Witt the number two guy still now? No, no, he hasn't. Is he three? He, no, he's been coming out of the bullpen. I mean, he really? started last week against AM on that Tuesday night game, but – 
uh, for the most part, Tanner Witt has been a bullpen arm as of late. So he's not starting tonight. Um, we'll see if he starts this weekend when Washington comes to town. But more recently, Tanner Witt has been a bullpen option. Uh, the hope, I think, is for him to get back into the rotation and potentially be your Saturday night guy. Sure. But as of now, yeah, Tanner Witt is more of a bullpen piece. So he doesn't have the velocity yet, huh? No, nah, velocity is not where it needs to be. And I think a lot of it's more up here than anything else with him. Um, but yeah, whether it's Gage Bohm or Ace Whitehead or a combination of those guys, maybe a few more, if they could find a few reliable bullpen arms, that'd be great. This is not going to be a super deep bullpen from top to bottom. If you're expecting that, I think you're making a mistake. Well, then your starters got to be good. Yeah, if your starters can be a little better and you can find, once again, a few bullpen guys that you can rely on to get you big outs and big spots, then uh, I think you've got a chance to turn this into a very successful season. But that's still a question right now as Texas sits, what, about 13 games into the season? 14 games into the season? 15 games into the season. They're nine and six. This is right nice. Now. 10, 10 games at home. Be nice to hit your stride a little bit here, you know, before you come back and get yep. back right back to a really hard conference play again. It's nice to get on a little winning streak. You'd like to see them get on about a four or five game winning streak, you know? Yeah, no uh, no ranked teams in this stretch either. you got Incarnate Word tonight. You've got Washington for three over the weekend. Air Force comes to town for two in the Keep midweek. runs. And Baylor and then A&M Corpus. So, uh, yeah, none of those teams are ranked. Only three of those ten games are conference games. And you know, Baylor not expected to be one of the best teams in the Big 12 this year. So we'll see if David Pierce's bunch can get on a little bit of a groove here. They are 9-1 and one all time against Incarnate Word. They played last year in Austin. Texas won 17 to 11. High scoring affair last time. And UI Dub came to town. Um, but um, yeah, Texas should win tonight. Max Ballou, congrats to him. He was named Big 12 Co Player of the Week after his strong performance in Lubbock. Also, Peyton Powell's got a 19 game hitting streak dating back to last season. We'll see if he can uh, keep that thing rolling at the top of the Longhorns lineup tonight. Okay, before we get back into the NFL, how about a word from our man Tom McKay over at Audiovisual Consultations? Hi, this is Tom McKay with Audiovisual Consultations. Today's home electronics can be a bit daunting. My company has spent the last 36 years making sure they are not. For those of you who have not experienced our services yet, we'd like to invite you to give us a try for all your home electronics needs. We carry all the major brands of televisions and stereo equipment at prices you can't find in stores. And we come to you. There's no need to leave your home to find great pricing and incomparable service. No traffic and experienced sales geeks or pushy showroom tactics. We believe in having some fun and dreaming big. Do you have a dream for your home entertainment? Let us know. We can make it come true. And we are always there to help after the job is done. We cultivate clients for a lifetime by treating everyone like their family. No, not those family members. I'm talking about the ones you actually like. So relax, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and smile. Then, when you have a moment, give us a call at 255-8678. It's 512-255-8678 or online at avconsultations.com. Thank you very much there, Tom. You know, folks, with my jacked-up back, getting the right support has always been difficult. Honestly, I looked everywhere, but nothing gave me the comfort my back nearly needed. And then I found the folks that relaxed the back. You know, they've really helped me out in a lot of different ways, whether it's my thoracic back, which I had in thoracic reconstruction, or my lumbar area. I've never had a problem really, really with my lower back, thank goodness. But I know if I needed had the problem, if I had a problem there, the relaxing back would have a chair just for me. Relaxing back embraces the holistic approach for a healthier lifestyle based on 35 years of proven expertise. And right now, folks, head on over to Relax Back. They have the recliners that you're looking for, the tempur mattresses and pillows that you're looking for. They've got everything that you need that's going to help you with the support of your back, neck, and shoulders. Of course, two wonderful locations in B Caves at the Hill Country Gallery across from Whole Foods and in North Austin at the Gateway Shopping Center across from the Container Store. Live pain-free like the buck at Relax the Back. I almost said like the scarecrow. Mm. Damn. My wife is jumping on that, too. She goes, how's the scarecrow this morning? I'm like, what do you mean? Congrats to you for getting some action this morning. The scarecrow is just kind of. I said your wife was jumping on it, so. <laughs> no, no, getting on me about, hey, I put on two pounds. I mean, a full <laughs> two. No, I'm not. I'm not quite there yet. But When are you the big man again? 
Uh, when I hit 162. You've never been 162. You were calling yourself the big man last week when you were 152. I'm not calling myself the big man if I'm in the 150s. If I'm just slightly above a jockey, there's no chance. I got to be at least 160 to be the big man. That's just a farce. I just grabbed. I was just reaching with that big man stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you were. You were. You kept flexing as if that made you bigger, but it wasn't helping very much. Not at all, huh? No. And You ever see those little guys hit the ball? Those guys aren't more, much more than what a jockey weighs on the PGA Tour. There's some little, there's some little dudes out there. Not so fast, you know? Bridget. Not what so you fast. What do you think Sergio weighs? I know he's a little older now. He's probably gained, gained a couple of – and he's playing the live tour, so he's probably eating well. Probably. You know? I bet she's no. about a buck seventy at the at the most. <sighs> I'd say no. more than that. You think so? Yeah, he's got some dad weight now. Oh, he does. Got, he does have some some papa weight, huh? Yeah, I mean, I just looked up his height. He's 5'10". I'd say he's 180, 190. No, don't go to the 190 bit. He is no. not running back size. No. <laughs> he's 170. He's and some 170, change. that's it? Yeah, and some change. Mm. Even with the dad weight on him. Well, that's 20 pounds more than you. <sighs> yeah. Your jockey height also. Not only are you no, jockey No, no, weight, no, no, no. We don't, we don't go there. That's why I just say jockey weight, because I'm taller than six jockeys on top of each other. That is like, not even close to true. No, it, really. it, Yeah, it, no one is as tall as two jockeys on top of each other. Dude, those dudes are 5'2", Okay, you, you know anybody who's 10'4"? <laughs> you're saying no. you're 30 feet tall. Dude, no, six I'm jockeys a on tall. I'm a grown man. Remember, I'm over the average height, or I'm around the average height of a full-grown man servant. Five, nine, and three quarters. I'm actually taller than the, the average man in the world. You're that's about, right. You're about, yeah, that's true. The average height of a man in the world is about five, seven, and you're you about go. five, eight. You keep giving yourself an inch and three quarters, which I've done that too. It's fun. Most guys it's have. Not fine. I don't do that. I'm not giving my... I'm 5'9". I was 5'9", barefooted. I mean, not even with shoes on in the doctor's office. When was this? 2004? <laughs> 2000. <laughs> yeah, I think you've shrunk a little bit. Honey, I shrunk the buck. No, the that's... buck, as the back goes, starts to go like this. Yeah, yeah, that's, you don't that's want costly. That hey, we got a new sponsor. We need a sound for new sponsors. New sponsor. <laughs> All right, I'll just turn that into a drop. I was gonna go with either the boom or He's got the age. But oh god, I don't think they want that. I don't know if they want that. Hey, shout out to our friends at Autograph. You see that little logo that's shaped like an A under the buck? I got it right now. Uh, if you want to get rewarded for listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered, our friends at Autograph, co-founded by Tom Brady redefining the fan experience by letting users earn points for the acts of fandom they take every day, just like listening to TSU. The Autograph app, it's free in the App Store, gives you access to your favorite Longhorn content all in one place, and you get rewards like tickets, exclusive merchandise, and more. So once again, you're already listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered. Now you can earn points and get rewarded for it. Just head over to the App Store, search for Autograph, and download it for free today. Make sure you use the referral code TSU. Once again, that code TSU. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can click a link in the video description. But just head over to the App Store. Once again, Autograph is the name of the app. It's co-founded by Tom Brady. And it's a cool spot. It just compiles all your favorite Longhorn content in one place, and you get rewarded by just being a Texas fan. It's very easy to use, very Sweet. simple, and it's, once again, perfectly free to download. Is that the Tom Brady, or is that like Senator Tom Brady? Is there a Senator Tom Brady, or is he pulling a Herschel Walker and getting into politics? <laughs> no, he's not getting into politics. I got to believe there's a Senator Brady out there somewhere. Uh, Tom yeah. Brady. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of Tom Brady's, especially who are, you know, 20 years of age or younger. There you go. Yeah, a lot of people, I'm sure, named their kids after Tom Brady, especially in New England. All right, uh, back to the NFL, Buck. Very, uh, I'm, you know what, I'm I'm excited for Saquon Barkley. I think that's a great move for him. You know, I, I wish the Cowboys would have got involved. I know you, you're glad that they didn't. You know, they're still – 
shell shock from doing that deal with Zeke years ago. They're probably never, ever going to go that way again. I thought this was an opportunity for them. I, I don't know if they talked to him or not. They probably did because Jerry, Jerry likes splashes or he's just seeing things in people of his own group that makes them think maybe we don't have to do anything. Maybe we just rerun this whole thing, re-rack this and go about our business. We were just okay last year. We'll get a little bit better. We got the guy from Michigan, you know, those cheaters. He'll be better this year on the defensive line, which Jerry's going to make a splash here next 48 hours. Something's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to sit back and, and do nothing. But I was happy for Saquon Barkley to get back to, you know, back in the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, he really – he likes the Lehigh Valley. He's done a lot of things in the Lehigh Valley. He went to New York. It wasn't like he was 20,000 miles away. He's an hour and a half away still – from his his family in Pennsylvania, being with the Giants, but I'm glad. He, and to the Eagles, not so much. You know, I'm not an Eagle fan, even myself being born in the city of brotherly shove. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a Phillies fan. I'm not an Eagles fan. For a while, I was a Flyers fan, but just I don't like that part. I don't like that for the Cowboys. This, this is this is a really good move for Philadelphia yeah. for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I think it's I think it's better than than people think. He's going to be fantastic with the, with the Eagles and that offensive line. That's that's a that's a good get for them. That's a chancy get, but it's a good get for the Eagles. Spoken and like we, a true running backs coach, there. You know, yeah. I know. I mean, look, it's it, it's an upgrade over DeAndre Swift, who was very good for Philly last Had year. A good year, yes. Yeah, I think a lot of Eagles fans were a little surprised when uh, there were reports that came out a couple of weeks ago that said Philly was going to move on from DeAndre Swift. It's like, well, you know, he was really good for you. He had a thousand yards. He was a big part of your offense, and you're just letting him go. Clearly, they had this planned, uh, so they felt comfortable letting Swift go to a different team. And he actually ended up signing with Chicago yesterday. Well, but, well yeah. we know what's, we know what's going to happen in his future now. Right, right. It makes Philly better. Uh, I'm curious how good that offensive line is going to be because Jason Kelsey obviously retired. Now, there are still some other big names up front for Philadelphia, so I don't think they're going to take a huge step back, but uh, they might not be as good as they were this past season. And look, whether or not the Eagles can get back to the Super Bowl, it's not going to hinge on Saquon Barkley. It's going to hinge on whether or not Jalen Hurts is good again. He was awful last year. Like, especially in the last, you know, six, seven games when Philadelphia came crashing down to earth, they went from the number one seed in the NFC to not even winning the division and having to play on the road in the playoffs. He was really bad there. But you look at his overall numbers, like they were not good last year compared to where they were two years ago. And that defense was also not good last year. So Saquon's, he's an upgrade, but it's running back. They got to figure out the more important stuff if they want to, get back competing for Super Bowls again. Well, they still got those same wide receivers. They still have him. I think he played hurt a lot during the season last year. His knee bothered him more than he let on, and he still tried to run the ball. That's that's the scary part about it. He, he, he wasn't as explosive as he was the year before running the football, but this takes a lot of pressure off of him having to run right now. And this, this, this just upgraded their screen game, which, you know, Swift was okay. This dude is devastating in the screen game. So he's going to catch up a lot of balls out of the backfield. He's going to be a safety valve for him. Now they're gone. Their tight end is gone. Ertz is gone, right? He's gone, right? Yeah, they've got Goddard still. Goddard is still there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's been their number one tight end the last yeah, couple of years. Yeah, I just think this, this, this is such an upgrade for them on a team that was, even when they were bad, they were still good enough on Sundays to beat a lot of teams. This just – this just helps a lot. This helps the quarterback out a little bit. And I think he'll be healthier next year. You know, I, I, as I said, I wish the Cowboys would have done it. But ever since the Zeke deal, they're not going to throw money at the running back. You know, I keep on saying Derrick Henry's still out there. I can't imagine that they would spend a lot on an older running back like that. I mean, if you told me he was going to get a two-year deal, which he's not looking at, he's looking for something that he can be cushy while two years from now being a backup or three years from now being a backup on the team still making a lot of money. That's what Derrick Henry's looking to do. I think if the money's right, he'll take a two-year deal. Like he'd prefer three. Everybody prefers the long-term stability. Sure. But I mean, if it's if it's two years, I don't know, 26, 28 million dollars. Wow. I don't know if that deal exists for Derrick Henry, but I, I think he'd be willing to take that. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Saquon's at 
you know, three for 37 and a half. So just shy of 13 mil a year. If Derek Henry's getting 13 to 14 mil a year over two years, I think he would uh, sign what up. What about for that. 10 mil a year for the Cowboys? Would you do that? No, no, I wouldn't. You I still wouldn't. wouldn't. You're, you're, you wouldn't even do eight. No. Uh, if it's one year, I would do eight. <laughs> no, if it's one year, it's going to be 10 or 12. Then, yeah, then I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I mean, I just. You're not going to get him for a one year deal for eight million. He's he's going to get at least two somewhere. Sure, I agree. Yeah, I'm not giving out long term deals to running backs. I'm surprised that yesterday went the way that it did, right? Because it feels like teams have been devaluing running backs a lot in the recent NFL. I think Saquon was surprised that he got that kind of money. Well, everybody it wasn't just Saquon. Like Josh Jacobs got a good deal. Yes. Tony Pollard got a good deal. DeAndre Swift got a good deal. Like I thought, you're seeing some positions. Like uh, not a lot of safeties have signed yet. The receivers, receivers are super valuable now. Most of the big name receivers are still out there. I think oh, yeah. only one team signed receivers yesterday. It was Jacksonville. They signed two, but every other free agent receiver is still available. So, like, I, with with the way running backs have kind of fallen out of favor in the last couple of years, I figured it'd be the running backs who had to wait a couple of weeks before they got signed, and they were going to have to be like, well, I guess we got to take less money. We got to take these one year prove it deals to show people that we're still good enough. I was shocked to see just how many running backs flew off. Yeah, the board. it sounds, sounds like teams and owners gave in to all the whining and crying from the running backs. It just, I like yeah. those guys aren't going to give in. They're not going to do that, but they it sounds like they did. They did. You're right. I wasn't expecting it to happen at all, but most of the big net, I mean, there are still a couple out there. Like Joe Mixon is out there. Derrick Henry obviously is still out there. So they haven't all signed, but you had eight or nine. I mean, Austin Eckler signed with the Commanders yesterday. That's um, I'm trying to think who else is on that list, but a lot of a lot of Devin Singletary signed with the Giants. Even like the the middle tier running backs got contracts yesterday. Dude, not Singletary is not going to be the same with the New York Giants as he just from from whence he just came. I mean, he had a good that deal with the Giants. They they can't that group can't bust a grape. That is that's a that's that move is about the money, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's not about winning. He's not going to win. He's not going to be the deciding factor with the Giants when they have an offensive line like they have. No, 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 no. I mean, look, Devin Singletary, I, he maybe can be a number one running back in this league, but if he is your number one running back, you're you're not going to have great production right. in that spot. He can be a good change of pace guy. I mean, the Texans brought him in last year with the hope of him being the number two, right? Like Damian Absolutely. Pierce. Damian Pierce was supposed to be the guy following his great rookie season. He didn't have it last year, so Singletary ended up being the the, the bell cow, the lead dog for them. But yeah, I don't you think – uh, took a dip. I yeah. mean, that was that, – that was, obviously the Texans weren't expecting that. I don't think the fans were. I don't think football was, was expecting Pierce to take such a dip. And what happened – I don't know if he stayed hurt or whatever. It just It just didn't work for him year number two, you know? Yeah, had that hamstring injury towards the end of year one. I don't yeah, know if that will do it. Yeah, I don't know if that lingered or what it was, but uh, no, the Texans need a running back. The, the Cowboys and the Texans both need to do something at running back. Now they could both wait for the draft and just address the position there, but they both have to acquire somebody, if not some bodies, well, in their running back. Use, they're going to have to use their third and fourth round picks on a running back because those first two rounds. I mean, there, there. I mean, there's a lot of runners out there. This year, there's a, there's a lot in that group that are that are decent running backs all over the SEC, you know, in, in the Big 12. There's some pretty good running backs available, but yeah. you're not going one and two with those guys. You're not. This isn't like last year where two guys go in the first round. I mean, that's not going to happen. You know, I think uh, look, the Cowboys pick at 56 in the second round. The Texans pick at 59 sure. in the second round. I, I think those are prime spots for running backs. Now, they might have the first. The Cowboys might have their pick of the litter at running back. They might be able to draft the first running back at 56, which you're right. I mean, last year we had two guys go in the top 12, and this year we might have nobody go in the top 50. So there's a chance that, yeah, when Dallas is on the board at 56, they can take Jonathan Brooks, they can take Trey Benson, they can take the kid Estime from Notre Dame. How much, like do, you like the kid? How much do you like the kid from, from Florida State? A lot? Trey Benson? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I mean, look, Jonathan Brooks would be my number one running back if he wasn't coming off of a torn ACL. And uh, I think for a lot of teams, late in the first round, if I had an opportunity, maybe. Yeah, I think for a lot of teams, 
know, a lot of teams can draft and kind of stash Jonathan Brooks, but if the Cowboys really are all in on this year, yeah, they can't stash him. Yeah, and if their plan is for their starting running back to be the guy that they draft, they can't draft Jonathan Brooks. No, and just, like I know the reports are that he'll be ready for training camp, but no, that's, I'm not buying that. It's too big of a risk. So would I be super angry if Jonathan Brooks ended up a Cowboy? No, but if he is their plan to be the starting running back next year, like they do. Oh, nothing hell, I did just look at Michael Gallup coming off a knee and see what he looked like the first year back. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. like everybody's different, but you're right. I mean, it didn't work for for Gallup. Hell, his his second year back wasn't very good either. So no, and you're talking about a guy who's got to make cuts every time he touches the ball. So yeah, the yeah. Texans. Go ahead. Jonathan is going to be a great guy to, like you say, to stash away if he's in a, a third or fourth round guy, and you can and you can let him just be behind somebody pretty decent. You know, have another running back, and then all of a sudden this guy is back to being healthy. And he can be real special. Sure. I still think he's worth a second, but you're right. I mean, you've got to have somebody, you know, whoever signs Derrick Henry, you can draft Jonathan Brooks. For sure. If, you, if you've got a veteran running back who's in his late 20s, early 30s, then and he stays he, pretty healthy, Derrick Henry. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have to have a great one behind him, but you know right. he's coming to the end of the road, but he's pretty versatile. You know what I mean? He's yeah. not he doesn't come up lame a lot. That guy's that guy's pretty steady Eddie since he's been in this league. So you can count on him to be there. He's not going to miss half of the season because of injury, knock on wood. But, you know, then Jonathan Brooks, then you can just have a, a decent back behind him. And then as Henry really gets old, then you start to, to move a guy like that in, you know? Sure. I'm with him. We'll see what happens there. But the Texans did make some moves yesterday. Obviously spent a lot of time talking about the lack of moves made by the Cowboys. Uh, I keep checking Twitter. I haven't seen Dallas do anything just yet. But the Texans did sign a few players uh, the biggest name, Aziz Alshair, the linebacker who was with the Titans last year. He had 163 tackles. He was fifth in the NFL in total tackles last season. Actually was in San Francisco before that. So he played under D'Amico Ryans when D'Amico was the defensive coordinator in San Francisco. The Texans actually tried to sign Alshair last year. They couldn't do it. They got outbid by Tennessee. And uh, well, now they're able to get him right now. Speaking of Tennessee, Danico Autry coming over from Tennessee as well. He had 11 and a half sacks last year on that defensive line. Two-year deal for him. He's a bit old. He's 33, going on 34, but he was super productive last season, and he'll fill a need for the Texans up front on the defensive line. They also signed Jeffrey Okuda, former top three pick out of Ohio State, the cornerback who you know, has been a bit of a flop in the league. He's bounced around, but you know, if anybody can get the most out of any defensive player, it's D'Amico Ryan. So yes. They're taking a pretty low-risk flyer on him. The Texans also signed themselves a punter with Tommy Townsend, the old chief, the guy with the long, flowing hair. So the Texans did make some moves. Uh, They weren't the biggest spenders in free agency, and I think some Texans fans are a little bit underwhelmed by yesterday considering how much money the Texans had to play with, but uh, they did bring in a couple of pieces who I think will make their team better. Yeah, what do they have draft-wise? Do they have – do they have spots that they can, you know, clean up that with in the draft? What do you mean? The Texans. They have. Do they have a. What's their first round pick looking like? They've got Cleveland's first round pick as a part of the Deshaun Watson trade, and it's twenty three oh. overall. Good job, Cleveland. Way to make that move. Yeah, nice job there. That's going to go down as one of the worst trades ever. If ever. It hasn't already gone down as that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still have some holes they got to address. I- I'd love to see them get a receiver. Like if the Texans, you know, people were talking about them being in the Mike Evans mix for a while. Obviously, Evans re-signed with Tampa. Now, T. Higgins from Cincinnati has requested a trade. People are talking about the Texans maybe being in that conversation as well. I don't think the Texans need to spend big at wide receiver. Like, no, they need they to get increase their offensive line too. So, Yeah, I mean, if they get a guy like Curtis Samuel, you know, just a, a mid-level free agent who can be sure. the third best receiver on that team. Like they've got Nico Collins, who's in line for a big payday. He looks like a good a bona fide number one. You've got Tank Dell, who was awesome as a rookie before he got hurt. You go get a guy like Curtis Samuel, who's who's proven in this league, who's that's put right. up some good numbers. Like that's that's all you need. So I don't think the Texans need to trade draft capital or spend twenty plus million dollars a year on a oh, wide receiver. Right. So they, they got they, to address that though. And they still got to continue to work their offensive line with that quarterback. You always have to be 
looking for offensive linemen as long as he's going to be your QB. Yeah, and some mock drafts have the Texans taking an O-lineman. You know, it's interesting. The Texans O-line was solid last year. They were also super banged up, and they, yeah. they were more injured than any other offensive line in football. And they actually – I don't know if this stat still rings true, but going into the last season, I know it did, they had invested more money into their offensive line than any other team in football. So Texans fans, like, yes, you want to protect C.J. Stroud. He's your most important person in your franchise. But it's like they've already invested a shit ton in that offensive line. They just need guys to play better and stay healthy. Yes. Like, that's their big – like, Laramie Tunsil's got that massive contract. They spent a lot on Titus Howard last year. And they've spent high draft picks. They they traded for Shaq Mason and extended him before last season. Like, they have invested a lot into the O-line. They just need to be on the field, yes. Yeah, yeah it's got to be better. So, uh, I don't know. I think defense – they're doing the right thing, addressing defense. Um once again, Danico Autry on the defensive line. They brought in one player at every level of that defense. Now, they weren't the biggest names yesterday, but they brought in a D lineman, they brought in a linebacker, and they brought in a cornerback. Uh, there's still room, and the Texans have, once again, a lot of money to spend. That's why Texans fans are a little disappointed because the Texans were top five in terms of salary cap space going into free agency, and they kind of spent like a, a – they were shopping at Marshalls or TJ Maxx, you know. Not that there's hey, anything wrong with that. Don't be messing around with Marshalls. No, not that there's anything wrong with the rack store, but the best thing about Marshalls is the line. You like waiting in line? The line, the people that are in that line. Oh, some of the talent in line. Very one of the most talented lines there is. You have a ranking of talented lines. When it comes to stores, of course. Yeah, who else is in there? I mean, you don't. I mean, you notice that you've been in there. You go, you're a Marshall shopper. Sure. You don't want to stand in the line. Uh, no. No, I mean, I'd rather not have to stand in the line because I can do my looking at other spots across the store. That's but... true. There you go. You can see the whole store yeah. on the line. There you yeah, go. Yeah, they do it right. They don't, you know, they don't section areas off like some of those department stores. It's uh, it's open seating and open standing go. in now that place. Talking. Who else, though, besides Marshall's? Where else do you like to? No, I... I... That's it. Marshall's is the key for me. Okay. I, when I now go to, uh, what was it Macy's? Macy's about to go out of business, though. Is it? I can, yeah. There's Macy's is about to close up. I don't know if I can be seen with their gear on anymore. And anyway, the gear, gear, what do you get? You have a shirt that says Macy's on it? <laughs> yeah. Then again, Marshall's doesn't say Marshall's on it. No. Like brand names. Yeah, exactly. Still yeah, go to Macy's. Yeah. I used to back in Boston. I used to go to a place called Filene's Basement. And the you basement, playing you know, Nerf basketball with Jeff George down there. No, not in that basement. Jeff George was in Illinois. Mm. That was Champagne Urbana. There you go. Filene's Basement. Yes. Mm. All the people from Boston are hearing you right now, going, "Yeah, nice." Does nice. the uh, does Macy's going away mean that stupid ass parade is going away too? You know, it's very interesting. I don't know any details on what's going to happen to – well, the new one in New York I don't think is going away. Hmm. They're not going to shut down the main the main vein, you know what I mean? Yeah. But all these little little Macy's deals are going to be gone, goner. Right, you know yeah. what else is going? I think Bath and Body is on its way out. Bath and Body Works? Yeah, I think they're gone too. What about Bed Bath & Beyond? They went last year, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they took a hit last year. And the online shopping is just, just killing it's them. crushing those people. It Amazon. Really it's all on Amazon, man. I, I shop local a lot, but there are definitely times where I'll fall victim to the Amazon. I've never ordered anything on Amazon ever. That's because you don't know how to use the internet. Yeah, well, my significant other knows how to use it. And that <laughs> baby rolls up in here about three times a day. <laughs> Oh yeah, she uh she knows the delivery guy by name, right? Well, he knows when I go out. He goes, uh, "No, Mister Godbolt, there's nothing here for you." Not for like you. He, like he's thinking, "There's never anything here for you." Said this. All right. Uh, hey, by the way, you got about five minutes left to enter into our Cabo Bob's gift oh, card giveaway. Randomizer. Is that randomizer, randomizer is coming store? back out. Yep, yep. Just leave a text on the code of text line five one two 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 nine three two eight, or hit us up on the YouTube comment line. You will be entered to win. Uh, somebody asked about Joe Mixon. Yeah, Joe Mixon's out there. He could be an option for the Cowboys or Texans. 
you know, uh, obviously you got, I guess, a culture worry with Joe Mixon from that incident at Oklahoma. It was a decade ago. Not that I'm defending that. It was a horrible move, and I don't like Joe Mixon, and I'll never forgive him for that. But I don't know if NFL teams are going to still view that as a negative when talking about Joe Mixon. How's he but, been since he's been in the league? Fine. He's, had, he's I think you know, he's had one incident. Has he not? I know I shouldn't say that. I don't know if he's had any incidents since he's got to the league. That one was enough to keep you out of the league. But the fact that he's a Sooner is even – it's is as bad or you know just because he's a sooner no we don't want you don't he, want him i think he was accused of something else recently like during a traffic stop maybe he pulled a gun on somebody during a traffic stop oh just a gun pulling something like that yeah it could be worse i mean it's just a gun what are you supposed to do you got to have some fun you got a gun right i yeah, I don't know if that's what the law says. <laughs> you got to have some fun. You got a gun. You got to have some fun. What's the issue oh, here? Yeah. So I, I don't know. You know, the Texans, it's different. It's different um, leadership in Houston now. But I know the last regime would have, they wouldn't have even thought about Joe Mixon because no, of Joe that Mixon incident. Beats women and he's a Sooner. No thanks. Yeah. Bad. I would Plus, he got a power that. runner already in the other guy. Daldale. Dondale. Dalmatian or whatever his name is. Who? The guy who's now the starter, Dalmatian. In Houston? No, with the Cowboys. Oh. Rico Dowdle? Oh, is that Rico Dowdle is his name? Dalmatian? Yeah. Doodle. I mean, he's a power runner. Joe Mixon is very similar to, to that dude, right? Nah, he's, he's a lot better. I, I mean, know he's better, but they're downhill kind of guys. Yeah. Yeah, Mixon gives you a lot in the passing game, too. He's been yes, a he great does. weapon, no pun intended. Uh, in the screen game for the Bengals over the last few years. So uh, I'd rather not. I'd rather go in a different direction. But a lot of the guys I would have rather the Cowboys signed have already signed elsewhere. So they are uh, they're running out of some options right now. Yeah, um, I mean, I, when, I, when I was listening yesterday, I'm like, is the Cowboys? I'm going, holy fook. Nothing's going on with the Cowboys. Not a thing. <laughs> something <laughs> wrong, Jerry? Something wrong. What is he doing? You get a wellness check on Jera. I mean, he's really needed one for the last 30 years. But... We're all in. Yeah. Well, he, and I have, all in. he and I have different definitions of all in. That's for damn, damn sure. I don't um, get it with all right. Quick shout out to shout out to Old Stat Beer, the best beer that you can yes, find sir. in the known universe. Get you some at HEB Specs, Twin Liquors, 34 Wine and Spirits. Wherever you go to buy your beer, you can find Old Stat. It's popping up at more and more of your favorite restaurants and bars throughout the city. Of course, our friends at Jack Allen's Kitchen and our friends at Cover 3 carry Altstad beer. So when you're enjoying a great meal at either of those joints, make sure you're uh, washing it down with the best beer in the land. That is Altstad beer. No impurities, no regrets. Hey, how are you feeling since your, your night out on the court and and not hydrating properly and having a bunch of Altstad? How you, how'd you, you make it through the day okay? Yeah, I was hoping to get a nap in yesterday, and apparently it was National Napping Day. What? Yesterday yeah. was? Yep. And I, I did not get a nap. Dude, you cannot not call me and tell me, dude, listen, Scarecrow, take a nap. I was out there like a yard dog again yesterday when I needed a nap. What is wrong with you? Those are very important days. That's like St. Patty's Day or Black History Month. Well, you're putting those on the same level? Yes. What are you doing? Take a nap, man. That's like a must. If I known that, if you would have mentioned that yesterday, I'd have been up here after the show. I'd be sleeping until it was time to go to bed. I mean, I needed it. I mean, come on, man. Those are big days. I know people have things to do throughout today. And, 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 and I had things to do too. But if you just said it's a national holiday, take a nap, I would have done it. Hey, you could celebrate today. Nope. Got golf today. Can't. Can't make that up. You can't make those things up now. Black History Month is the same as National Napping Day. Well, you know what today is? What's that? National Girl Scout Day. You could celebrate that by supporting our troops. Again? I can't. I can't eat sweets. I'll just go give them six bucks. Mm, yeah, that's true. You have to buy it and gift it to somebody else. Wow. It's also National Plant a Flower Day. Go see our friends at Leaf Landscape Supply to celebrate yeah, that. Awesome. I've been doing that for the last couple of days. I'll hit the flower Moving today. Dirt, picking up stones. Yes, I, I planted yesterday. 
and I'll be I'll be I'll be out there this weekend. Big weekend coming up there for that go. stuff. Uh, has DD said anything about weather-wise to help me out so that I know? Because I can't make my own plans because I I already know it's going to rain Friday. Okay. Did DD say? No, DD yeah. didn't say that. She didn't say oh. shit about it about Friday. But I think she said Thursday, but she hasn't come back with that. She wasn't very strong in her prediction. You know, she'll throw a little week. Oh, it's going to rain Thursday. It's going to rain Thursday. I'm like, that's it? She I was right it. last week, and you were wrong. I know it's raining. She hasn't Friday. made her prediction yet. She'll make one, and we'll listen to it, because she's always right, and you're always wrong. It's that simple. She's the apprentice. Let's not forget that, okay? Let's no. not forget that. No. I am Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, All right, she, there. She, she's Donald Trump. She's telling you you're fired. No, I don't think so. You're no, done. No. done. I hate to tell you that. And when All it right. rains on Friday, and I got you people back into my fold, you people, that's right. Once you people are back in my fold, you will never, ever listen to Dee Dee again. Oh, okay. Well, ever. you got to get a few right in a row because you've missed your last three predictions. So I don't think one accurate forecast is going to get you back in the good graces of the people. You got to get on a little bit of a streak here before we even consider taking you back in. And you took one guess by Dee Dee when she said it was going to rain on that Friday. She, she's batting a thousand. She's never missed. So until she misses, she's in charge here. She's got double R. Right, double right R. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Dee Dee's saying this. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> to you, Bucky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But you know what? I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm not going to get fired like that coach did before she hit the podium yesterday. Wasn't that crazy? And and then I was watching that yesterday. I, I was I wanted to to run that yesterday and I forgot. But if you, if you watch the very end of it, so like when the press conference is done, some lady comes over and pulls her name placard down. It's like, Whoosh. no, really? Yeah, it, it's right at the end. Right at the end, she comes and takes her name placard down where it said coach whatever her name was well that's a bad move on the institution for telling you giving her that news right before she goes to a press conference i've seen a lot of people getting on her on social media for trying to be more professional and holding that in you got to be a little bit more deliverable with i mean hell with that news right i would think or be a little bit more uh since hell i don't know kind kind is the only word that's yeah, coming to mind right, right now. It's oh like, my god you, know, you don't let Pretty her roll out there and do that i mean come on I got, you know, I got that's going to be the question. It, she yeah. had the option to go out there and face the press. I'm pretty sure the AD said, "Hey, listen, you don't have to do this." No, yeah. well, maybe said, oh, if, if that's I'm go out there and uh, you're firing me, I want to talk to them. Well, if, if that was the case and she had an agenda, then yeah, that's not well, as which, which it could as be. You'd like yeah. to go out, but I mean, oh, holy what, hell! What are you talking about? That was her agenda to be super nice. No, that's not. No, her I'm, no, I'm saying if, if that was her agenda, I'm she saying if that was her agenda. I'm not saying hoed. She got hoed she got hoed and she handled it with class good for her because most people in that situation would not what do you say if you just get fired from a job you know burn say, the fucking oh, place i down. hope this company does great yeah. i hope the person they are you kidding me with you is fired better than me you fired I call me my friend friend tomorrow, tomorrow I call and i'm burning friend. everybody's house down i'm shitting in your all's gas tanks no, see, no, I, I just i just call my friend trey ellie and ask him what he would think of how i should handle it that's all i do i don't yeah i don't have to go to a lot of people i just ask my doctor Trey, and he would have given me the great advice that I do. With, I would you do what you do what Bucky does. You're like, where's my fucking Coke Fest tickets? Yeah, give me where, my Coke Fest tickets. I see, Rodney. Are you, you are you understanding how long I've waited for this? And <laughs> and BK doesn't understand it. BK keeps telling me next week, next week, next week. Or well, I think he's now he's starting to tell me never, never, <laughs> never. But I'm still I I I'm just like I hoped Tyrese Hunter would have one of those big games, and yeah. he did on Saturday. Did. Did not. He came he through. He Do you did. think I, my tickets are maybe in the mail now? Could be. Could you be. Ever the go to service is slow nowadays, and they don't work on Sundays. So maybe, maybe they Did you ever? Now. Fuck. Did you ever go to Coke Fest? Yes, I went to one of those. Didn't they give Not. us the tickets? I thought they no. actually. I have, I bought tickets. Come on. Do you think they give anything for free over there? What are you out of your mind? Come on, keep, man. Had to keep the lights on over there. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they give you, they give you free coke, and if you took too many cokes, they'd charge you a dollar. <laughs> uh oh, oh, there it is. There's the randomizer. The randomizer. Uh oh, what is it? What do we got? Who we got? Oh, it is Miracle Martinez. There Where it is. Go, Miracle. 
The winner of today's $50 Cabo Bob's gift card. Are you not a Cabo miracle. Bob's card every day? No. Thank you for listening, though, Wags. We appreciate it. Good job, Wags. <laughs> you cannot be in part of the randomizer, though. You can All right, boys. No, I got to go. I got, you know, since BK made me miss National Nap Day yesterday, I mean, he didn't. He didn't tell me. He lets me know that it's Black History Month or all women's all month March for all women. But an important date like National Nap Day, he just gave me that today, right? And say yesterday was. And now I can't take a nap today. Well, I'll tell you what. It, it it was a good time for National Nap Day yesterday because this time change has me all thrown off, man. I um I, I swear. I don't. um it. Here's the problem. I told Wags this yesterday. So cool. when the time actually changed, I was awake. I was awake at that time. So I, I literally lost that hour. And so Sunday I was fine, but yesterday, oh my God. And this morning, and I'm dragging ass. It's horrible. Yeah, I understand. All right, I've had to have two Ollie Pops already. There you go. Bucks Bye, going. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the part in our relationship to where Rodney just talks at me and I'm just like, yeah, honey. Okay. Uh, what, what happened? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, sure. No, and then what? And then you, he then he gets mad at me for completely missing exactly what he said. And I'm like, well, sweetheart, you know, in one ear and out the other. Welcome to Chaos Theory, everybody out there. And maybe you're watching us on YouTube or you're out there mobile hearing us on that code of text line 512 222 9328. Make sure you give us a follow on the social media platforms. I'm on Twitter at Not the Fake Wags. Rodney's on there at the Rodney R. And then on Instagram at the underscore Rodney R. I'm on Instagram at the Wagon Wire and all other social media platforms that way. Like I just mentioned, please sem- smash that subscribe button if you hadn't done so already. Tell five friends, like our boy Harge says over there at the zone. Lots to break down, my guy. Lots to break down. Dude, and it's like I, you said, as soon as we get off the air, I you know, know everybody wakes the hell up on the West Coast and deals Man. get done. People get on the golf course or whatnot. And then, you know, by the back nine, you got Saquon Barkley to the fucking eagles or excuse yeah. my language already man but i mean that's just and, and it was we, we talked about the most disgusting move that could happen and for me that yeah. was saquon barkley to the philadelphia eagles this is gross uh i much rather pre- preferred him in a dallas cowboy uniform which by the way i think the only team that did not make a move or get an agreement done we'll say because moves weren't made yet agreements were just made yesterday um that did not get an agreement done was the the dallas cowboys so yeah. Uh, I guess they don't have a problem in their backfield. I guess well, they don't need a running back. Or maybe well, they're just waiting they until one. everything <laughs> falls to them. Or could they be getting busy in the draft and drafting a running back? I mean, we know that they got Deuce Vaughn uh, last season, but, I mean, a little bit in the latter portions of the draft, and you could argue that Deuce Vaughn's a, a bit undersized still for the NFL. So yeah. um, until – you get some real tough wheels to make some hard yards in the latter portion of the season, man. Um, I'm still, I got a lot of questions for that backfield in Dallas. Yeah. You know, you lose Tony Pollard, which we, we had heard that maybe that there would be a good um, fan or hometown deal. What a shuffle. What a shuffle, yeah, dude. I know, dude. It, it's completely shaken up. And and that whole thing, when, when I mentioned the other day about, about Saquon to the Eagles, I mean, it, it was just... I, I don't know, you know, that's that just seems to be what happens, you know, with the Eagles in that whole division. And then yesterday when I saw that Swift went to the or was gonna go to the Bears, I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. And, and I'm just waiting and boom. And and you were like, as soon as it hit, dude, I text you. And and I, I think you and I were like puking at the same time because it's like you know, and and with the Derrick Henry thing. I mean, Dallas doesn't want to spend money. They didn't sign any of their free agents, and they didn't sign any other free agents. How many good years does Derrick Henry have? Two? I I think you get two, maybe three, depending on the landing spot. I saw this morning uh, Sports Illustrated reported that I think Baltimore has offered him something. Gus Edwards is out. so Yeah, yeah. Something in the range of $6.3, $6.4 million. Dallas ain't going there. Dallas is not going to spend that on a running back so i don't know i mean if he ends up with the ravens i kind of had a sneaking suspicion that's where he'd be anyway but you know wags you and i I, talked i just i i think it's a great move for the ravens i just don't think it works for derrick henry though Um, yeah for me i feel like derrick henry is a running back that only gets stronger as the game not only gets stronger as the game goes on but that really does like the last the latter portions of the game really plays into his his skill set right 
Like, yeah. I mean, he's a big bruising brawling back. Um, and it just makes sense that in the second half of the, the game, he's going to wear you down and the defense is just going to get tired from, uh, you know, just, just from, you know, playing the, the entire damn game. And then all of a sudden, you know, Derrick Henry just leans on you a little bit and he's got five yards. Yeah. I don't know if that's the game style of Baltimore, right? Usually it's just, it, it's, it's slice and carve you up with, uh, with Lamar Jackson. And, and now you're, you're starting to see flowers starting to emerge and evolve as is one of the the highly passing um one of the highly passing arsenals in that in that offense there and not to mention you know andrews went down and this guy isaiah likely steps in and and yeah. fills in for him getting you know four or five touchdowns and going on a five-week tear i i I don't know. Like it's a, it, it looks like a really sexy piece for Baltimore. I just don't know if it fits the damn scheme. That's my only concern. Like, are you yeah. going to be able, are you going to be able to give Derrick Henry 20 to 25 touches and still have Lamar Jackson be able to do his magic? Yeah. That's my question. And, and, and that's where, and, and that would be, uh, I mean, that, that would be good for, for um, Lamar Jackson, where uh, take a little bit of that off of him. And, and I think that this is where I agree. Uh, I agree. And I think for a lot of reasons, and, and God, I hate to say this for Philadelphia. I mean, when you add Saquon Barkley, how is this going to help Jalen Hurts? I mean, this is going to help Jalen Hurts a lot, man. Now you got a screen option. I mean, you had I all that. Say, I, 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 yeah. You were being facetious. I, I didn't know if you were being facetious. No, or not. no, no. no. Like, I, I, are you it, kidding? It, like, this is going to open up Jalen Hurts' game, dude. It, it pains me to say that this is going to be so good for Jalen Hurts. You, look, you got to replace the best center that has probably played in the league for the last decade. You got to do that. You got to do some stuff on the offensive line right there. But Wags, I mean, the problem is with Saquon Barkley for the, for the longest time is, I, I mean, he's played on shit teams. It, it's been shit teams. And you ain't lying. Now, you ain't lying. And now he goes, he goes there and this could be another, this could be another, I mean, I'm not going to say that he's going to do what CMC did for San Francisco, but I think the injuries are going to be a hell of a lot less. Um, I think the production is going to be a hell of a lot better. And I think he's going to be an imperative part of the offense too, because he is not the sole offense anymore. And uh, you know, he's, got a, he's got an offense that doesn't need to rely on him to move the ball up and down exactly. the field. Exactly. Like There's you, a you could go off. week by week and scheme. You know, you go AJ Brown this week. You could go Devontae Smith the next week. But of course, uh, Saquon Barkley is going to be a, a pretty good sprinkle into your game plan, right? Um, and not to mention, you have a mobile quarterback that can stay on his feet without being touched, right? It, like seriously, Daniel Jones would fall down with, without even being touched. Like, how in the hell is that supposed to be beneficial for the offense, anyways? Right now, you have Jalen Hurts. That can do an RPO with Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley can take the load off of Jalen Hurts, like you were just talking about, and he can run the daylight. Or, oh my God, everybody keys on Saquon Barkley, and Hurts runs for twenty yards and then runs out of bounds, and the yeah. Eagles stay in, in first, uh, you know, first and whatever, first and ten, and that's first right. and here we go again. Stay ahead of the chain. Yeah, I, I mean that's a, it's a it's a it's a great landing spot for him. But I mean, that's I think tough. you and I agree. Oh, it's a a horrible landing spot for him. Um, hey, Sal, uh, which Rio Grande is is yours, my man? Uh, there's one right right by me in Round Rock, and then Pflugerville right down the road. Uh, man, my, my wife and I are Rio Grande people a lot. Well, yeah. hey, it's I got to tell you, um, it's not happening. Like uh, Dallas isn't going. We're not going to have a repeat champion in the NFC East. No, no. I feel. I feel. I mean, I'm. I know. I'm. I'm already giving proclamation, like maybe it's, it's premature pro pro proclamation, but yeah. After the moves yeah. that I saw the Eagles make yesterday, and which was basically Saquon Barkley, um, I, I I got the Eagles going to uh, at least win the NFC East. Uh, they could be in contention to represent the conference again um, mm -hmm. if it doesn't fall apart like it did at the end of the last season. Uh, it, which is shocking because you thought that maybe Swift would be a little bit better. He had a really good run in Detroit. I don't know why he wasn't utilized. He was really underutilized with Philadelphia. I hope that's not the case um, with the Eagles. Well, actually, I do. I really do hope that that's the case. I hope we don't see a lick of Saquon Barkley as a New York Giants fan. And, uh, and you know, maybe it's it's time to get off board for myself. I'm, I'm, I hate to do this to the Giants faithful in, in Old Blue. But I've been waiting for a while to root for my my home team, my hometown. I've kind of been, you know, I, I, it's kind of like BK. I mean, BK it. kind of likes Kansas City. You Tell know, I mean, he, he grew up in Kansas or whatnot. But he's yeah. a he's a Cowboy fan, right? 
Like, I'm a Giants fan, but I, you guys know the story. I started liking the Giants out of ignorance. I, seriously, like actual, like I thought that they were the Colts growing up. Um, I looked around the house, looked around my grandparents' house, nothing but blue, uh, blue stuff and blue memorabilia. Um, didn't really put the horseshoe together, you know what I mean? But the regional coverage picked up the New York Giants after the Colts left town instead of, um, you know, Philadelphia, so to speak. Uh, we didn't see the green team. We saw the blue team. Um, the red team was on, and then the blue team was on, and then we had Pittsburgh. Uh, so yeah, and everybody knew who the black and gold was. Uh, but anyways, I fell in love with the blue team, and then the blue team had a really awesome coach that wore great sweaters, and that was the tuna. And then I started playing outside linebacker, and my dad's like, watch this guy, watch this guy, watch this guy. Well, this guy was Lawrence Taylor. So that's how I fell in love with the New York Giants, and I watched them every Sunday. And hell, back then, you only had three games. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you had to watch one of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean... Uh, instead of like, liking the Colts, I've liked the Giants. So I think maybe it's time. Like, they don't have my best interest in the rest of their fan base um, at heart. I just don't believe that. So maybe it's time I bail. If they're if you're bailing on me, why should I stay in, stay in the ship and, and you know, scoop the damn water out of the damn boat myself? You know what I mean? I'm not well, going down with the ship if you're not going down with me either, Giants. Come on, if man. You, Damn it. If, you, if you want to be heartbroken all the time, come come join me on the Cowboys bandwagon, and and you can kind of no. I don't think I don't think I will. But I, I got to tell you, you know, we we've been talking here How for the last. You guys couple not make weeks. a move like that's what that's that or or make an agreement or maybe you guys are just doing some deals behind the scenes. Right? That, this is what they do. I mean, this is nothing new. And and I'm looking right now. Jane Slater tweeted out, and and she is like the go to. If I'm looking for cowboy stuff, that's oh, what I know I'm why going. you're going to Jane Slater. It well, ain't I was going to say her and Mike Fisher, but I mean, I go to Jane first. Two sources tell me that the Cowboys kicked around the idea of Zach Moss, but ultimately passed. Moss signed with the Bengals. It was a two year, $8 million deal with Cincinnati. So that gives you an idea of the range that they're entertaining right now. Well, well, now you don't even have Tony Pollard. So I know we talked with Jeff yesterday, and Jeff said, you know, to, to the draft. And, and I'm assuming that's what they're going to do because they built their team through the draft. And they've done a good job, you know, in the last 10 or 12 years of doing that homegrown talent. But I think in the back for you, you, you have to have – you have to have a stalwart. I mean, you have to have some experience. You got to go find somebody. I mean, is it Joe Mixon? I mean, that's, I don't know. That's that's that is a typical Dallas move. Just take take what whatever's left over in the in the running back room, or so it yep. seems that that's been the way that since they've drafted Zeke, they haven't made any moves since Zeke except for hell. When did they take Pollard? Did they take they took Pollard the next year? Yeah, but I think that was like way late in the draft, and I also think. Deuce Vaughn was a fourth or fifth round. Oh yeah, he was. He was Deuce, late Deuce Vaughn was late in the draft. I know that. Ike, the Giants got Singletary. Yeah, man. Um, so here's the thing: like, I Singletary is a fantastic back. Like you saw what he was able to do with Houston. I just don't think that you can put all the load on his shoulders right now. Yeah. Like he's not that type of back in Houston. It worked because you also had an aerial assault, right? You 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 don't have that in New York. You just don't. And like, you want to sit there and say that. Uh, you're going to force Daniel Jones to beat you, right? Like, that's going to happen. But Daniel Jones is going to beat himself. So, basically, all you got to do is just hone in on on or key in on Singletary here. Make sure you stop him for under 100 yards. Make sure he doesn't eclipse the century mark. Usually, Giants running backs only stick around 60 to 70 yards. Sal and I will tell you that because we gotta, we're got we forced to watch him uh, every damn week. It, it's, it's tough. It's been really tough out of the running back room and you know what it, it sucks because you invested money into the wrong if you're the giants organization you invested money into the wrong piece you really did um well, you should have built that line up and you should have kept saquon barkley 100 and, <clears throat> 160 million to well, daniel but, jones was but, was but i will was, tell you it put you back 10 years right part, part of the problem part of the problem with the cowboys is this what if what where are you with the dak prescott thing are you going to extend him are you going to play this thing out you I think that's your guy. Oh, oh, well, definitely that. But I mean, are you going to extend? Because there's money there. I mean, it's sixty million, kind of hanging in the. Oh, I got you. That, that, that can go, that, that can go other places. I got you. Yeah, I know that kind of takes some of that out of there. And and C D Lamb, you know, same thing. And, and I think that's where they're, they're kind of procrastinating here, doing anything with. He's that. got one more year, right? C D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and you'd like to think that if you get a deal done this year. I don't know because he's coming off. Of, he was he's number one wide receiver, year. Rodney. Yeah, so so this would be the time to do it. You, you got to figure out what you're doing with Dak. I, I mean, I I just I don't know that. But I got to tell you about the Giants. I, I mean, look, my team didn't do shit. They're sitting on their hands. 
hey man, at least the Giants went out and did something with defense. You got Brian Burns. Oh so, my God! See, I'm. So I was so, I was cool. So, I was good about that. I was good about the Burns move until Mina Kimes comes on there and tells you why she loves Brian Burns. And now I'm just like, all right, why well, now? I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I I don't I don't know how this is going to, and and we've still got a lot. There's still a lot of good. I'd say prospects. I mean, there's still a lot of prospects out there, but you know, a lot of times when teams make these splash moves in free agency, they don't work out. But I mean, yesterday was pretty solid. I mean, all yeah. of those moves and you know what, where, where we talked about the devaluation of the running back, isn't this like, isn't this like corporate America? I mean, you saw yesterday they went out and they swooped the cheap labor other than Saquon it Barkley. It is weird, man. It, it's wild that you, you saw that. It, 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 the parallel, it's funny you mentioned that parallel because that's kind of exactly what I thought. I was like, well, economics, that's that's exactly what I said. As soon as I saw the moves going down, I was like, well, this makes sense. Um, hey, you know what? <clears throat> we talked about it with Jeff it's when Jeff came on. And Jeff's just like, hey, you know, you know, we're seeing speculations now that Kirk Cousins could be going to Atlanta, right? And sure enough, within, you know, three or four hours, that was in, or that was an agreed upon like on uh, the first deal. one. Yeah. Um, so this leaves a lot of options for the Bears and a lot of options for Atlanta, right? If you're Atlanta, you're probably not moving up in the draft anymore. You got your quarterback, or you, I mean, hell, uh, you locked him in for a hundred and what eighty million? One a hundred and eighty? I think that's what it's four years, one eighty. Um, <laughs> instead of instead of two hundred, like somebody was taking a guess on the show. So hey, props to you guys out there, man. If you guys, you know, need to. Get in on some action. Make sure you guys are putting some uh some damn prop bets on you know how many people are gonna sign or which quarterbacks gonna sign contracts for or whatnot. Get some finance propositions going on. But anyways, so Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta here. Uh if you're Atlanta, you still hold the eighth overall, right? Maybe one more wide receiver, which we've been the way that we've been doing our mock up, Romeo Adonze. Mm-hmm. is there what well, should yeah. be available you add him to that arsenal with london Pitts, and bajan robinson coming out of that backfield and you got kirk cousins to throw to him well yeah yeah, yeah. i mean absolutely yeah. i mean that, that that's a great landing spot right there i mean we, we we talked about it it's um i mean whoever whoever was going to get that spot whoever was going to get the quarterback the atlanta falcons is going to be in a really good spot whether it was him whether it was justin fields whether it was any of these guys and, and kirk cousins wags kirk cousins has signed i think almost 400 million dollars worth of nfl contracts so much of that guaranteed and he has a playoff win isn't that outrageous um so that's that's the market it's the market, man. And that's where that's kind of with the DAC thing, you know, where, where that's going to go. But I mean, gr- great addition for Minnesota. Baker just signed Baker just signed three years for a hundred million. Yeah. With, with, or I think, I think year two, he's got like a, a I forget yeah. the clause, but he's got like a 20 million bonus or whatnot that he can hit. But Baker just signed three years for a hundred million. Yeah. Did we really think we'd see Baker Mayfield be making a, a million, a hundred million dollars? Yeah. And it's, the seven NFC and nine. North, seven the, seven NFC and North, nine. the NFC North is all it, it, now Minnesota. They go out and they get Bradford, but but they got. I was talking yesterday about Aaron Jones. I'm like Dallas, make a run at Aaron Jones. Well, fuck no, Minnesota got him. <laughs> so it's like, well, shit. Uh, you know, it's um, it's uh, and what's so cool about this is the that Falcons, the Falcons will work on their offensive line. The Falcons they will do that in the draft. Of pieces yeah. in free agency, and they might yeah. even get a piece in the draft for for a little bit later. But yeah, there's some. Uh, there's some really good pieces. Minnesota! Yeah, Joe! Um, yeah, I, I think, Daryl, you, you hit the nail on the head, but it's Minnesota's, or Minnesota. Atlanta's going to be okay, I promise. Well, got me, got me on Minnesota now, my guy. Yeah, and and it, um, you know, Green Bay making moves. Everybody made moves. Everybody. I think made Aaron moves. Jones just got shirted up going to Minnesota. the Vikings, correct? The Vikings. Yeah. 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 Because they released him. Uh, they released him because they Josh brought in Jacob to the Packers. Uh, Josh Jacob. Go. Jake. Pack go. 
Josh Jacobs. And it's like, man, you, um, I mean, that, that's, a I honestly, good- I really did have Josh Jacobs penciled into the Cowboys. I thought that was a really good move for the Cowboys, but they just didn't pull the trigger on that. I, I had that one locked and loaded. I, I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to the bank on this one. It's going to be Josh Jacobs. He's going to fit in there. You're going to get him a little bit cheaper, but nope. And he's, and he goes to the NFC anyway. It's um, it's just a revolving door right now of, of folks just, you know, continually moving. And I think the whole thing is right now, I think we're all refreshing X all the time just to see who's going to be next. Because now with Mixon, I mean, you know, Mixon is a very viable running back as well. I think somebody somebody's going to I, get think, I think Mixon works well in that Dallas Cowboys offense. I think I he think does, so uh, especially think so if you get, you get you get him coupled up with with the. I can't say a speed demon. There's not really too many speed demons out there in uh, in the NFL um, for running backs right now. But hell, you, you get them short up with another running back. Um, yeah, they could be a dominant one two or a decent one two punch. I'd say um, the news last night dropped that Sam Darnold was heading to Minnesota as well. We talked a little bit about you know them shoring up their backfield with Aaron Jones, but Sam Darnold, uh, you saw what he was able to come in and spell and do in spell of. Uh, Brock Purdy, but that was also in a very optimal setting and piece for uh, for Sam Darnold at San Francisco. San Francisco, you could say, is one of the best well-oiled machines. Yeah. And um, my grandma could could have gone in and, and led the the damn 49ers down the field. Um, so, I mean, I'm not trying to take a, a backhanded slap at Sam Darnold. You know, I'm glad that he was able to find a job uh, and find a spot there with Minnesota. Same draft class as Baker Mayfield there. Uh, I just... I don't know if Sam Darnold's going to be the guy. He's got some weapons. I'd like to see what he could do. I mean, again, I'm sure there'll be an open an open quarterback contest there in Minnesota there, uh, especially if they're bringing in Dan- Sam Darnold. But when I saw the move, I was just like, all right, it probably fits for like a backup move, and Minnesota's still looking for their quarterback. They'll probably draft a quarterback here and then have mm-hmm. Sam Darnold try and you know yeah. lead the guy to a little bit of a – God, can you, can you say he's got some veteran status? I mean, he has been in the – the league four years he's been long time around started in started in new york and then you know the carolina and now san francisco so he's been all over man been all over i guess that 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 accounts for something right rodney yeah and like we always talk about i mean you never know with you never know with these guys i mean look at mayfield i mean look, look at all of these guys um look at the dude in seattle you, you never know where where you make a change and it's just a better fit it's a fresh start and 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 you're good by the way did you see the giants so here's where it's really interesting for your Giants. I mean, the, the backup quarterback has now left. That was the that was the only thing that was holding us together was T Mobile. Yeah. He's gone. Um you know so, where he's at, right? Mm-hmm. The locker room, just the locker room ever in New York. Yep. 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 New York nope. Jets. Once and, you're a and, Jet, you always be a Jet. And then and then what do you I mean, the Patriots. I mean, they sign they're gonna sign Jacoby Brissett. That's not gonna be your starter. That, no, that but I mean that's the guy that's that's a guy that can mentor. piece together, mentor. piece together something until you. I mean, hell, the, yeah. the Patriots ain't exactly in win now mode. Would that's you right. say? That's no. right. So it's pretty clear what they're going to be doing right there, because that that's your bridge, and that's kind of kind of keep you afloat. Uh, breaking news uh, at ten oh seven, Michael Gelkin uh, from from the NFL, uh, I think NFL Network. Uh, the Cowboys have entered the chat and made their first free agent related move, reaching a one year contract with long snapper Trent Sieg. Key piece, cornerstone guys, special teams, got to get it together. Because because when you can't move the ball, you're going to be punting a lot, and you gonna better be make it. Going to be snapping it. Can you snap it through a tire? Yeah. You, no. You, you, no. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Um, uh, <laughs> Brian Anger and Brandon Aubrey, uh, they will remain intact. So that's that's their move. So the Cowboys are in business. I'm sure that there's other stuff being agreed upon, or the or the Cowboys front office is. Made doing something besides sitting there picking her nose, man. My goodness, I, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're. I scheduling. think it wasn't a smart move for the Pats, Rob. I agree with you there. Uh, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're hard at work trying to schedule the next big tour that they want to bring into AT and T Center. Um, Plan the parade and tell Aaron Hogan he's never going to be walking to Dallas, man. Because yeah, yeah, Aaron Hogan will never walk to Aaron, Dallas. You, it, it, uh, he doesn't. You, need you are safe, Dallas. my guy. You are yeah. safe. That trip will never happen, dude. Yeah, that, and that I, I said that I would follow in suit, and I, I said that. 
with a lot of uh, confidence in mind because it ain't happening under Jerry Jones, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How about the commanders, though? The commanders being able to make some moves yesterday. I mean, probably the most moves of everybody in the NFL, right? I think I counted eight eight moves for the commanders yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Bringing in one Austin. Does Austin Eckler fit that, fit that, that club pretty well for you? Uh, I think he does because it, everything's brand new. I mean, new owner, new GM, new coach, new, new everything. So, so I, I think that, and I think probably what they're doing, I, I like what the, and again, this pains me to say this too. I like what the commanders did because what they're doing, they're trying to bring an influx of free agents in, get those guys in, you know, on the cheap, as we like to say, and what they're going to do, they're going to build new pieces and put them around them. Are they going to win the division this year? Well, I wouldn't think so. But there's never a repeat winner in this division. Well, you are an optimist, aren't you? No, the winner is going to be if there's not a, a repeat winner, it's going to be Philadelphia. It, it's go, it's going it, to be it, Philadelphia. It's going to be Philadelphia. Giants then, at the bottom, Commanders at third, Dallas yeah. at second, and Philadelphia yeah. at tops. And then and then Rob mentions right here. I mean, they signed uh, Marcus Mariotto. I mean, that that's a dude where you can. And again, that that's pretty clear right there. This goes back to the whole bridge thing, to where you you can bring that dude in. Uh, if he chooses to want to be a mentor. Yeah, but I don't understand it either because you got Sam Howe, right? Are you, are you looking Sam to move Howell. Sam Howe? Yeah. That, are you looking I, to move Sam Howe and then draft the quarterback? I'm uh, serious. Yeah. Or are you going to have three yeah, quarterbacks would, in your room? I wouldn't move Sam Howe. I wouldn't move Sam Howe. Me, me neither. Like, that's the thing. Like, you you got you got a quarterback that you know that can throw for some of the top, uh, top yardage in the NFL. He was competing for top yards. You just got to get the guy to control his – his slinging abilities and his accuracy because I mean, hell he was leading the league in, in interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, but this is where, you know, the whole part of that, like, like we talk about with a lot of these guys, it's like, I mean, you, you got to protect the guy. I mean, it's a lot of times with interceptions and so forth. I mean, you're having to rush passes and you're, you've got people up your ass and in your face all the time. I mean, that's going to happen, but yeah, the commander's very active, man. They, they were, I, I tell you it, uh, it was very impressive. It's legit. Did this just go down? I got to pull this up. I'm, I'm looking for it right now. I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, the Cowboys are Cowboys are catching a lot of uh, shit right there with their great pick of uh, or their great. I'm uh, not deal. seeing anything <laughs> yet on it. Um, but if that happens, then they're missing. Yeah, they are missing out on the parade, man. Um, if that if that is the case, you could you can argue that they're probably going to get busy in the draft. Um, Mixon was the last. Mixon's probably the last piece. Yeah. that I would say is highly coveted out of the running back class or running back room for this free agent class. Um, again, I, I just feel like you know what you're getting uh, with Mixon. But, of course, you, you know, he's got some got some miles on his wheels. So it uh, could break down for you if you if you run it a little bit too hard. That's the thing. Um, yeah. You better move quickly, though, Dallas. My goodness. You better yeah. move quickly. Yeah, I mean, you you absolutely better. I mean, but no, I'm, I'm I'm with Rob. Like, I I don't understand this either. You know, you get rid of Hal. Uh, you know how what what can you? What's the most you can get for Hal? What's your return? A third, maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. a third. You get or or a packaged fourth, sixth. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. You you probably your your investments to keep Hal use that as the bridge uh, until you find you know the quarterback, the franchise quarterback. Uh, you know. Well, I, they got a brand new GM, Rodney. So we'll see. Yep. Apparently, this guy knows a lot more than I do. I mean, making the Warriors as successful as they were. So we'll, well see, man. We're it, all guessing at this point, guys. Remember, the experts are are making us look like fools. Well, and so so here's what you have left when you start looking at at, at veteran quarterbacks that are free agents. That now that with Mariota gone, and this is from the Athletic, they had this whole board of 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 these free agent quarterbacks. You got Ryan Tannehill. Which that again? That's a bridge. I mean, I think all of these all of these guys are bridge. He's a better bridge. Uh, I, Mason, would say, I would take Ryan Tannehill in New York. I would take Ryan Tannehill I, over. I think Ryan Jones. Tannehill would be great in New York, dude. Bring him in. Let him be the backup and take the job. You, but that's the problem. You can't do it. You can't. Yeah. Do, you can't take a quarterback because you're on a purse for 160 million. Yeah. Uh, Mason Rudolph. You got to eat it. You got to ride this out. It sucks. Yeah. You just got to eat this. Mason Rudolph is out there, Joe Flacco, Jameis Winston, Drew Locke, and Tyler Hunley. I've so seen that, Jameis that, Winston coming to New York. To New York. Like, I mean, at least a little bit of energy. I mean, he could... He he could kind of he could kind of have some of that so, some of that status, some of that... Uh, a little bit of the style of the guy you just lost if you bring in Jameis Winston. 
So um, Jameis Winston's got two left feet. He don't really run that well, but he's got a huge arm. He's got huge a huge arm, man. Uh, the thing that made Team Noble so nasty was he was able to elude defenders and and extend the play and then throw like little. I mean, he was he was the king of the dump pass, man. I always thought that he could throw a even when he was over there at the Chargers, man. He was making that dump pass look fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that that I thought that that was his tee. Like he used the way that Donovan McNabb used to use his his uh, running backs. He used to use Westbrook or whatever. That's what Team Noble did so well. He used that short to mid game very well. I mean, yeah, he could throw a deep. Uh, but usually the Giants weren't getting that vertical, so the mid game worked well for T-Mobile. James Winston, he can he can hoof it, man. He can hoof it the the length of the field. I just don't. You bring in James Winston, you're essentially bringing in Daniel Jones. Only Daniel Jones is a little bit more faster. Um, yeah, I don't I I don't know. That's probably a bad comp too because they're both just not good quarterbacks. Yeah. They're, they're just not. They make bad decisions. I've, I haven't seen the maturation process from Jameis Winston down there in the Big Easy, but I don't know. He's been sitting behind Derek Carr. Maybe he learned a little bit of stuff. So, anyways, yeah. what we what else we got going on? Well, looking here, Rappaport's uh, look Twitter account. Okay, NFL and Ian Rappaport's Twitter account is what uh, Daryl G is saying. So uh, I'll pull this up here in just a second. Uh, but while we do this, let's talk about all these. News, notes, and nuggets that you could be getting if you had audiovisual consultations. You could have the setup of your dreams, whether it be two TVs or four TVs. You wouldn't miss a beat of NFL magic and NBA magic, NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. That's getting ready to happen. That's getting ready to roll out. You got March Madness right around the way. Uh, you also got F1. F1's cooking up here, man. So start your engines, get ready for all that. Uh, NASCAR just fired up as well. So it's all busy. It's all deadly, and you got to get it done with audiovisual consultations. 512-255-8678. That's adconsultations.com. And by the way, guys, that's just talking about the visual side of the house. You don't even know about the audio side. Audio is where it's at, man. Hit Tom up. Ask him about that Sonos surround sound system. If you want four different zones, meaning that you could have four different uh, parts of music or, or places that you can hear different parts of sound in your house, or you could sync them up and put them all on one. You could hear Bing Crosby in, in a, at a damn uh, Christmas party or whatnot. Or, you know, if you have the, the Christmas music downstairs and you got the kids upstairs, you can switch it up and get it all crazy that way. Have it outside on your patio for your dude's den or your princess palace. It's all deadly, like I said. 512-255-8678. That's adconsultations.com. Wags, it is official. It is Mixon to the Texans. I just, yeah, I saw yeah. it pop up and scroll yeah. up. Yeah, that is a done deal right there. So hey, that that that's a good get for them. I mean, you may What's, not. So our, now we got to break down the the running backs that are still available for uh, free agency here because so, there's not not much. So it, it looks like this is so they've traded Mixon. It's not. It's At, a trade. no. He was released. Hold on. But, hold on. He was released though. It says, well, remember, nothing's official until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So so now it's uh, – this is Ian Rappaport. The Bengals are now trading Joe Mixon to the Texans rather than releasing him. So Zach Moss signs in Cincy. Mixon is traded to Houston. Um, so he goes from Joe Burrow to C.J. Stroud is the change right there. So pretty damn good right there for that dude. He's um, he's in a good spot. Hey, right quick, guys. Oh, yeah, uh, Henry, Henry and Jones. Henry and Jones are the top two. Henry mm -hmm. and Jones. Yep. Absolutely. I uh, want to tell you guys, if you want to get rewarded for listening to Texas Sports Unfiltered, which you all do, and thank you all for doing that, whether you're on YouTube or the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app, our friends at Autograph, which is co-founded by well, a dude named Tom Brady, you may have heard of him a time or two, are redefining the fan experience by letting users earn points for the acts of fandom they take every day, like listening to us. That counts. Uh, the Autograph app gives you access to your favorite Longhorn content in one place and Offers rewards like tickets, exclusive merch, and more. You're already listening to TSU. Now you can earn points and get rewarded for it. Head over to the App Store there, whether it's um, the, the Apple Store or Google Play, whatever, and search for Autograph and download it uh, free today using the referral code TSU. Referral code TSU. A link to the app can also be found in our YouTube description down below us as well. So check it out. Autograph. Get rewarded for your fandom and listening to us at Texas Sports Unfiltered. Good stuff right there. Glad to have them aboard. Yeah, man. So there's just um, it's just a lot of moves, man. And uh, I don't think today, well, I, th I think we're I, th I think we're running out of free agents. I don't think today we get what we got yesterday, but it was no, like, no, no, no. And then all the finalization yesterday. and stuff will happen on Wednesday or tomorrow, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. When, when they start signing these, uh, these things up, man, but it was just, it was just an onslaught. It was just an onslaught of stuff that was happening. And it's it, 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 like, now it should be easy to piece where Derrick Henry's going. Right. I mean, hell Baltimore is the only one that kind of makes sense. looks like the offer on the table is $6.5 million. So, you know, for the folks that want the Cowboys and, to be, or, or, Hey, or is Dallas doing something? Is Dallas calling the, could Derrick Henry said that he wanted to go to Dallas. Well, you know, I, I really think I really think that the Cowboys still have a lot of buyer's remorse and fear from when they restructured Zeke. Uh, you know, because they took that one in the shorts. Uh, you know, it was it was can a we, bad can we have a real conversation. Hold on, hold on. Z Cowboys fans, I, I I know you love Zeke. I know there's a always going to be a, a place in your heart for Zeke, right? But you cannot sit here and tell me with a straight face that Zeke Elliott is the same type of running back that Derrick Henry is. You just well, can't, Rodney. You can't. Well, I'm, I'm not buying that. They were when the deal was made. But again, this is Jerry. This is Jerry and Stephen and, and and these guys. They love these guys. They get emotionally attached to them. He had had he had led the league in rushing, and and you know he had like those first three really good years. So they're all in the heart. I'll entertain. There. I'll entertain the the comp to Saquon Barkley, but I will not entertain Saquon Barkley and. Ezekiel Elliott at on the same tier as King Henry. I won't do it. I've, I, I've, I, been, I looking, totally agree. I've been looking at stats for the past five years. I can't do it. Stats and I think don't lie. Here, here, here's the, there's a lot of reasons to sign Derrick Henry, but I think one of them, you, you're, you're going to have one, two, three, at least three holes in the offensive line that you need to fix. Derrick Henry helps you. I mean, obviously you have to fix those, but Derrick Henry helps you because if you have, if you have an offensive line that is, not running at 100%. That's a dude that can work with an offensive line not running at 100%. $6.5 million. I think the Cowboys can go in there and, and, and I know they can go in there and make this deal happen. Then what, how, how does Baltimore push back? Is this the, does, does Baltimore feel like this is the piece that's going to be able to get them to beat Kansas City? I don't think so because, like we talked about, they had a pretty fucking good rushing game no, yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah. It's so I don't I know. Like Pacheco. I do like, I think Pacheco I, fits that Kansas city offense. What about this? So Rob's up here talking about Dallas, but what if we got, we got to talk about Rob's team. Okay. So yep. he wouldn't mind bringing Zeke back. All right. I, like Zeke I is a totally good, agree. a good teammate. What if Zeke is brought back by Jerry Jones, right? What if Jerry Jones does bring Zeke back and then all of a sudden something doesn't work out for Baltimore with Derrick Henry 6.5 just isn't enough for him, but one, Jared Mayo realizes that he doesn't have a quarterback in his room and he could use a really good running back that knows that you could put all yep. the weight on him and he's not going to break down, put him in a you know bit of a, a, a tumultuous weather or, or you could say in, you know inclement weather or whatnot and just have him uh, pretty much be the bell cow and lead the new age Patriots to the next bridge or past the next bridge, right? What if Derrick Henry ends up in New England? Is that a spot that you could see him there? Uh, you know, I, I think right now it's all about money or if he seriously wants it, it's the mindset of him is one. If he wants money, sure. Go to new England. If he wants to win a championship, I'm going to Baltimore. If that, if those, if that scenario, even if you throw Dallas in there, I'm going to Baltimore. If I want to win a championship, if that's really what he wants to do, because I, I think that's the best spot that he's going to be able to, to win it oh, or wait. win a championship. Never you know? mind. I didn't see that. I didn't even see this. They just signed Gibson. Gotcha. That probably yeah. takes that off the table. Gibson's kind of the same style. And, oh, that's New England. Okay. And, okay. Uh, running back. That hey, man. I, not to mention, if New England's already signed a piece, uh, but I, you you see New England go with with three running backs at a time before. Mm -hmm. I just don't. You know, with Derrick Henry in your backfield, you probably only need two running backs. So mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. thing. Hey, man, I, I'm totally fine with Zeke. I think I mentioned that a while back. Yeah, bring Zeke back, and then because you know, look, last year he and again, and Saquon Barkley. Yeah. I mean, Zeke was last year. Zeke was, I don't know, 12, 15 carries at most is what you were going to get out of him. He looked like he had legs. I mean, he looked like he had his legs back. And, and, and I know firsthand, firsthand, Ty, Tyler Campbell told me this two years ago, we were in the studio at the horn and he had just done a deal or, you know, a deal with Earl, with Zeke and he, and he came to me and, you know, he's a cowboy fan and he's like, man, Zeke is beat up. 
Zeke needs Zeke needs some recoup time. And I think he's finally gotten that. And I I think he's healed up and and yeah, hell yeah, bring him back. Then maybe you go to the draft and you draft somebody, um, your your next running back, what you hope is going to be your premier running back. You've got Rico Dowdle that's still in there, I, I think. I think he's still around. You sprinkle in some Deuce Vaughn for, for some stuff there. And yeah, maybe that works. But um, man, I have no problem bringing Zeke back. I mean, the fan base would love it. I mean, the, the way that the Cowboys like to entertain and, and do things and to get the fan base riled up, hell, they'd love that. I mean, if you bring that dude back. Is Brian Burns worth $150 million? That's a lot of money, dude. <laughs> 87, 87 and a half guaranteed. Almost like Daniel Jones's contract. I mean, almost structured exactly like Daniel Jones's contract. Um, also, you you gave away. It was a trade, right? You, it, this wasn't just a, a free agent acquisition. This was a right. trade. You gave a you gave up your 2024 second round pick and your uh, 2025 fourth round or fifth round pick. Sorry, mm -hmm. no, I'm I'm wrong. Yeah, fifth round pick. Sorry, I <laughs> should put these bad boys on. Um, anyways, you gave up two picks, um, a little bit of your future, and you're taking on a tag of 150 million. Yeah, I, I yeah, like, I can't, I can't, I can't get on this, man. I can't get on this. Like Burns, so you, now you're gonna have Burns and, um, oh my God, the name's eluding me. Oh my God, some Giants fan I am. Anyways, the defense doesn't really get that much better. I, I can't really sit there and say uh the giants making debacles of moves they're maybe not making the right moves uh you're making moves but not the right moves and you're making moves that are going to set you back another five years so yeah uh, it just it feels like it just gets worse as a giants fan and sorry sal maybe it is time to bail i don't know well and i'll tell you rr -R. zidic loves rr -R. i love that i do love that turd zeke i'll tell you man um <laughs> Now more. Zinnick, we're bringing we're we're bringing Rodney up with us when we go to uh, that Virginia place that we go to. When Absolutely. we get on the river there, we're gonna have Rodney just sitting there drinking Natty Light. There, there you go. There you go. Hey, uh, here we go. The Falcons are now signing from the Bears wide receiver Darnell Moody. So Kirk Cousins now has yet another weapon. Okay, so Mooney's gone. All right, Mooney's gone yeah. now. Wide receiver number two is no longer there for the Chicago Bears. You really think Chicago Bears are are going to give away Justin Fields for maybe a second at best, and not take Marvin Harris? Or excuse me, they're going to give up the they're going to give up the number one, or excuse, they're just going to take Caleb Williams, trade away uh, Fields, and put essentially him in a, put him in a take losing situation, a tackle and a wide receiver. It just doesn't make sense. So here's what I believe happens now: the new scenario with the Falcons, or excuse me, not the Falcons, but the Bears. And everybody can say, uh, "Yes, I was wrong. I I was wrong about the Falcons moving up and going to get you know the the first overall." All right, I'll eat that crow. Okay, Bears hold on the fields. They take if they don't have any suitors for you know for the first spot, and I would think maybe they would like to take uh marvin harrison jr if Marv, if if they could find you know yeah atlanta wanting to jump up and or not atlanta but uh arizona wanting to jump up a couple of spots two spots essentially or three spots essentially to take uh caleb williams um you know maybe they'd still have a chance to get marvin harrison jr i think you know you don't even flirt with it you don't even take a chance of disaster there you keep your number one overall if you want you know the guy that you want you know the prospect you want you take marvin harrison jr you know that he can play in cold weather you just come from ohio state then also you can get a tackle you can get a tackle mm -hmm. at nine that's still available there right you arguably get the number one wide receiver in the you arguably get the number one player in the draft i mean sure Caleb Williams is is the dude, right? He's the closest thing that we've seen since uh, Pat Mahomes to quote, you know, Jordan Scruggs there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, I, I think you're not going to, you don't have to convince me too hard if you wanted to make an argument that Marvin Harrison Jr. was the best player in this NFL draft. I mean, I, I, I put a lot of stock in Marvin Harrison Jr. If you're the Chicago Bears, you go out and get him. Now you yeah. have a DJ Moore, a Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, you got a, a backfield that's, pretty formidable you got a decent one-two punch right and then you also have a, a playmaker in, with your quarterback that can potentially push for the division right now to i don't know i think they could beat detroit i think they could go up with with that type of offense um detroit's deep excuse me detroit's defense is 
can get gassed. Like they well, can, they really are vulnerable, man. I think Chicago can make a play and make a move at this thing. Yeah, this is where everything you know drastically changes. Yeah, you know because Justin Fields, it's kind of the one. The conversations that I've been hearing all morning is okay. What's the best fit for Justin Fields? Where should he be? I mean, who, who, where should he go? I mean, whatever the Raiders. I mean, Denver. It's like all these different. No, I think the best fit for him is where he is. Um, and yeah. and you know, is that going to happen? And and now with this. I mean, because it is. I mean, if if you're going to go out and draft Caleb Williams and do something with Justin Fields, and and you're getting rid of receiver one, I mean, it's, receiver two, receiver, uh, receiver DJ Moore, two, I'm sorry. DJ Moore is receiver DJ one. Moore. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. I mean, I, I like what Zidic says here. I mean, how about that? I mean, I, I know that uh, we talked about Sam Howell, but but what if what if the Redskins jump into this thing and and go get him? That would probably and, be a trade, right? They probably, maybe they trade. Maybe they trade Hal. They trade Hal and Fields. I mean, I, that's the only scenario I could think that it's a trade between Hal and Fields and some other pieces on the side there. Um, you, you're not going to believe the, what I'm about to tell you. One of the scenarios that I saw early this morning on the TV that was thrown out with all I'll believe free, anything at this point. Free agency when it when it I'm came serious, to I, like I believe anything at this point when it came to Justin Fields. Justin Fields goes to Philadelphia to back up Jalen Hurts. That I don't believe. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, are you kidding me? I'm like, That no. I don't believe. Uh, what are some of your all's transactions that you would like to see? Make sure you're hitting us up here on the Coda text line, 512-222-9328, or up here on the uh, subs- uh, the YouTube button. What are you, you waving to? You waving to me? Oh, Give no, me one, all- one, one of the kiddos came, came <laughs> walked by, and so I was like, eh, how you doing? Um, Give me all three. I had Tom one uh, on, on Sunday, and then uh, the kid, Camilla McKay, Yes, yeah. blessed us with her presence, man. I was just like, oh, they're you know, out of nowhere, man. Yeah. Um, sometimes my kid will just walk in here and just, you know, bless us with with his presence. Especially in actually, he won't be doing it in spring break. He'll be sleeping. Yeah. Hey, uh, from uh, from the code yeah, text line, and again, and again, you guys be sure and drop your handle if you had a handle at the horn, uh, and if you didn't have a handle at the horn, make yourself one up. But uh, uh, a five one two number that ends in three three four seven, call you know, call the the trade for Mixon to the Texans, and then says fuck Zeke. <laughs> Damn. So, what is Damn. Simpson going on around here with the. All right, so some landing spots I can see. I can see Derrick Henry in a Cowboys uniform. Um, I think that works a lot better than Derrick Henry in a Ravens uniform. Um, I just hey, don't. I just don't think the running style and playing style for Derrick Henry is going to mesh that well with what the offense with the Ravens likes to do. Um, yeah. I, I can't. It, it, more of a pro style. Runner running back is is what Derrick Henry is, man. That's not to say that he can't be a, a dominant factor and can't do the Ravens magic in you know in their backfield or whatnot. You're just not going to see the type of numbers that you see from Derrick Henry. And maybe I'm approaching this from a you know a statistical point of view, which doesn't make a damn bit of difference as long as Baltimore is just trying to bring home a chip. Yeah. Um, and maybe and if you're Baltimore, if you're Baltimore's front office, maybe that's what you're thinking. Maybe you need a little bit more consistency in the backfield for Lamar Jackson to be able to lean on instead of having to put the, you know, all the game on his shoulders, all the weight on his shoulders. Maybe that's the kind of approach that you're taking now. So if that's the deal, 6.5 million is a pretty decent steal for, for Derrick Henry. Yeah. I mean, I, hell, you know, for everybody, you know, you mentioned Zidick and Zidick got this on the back of my mind since he's, you know, he's in the, the chat or whatnot. Everybody was, was all crazy about Russell Wilson going to Pittsburgh there. But if you're Pittsburgh and, you, you know, you get a, a chance to take Russell Wilson for one point two million. Like, how do you how do you not pass that up? Yeah. Or, or excuse me, how, like how do you pass that oh, up? Right? Like that's yeah. that's the deal in itself. You got Denver paying a thirty seven million dollar purse. Are you yeah. serious? You're gonna yeah. let you're gonna let me get a get a little bit of a glimpse of, on what could happen? A hypothetical bridge with Russell Wilson to kind of see if you know maybe he can teach Kenny Pickett some some shit. Yeah, and maybe yeah. they take in the option for that. You absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a no-brainer. You got to take Russell Wilson there for one point two. That's the best deal of all the ones. I yeah, mean, yeah. You, you're talking about Kirk that's Cousins. The most franchise friendly deal. But that's the yeah. grade A. You want to talk like, about a, a free agent that, move? Grade that's, A. That's uh, what do they say? Having your cake and eating it too. I mean, that's what Pittsburgh's doing with this right here. And who oh, the fuck that's, that was a trade. Essentially, that's a trade, right? 
I, I guess, yeah, you could say because yeah, Denver's still on the hook for all that. So um, I guess you could, and, and Pittsburgh doesn't give up, give up anything except one point two million dollars. So they win that. They win that. And, and speaking of win, when you want to win, covert bee caves, guys. Uh, the only place to go your uh, cars, trucks, SUVs, new and pre-owned, nestled on forty-two acres out in beautiful yes. bee caves. Beautiful spot out there. Go check it out. Three state-of-the-art dealerships, seven different brands, Buicks, GMCs, Cadillacs, Chryslers, Dodge, Jeeps, and Rams, and, of course, the Fords and the Chevrolets. You've got them over in Hutto. The Fords and the Lincolns on 183 in Austin. Um, every Everything that you need right there. Um, 86 service bays are going to get you in and out of there. You don't spend the day at the dealership. Let them handle that routine maintenance. Take care of all of that stuff for you. When that little light comes on or you look up at your tag and it's time to get the maintenance done, Go to Covert BK. They will take care of that for you. CovertBK.com, all of your weekly specials. Weekly specials, guys. Doesn't have to be a holiday period. Doesn't have to be a massive thing. It's like there's always something cool that Dan and the folks are doing there every week. Also, check them out on Facebook because, Dan, th there's a lot of good deals on their Facebook page that you see uh, that they post there all the time. CovertBK.com. Since 1909, the Covert family serving dozens and dozens and millions and hundreds of Central Texans and beyond. It is a Covert family. Nobody beats a Covert deal. Not now. And sure as hell, not ever. And we will have Hayden back on tomorrow, for those of you wondering. How about the big fish, huh? The big fish landing um, in Cincinnati there, getting to be a, a nice little target for Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. Find himself when I say the big fish, I'm also uh, I'm clearly I'm talking about Mr. Gesicki here. Um, yeah. yeah, look, this dude, six, what is he, six, eight, mm -hmm. six, eight, uh, one hell of a uh, red zone target here for for bro here, picking up the big fish out of Miami. Um, I'm a fan of this guy, doesn't really do much damage outside of the red zone, but he's a really good target there. Get you in terms of fantasy, get you maybe what he's at. His average is down, but usually, you know, the past couple of seasons or not, except for last season, he would hit me around probably 11 to 13 points, but big fan of Gasicki. I think that's going to work out well for him in, in Cincinnati, even though uh, T Higgins wants out. So that's, that's what I'm curious to see what happens with that. Um, I, I'm wondering, well, I, I mean, clearly T Higgins, I, I don't think it's a matter of him being upset with the locker room. I think it's a matter of the front office, right? The like value. he's seeing, yeah. he's His seeing Michael value. Pittman. He's yeah. seeing Michael Pittman getting all this money. He's just like, are you, are you effing serious, bro? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, are you and I wonder, uh, and I wonder if it's not a move by, by the front brass there with Cincinnati to where you, you put the franchise tag on him to keep him there, uh, to not allow him to be in, in all of this shit that we've been watching here for the last couple of days. And then maybe you go back and work out a contract with him to keep him there. Um, but it's definitely something you have to know when he sees that Pittman deal, he's like, wait a minute here, I'm getting paid. What? And this dude's getting paid what? I mean, so that's going to be an interesting move right there. And and I don't know what kind of move the the Bengals make with that. I mean, that I mean, how many teams could use that guy? Uh, you know, over on the outside, man. Um, is he the I, three, I'm, is I'm he the three in Cincinnati. I think T's the two, right? Yeah, I'm pretty he would sure be the number two. two. Like yeah, Boyd, he, Boyd's Boyd's good, but I think yeah. I would sit there and say that T's probably still the two, Rob. Um, yeah. I th I think T could be pretty damn good as a one somewhere, uh, given yeah, given the right scenario, given the right. Uh, clearly, that's I mean that's a terrible take. I mean, of course, it always comes down to the right quarterback. But hell, you put T Higgins in Dallas, shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's 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 a that's a crazy combo. T Higgins and C D Lamb. That's pretty nasty, yeah. man. Yeah, you, you you get you're trying to get rid of Michael Gallup. I mean, if you can get rid of Michael Gallup and you add T Higgins, I mean, uh, honestly. On, I mean, look, I want Derrick Henry. I mean, Derrick Henry would be great. But if they didn't want to pay the other guy $4 million and this dude is being offered $6.5 million, pretty much tells me that I think he's going to be a Raven Wags. And and and, and because simply for, for what we've been mentioning right there, what does this do like like we talk about how, how Saquon's going to help Jalen Hurts? This really does help. Yeah, this it really does. It opens. Yeah. You could argue that it opens up Lamar Jackson a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it like, does. How do you game plan? You essentially got to put eight in the box, right? I mean, you had to put eight in the box before. You really got to put eight in the box with a stat, with a you, you know a, a slide over or a secret stack uh, yeah. to make sure that you just try and stop, you know, Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. That's just yeah, that's that's, that's, that's scary. That's crazy. That's, that's scary. That's, dude. that's crazy. That's that's um, scary when you start. You, doing you better that. be able to get the ball out, Lamar. That's the thing, man. You better well, be in. 
He's kinda, an efficient quarterback, man. He can get it done. To, um, to what Longhorn Bear is saying right there, Higgins and CD together, Dak smiling, oh hell yeah, until January. Then he get, then he won't be able to he won't be able to hit him between the numbers. <laughs> he fucking, he'll be he'll be like, where's the running back? Where's Pollard? Where's Pollard? I got to give somebody the ball here, you know. Jeez Louise, whatever. Brown's bringing in Jameis Winston is what we're pop, uh, what Rob's reporting here. We got to get a, a confirmation on that here. Yeah. Usually, oh, you know, hey, I, I believe I believe ESPN our folks. up, but I don't I don't feel like putting my glasses on today. So yeah, no, I I, I, be, I believe our folks. Appreciate right, you, man. man. Thank you for being the eyes of the show today, my guy. Let's take a look right Did here. We hit all of our sponsors. I, I believe so. I yeah, believe we got everybody. Right. Yeah, we got everybody. Espen. This is Espen. He says Espen is the news for this. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't. Oh, the only thing I got on today is the camera, my guy. I'm not looking at any. I'm about to install. I'm about to install this uh, this VR system that I opened up last night. Started Ooh. war. Started World War Three or fourteen or whatever you want to call it with my my wife and I. Um, I was hey. told to send it. Told to oh, send it back. Right. She told you to send it back. I didn't send it back. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I'm probably in a oh, I'm in a shitload of trouble, man. Oh, uh, like, like, to hide like, like I know yeah. how much trouble I'm. Hey, uh, dude, I'm in a lot. Of, uh, ESPN just popped up. Shaq Barrett, okay. Shaq Barrett to the Dolphins. All right. Yep, that, you know that, what, that, uh, Raiders, them. man. Raiders making some new some some moves to so Wilkins. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good move. I mean, the Raid the Raiders could have one hell of a defensive front line. I mean, shit, they could arguably they could be competing with um with the boys from San Francisco too, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah. like I I'm at the best, the scariest defensive line right now, I probably would sit there and say that it's either San Francisco or Cleveland. Uh the Raiders just made one hell of a bid for that. They're probably they're they're top three, clearly, at this point, yeah. making that move. Yeah. Yeah, Sha Shaq Barrett with the move right there um, to the Dolphins. So, so that looks like that's going to happen. Um, Dearness Johnson back to the Jaguar. That's not really a big deal, but it, anyway, it um, big hey. piece is big piece is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. That yeah, we we are piece. down. I I think two things that'll happen. Number one, what's going to happen with him? You know who 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 gets his services, and then what's Chicago going to do? I think is really what we're down to at this point before the draft to kind of let everything really start to materialize and, and try to follow some path. But the whole thing is, uh, Wax, do you think Sh Chicago's kind of running out of time right here? I mean, we were talking the other day to where they maybe needed to expedite something, but now with all of this stuff starting to to break itself out and now losing receivers and all that, I mean, I, I think you might I, need to get on the horse. That's why I'd never – like the only move that I thought that Chicago would do would be to entertain – um to entertain maybe, you know, a piece from Atlanta or something like that. If somebody wanted to come up and trade for the, the first overall, I field's not look. The only thing else I can tell you is that something, maybe something happens on draft day. If something yeah. doesn't happen in the first couple of days here and they lose, you know, a, a lot of the momentum and, you know, a lot of the steam in the NFL free agency starts to, to fan out. All I can say is, you know, watch out for something on draft day. And if, yeah. if you don't see anything happen when, when Chicago's on the clock, and Chicago approaches the podium. I'm not expecting Chicago to select Caleb Williams. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. I've I've just had a feeling today that for some reason Denver and Seattle are going to become a player in this Justin Fields thing. Um, I, I don't know if it's just I, I I can't explain it. I just don't know why. I mean, well, no, I do know why because they need quarterback. So and and now I I think that what you would lose to get Justin Fields I think is becoming less than what it was before. So I don't know, man. Maybe in a Bronco helmet or or, or I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be so, it's gonna be fun to see it play out. So Sam so Sam Vincent says, sorry, Zeke is past his prime, waste of money, rather spend it in the draft. Now I get you there, but what if you could bring Zeke back on a franchise friendly deal for like two years? Sure. You know what I mean? Two years, maybe the market for, for Zeke is is a six point five or or maybe less than a six point five. Yeah, it's gonna have to be less yeah. to be less than that. Yeah. 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 Probably less than a six point five, right? Um like I think everybody hell, I'm not even a Cowboys fan and, and I know that it ever since the Zeke deal, it, you guys are right. It feels like Jerry yeah. just doesn't put that it's much shell shock into the running back yeah. room. Yeah. It's a, hor it's a mean, horrible deal. And, and, and it, I mean, it's, it's like, as soon as Zeke got paid, like Zeke just said, Hey, you know, 
I'm I'm good. I'm going to the clubs for a little bit. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, and, and that's why as we bring Jeff in, like he was talking about yesterday, that it's very viable option to to just just go to the draft if you can get a veteran in there. I mean, if if you can get Zeke for two million, yeah, hell yeah, bring him in and and go to the draft and get somebody. Wags, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh you're a little low, my guy. You're a little low on your volume. Hang on a sec. Where's that soft, subtle, and sexy voice of mine? That's right. To match that smooth head. Bald head. <laughs> this head yeah, <laughs> of his. <laughs> yeah, let's try it again. Input mic. Yeah, we got you. We can hear you. You're just a little yeah, low. Yeah, yeah, just a little low. Yeah. I don't know why. There you uh, go. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Okay. I just need to move the microphone up. Just swallow that thing, dude. Just right. swallow it. Uh, to each their own, Rodney. Not on the side. Give me some ASMR, Jeff. Uh, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Kareem Hunt's still in the league, right? Yeah. Okay. He on the Browns on the Browns roster. So I remember I was at Deontay Foreman's draft party, uh, twenty the twenty seventeen draft, and within like ten picks of each other, toward the back end of the third round, Kareem Hunt, Alvin Kamara, and Deontay Foreman all came off the board. All three of those guys are still in the league, right? So that just shows you. I mean, I I saw kind of firsthand experience. You you can find really good running backs right. in the draft. Yeah. Rodney and I were talking about it yesterday. You know, if you're the Cowboys, you're picking at the back end of the second round. You know, if, if there's hadn't been a running back off the board, you know, it, it, if you like Jonathan Brooks that much and you feel like, hey, maybe we can have a stopgap until he's ready in the middle of the year or whatever, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe your medical staff feels like he's way ahead of schedule. Or if you just like Trey Benson from Florida State better, right. use your second round pick on a running back. That's not, right. I mean – the value there would be too good to pass up. If if you're if it pick, I don't know where the Cowboys in the 50s, I think 56 or something, whatever they are, 58. If you can get RB1 value at the back end of the second round, mm -hmm. dude, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm with you there, man. Fresh legs. I like the movie. Any, uh, any crazy splashes from yesterday that you really kind of raised your eyebrow, Jeff? Man, I the, the cousins deal we talked about it uh, to go to four is what is kind of dicey. crystal ball you got going on over there at your house, man. You kind of knew that within hours that yeah. you mentioned that you kind of whispered that in the sweet nothings and it kind of yeah. came to fruition, my guy. It's just it's one of those deals, and uh, the the texts and the, everything came in right. I don't think Kirk Cousins is worth it. Kirk Cousins, I think, got a deal based on where the quarterback market is. That's right. pretty commensurate with his value in the quarterback right. market. He was playing at an MVP level when he went down. And like you, know, you said, the, the ruptured Achilles for a quarterback or no, shit, torn, torn Achilles. Hey man, I'm not comparing, I'm not comparing Kirk Cousins to Dan Marino, but I was watching, I think it was a football life on Dan Marino. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we realize how tough quarterbacks are when Marino goes up to a trainer in the middle of the game and goes, Hey, uh, I just tore my meniscus. And he goes, are you sure? He's like, yeah, I did it in high school. Like, do you need? He's like, no, no, no. I'll be fine. I'm just letting you know. Afterwards, it's probably gonna hurt like a mother, but I'm just letting you know now. I just tore, yeah. I tore my meniscus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, the quarterbacks are different cats, man. They're different cats. You know, I, the the thing that I, I kind of watch for where the Longhorns are going, Wags. Longhorns in the NFL, and man, uh, the Texas former Texas defensive backs are having a real interesting start to free agency. The Brown, the the Broncos re-signed PJ Locke. They're bringing in Brandon Jones on a multi-year deal, uh, mm -hmm. and they still got Caden Stearns back there. So in some way, shape, or form, the Broncos starting safeties are going to be Texas guys yeah. next year. Uh, you know, Adrian Phillips is out there kind of towards the end of his career. Quandre Diggs is out there. I think, you know, maybe once this first wave is done and teams kind of get their draft board in order, I think Quandre is going to make a really good addition for somebody. And then, man, Jordan Hicks, he's not a defensive back, but Jordan Hicks signed with the Browns, man, a two year Browns, deal. Yeah, that's yeah. that adds one I saw that. Of yeah. solid you know, spot to the linebacking core for still around. Man. Yeah. We we could argue that they had one of the top, I mean, they were the top defense last year, Jeff. That they're only shoring up yeah. more linebacking spots there. Yeah, and I mean yep. Jordan Hicks at this point in his career probably isn't a three down guy anymore. He's yeah. probably a two down linebacker, but you talk about just a good culture guy, a dude you Solid. want in one of the foxhole with you. Yep. He's awesome. And, and to think about, dude, like at Texas, he had the torn groin in 2012. He had the ruptured Achilles in 13. He's had a pec injury in the league. Like this dude's had he's he's been cut on quite a bit and and probed a whole hell of a lot, more than any human being should be. 
And the fact that he's still going is it's one of the more may I say Eric Metcalf has the most underappreciated football career of any Longhorn ever. Uh, Casey Hampton to me is up there too. But mm-hmm. Jordan Hicks is getting himself in that conversation. Yeah, he is. He is longevity, man. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Uh, what's, boy, what's going on, Jordan? How you doing today, man? Man, not too bad. Uh, I'm kind of exhausted of staring at screens just because um, <laughs> yeah. I'm basically the photographer for 24 7. So at Under Armour Dallas, I have 4,000 photos to go through. Holy oh, so. shit. Oh, tired, tired of that part, but you need it's some just... of those yellow glasses like Wags has. Yeah, man, these things are really <laughs> some of those, or, or mine. These these are construction glasses. Right, I'm gonna get, I'm getting the hell out of here. Y'all have a great day, man. We'll see you tomorrow for <laughs> uh, for athlete of the week, and uh, I'll be traveling after tomorrow too. So you guys be good. Right on. Take care, guys. Have a good show. You bet. All right, it's only now. It's Jeff. It's Jordan. Jordan, I don't. I don't think you were. You weren't named after Jordan Hicks. You were born before he got to Texas. But man, the fact that he I, signed this two-year deal with the Browns yesterday, and or I guess agrees in principle, it can't be official until you know tomorrow or whatever, whenever it becomes official. But the fact that that guy's been injured as much as he has, and the 2024 season is going to be his tenth in the league. He'll be the guy that's going to end up playing double-digit years in the NFL. Uh, played on a Super Bowl team in Philly. It, it's one of it's he's right up there with that's that's something when I think about the Longhorns in the NFL who've had really underappreciated careers slash remarkable careers. I think about Casey Hampton winning a couple Super Bowls with the Steelers and being just doing the dirty work for for some championship defenses. I think about Eric Metcalf who was entire way 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 ahead of his time. As a player, like if Eric Metcalf played today, basically Eric Metcalf was Christian McCaffrey before Christian McCaffrey, like 30 years before Christian McCaffrey. But that was Eric Metcalf. I think about those two guys. Jordan Hicks is up there for me, just a guy that's going to get the double digit years in the league, which is freaking remarkable. The fact that Deontay Foreman has come back from an Achilles tear and I think when he ruptured a pec tendon when he was with the Colts, the fact that he's he's still in the NFL making money is is freaking remarkable yeah Um, especially props to him because like 90 percent of the situations that deontay foreman's been in are like our team is three and 13 we have two running backs on our roster we need another one and -hmm. then he comes in and has like 70 yards after not practicing for a week or whatever yeah they they basically the you remember the the year the titans won the division derrick henry got hurt late they signed deontay foreman kind of like you said hey we just need a kind of an an insurance policy and derrick henry gets hurt late in the year he has a couple hundred yard games for the titans and helps them win a division yeah he he was he was the the one of the only redeeming qualities on one of those garbage carolina teams matt rule had when he had they would he run for like 700 yards 800 yards one year with the panthers so those are kind of the four careers man that stand out that like we we don't appreciate those careers as much as we talk about, you know, what would have, what could have, should have happened to Vince, what could have, should have happened to Colt and this guy and that guy. But I think those four careers, man, Casey Hampton, Eric Metcalf, Jordan Hicks, and Deontay Foreman. And I'll even throw Bo Scaife in there considering the two major knee injuries he had at Texas. And at one time he was, you know, the Titans as a tight end one year, put the franchise tag on Bo Scaife. And to get to that point after what he had been through physically, those five careers are are incredibly remarkable for me, man. Don't we don't yeah. talk about them enough? No, for sure. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up all these free agency signings just because, man. Yesterday I was, you know, kind of focused on work all day. I kept I've Adam Schefter notifications, so I kept getting kind of filled in a little bit. Um, but man, like some of these are wild to me. Like Saquon Barkley's gonna be on the Eagles. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I used to be a really big NFL guy, but, you know, kind of as I got full time with this job, this, as Jeff knows, this job kind of takes over your own life. Um, And didn't have as much time to focus on the NFL and even my own 49ers, I don't know, as well as I used to. Um, But still, some of these signings, like the commanders and um, whatever his name is, the DC that they just took from Dallas. Dan Quinn. Quinn, Yeah. Like uh, you're just making Dallas North. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And also, who who did the who did the commander sign yesterday? 
or a green. Okay. These are just names I recognize that were at some point on the Cowboys. Was uh, Tyler Biotish or whatever is that how yeah. you say his name? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong, and then mm-hmm. am I tripping or is Brandon McManus one time a Cowboy? Ooh, no, no. Yeah, okay, well, maybe I'm tripping. And they, I'm pretty sure they they s- traded as well. I don't know. I have like a bunch of different things pulled up because no one has just an easy breakdown of free agency. Yeah, well, I, I started talking. I started talking about it with Wags and Rodney. You know, the fact that I, I think. From a Texas standpoint, aside from the Jordan Hicks deal, the uh, you know Texas defensive backs are the most intriguing part of free agency for me. When you talk about Longhorns in the NFL, because Brandon Jones signs a multi-year deal with the Bronco with the Broncos, the Broncos just re-signed PJ Locke. They've still got Caden Stearns there. So basically, you've created like the Todd Orlando secondary in yeah. in Denver. And man, the Broncos are one of those teams in in the AFC West where you got to face Mahomes twice a year and Justin Herbert twice a year, dude, you can't have enough freaking defensive backs on, on your roster. So it, it, I, I'm glad it's working out for those guys. The, the other defensive backs too, Deshaun Elliott's a free agent. And I think he, you know, at this point, Brandon Jones moving on Deshaun Elliott might resign in Miami. I, I don't know what their situation is, but Sean Elliott's a free agent. Adrian Phillips was in that same recruiting class with Jordan Hicks way back in 2010. He's a free agent after getting cut by the Patriots. Quandre Diggs is a free agent after getting cut by the Seahawks. You know, those two guys, I mean, if Bill Belichick liked Adrian Phillips as much as he did, I, I still think he's probably got something to give somebody. And Quandre, Quandre is one of the more underrated guys in the league. I mean, we talked about it. That news broke last week, Jordan. We were uh, recording our Longhorn Blitz podcast, and – we mentioned it like, okay, it made sense for the Seahawks to cut Jamal Adams because that contract just became – it was it was an albatross. They had to get rid of that contract. But like Quandre, Quandre was on a pretty team-friendly deal. That felt more like, hey, we're going to kind of flush out some of the hardcore Pete Carroll guys and, you know, kind of start anew here. Quandre, Quandre Diggs can still – Quandre Diggs was play, has played at a Pro Bowl level the last two or three years. No, you, you can't tell me it's because of his his play is diminished, but that's why he got cut. He's he's going to and, you know, for the Cowboys, a team that historically has invested F all in the safety position. Bringing Quandre back to the state of Texas. I wouldn't mind that one bit. Yeah. Um, and I mean, with, with the Seahawks, who did they end up hiring again as their head coach? Uh, Mike McDonald, he was the defensive coordinator with the Ravens. Mm. And do you know who they ended up going with for OC? Oh, uh, Brandon Carroll, I think. Let me see. <laughs> Pete Carroll's son. No, no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, was I thought they hired Ryan Grubbs from uh, Washington. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, they got Ryan Grubb. Yeah. Jay Harbaugh is their special teams coordinator. Yeah, because, you know. (laughs) Their tight ends coach is also named Mac Brown. Is that the former Florida running back? I don't know. But, hey, uh, no, Mike Mike McDonald, he's a a Harbaugh guy. He's a Jim Harbaugh guy. He's worked for John and Jim. Yeah, I don't know. My thing with the Seahawks and cutting Quandre, like you said, I don't agree with it. But, like, with where the Seahawks are at, I, I think Geno Smith is good. I think he's talented, but he's at the back half of his career. Like, the window to win with him is closing. And to be honest, I couldn't see Geno Smith bringing a team to a Super Bowl unless it was kind of – unless Seattle was set up like how San Francisco set up, where you really don't need anyone, <laughs> you know. It's just kind of – Otherworldly. At, yeah, you kind of yeah. just need them to manage the game, right? And – that's the only situation I could see Geno Smith winning a Super Bowl as a starter. Um, with where the Seahawks are at, like, like they have pieces, they have young pieces, but like, they're nowhere close to making a legitimate push for a Super Bowl. Yeah. But they're also nowhere close to having a top pick. They're in like the weird mediocrity stage. Yeah, and it makes no sense, in my opinion. I always like just tearing the whole thing down. Um, obviously, keep your pieces that you need to keep. So like. Oh, I, I'd be cool letting Lockett walk 
uh, or get what you can from a trade. You got to keep DK Metcalf, keep Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, I keep Quandra. I'd let Jamal Adams walk. He talks too much and doesn't back it up and is <laughs> slow and gets cooked. Um, and you know Quandra what? is just oh, is so much better, like so much better and so much cheaper. I know, and man. They had him like, on a team a team friendly deal, and and the and you know the fact that Quand, I mean. If you'd have told me that not only is Quandre Diggs going to outperform Jamal Adams in their time together in Seattle, but that when they were done, it wouldn't even be close who the more productive player was. Yeah, as much as I like Quandre, I'd have figured Jamal Adams would have gotten it together at some point, but that didn't really happen. Yeah, and and with the Seahawks, like I'm blanking on other names to to mention. I know they have a running back because I had him in fantasy. Kenneth, yeah, but Kenneth I, Walker. You got, yeah, Kenneth uh, Walker. Tyler, Tyler Lockett. I mean, they – with Ryan Grubb, Geno Smith is kind of the perfect quarterback for that because and, and how Ryan Grubb, how that Ryan Grubb, Kalen DeBoer offense translate transfers to the NFL. I'll be watching that Seahawks team, even though you know, like you like we talked about most of the except for Michael Dixon, the Texas pieces that we've seen get gathered there over the years are gone, but they got That's some weapons on player. they got some weapons on offense, man. He might actually be their best player, no joke. But Geno Smith for them, man. I, I don't. I don't want to turn this into a Geno Smith segment, but you brought him up, so I, I, it's it's interesting. He's kind of found money for them. Like he's just pretty much the penny stock that ended up kind of blowing up and making turn making them turn a helping them turn a nice profit. Because you know, Geno, they got Geno Smith off the scrap heap. Like Geno Smith was Geno Smith was done when he got to Seattle, and then oh man, this guy got us to the playoffs, and hey, he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. And you know, last year they weren't very good, but Geno Smith wasn't their problem. Man, I was I was too young to remember like a ton of it, but when I hear Geno Smith, all I think of is when West Virginia was like the number one or number two team, and they came to Austin and just ran Texas off the field. They were they were top and, team, yeah. And and they had they had they're wearing they're wearing I think their white jerseys and it yeah. was like they had yellow sleeves mm -hmm. but it kept looking like when they'd run like a flag was being thrown <laughs> I remember that like specific part of it but yeah. I remember I knew who Geno Smith was I don't know who Tavon Austin was and then you see like the you know I like Fox does like the minute and a half like hype thing before the before they cut to the commentators and then kick off right and being like <laughs> You know, how the hell did West Virginia get these motherfuckers at <laughs> like eight or ten or whatever? And being like, you know, tape on Austin and like going and looking them up and of course seeing that highlight tape. But like I always knew who Gino was just because like, you know, he's a bad motherfucker in college. But I didn't know who Tavon Austin or the rest of those dudes were on that team until they showed like that warm up video. And I was like, this game's over. That's Deadman Bailey. That was a 48 45 game. I mean, that was a close game. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm just remembering one, it wrong. I don't one know. One of the one of the better home environments I've ever been in a DKR. I mean, there was a point in that game where West Virginia's backed up and Jackson Jeffcoat gets a strip sack fumble for a touchdown because they're right on the goal line. He strips Geno Smith. It's a sack. He falls on the ball. Like literally, like we could feel the press box shaking. Like that's how loud and the uh, insane it got in that place didn't didn't that game set the attendance record at the time i think so yeah yeah which is what broken yeah what what has what game is the most is it the, i think the uh, bama, bama game, game the bama game there was like a hundred i don't know i don't know i don't know how many they shoehorned into that place that day but man yeah. two hundred thousand people will say they were there yeah and like from, from when nick saban brought the crimson tide to town yeah, and imagine if that game was at like seven. <laughs> it would be, it would be, you know, the LSU game. The only bad thing about the LSU game was the south end zone was under construction. So mm -hmm. you got all those camera shots into the south end zone where it's like there's a barrier and then like nobody, there's just like concrete being torn down. And, you know, you can, you can see like construction workers. There's some games in that 19 and even in the 20 season, the COVID year, where, you could see construction workers like perched up on parts of the south end zone just watching the game. It's like, hey, yeah, I get to work, man. We need this south end zone done. Yeah. We don't have real. to look at this eyesore anymore. Uh but no, man, it's uh yeah, that West Virginia game was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Oscar, I don't uh hey, that's between you and BK in the chat. Oscar says BK texted his sister. So 
I guess. And Cooter, uh, Cooter, lay off my Cowboys, man. He says, if I like Quandre Diggs, why would I want him to languish on a garbage team that can't win when it matters like the Cowboys? I think the Cowboys or the Texans could use Quandre Diggs. And I think the good thing with Quandre at this point in his career, he can kind of kind of pick and choose where he goes. And, and maybe he can, he can afford to wait it out and just see maybe, you know, what happens maybe in the draft and kind of pick his spot after that. So, uh, cause Quandre wasn't going to get one of these big free agent deals that some of these other guys, like a Christian Wilkins got, or even like the deal talk about, you know, guys following coaches. You mentioned some of the Cowboys following Dan Quinn to, to Washington. I don't think it's any coincidence that Mike McDonald, that new regime in Seattle, their one of their first big free agency splashes was signing Patrick Queen away from Baltimore to follow Mike McDonald from Baltimore to Seattle. So yeah. that's kind of how that's kind of how it works. But other than that, Jordan, other than those Texas defensive backs, as far as free agency goes, not a ton going on with the with the Longhorns in the NFL. I think Hassan Ridgeway might be a free agent with the Texans. Uh but it seems like everybody's just pretty much either 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 has a place or we figure they're going to find a place. It's just a matter of finding the right team. Oscar, I'm a fan of the Dallas football Cowboys. Always have been, always will be, for better or worse. Jordan is a 49ers fan. Oh, yeah. Um, can we just talk about how Kirk Cousins might be the best like bag getter of all time? Dude, hey – it's one of those deals where people will ask, is he worth it? Why are you giving Kirk Cousins? I I, I talked about it yesterday with Wags and Rodney. I'm like, I would give him three, but you're probably going to have to give him four to get the deal done. You know, and it's probably going to have to be a hundred million plus guaranteed. Well, it's a hundred million guaranteed in four years because that deal lines up with where Kirk Cousins stacks up in terms of talent in the quarterback market. It's not is Kirk Cousins a hundred million dollar player. It's look at what the other quarterbacks across the league are making, and then ask yourself where does Kirk Cousins kind of fit in? And that contract is on a tier where you're like, yeah, Kirk Cousins probably should be making. If he's on this tier, he should be making that amount of money. I do think though, for the team that Atlanta has, and I think any Texas fan listening to this watching this you got to be invested in the falcons a little bit just because of Bijan, right you want Bijan to have a productive nfl career to quan graham tq still in, in atlanta too by the way you want to you want him to have a productive career and you know they got a quarterback who i think we can all agree man kirk cousins the ceiling not as high as it is definitely not as high as it would have been if you had made a trade and traded picks and somehow if you could get yourself and then up with Caleb Williams or Justin Fields, the ceiling's not as high as Justin Fields, but the floor with Kirk Cousins is it's insanely high. Like honestly, right now, the Falcons should be the pick to win the NFC South. Number one, that division is terrible. But number two, like I saw this stat yesterday, Jordan. Kirk Cousins had as I think he had one more touchdown pass than the Falcons had last year as a team. And Kirk Cousins missed eight games with the injury. So the Falcons really – they're they're one of the teams – you hear teams say this all the time. Man, we're a quarterback away. We're a quarterback away. Well, actually, you're a quarterback in a lockdown corner and an edge rusher and an elite left tackle. You're that away from being a contender. And the Falcons are – were a quarterback away from being able to win this division and probably win it convincingly with all the weapons they've got on offense. So I'm just, I'm glad Atlanta went out and got themselves a high floor quarterback that can help maximize what you've got with Bijan. It's going to be, you know, Zach Robinson coming over from the Rams. So it's going to be, you know, more kind of that Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan type offense, which I can't wait to see what Bijan does in that offense. If you're, if you're going to tell me that Bijan's basically going to be kind of your, your version of Christian McCaffrey, then I'm all about that. I saw this stat too yesterday. The Falcons, all four of their top uh, gainers in terms of yards from scrimmage last season, all 23 years old or younger. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I still can don't you just understand. just let me go on that long rant so you can just shoot holes in my little spiel about Bijan and the Falcons? No, like, I'm trying to, to <laughs> think, like, how did Arthur Smith fuck that up? You know what I mean? Like... 
he had he got a head coaching job in Atlanta. Yeah, because he called halfback power like twenty times a game with the best running back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, yeah. why would you stop doing what worked? You, like, just give the like. Bijan didn't have an O line his first year and a half at Texas. He's used to it. He'll figure it out. You know yeah. what I mean? I, like, I've become a big red zone watcher. You know, when I'm not watching the Cowboys, uh, when I'm not watching the Cowboys, I'm watching a. Uh, I watch a lot of red zone, and I'll I'll watch. I'll show the Falcons, and I'll see they're in the red zone. And or it's a critical time in the game, and Bijan's not on the field, and it was usually Desmond Ritter throwing an interception or taking a sack, and or then they'd get Algiers as the goal line back, oh, or they do a twin set, and they'd have Bijan like run a route or block. He and never without got fail, it. without fail, I go to the Twitter machine, and it's Falcons fans wondering, Arthur Smith's an idiot. How do you not have Bijan in the game? And all, all I kept thinking about was the 2020 Texas team. I'm like, you know, the last guy who hesitated to put Bijan in when he should, he, that cost him his job. And it cost, so not not giving the ball to Bijan Robinson cost two, has cost two coaches, one in college and one in the NFL, cost their job. And that's no fault of Bijan at all. That's, he's that good. You should be giving him the football more. Oh, yeah. So earlier I said uh, Kirk Cousins is up there, the best bag getters of all time. He is fourth in NFL career earnings, according to sportrack.com. You want to guess the three dudes in front of him, all three are quarterbacks as well. That's great. And all three are actually active in the NFL currently. All right. Um, Aaron Rodgers got to be up there. Mm -hmm. He's won at – $342 $342 million. I'm going to guess. And Kirk Cousins is at $231 million. Yeah, Mah- Mahomes has got to be up there. Uh, He's not on here yet. Ooh. Dak? Uh, Dak is 11th. Ooh. With Career earnings. Okay, there's got to be somebody I'm missing. Hold on, let me think. Both of these dudes have Super Bowl rings. Both have Super Bowl rings. Aaron Rodgers. I've got to be missing. There's got to be somebody I'm just blatantly missing. One of them is actually from Texas. Stafford? Mm-hmm. He's two with $328 million. Dang. And three is Russell Wilson, Mr. Unlimited. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mr. Unlimited. And guess who's five? This kind of blows my mind. Like, it legit. Like, Ryan Tannehill is fifth. <laughs> Jeez, man. With the hundred and ninety-five million. Which Vaughn- is why I say don't pay attention to how good a guy is. Look at the market. Look what other quarterbacks are getting. Yeah. Vaughn Miller's at six, Joe Flacco seven, Trent Williams eight, Nadama King Sue nine, Derek Carr ten, Dak Prescott eleven, Jared Goff twelve, Aaron Donald thirteen, Khalil Mack fourteen, Julio Jones fifteen, Jimmy G. Pfft. 16. Hey, me, where, where is that a sport rack that you're looking at that? Yeah, I just looked up highest career earnings of all time, and it was the first thing. Okay. I want to see who the Longhorn is that's got the highest career earnings. Mahomes at 19, Deshaun Watson at 17, Carson Wentz at 20. Carson um, Wentz, man. You talk about a dude that fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at overthecap.com. Um See, I'm I'm looking at this. They've got Brady at oh the coach says so this is I'm okay, so green is active. Okay. Um let's see. Who's the first longhorn I'm gonna come across? I don't, I don't know. They're I'm not still ranked. scrolling in the 60s. <laughs> Damn. Sam Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford made more money in the NFL than JJ Watt did. There's yeah. something painfully wrong with that it's taylor yeah, swift's gotta, boyfriend's at 83 there's got to be a longhorn here somewhere terrell suggs josh Ezekiel allen lamar jackson Ezekiel we Elliott is at 90. Focus, that's why we don't have this research yeah. ready to go damn i don't think they have anyone in the top 100 andy andy dalton's made over 100 million dollars yep 100 million dollars kyler Dari, darius slay Damn, I'm I'm scrolling down pretty far. Where? Okay, tell me where uh, on on the list you're looking at. Tell me where. 
Tyreek Hill ranks. I'll tell you how far I'm going in career earnings. All right. Um, I know this makes for awesome live radio or broadcasting, whatever it is we're doing. Tyreek Hill's 59th with 93 million. Okay, and I see, still see no Longhorns. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see anyone in the top 100 in the sport rack, so. I don't know. They got to get with David Mulligetta. He's a awesome night. Well, you know, er, Earl Thomas, Earl probably would be somewhere because I think his deal was like the deal he signed with Baltimore. That was like a $55 million deal, but he only played one year for that contract because then they basically, from what I remember, and I may be misremembering, is pretty much like a player mutiny. It's like, hey, we don't want this guy here anymore. <laughs> Again, when the Earl Thomas Hall of Fame debate comes up, that's going to be one of those deals that is is interesting to look at. Like, if you just look at it on paper, right, just look at what's in front of you in terms of a resume, there's no question Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas is not only a Hall of Famer. Earl Thomas is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, and it's like, (laughs) why are we waiting till 2024 to draw the line on, like, really good football players that might have a screw or two loose? Okay, the first Longhorn I come across – Tell me where Chris Godwin ranks uh, on your list. You can find Chris Godwin. Um, I so I closed that tab out. Okay, never mind. Don't worry about that. Brian Arakpo on this list of all time earnings, slightly ahead of Ladanian Thomason. Brian Arakpo made more than sixty million in his career. Nice, nice. Uh, now he's running the cupcake business. Um, Man. I think I've asked you this. Have you been out to that cupcake place? Man, I went out there like the first month opening when I was in middle school. I have a I have a foot. Well, it's like it was like 20 ish minutes or not 20, like, I don't know, 10 to 20 ish minutes from where my parents are living. Um, and just met a rack pose, deep ass voice. I actually have a photo from that day. And then Michael Griffin wasn't there that day. Um, but I always ask him, you know, when I see him on weekends and stuff, how it's going. But I don't know. Like, I, if I was a former NFL player mm-hmm. and basically was going to start a business that the majority of the marketing would be off the fact that I'm a former NFL player in the college town I went to and, you know, it's my yeah. business, I would pick something w- way different than cupcakes. I don't know what I'd sell. But it well, sure as hell wouldn't be cupcakes. So I think if I remember right, and you might next time you see Griff, you might want to ask Griff because I, I might have the story wrong. But as I remember it, when they were when he when him and Rack were in Tennessee, were in Nashville with the Titans, I want to say Gigi's was a cupcake place in Nashville that they would go to. Apparently, there was a bakery kind of close to the facility. Mm-hmm. And when they moved back to Austin, they just kind of liked the business model and the setup so much that they franchised one out and opened mm. it up in, in Lakeway or BK, wherever it is. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that's how you might want to ask Griff for the, the, the finer points, but I think that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. And like, I don't know, like I kind of already own a business, um, I don't own multiple, but I'll never own a restaurant. Like, no, dude, no. no. <laughs> so, I've worked in enough. I've been to enough. I've seen how it is. Like hell no. You My dad did, and I'm convinced, man. That took uh, at least a decade off of his life. That is took, it still open? No, no. It's long yeah. since closed. But man, it's. I don't know. That's like a. That's like a. Oh, I'm trying to think how long he had it. It was probably like. I mean, it was really realistically only probably like five six years, but it it felt like twenty. What did y'all what did y'all serve? What, he, he, had a, he, had a, he had a barbecue joint in Florence. Yeah. What just like Franklin's once y'all sell out for the day, y'all are done. No, no, he had it was barbecue was way different back then. Bar, barbecue mm-hmm. places didn't used to just sell out. You know, it used to be you could get it because you know, yesterday's yesterday's leftover brisket is tomorrow's today's leftover brisket is tomorrow's chopped beef, you know. Stuff like that. Yeah. So this bar- the barbecue game, Jordan, was way different. It was before, basically, before uh, hipsters got involved in the barbecue game. It was, it was, it was vastly different. Uh, 
Ike says, I'm 17 years in. It's not that bad. Ike, if you're 17 years in, that means you know what the hell you're doing and you got everything under control. So I, yeah. I trust that you know what you're doing. Also, like I see the the Domino's logo in his thing. Like if you own a Dom, like I'd be open to like franchising like a Domino's or like a, like, I don't know, like maybe a Chick fil A or like a Subway. Obviously, I'll have to have the money for that. But like opening like my own local spot, like F that. I, I would never do that. Yeah. You know, uh, way, way, way off subject. You know, you've met Carl Padilla, right? Runs the Padilla poll. Uh, I've never met him, but I know who he is. Okay. I've seen him at a couple games. You know how Carl? You know how Carl made most of his money? Mm -mm. Uh, McDonald's franchises in the Valley. Actually, someone has told me about this. Someone has told me about this. Yeah, they had a bunch of McDonald's and then sold them all. I think his brother kept one, maybe, or kept a couple. But yeah, he. Had a bunch of McDonald's franchises and ended up selling them all. Yeah, it, exactly what, <laughs> what Cooter said. Um, like the exact reasons why I don't want to touch that. Yeah, so we, we can't pull it up, but Cooter says, unless you own several fast food restaurants or an extremely high-end restaurant, the margins are razor thin and your staff will rob you blind if you are not there all the time. Yeah, uh, that's Cooter. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good description of what the restaurant business is like. Hence, why Jordan and I are on the same page. I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole. And every time, like, I'm around somebody, I, you know, I'm the kind of person that when I'm like with my wife's friends or we're somewhere, I don't talk. You know, because I get on here, I'm paid to talk here and on podcasts and stuff. And the last thing I want to do when I'm trying to relax is talk. But if I hear somebody say, "Oh, it'd be really nice to open a restaurant," I'm like don't do it don't even just just let that dream die it ain't it ain't worth it i've seen i've probably seen wait i'm fascinated by uh robert irvine i think i don't know if he has a show anymore but it was uh restaurant impossible and gordon ramsay does the kitchen nightmares i'm fascinated by those shows and i've seen way too many of those where it's like oh we retired and we had seven hundred thousand dollars in our retirement fund and yeah now we're two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt because we opened up this restaurant and didn't know what the hell we were doing yeah yeah um <laughs> okay cooter <laughs> uh, please elaborate um cooters 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 good people cooter says uh so that was in the restaurant business for a long time before i started killing things for a living uh, if cooter is he a bounty hunter is he a taxidermist i'll let everybody listening use their imagination and hey, by the way is he an quick, exterminator an another guy who uh who's kind of in your old neck of the woods jordan out the lake travis b cave lake way away the next longhorn i see on this list of career earnings in the nfl Derek johnson holy over, shit over 50 over 54, over 54 million dollars Derek henry just signed a two-year 16 million dollar deal with the ravens Worth up to twenty M's, including nine of them fully guaranteed. It was it was trending. the king will now play in the Queen City. It was trending that way yesterday that he had met with the Ravens. Um, man, does this does this probably mean my guy J.K. Dobbins is done in Baltimore? I mean, J.K. Dobbins is probably going to be done in Baltimore. He couldn't last a full season, like yeah. respectfully. Yeah, yeah. Cooter's know. an exterminator. Hey, what a effing guess by yours truly. I actually didn't know anything about Cooter or what his employment is. No one told me that. Um I hope I hope Cooter is uh hope Cooter's I, I would assume Cooter's better at his job than uh who my people hired out here to to kill bugs and control pests, the pest population at, at my place. It's a it's a business that rhymes with porkin and uh they don't do a really good job because they say they're taking care of bugs and shortly after they leave, I'll, you know, step on a scorpion or I'll see something crawl across the floor and I thought y'all was supposed to take care of that. And they didn't take care of it at all. So, yeah. Um, Jordan, I, I want to talk. Uh, we got about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes left, something like that. I want to talk. We're a week away from the start of spring practice. And I don't know why. Well, I know why, because I'm, I'm, finishing up uh, our position inventory series i'm helping eric henry with that I, i'm doing the offensive line so i've had offensive line on the brain and i wrote uh i wrote our eight our countdown our spring practice countdown on the site at horns 24 7 i wrote about uh steve sarkeesian's fascination with big people yesterday mm -hmm. so i've been thinking a lot about the offensive line and i 
I keep getting I keep getting fascinated by what you said. The little NATO nugget you dropped about a week ago that it makes sense because somebody you know competition's a good thing. So if NATO pushes Hayden Connor and either forces Hayden Connor to raise his level of play or ends up passing him and ends up being the starting left guard, whatever happens, it's great. I I think this group, the trajectory they're on, Texas fans really need to appreciate it because it's the kind of trajectory that you've wanted the offensive line to be on for the last two decades, pretty much. You know, the, the, tra- the kind of trajectory that it hasn't been on in about 20 years when Justin Blaylock and Lyle Sunline and Casey Stutter and those guys were young guys. Tony Hills was a young guy. Jonathan Scott was a young guy. And those all, guys all kind of got to grow together and they ended up being your offensive line that won a national championship. It's been that long since you had an offensive line had that this kind of trajectory. And the reason why I say that is there's something to be said for each of the last three seasons, Texas has had a thousand yard rusher. And I take nothing away from how good B. John Robinson is. So one of the most talented offensive players I've ever seen come through this program. And I take nothing away from the year Jonathan Brooks had last year. But the fact that Bijan and Roshan moved on, the fact that Jonathan Brooks got hurt with multiple games left in the regular season, and after that, C.J. Baxter had a 100-yard game. Jaden Blue had a 100-yard game. Savion Red almost had a 100-yard game. What we saw from Baxter and Blue in the Sugar Bowl, what we saw from both those guys in the Big 12 Championship game, at some point, Jordan, you've got to give credit to Kyle Flood and that offensive line and say, hey, man, you guys are doing something right that you returned all five starters last year from 2022 and you were able to protect the quarterback at a high level and had a and had a top 25 run game. And the fact that you're bringing four starters from that group back this year, yeah, it, it's safe to say it's on a trajectory and Texas should have one of the better offensive lines in the country this year. Yeah, and... You know, it's crazy to think about what you said about how this is what, you know, basically Texas fans have been begging for since, you know, the Lyle Sunline group and everything there. But, like, we're going to see, you know, how how different it really is. I mean, it's obviously different this time, but how really different it is this time around this time next year whenever they have to replace four starters from this upcoming season's starting group. You know what I mean? Um, because Kelvin Banks will be a first rounder. Uh, I could, I've been Jake told Majors by is out, Jake Majors is out of eligibility, so you know you're gonna have to replace yeah. the center. Hayden Connor is he'd be out of eligibility. Senior, yeah. Um, and if not, if NATO ends up getting that job, I was told that you know his hope would be to leave for the NFL after one year of starting because he'd be eligible then. Uh, and then sophomore or right guard DJ Campbell, I was you know, I, I haven't asked anyone around DJ, but, um, you know, I was always told coming out that <laughs> he expected to be leaving after three. Uh, I don't think maybe the first two years have gone necessarily exactly how he wanted, but, you know, I think even if the pace he's on, if he has a year next year, like he did this past year, he'd still get drafted. Um, so, you know, maybe depending on where his grade is, you could lose your right guard as well. And then a right tackle, Cam Williams. I mean, I've been told by multiple people, like if he has a season he likes, then he's gone. So, yeah, it, you know, it's a little that's bit, it, yeah. potentially all five. Um, it's a little bit different for offensive linemen, though. That That's a position where you got to have some maturity about you. Oh, yeah. And, and, and some experience. So, well, just uh, the thing that makes DJ so different from other people. And I mean, I, I bring this up every time I talk about DJ is just how athletic he is. And like Kelvin Banks probably has got, you know, the highest ceiling. Really hard to argue with that. Trevor Goosby is also up there just because he's so yeah. half and athletic. Mm-hmm. But like DJ Campbell's, I mean, all these guys' best football is ahead of them. And I kind of hate how that saying is as popular as it is. But like DJ Campbell specifically, his best football is ahead of him. Yeah. He, like he played at Arlington Bowie, was a basketball kid, never really had a legitimate football offseason until he got to Texas. And he's the most athletic offensive lineman I've ever seen in person with my own two eyes. Um, so like I, I could just see him come like maybe not having an amazing year, getting a combine invite, killing it, and he's like a and you know, he goes earlier than people would have thought. Um just because he's a freak show athlete. And 
you it's, know, it's it's interesting when you talk about a guy like DJ, mm-hmm. and, and it seemed like we started to see it with like when Quentin Nelson went in the top ten, and I remember you know Jonathan Cooper from North Carolina one year went really high. We've seen some guards go pretty high in the draft, and you figure, you know, at some point teams have to value interior offensive linemen because if you keep trying to find the next Aaron Donald and you're put as a result, you're just putting more emphasis on impact interior defensive linemen. Well, at some point your counter has to be, yeah, well, we need, we need to find the next Zach Martin. Maybe we need to find, we need to find that next guy that can come in from day one and be an all pro level guard. So I, I, I don't know if that results in us seeing guards go, in the top 10 again, but uh, though the, a guard is a great value pick to me starting in rounds two through three, because chances are those guys get shoved down the board for your premium positions, you know, your tackles and your skill guys, pass rushers, whatever. It's kind of like I talked about with the running back earlier, like with the Cowboys, man, if they, if there's a chance by the time they get to their pick in the second round, every running back in the draft could still be on the board. And, and if, you know, if you think Jonathan Brooks is going to be ready in time to help you, man, you take him right there. That's 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 insanely good value at the back end of the second round. Or Trey Benson from Florida State, if you like him, dude, take take him right there because he's a, he's a plug and go guy. I think I think guards could be so. To your point, like if DJ does have that kind of trajectory, then yeah, he can be he can be a day two pick, be a top hundred pick, and be a, a walk in starter for somebody. Yeah. Um... Or be expected to be, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. <laughs> now that I was just thinking about it when you were talking about like drafting offensive linemen. The 49ers are great at drafting every position except offensive linemen and quarterback. And you could be like, well, they got Brock Purdy. Like, I'm like I I've said this before. I'm like one of the few realistic football fans. And I know what Brock Purdy is as a 49ers fan. I'm not trying to say he's not yeah. a game manager. He is what he is, right? I saw him play Texas, and it was like, that's who we want to use the seventh-round pick on? There's a reason why we called him Pump Fake Purdy. Yeah, and you there's know? a reason why he was Mr. Irrelevant. He, but I, even I was like, we're using the Mr. Irrelevant pick on a quarterback? <laughs> you know, we got Trey Lance and Jimmy G. Why do we need this dude? course right hey it, um, it's, you know the, the the team formerly known as the washington redskins when they took rg3 two overall they found their franchise quarterback in, in that in the 2012 draft it's just it was in the fourth round when they took Kirk cousins yeah you know it's it's the given given the 49ers credit for brock purdy's like giving the cowboys front office credit for drafting Dak. you know how many quarterbacks they tried to draft before they took Dak Prescott, and they tried to get back into the first round to take Paxton Lynch. I know Connor Cook was the guy that they wanted really bad. They kind of settled. They kind of settled for Dak. Like, well, we want to come out of this draft with a quarterback. I guess we'll take the kid from Mississippi State. Yeah, and I remember him and Zeke's rookie year when I forgot who knocked him out of the playoffs. Is it Green Bay at home? Right, it was Green Bay at home. I remember showing up to school the next day and like all my Cowboys friends are just so like, I don't know, like <laughs> torn apart or whatever. And I was like, well, one, like how like this happens every year. Why are we acting like y'all are surprised about it? But two, uh, you're out of your mind if you thought Zeke Elliott and Dank Prescott as rookies were taking them to the ship. <laughs> it's not happening. Hey, I haven't um, I haven't seen CB in the chat today. So, I know I know CB doesn't like uh, Aaron Rodgers because <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers still hates Texas for Texas getting picked over Cal for that Rose Bowl his last year at Cal, and Cal had to settle oh. for the Holiday Bowl when they got boat raced by Tech. But yeah. I don't I, I don't like Aaron Rodgers because he has made a career out of murdering the Cowboys in the playoffs, murdering the Cowboys when it matters, ripping yeah. my heart out of my chest. And holding it out in front of me so I can still see it beating before I take my last breath. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, Damn shame, man. So while, shame. so while we're on the topic of quarterbacks, I do want to close out the show with <laughs> at least some Texas stuff. So in 2025. Did you know Arch didn't opt into the video game? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. 
Um, React to that, Arch Manning. Is Arch Manning selfish? Yeah, yeah. Clip, clip that shit, BK. Let's let's make something out of that. <laughs> um, okay, so Texas in twenty twenty five. We all know who their quarterback commit is. It is KJ Lacey, the Saraland four star, top two four seven passer from uh, Alabama, Saraland, Alabama, just outside the Mobile area. Um, down there in South it's Alabama. right next to Greenbow, Alabama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, so there is no Greenbow, Alabama, but yeah, they yeah, know. I, I hope they, I hope everybody listening got the Forrest Gump reference because it went over Jordan's head. But go ahead. Jordan. It did not go over my head. Like I, <laughs> that's why I reacted like I did. I've seen Forrest Gump way too many times. Stress. Oh, me. you have seen? Okay, a mo- a movie that came out. Before Green ball, Jesus Alabama. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Come on now. You weren't, you weren't like my buddy Sam Hobbs in high school though. That thought Forrest Gump was a real person. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm not that stupid. But well. okay, but some actual news though. KJ Lacey. Um, he's been committed since June third. I just specifically remember that date because it was Hank and I's third day on the job and a quarterback committed, so it was pretty hectic. Um. But look, Alabama, Auburn, they're doing everything they could to flip them throughout the, throughout the fall. Um, as Saban retired and DeBoer came in, DeBoer has actually never signed a quarterback that was under six foot three. So once I figured that out, I stopped being worried about the Crimson Tide with him just because I'm like, they're not, you know. Yeah. They're not going to pursue him. Meanwhile, schools like Auburn, uh, Oregon, Ole Miss have been pursuing him. The only one that I've ever really been worried about is Auburn. Uh, you know, they signed Cam Coleman last year, Perry Williams, two five-star receivers. I know they didn't end up with KJ's teammate and Ryan Williams, but Ryan Williams ending up at Alabama was the best case scenario for Texas fans and wanting to keep, um, KJ Lacey, because again, Alabama is not going to recruit KJ Lacey, or at least they haven't shown much of any interest so far with the new staff. On the other hand, KJ Lacey has taken multiple visits to Auburn, um, don't believe he's made it to Ole Miss or Oregon yet. As far as those Auburn visits go, and as far as the Alabama visits go, last fall, uh, the staff was made was he let the staff know about it ahead of time on the majority of those visits, but not all of them. Um, and as we've gotten further into the spring in the recruiting cycle, as you know, as we've talked about, Jeff, most uh, the recruiting decisions for a class a cycle are made kind of around this time of the year where coming out of the dead period, coaches had a lot of time to sit down and think and figure out their board more. And, you know, this is also the time of the year where probably there's about one to two guys a week that we're figuring out from sources. Texas already decided that they're going to stop recruiting and that they're not going to take or that they want to go all in on. Um, And one of those new things we've heard is, Texas is seriously considering trying to take two quarterbacks this cycle. Um. Yeah. And honestly, the the more Hank and I have talked about it, they kind of need to. Um. Quinn Ewers is gone after this year. Arch Manning will be the starter, and then you have Trey Owens, and those are your three scholarship quarterbacks. After that, Arch leaves, or, or Quinn leaves. It's just Arch, Trey, and KJ. Um. And you're you're gonna they they want more bodies than that. Um, and so mm-hmm. it's not a, a done deal, a done decision. It's something that's being thought about, though. Uh, if they decide to go that route or if they were to lose KJ Lacey, um, we've reported it. I don't know if I've talked about it on this show, but yeah, we talked about uh, it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. The, the direction that Texas would go would be Keelan Russell, Duncanville's quarterback. Um, like you said, you reminded me, we did talk about him yesterday. So mm-hmm. if you want to get, I guess, kind of my read on him, go look at it. Well, we yeah. actually have him ranked. Uh, a little over 100 spots higher than KJ Lacey. And in my opinion, I'm not trying to take anything away from KJ, but I, I think Keelan fits Texas better, and I think he's a better prospect. Um, Here, here's where I'm at on this, Jordan. Uh, mm-hmm. I've, talk, I've talked to enough quarterback evaluators to know that if, if they had an honest moment in front of the public, they would all admit, they don't really know what they're doing. I mean, they can know to yeah. a certain extent, but man, until until the lights are bright and pardon the expression, but the bullets are live, you don't really know what you've got. 
the the best the the guys that handle the quarterback situation best are the coaches, the front office guys, the player personnel people that just try to throw as many quality bodies at the problem as they can. And at some point, law of averages is going to win out. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna end up you're gonna end up getting uh, finding you a quarterback. And I think this kind of goes this kind of goes back. Yes, do you want to address Cooter's comment real quick before we? <laughs> Indeed, Keelan, and, and it's K E E L O N does indeed throw piss missiles. If you want to go watch his highlight tape, um, just Google it, Keelan Russell. We got it on his profile. He's our number 63 player. But, so. you know, we just talked about the offensive line. And, and I'll, get, I'll get more to the O-line discussion tomorrow because there's a couple of the points I want to make. But you could look, you could be looking at a 2025 season where you're not, you're not necessarily hitting the reset button, but you're, you're, you're hitting the refresh button. Like it's gonna be a different looking Texas offense. No Quinn Ewers, no Kelvin Banks, no Jake Majors. If Hayden Connor keeps on the left guard job, you're gonna have to replace your your offensive line, like you said earlier. You, you're looking at you're gonna have to replace it from center over to left tackle, at the very least. And depending on what happens elsewhere, you know, what happens happens. I think that that drives two things home for me. One, with Quinn Ewers as your quarterback and with this offensive line as it's currently constructed, you've got a window right now where you can go, you should be able to go into the SEC and compete for a conference championship. And not to say that you can't do it in 25, but 25 is going to be a little bit more of, I don't like to use the word rebuilding or even reload. It's going to be one of those years where it's going to take Sark maybe a little bit to figure out kind of one, what your identity is, and two, Within the framework of that, how do you build this offense around the quarterback? Remember, it took him it took him a minute to figure that out with Quinn. Oh and yeah, he, no. The the Bama game kind of conflicted things a little bit because remember when Quinn was struggling and Roshan and Bijan weren't touching the ball enough, and Sark by the end of the year just decided, you know what, if we're gonna get where we want to be to maximize this thing, we just got to let our two NFL running backs take us to the finish line. So there's gonna be some adjustments in 2025. So you might as well take two and just let them all compete. Yeah, no, they're. Well, if we're talking next season, they're going to need to hit the portal hard, um, the winter portal window when it opens in December. Um, and then as far as on the two quarterbacks notion, talking to Keelan, talking to those around him, he would uh, love the competition um, of having to compete with someone and, and there being another quarterback in the class. Yeah, A lot of people don't know this, but he wasn't even supposed to be the starter at Duncanville as a sophomore. But he ended up becoming the starter in week two because in week one, the original starter, Jameer Wills, who was a senior and actually had a Texas Tech offer uh, as an athlete, but was actually a, a really fun high school player. Um, he blew out his ACL and his MCL versus Sock that week one game at Kincaid in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, since then, Keelan took over and he never looked back. And, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people aren't huge, you know, Texas high school football nerds, but. You know, a lot of people know who Reginald Samples is. He's a Duncanville head coach. And, you know, the last the last two years, um, he's been asked in the – I always try to get into the press conferences after State, um, even for the even for the teams that, that lost. Just because it's kind of cool to me. You know, it's a part of history yeah. to me. And Samps, at each of his last two press conferences that he's won, have asked him, you know, where's retirement kind of, you know, what, what are you thinking? You're, you know, you're getting up there yeah. and he's always said, I'm not even thinking about that until Keelan Russell and Decorian are gone. Um, and he always said those two, he never said Caden Durham. He never said Colin Simmons. He always said Keelan Russell and Decorian. And it's because he said like, I've coached a Quinton Jackson. I've coached a lot of great players. I've never had a quarterback like Keelan Russell. Yeah, and that does a lot, man. And I mean, like we, if you've been around Texas high school football, like you know, Duncanville was running the most BS offense, where it's just like <laughs> halfback power, you read option, like all this other stuff, right? Yeah. Now they're like in air raid, and it's because they have a quarterback. It's Keelan. Like they, the whole identity of that program changed because Keelan Russell walked into those doors. Um, yeah. And he's not afraid of comp. Uh, he's great against the highest level of comp in the district of doom. And, you know, I, 
if I was a betting man, if he ended up in the in the same class and Texas somehow signed him and KJ Lacey, and you put a gun to my head and asked me to pick who's winning, I'm one thousand percent choosing Keelan Russell. So I don't know. Um, gonna be interesting hey. to see how it goes. Also, SMU, like I said yesterday, they are not gonna be willing to let him go easy. So that that whole situation will, will be interesting. A and M's also pushing, but they might be getting another quarterback commit here soon. And then Florida's pushing, but you know I'm not sure if Keelan wants to throw himself in that boat, just like we talked about yesterday. Is uh, Todd Peterman, to your knowledge, hadn't taken another job, right? He's still going to be the OC at Duncanville. Yeah. Time. So, uh, and I don't know if this is public info. Apologies if it isn't. Uh, but Todd Peterman is still on the Duncanville staff, and they're actually currently paying him a head coach's salary um, because every school in Dallas the last two years, because he's been the Duncanville OC the last two years. Every school in Dallas has tried to hire him to make him a head coach. And basically, Duncanville was like, you are going to be our coach in waiting. We're going to pay you like a head coach, and we're going to have basically two head coaches on salary. And yeah. he was like, all right, cool. So that's that's what's going on at Duncanville. It, and again, I don't think that's public info, but like everyone up here in Dallas knows that like that's who the head coach will be when Sam's retires. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's kind of nice when you can have a guy that's won a 6A state title as your OC be like, no, I'm good. I'll I'll, I'll wait till this thing opens. Yeah, and uh, in specifically in the District of Doom, too. Yeah. He knows the landscape. So that's interesting, man. Two two quarterbacks. BK, are, are you uh, – I got to run here real quick, but are you with uh, Jordan? I mean, I don't know if Jordan, Jordan just reporting the news and giving his take. And my opinion is I'm fine if Texas wants to take two quarterbacks in this class. Just take as many quality guys as you can and just let them compete and – see who see who rises above sure i'm fine with that i mean you got a stockpile like y'all said we know how often blue chip qbs transfer nowadays so uh hell i mean texas took cam rising and casey thompson in the same class and they both transferred within like a year of being here so it, it might work out to where neither of those guys is actually the guy but obviously you give yourself a better chance of finding that legit stud quote unquote franchise QB. The more you bring in to Quinton Jackson and Hudson card. Yeah. Hey, Hey Jeff, just real quick. Do you remember the, the person we used to work with tweeting out that Hudson card only won the starting job because he was a Texas kid and not from Oklahoma like Casey Thompson. No, no, I'll, I'll send it to you when we're off here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't, the, Say it, say it one more time. He tweeted out. It was after news had broke that um, I think Hudson, I got the job over Casey. And okay. he, the, the person tweeted like, this is like BS. Like there's too many politics at Texas. It's because like he's a kid from Austin that played like Travis, Texas high school football. And Casey Thompson is like Sooner family from Oklahoma. Like, <laughs> and like that person is a full-time media member. Yeah. So yeah, look, there's a lot of slappies in our industry. I think we can agree on that. Oh it's, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of dudes that have platforms that shouldn't have platforms. I'll just leave it at that. There have been a lot of slappies who have played quarterback at Texas recently, also. I'll I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Dang, yeah. there, there, no Sam Ellinger slander on this show, BK. I didn't say all of them. I said a lot. Okay. I'm a I'm a Sam guy. He he served his role here. Did a great job. Served it well. Look, I I'm I am I a Sam Ellinger fanboy? Will I defend Sam to the end of the earth? Absolutely. 100%. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hey, for all the fans that talk about we want a guy that bleeds for the program and that really wants to be here. That was your guy. That was your guy. I always said, I, I know I run this the right end of the ground, but man, when Charlie got fired. I'm like, oh man, is Sam gonna stay committed? I'm like, dude, Moncrief could be burning down. Sam would be there with a shovel ready to scoop up the ashes and rebuild. That's yeah. how much Sam Ellinger loves Texas. So yeah, you wanted your guy that just wanted to be there because he's always wanted to be the quarterback in Texas. You had him. And if you didn't appreciate him, that's a you problem. Yeah. Especially considering some of his predecessors and where Texas was at the quarterback spot, you know. I mean, I know Quinn, I know Quinn wanted to be the Texas quarterback when he was growing up, but Quinn's also being compensated. Yeah, and, and, and he wanted that that butcher bag first too. Yeah, he didn't want it that badly. Yeah. He uh, he just took a couple of nice sacks to make it happen. 
you think, hey. you think, Ar- you think Arch grew up? I mean, like, yeah, I want to be like Colt McCoy. <laughs> well, there is that video be, of him the that, next on swoops. There is that video of him that his family posted where he's like six and is like, I want to go to Texas or whatever. And it's funny. I, I, I think you know, you know who Guy Fraser is, right? Yeah. Uh huh. There's the other kid, his little brother, um, Arch's little brother is wearing a Highland Park Scott shirt. You know how guys, Mr. Highland Park. Yeah. So I remember when that first came out, I was with Nick and he had up guy and uh, it was like, yeah, they have family friends in the Highland, you know, a guy talks in the yeah. Highland Park area <laughs> and all that. And they grew up coming and looking at Texas and Dallas and going down to Austin sometimes all that. So. I doubt it was Colt McCoy specifically, but like there is documented proof of Arch Manning at like seven years old saying he wants to go to Texas. Well, on that note, uh, I got to run. I will be back to do it tomorrow. Uh, BK, have a have a great show, Jordan. I'll uh, I'll holler at you here in a little bit. Yes, sir. Where's uh, Trey at? It looks like he's getting situated. He, he hasn't been hit by a bus in the street yet. No, uh, he saw him in the waiting room for a moment, and then he just uh, disappeared. So. You got a couple of minutes to stick, or you got a boogie too? Oh no, I'm all good. Okay, all good. Um, um, sorry, I'm trying to find this dumbass tweet. I think he might have deleted it. Ah, uh, yeah, I figured you were just trying to protect the identity of whoever tweeted it out. But... Oh no, I really don't fuck with this guy. But like, I'm not gonna yeah. name drop him on air. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, that's so. That's an absurd thing. You know, that turned out Hudson Carr wasn't all that great either. But uh, to to insinuate that that was the reason why he was getting a chance after some of the struggles of Casey Thompson, that, that's just low hanging fruit, but it's lazy and it's stupid and it's wrong. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Fair to be upset by that. All right. Let's see. We've got Trey <laughs> driving. You guys may be able to hear me. I cannot hear you right now. I'm trying to figure that out. Stand by. Okay. Yeah. Wait, we can we can hear you. <laughs> That's a good sign. All right. Well, we're halfway <laughs> there with Trey, who's driving around. The guy's been everywhere this week doing South by Southwest around downtown Austin. And one day he was sitting outside of Antone's. The next day he was standing in the middle of the streets. And then today he is literally driving around trying to do uh, our radio program. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So, BK, I got to ask you. I know you've uh, been following Texas for a long time. What was it like for you, the recruitment, where you were like, holy shit, we got them? All right? Or, like, was there a specific recruitment where you were, like, kind of, I don't want to say obsessed, but, like, you know, like, you kept checking in on that specific player. You had to know where, you know, if Texas was getting him or what. Yeah, there's been a few, um, and I'm trying to think of the first one of those. Like, I remember being infatuated by Jonathan Gray's recruitment, right? Like, Mm -hmm. because we were around the same age. We were going to be going to UT around the same time, and he was a five-star, the top-rated running back in the country. And, uh, you know, he turned out to be solid. I think he was uh, kind of a victim of just shitty offensive line play and bad coaching. I think he should have been a lot better. And he had like 12,000 rushing yards in high school. Yeah. And he's too yeah. much mileage on him. Great point. Yep. I mean, he was, what was it, Alito where he went, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, they ran him into the ground, and that uh, that takes its toll, as we've seen. Still to this day, I believe, holds the national touchdown record, which I think was 205. It yeah. It was something ridiculous. It was just yeah. ridiculous. I can't remember um, if anyone ever, ever broke that record or not, but I know he had it when he, he – graduated yeah that was a big one and then there's there's a bunch more but one that just popped up to the top of my head is freaking brew mccoy (laughs) that whole shit storm and boy what a waste of time that was i mean he was committed to texas then he committed to usc then signed with usc then a week later transferred and signed with texas and then a semester later went back to usc and then ended up at tennessee and you know and it turned out he just wasn't very good or worth the hype, which maybe that's a, a sign. You know, some sometimes guys who have wild recruitments and change their mind a bunch turn out to be great players. You know this better than I do, Jordan, but to me it feels like the guys who cause that much drama, who just can't make up their mind, or who are clearly just trying to pull people's legs, they turn out to not be as good as advertised. That was a lesson for me. Like maybe the guy who's turning this recruiting process into a circus 
might not be as good of a player as uh, as you want him to be. No, uh, oh fuck yeah! Like Hank and I have talks all the time where it's like, okay, what guys from this class are in the portal in a year? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, there's so many. Like, you meet so many kids each year. You see the same things each year. Like, I know I have a very, very good read of which kids are and aren't going to pan out. And there's even, like, five-star kids where, like, we'll be at All-American unanimously, and we'll just be like, he's the best player here, or one of them, but he's a fucking jackass and is going to get in his own way, you know? Like, and, yeah. And, And with Brew McCoy, I mean, also, I mean, dude, like, what the fuck was he doing? Considering Tom Herman, Texas, and Clay Helton, USC, like I knew he was a Cali kid, but like, yeah. like he had offers from everywhere. Like you could have gone anywhere else and probably been drafted by now, um, but you didn't. And now at Tennessee, you kind of just, I, I don't know. Like I remember seeing him last year, and he was a decent receiver, two receiver, three for him. I know he came back for this year. Um, I can't remember if he even declared for the draft or not, but like. Poor decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if he was still there. I forgot he was there last season. It feels like, you know, the whole Texas-USC debacle happened about a decade ago, but uh, I guess it wasn't that long. Yeah, what a mess that was. And then Malik Jefferson would be another one of those guys. I was pretty stoked when Texas got his commitment. And I I don't know if there's anybody that I feel worse for in the last 10 years of Texas football than Malik Jefferson. Like, that – that guy, if he went to an a and wouldn't have been the right move for him either, right? He mm-hmm. ended up being between UT and a and and both programs were in a horrible spot at that time. So, you know, door number three, whatever that could have been for Malik would have been the right move. But dude, if that guy went to Alabama, he would have been a first-round pick and he'd be having a great NFL career. Like, I'm convinced by that. I'm convinced that the coaching that he got here was so bad that it just derailed him. And I know he was in the league for a while and bounced around. But, like, that guy should have been a first-round pick, and I think that if he went to a place that could actually develop talent when he was in school, he would have Mm -hmm. been that, and he would have been not, like, a Hall of Fame-level linebacker, but, like, a really good, consistent linebacker in the NFL for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, no. uh, I don't know. It's kind of how Anthony Hill was for me. But also, I mean, I had a lot of exposure to Anthony Hill in person. Um and I mean, I think I've said it on this show like a ton, but the amount of times like I've had the conversation with friends and media where it's like, if you were to go back and tell us in 2021 that Texas would have Anthony Hill, Malik Muhammad, Colin Simmons coming in as a freshman, Jonte Cook, like I would have spit in your face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like, pfft, fuck no. Like there, yeah. Texas was five and seven. Um, the Sark staff was just kind of trying to basically do everything the A&M staff has been dealing with, where it's like, hey, the dudes who are in office before us are fucking, they messed everything up. And they had to fix everything, put Band-Aids over everything, and that's kind of what they did. And it took a long time for Anthony Hill to kind of to kind of turn the corner there. And you have to remember, A&M was stacking the number one class at the time, selling that, mm-hmm. you know, we signed all those dudes, and we still think he'd start as a freshman. You know, get them to they get them to commit uh, out of the blue on a visit, and I mean the the read from Texas was they were they, they still thought they'd get them, and they stayed persistent, and A and M went five and seven, and the the tables had turned, and Texas got them. But Man. like so so much of recruiting too, and I it was funny. I actually had this conversation with someone uh, who works in our market at Under Armour Dallas uh, Sunday. The amount of, like, luck that isn't talked about for recruiting. Like, Calvin Banks is at Oregon if Miami doesn't open up, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Anthony Hill could be at a and if. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going. <laughs> Anthony Hill could be at a and right now, right? Yeah. But he's not because they went five and seven. Um, Phil Samee in Florida. If Corey Raymond doesn't get fired, he might still be at Florida. Like, yeah, those are just the ones off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. Obviously, I think NIL and transfer portal <laughs> has completely changed the game for Texas. 
in, in the best way possible. Trey, can you hear us at all? You're on mute, by the way. God, now we flip-flopped. Hey, you can hear us. I can hear you guys. Can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. Was there bad background noise a few seconds ago when you first brought me on? Yeah, I mean, we can hear the highway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> been one of those days trying to get the computer fixed that I stupidly broke yesterday and trying to get a better audio solution for the iPhone because I'm going to be doing the show on the iPhone for at least today and probably the foreseeable future. And unfortunately, my uh, very quick troubleshoot through precision gave me good audio but no ability to hear you guys so back on the the iphone audio only option unfortunately mm. do you trust yourself to do a show without dying oh yeah i mean i'm not looking at the screen right now even though i have it held up so you, you get a uh, decent frame job on mm. today's show but you're essentially co-hosting a show with an an Uber driver who's not very good at getting people to drive around. I should actually just add, go ahead and add that to today's show. Just sign up to be an Uber driver <laughs> and pick people up downtown for South by Southwest as I'm co-hosting this show. It'll be an experience for them, if nothing else. Although yep, they probably no wouldn't take too kindly to the fact that I do have a screen at the top of my steering wheel, even if I am assuring them that I'm not looking at the screen at all. Right. All right. Well, Jordan, we'll let you go. Thank you for sticking around for a few minutes, and we'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow, man. Yes, sir. Sorry Good luck. That, Thank you. There he goes, Jordan Scruggs, and this is hilarious. I mean, where's Waldo has turned into where's Trey this week. On Monday, you were sitting on Fifth Street by Antone's. Yesterday – oh, wait. That was Friday you were doing that. Yesterday, you were the standing in the middle – yeah, Such standing in the middle right of the now. street, and today you are driving, I assume, to downtown Austin? Driving back into downtown Austin, which is where I was earlier today. Had an awesome red carpet with the cast and crew for a new bowling movie called The Gutter. There are only two history of cinema, The Big Lebowski and Kingpin. And this has a real chance to be the third great bowling movie and a comedy that's actually taking some chances, which has become a rarity with comedies. And over the last five to 10 years now, these, these guys have uh, comedic backgrounds. One of them is a standout, the brothers who wrote and directed the film. It's got a great cast. And yeah, the red carpet was just a treat. It's one of those things where you can tell sometimes where a cast and crew are getting back together and they didn't form that bond necessarily. Not that things were terrible, but it's like everybody came, did their job and went home, went about their business or whatever. This group like truly likes one another. So that typically is a good thing for whether or not a project is going to be good or bad. Yeah. So I've got Cheech and Chong are, have a documentary coming out on them uh, that I'm going to be at a red carpet for here in about an hour. Um, Funny enough, the podcast is very close to episode 420, so I think you can guess what episode 420 is going to consist of. And yes, I will be getting baked before I speak with Cheech and Chong, too, for those wondering. But yeah, so that's been my day on top of trying to get my laptop fixed, which may not be salvageable. I uh, found that unfortunate news out about an hour ago. And so after I found that out and then had to do a couple of things for that, I tried and thought I would have time to rush to precision camera and video and get back in time to be stationary somewhere for this, but that clearly did not work out. Mm. Yeah, it's been an adventurous week for you for sure. And we'll see if the internet works well enough to get us through this hour. Um, but that's all right. Uh oh, is it choppy? Yeah, very choppy. You've been breaking up a little bit and it Yes, I'll be I'll, I'll be parked here in a second. So when I get parked, I may log off and back on real quick, and that will hopefully take care of things. I'm basically 
having to go cell phone tower to cell phone tower, which is fine for cell like regular audio conversations, but adding a streaming element into it uh, makes things a little bit tricky. But here in the next five minutes, I'll I'll get parked to where I need to be, and then that will hopefully take care of the uh, the choppiness. We'll make do. As DJ says, this shit is award-winning. We've got an Emmy nomination coming our way at some point. Nobody else does this, all right? It's Texas Rideshare Unfiltered, apparently the name of uh, of today's show. Yeah, th- this is unfortunately a little bit beyond the risks that I like to take, too. This has become <laughs> a little bit too frenzied. I-, I had a good thing going where I was standing in the middle of Congress yesterday, and then I fucking shifted some... My hands were too full. I'm like the guy at a grocery store who, who is trying to go without even a hand cart and whatever he needs to get through a grocery store. And he ends up with his arms full of shit getting to the checkout. That's what I was doing, but with valuable equipment. And unfortunately, the most valuable piece of said equipment ended up broken. And so it's been a scramble since then at a time where I really don't have the, the freedom to scramble. So... We're making do, though, so I appreciate you and everybody else being patient with this process. Yeah, this is a new one. I've done a lot of things on my phone in the car. Uh, the FaceTime, the Zoom call. I watch movies on long, long road trips. Right? Like every year when I'm driving up to Dallas for Texas OU, I'll throw some sort of movie on my phone and put the phone on the mount and watch it to make the drive a little bit more entertaining. But I don't think... Uh, I've ever, and it doesn't sound like you've ever, done the radio slash podcast bit from the car while moving so this is something new for everybody but uh it's fun check off that box we're yeah we're we're very exploratory on this channel just consider this the uh the anal probe portion of things Mm, yes dr jellyfinger that's uh your uber name i believe um all right well some sports to get into nfl free agency continues for 31 of the 32 teams it has not started for the Dallas Cowboys who have still yet to make any sort of splash signing. Now they did re-sign a long snapper earlier today. So the Cowboys are on the board. They have made a move this off season, but uh, I don't think Cowboys fans had that in mind. Dallas, Trey, I mean, your thoughts, a ton of great players, and we can go around the league and talk about some of the big moves made by the other teams. But the Cowboys, you know, Jerry Jones at the Combine a couple of weeks ago said he was all in on 2024. He's not building for the future. He's focused on winning this year. And thus far, pretty much every other team has done something to improve their team except for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, you want to preach patience when it comes to free agency, but it gets to a point where the patience needs to have paid off in terms of something tangible. So if the Cowboys are trying to be patient right now, they're being too patient. It's time to make some fucking moves because you're going to get a week from now and all the good free agents are going to be gone pretty much. And I know Jerry walked back the all in comments hilariously a week after he said as much, but they should be going. I mean, they should be all in every year, just about. I mean, like, there are some rebuilding years, but it's not like they're rebuilding right now. This is a crucial year for your starting quarterback and your head football coach, where there are enough questions about both of those guys that if they can't get over that proverbial hump, you do have to hit reset. And then you do have to preach a lot more patience because you're having to rebuild not just through free agency, but also good draft picks because you're going to suck for a couple of years. Um, you know, there is another element of free agency that is affecting the Cowboys. It's that they've lost, they've lost at least one guy so far. I mean, they've lost, um, Tony Pollard, who, according to reports yesterday, I apologize. I have not paid close attention to the headlines today for previously stated reasons. Uh, Tony Pollard is going to be a Tennessee Titan here pretty soon. And, uh, have they lost anybody else in free agency so far? Because that's, I wouldn't say that's the biggest loss necessarily. He was a little bit underwhelming last year, even though I would argue that he did start to figure some things out and return to that old Tony Pollard form by end of season. Uh, Have they lost anyone else to another team as of yet? Yeah, I mean, Tony Pollard's the biggest name that has departed. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong, one of the edge rushers, went and signed with Washington, so he followed Dan Quinn. Uh, Tyler Mm. Biotish, who's been the Cowboys' starting center the last couple of years, also signed with Washington, so... Uh, Dan Quinn forming a Cowboys East in our nation's capital. 
But yeah, Pollard's probably the biggest name to this point. But yeah, the Cowboys haven't done anything to replace him. And you know, running back's a position a lot of people were looking at for the Cowboys. Everyone has kind of assumed for a while that Tony Pollard was going to be gone. So you just expected Dallas to be a major player in the free agent running back market. And there's been about 10 running backs who have been signed or traded to this point, including Joe Mixon, who just got traded to the Texans about an hour ago. And the Cowboys have not. Oh, no. Yeah, Cowboys haven't picked up anybody. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Saquon obviously signed with Philadelphia. You had Josh Jacobs. You had Aaron Jones. You had Austin Eckler. You had Tony Pollard. You had Devondre, uh, DeAndre Swift. You had Derrick Henry, who just signed with Baltimore. Like, all of these running backs that could have been viable replacements for Tony Pollard in Big D, they have all signed elsewhere. And now it's, you know, if you're looking at that position just in a vacuum, you're kind of shopping from the scrap heap if you're Dallas now. Right, yeah. <laughs> Buckle up, Cowboys fans, because it's going to be another disappointing season for you next year as it as it stands right now. And I know that they can still find ways to improve in free agency with some of those secondary guys and then also in the draft. But this is a prime opportunity to get better right now and not have to rely on what other teams are doing or not doing in front of you. And uh, you've, you've waited a little bit too long or maybe you've made plays for certain guys and they've just chosen to go elsewhere because they – they don't want to play with some faction of your team, probably starting with the owner. Yeah. Well, here's a hilarious report that came out last night from Michael Gelkin, who covers the Cowboys for the Dallas Morning News. He said the Cowboys were in the mix for Zach Moss, free agent running back, and the price tag got too high, so they balked. Zach Moss signed a two-year, $8 million deal with the Bengals. What? That so was too I, look. I, I'm not saying Zach Moss is that valuable of a dude, but if that price tag is too high, you guys are real fucked. Yeah, I mean that's like look. I'm with you. I did not really want Moss, but I would have been fine with Zach Moss and then drafting a running back. I still believe the Cowboys' starting running back is the guy they draft at 56 overall, and I think I feel better about that take now based on the way free agency has gone than I did last week when I first made that prediction. But, yeah, I mean, Zach Moss would have been a good, you know, one-two punch kind of guy. But, yeah, $4 million a year? You can't do that? You got the Eagles throwing around almost 13 for Saquon. That's fine. I didn't want Saquon. I didn't want the Cowboys spending that type of money. Good luck with that, Eagles. But the fact that you're scared to pay $4 million and you're talking about being all in on a must-win year for your head coach and your quarterback, dude, that is a bad look for Dallas. Indeed. Yeah, so there are some running backs still out there. J.K. Dobbins, but that guy's coming off of about 14 torn ACLs. Yeah. You've got Clyde edwards Lair from the defending champion Chiefs, who's been eh at best. He got beat out by a seventh rounder two years ago. Boy, talk about we all have plenty of misses. I may have more than many. I, I was convinced that Clyde edwards Lair was going to be awesome in Andy Reid's offense, just with how dynamic he was coming out of LSU. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why that hasn't worked out better for him. There, maybe there's a backstory. Maybe it's as simple as people overinflating his value because opposing defenses that last year at LSU were having to focus on so many other guys on the field. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm probably rolling the dice on uh, what you just laid out. With uh, Was the, the guy that they drafted, are you talking about Rico Dowdle or is it somebody else? No, I'm like, saying I, I think they will draft somebody with oh, their second-round pick. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm probably rolling with that and then maybe maybe finding a different veteran running back to back him up. Or maybe you think that Deuce Vaughn might be able to give you some quality carries as a backup this year. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Of course, he's uh, very small for his size, even though he continued to prove doubters wrong at high school and at the college level at Kansas State. Uh, yeah, I'm probably taking a pass on Clyde edwards Lair at this point. Very small for his size. I like that expression. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> welcome to welcome to South by 2024. Hey, I'm parked, by the way, so I'm no longer uh, public nuisance to uh, all the other cars around me. Where are you? Uh, you want me to get out and show you? Uh, sure. I was trying to tell from, like, the driver window, but I'm not getting enough of a vantage point to be able to figure it out. All right, let's start there. Okay, let me go full screen on my end so I can... You're clearly somewhere downtown. Yeah. That is, there's an ATM machine there. Uh, what is that in the reflection? 
curative, curative. There is nothing that I see that would. Oh yeah, curative. Yeah, curative. Oh. God. There's nothing that I would see that would be a giveaway for me as somebody who, who uh, is pretty familiar with downtown either. Here, I'll, I'll get out, and then you can you can take another guess. Okay. Getting out of the car now. Award-winning folks, make sure you send this in to the Marconi folk. Walking across the street this way. Okay. Is that the Abbey Road album cover? <laughs> Walking across the street this way. Oh, all right, so Congress. Yeah, so I'm between 9th and 10th on Congress right now. Okay, very nice. Where's your red carpet? Do you just find the first spot you could get, or are you actually close to where you need to be? You and the people are going to get to uh, to watch me walk right up to the red carpet today, as a matter of fact, because I'm two blocks away from the red carpet, actually. Let me jaywalk across the street again. You can there get you a know. shot. You see the top of the Paramount sign there? Yes. So that's uh, that's where I'm going to be for the red carpet here in uh, however many minutes it's going to be. Yeah, I hope you get pulled over. That'd be awesome. Uh, no, it. no. These these Austin fine Austin police officers have plenty more serious stuff to deal with than some cracker walking across the street like he's in the ghetto. Yeah, but they'll find a way to give out jaywalking tickets, too. They, they might have a quota to hit, so I wouldn't put it past them. I shouldn't say that, because I did get a fucking jaywalking ticket two football seasons ago. It was one of the most infuriating things that I've gone through in my life. That some jackass, power-hungry cop who doesn't understand how people leave UT football games. Seriously? On your way out? Like, yeah, you, uh, you and I talk. I mean, we've talked about so much shit over the years that it's. Uh, I don't blame you for not remembering one thing. Yeah, it was. It was crossing MLK. I was leaving a game early because no. the game yep. was at hand, and there was a group of people at this crosswalk waiting to cross MLK. No cars coming either direction. No cars like even visible coming from either direction from several blocks away. And some of us start to cross, and the cops like, "Hey, don't cross yet. You wait to get to the signal." And we waited like 15 more seconds. The the uh, the crosswalk counter going the other direction was still on the person walking, so we weren't getting that countdown yet. I'm like, dude, like let's use our let's use common sense here. So I started to walk. He's like, don't do it, don't you do it. I get to the meeting. He's like, if you cross all the way, you're busted, buddy. So I was like, dude, get out of here. Stop with this bullshit. So I walked the rest of the way, and he came up. He literally grabbed me by my shirt, like pretty pretty aggressive grab too and he's like you come sit over here i'm like dude get your hand off of me there is no reason to treat me like this right now just because you were bullied as a kid or grew up without loving parents but yeah i i sat there eventually the crosswalk went and the 10 to 15 other people who were there with me were just shaking their heads at the cop not shaking their heads at me because shaking their heads at the cop for how stupid he was being his partner looks completely embarrassed that he was conducting himself like that but I did get a $50 jaywalking ticket as a result. Yeah, I do remember that story. I just wanted to hear you say it again. Okay. And you paid that ticket too. I, yeah, I thought about fighting and I'm just like, I don't fucking care. That's I just, a joke. Yeah, that's sad. Oh, man. All right. So we'll see what the Cowboys do. Deontay Foreman, a free agent, by the way. A lifetime Longhorn could be an option for the Cowboys. I, I actually like that. He's been playing on discounts for other teams and giving them damn good uh, touches, too, for a couple of years now. He was a, temporarily the Bears' starting running back this season. He did great work with Carolina after they traded McCaffrey away. When Derrick Henry got hurt a few seasons ago. They're, Deontay Foreman is just one of those guys who understands how to pick up positive yardage at that running back position. That is a valuable trait obviously, at running back. Yeah, he could be a good number two, right? I mean, that'd be a decent one-two punch if the Cowboys do end up drafting a running back in April. But, hey, they missed out on a lot of the big names. And, look, I, I'm not changing my stance. I did not want the Cowboys to spend big in free agency on a running back. I did not want them in this Saquon or Josh Jacobs sweepstakes, but I would have liked for them to have gotten – Somebody, I mean, once Aaron Jones got released, like a guy like that, or it's, you know, six, $7 million one year contract, that feels like something the Cowboys could have done. It yeah. should have done. 
Uh, I didn't want any long-term deals for a running back because then you run the risk of a Zeke Elliott 2.0 situation in Dallas. But one year, short-term deal, that would have made sense. And the Cowboys missed out on all of the big names there. So we'll see. Still nothing yet for the Cowboys really worth talking about. Uh, the Texans, I feel like, have had a pretty decent couple of days. and they, they didn't make a bunch of moves yesterday. And some Texans fans were upset because they have so much money to spend. But they did make a few moves. They brought in a linebacker, Aziz Alshair, from Tennessee. He was fifth in the league in tackles last year. They brought in Danico Autry up front on the defensive line. And perhaps the biggest name they acquired was a little bit earlier today. They traded for Joe Mixon. Uh-oh. Bengals were about to release Joe Mixon. Uh-oh. Can't hear me? Uh, I got you back now. I don't know if that was you or me, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joe Mixon going to the Texans. I have not seen the compensation going back to the Bengals, but I, I assume it's something very, very small. Once again, Cincinnati was about to release Mixon, so probably talking about a day three draft pick uh, going back to the Bengals. Your thoughts? I mean, the Texans lost Devin Singletary to the Giants in free agency. Now they uh, pivot and bring in – Joe Mixon from Cincy. Joe Mixon is such a weird player because he's got the talent. He's just throughout his time at Cincy has been very, um, very hit or miss. And I know he was, I forget what his stats were this last year. A couple of years ago, he's a big time touchdown machine, but I feel like we may be seeing the end of Joe Mixon as a productive NFL running back. So I'm not crazy about that one. Uh, a little bit wait and see, Mo, but ultimately I think the Texans could have done better. and They may still try and find a running back in the draft because they probably see as much, too, that uh, that Mixon is getting to that point that a lot of running backs do where it's questionable as to whether they, they still have that much more in the way of mileage. Yeah, he's 27. He'll turn 28 this summer, so before the start of next season. Uh, did have over 1,000 yards last year with the Bengals on the ground, but only four yards to carry. Joe Mixon's best weapon is – uh, you know, his receiving ability. Like he's yeah. a great pass catcher out of the backfield. And, you know, if you're the Texans, you're trying to do whatever you can to make life as easy as possible for CJ Stroud. So I think that's the biggest appeal for Mixon right now. You know, the biggest hope for them might be that, um, oh gosh, who's the, uh, who's the kid who was a good, good for them as a rookie and had a step back last year. Oh, Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce, yeah, that he gets it figured out once again in year th- three that last year was just a bit of a sophomore slump from him because he looked like a bona fide NFL running back his rookie season. And then thankfully for them, they they found something with Devin Singletary, who was initially slated to be Pierce's backup. That's that's maybe part of their hope here. Um, this person's going to get towed. You're going to get towed. Parallel park? Is he trying to parallel park or he's just pulling up next to you? Oh, uh, Hold on. I'm I'm still here. I'm still here. I was like, you want me to mute you while you yell at this? I saw them tow another car. Just be careful parking right there. Yeah, because this one fits in. That one's blocking the bike lane. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to give you the heads up so you didn't end up walking back to nothing like the last person. Yeah, take care. Just completely. Wow. Good guy, Trey, making an appearance today. Well... Let me just go ahead and be forthright with you right now. That was complete bullshit. I just didn't want that guy parking right next to me because it is it is a limited spot, and he is sticking way into the bike lane. So there's a – theoretically, he would have gotten towed, but I that was also bullshit by me. That's the tray we know and hate right there. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I was like, that's a sign of the apocalypse right there. But, no, it turns out all is right with the world still. Hey, can I try something real quick? I'm going to yeah. try something real quick. We're going to see if this, this works now. If this yeah. microphone works with me plugging a headphone in to where I can actually hear you all. God dang it. <laughs> We've lost all video. Right. We've got video. How does that sound? How does that Fine. sound? Good. Does it sound better? Uh, yeah, marginally. Marginally better. Okay. Uh, more than marginally, but... Not studio quality, but better than what it was before, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to put this uh, this puffer on now. I'm going to puffer my microphone. Uh, How does that sound? Does that sound better? Yeah. Did you bring that microphone, or did you just go buy that? 
that's the one that I just bought and I had to plug headphones into it to get it to work. So it doesn't sound, it sounds better than the iPhone mic, correct? Yes, definitely. Okay. I like All right. That setup. So you just have the mic on your dash right now? The mic is plugged into my iPhone. Okay. It sounds a little bit hollow in my ear, so hopefully the this microphone is not active. My uh, my wired headphone microphone, but yeah, okay. If it sounds better than the iPhone mic, then upgrades are upgrades, baby. Are you here for the rest of the show, or are you leaving in two minutes? No, what time is it? Twelve forty-three. Uh, I could probably stick around for the rest of the show. Is there somebody else who's popping on in the next two minutes? I think Zay is. I think you asked me to see if Zay could come on early because you had something? Yeah, the check-in starts at 12.45 but uh, I am not doing a good job of keep, keeping track of these things clearly. So I, I told the red carpet people I'll be there just after one. So okay. When Zay pops on, I'll probably hang out for a few minutes and then I may, may take off a couple minutes early to try and get there closer to one. Okay, very good. Alright, quick sponsor shout-outs here. Uh, some love to AV Consultations. Give them a call, 512-255-8678 for the home TV setup of your dreams. See the two TVs behind me? They were hooked up by AV Consultations. Y'all know about the four-screen man cave I have in my living room. I love it. AV Consultations made it happen for me. They turned my TV dreams into a reality, and they can do the same for you, whether it's that man cave or woman cave. If it's that home theater room with the surround sound, if it's just that big screen set up in your living room, it doesn't matter. AV Consultations can get the job done for you. You don't have to buy anything. They'll take care of it all. Don't buy your TVs and then call AV Consultations. No, call AV Consultations first. They get the TVs at a better price because they buy them in bulk, and they will hook you up. 512-255-8678. That is the number. Check them out online, avconsultations.com. Shout out to Altstad Beer as well. The award-winning Altstadt beer. It's only fitting that uh, they advertise with us on the award-winning midday program. Altstadt, the best beer that you can find, available all over the great state of Texas. HEB, Specs, Twin Liquors, Total Wine, uh, 34 Wine and Spirits here in Austin. They've got six packs of Altstadt, and it's uh, popping up more and more at your favorite bars and restaurants throughout the state as well. With good reason. I mean, this beer is growing like crazy, and it should. I keep telling y'all, one sip. And you won't go back to the other beers you have been drinking in the past. It's Altstadt beer. No impurities. No regrets. All right, Trey. Uh, I don't know how many of the NFL moves you have seen in regards to free agency, but any anything that has stood out most to you, Kirk Cousins to Atlanta, Saquon to Philadelphia, Josh Jacobs to Green Bay, kind of feels like those are some of the biggest moves that have happened. What uh, What captured your attention on day one? All right, I don't know. Has Aaron Jones signed someplace else yet? Minnesota. Oh, wow, because that would have been a great option for the Cowboys. But if he's with Minnesota now, then never mind. I like where some of these running backs are landing. I like that Josh Jacobs may be properly utilized in Green Bay. We know how they like to use Aaron Jones when he was healthy. And uh, A.J. Dillon, who is now elsewhere, too. So I, I love that fit. I think he's primed for a big 2024 Fascinated by the Saquon to the Eagles move uh, because of the different ways that they like to use running backs. And they've used a variety of running backs. So they're going to have Saquon doing all of those things. They're, they were splitting up between guys over these last few years. Uh, so I think Saquon, if he can stay healthy, you know, I know that's a little bit of an if. Not as big of an if as we've all said over time. I think that's been st slightly overstated. He does miss games here and there with injuries. But Saquon to the Eagles makes them that much more dangerous on offense and Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons, personally, because I like J uh, Justin Fields more than you do, and I think he's got a ton of potential, especially with that many weapons around him. I think the ceiling is potentially higher for the Falcons with Justin Fields, but they go get the known commodity with Kirk Cousins, and I don't fault them for that either because their best years were with a very similar sort of quarterback, maybe a livelier arm than Kirk Cousins, but a guy like Matt Ryan who you really knew what you were getting with him over time. Um, so Kirk Cousins has shown with Minnesota these last few years that he can actually win games on national television at a greater clip than he did with Washington or early on in his Minnesota career. Uh, so can he do so with uh, arguably uh, more weapons around him, but guys who are maybe not as talented as a Justin Jefferson?
Hmm. I see Zay in the waiting room right now. Should we should we tell Zay he's got a few minutes? Should we bring him on? How do you want to handle this? Yeah, we can bring him on. I, I can stay. I can stay all the way, pretty close to one. Zay, so you're okay? wasting my time. <laughs> I could be no, taking no. a great shit right now. My stomach's bubbling and stuff, and I have to jump on because I hear you're leaving, trying to be just a good teammate coming off you know bullpen and here you are talking about you want to stick around till one o'clock thank you well thank take you, us into the take take us into the bathroom with you please <laughs> we've already had a very out there show today i was essentially an unsuccessful uber driver for the first 10 minutes i was on today's show driving from precision camera and video back to downtown so we're just all about the experience today zay I just uh, took a hit and about to go interview Cheech and Chong for what is supposed to be their final movie. I would love to add uh, uh, going to the boys' room with you to my day, please, sir. <laughs> Absolutely not. People already take our gumbos bit the wrong way. We're not going to add any more just wrong speculation, you know? If, I'm dudes, not about can't, if dudes can't shit in front of one another, then I don't know what's going on in this world. <laughs> God, what a total 180 over the last 60 seconds, right? It, it, Zay comes in yelling at Trey, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, trouble in paradise with the gum bros. And then now Trey's like, oh, I want to go into the bathroom with you, Zay. <laughs> Listen, ebony and ivory are a thing, okay? And so are the gum bros. Yeah, we know. We know y'all are a thing. We saw it. We've seen the picture of you guys being a thing, all right? <laughs> Hey, that was a good yeah. bowl of gumbo, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's that South by Southwest life? I want to get down there, but I don't know. It's, it's fucking crazy, dude. Crazy in all the right ways and crazy in the exhausting ways as well. So have you guys heard of Magic City? Yeah, the strip club. Strip club in Atlanta. BK, sure. you familiar with this? Oh, yeah. Apparently popular in hip-hop parlance. I mean, sorry, yeah, I'm not, I've never been, I don't know anything about it, but a friend told me about it, sorry. Yeah. Well, there's a three-part docu-series coming out on Hulu, I think at some point in the near future, that is all about the history of Magic City, and it's got the participation of a ton of big-time names, too. I mean, Shaq, Drake, Big Boy, Killer Mike, like, anybody who is lived in is from or has passed through atlanta lends their voice to just the magic that is magic city i guess well i was truly just like with most of the porn you sickos watch all the foot fetish stuff and whatnot uh was unfamiliar with it until going to the red carpet last night and ended up getting to speak with amongst other people uh killer mike which was huge like in terms of like people who i have admiration for and would want to have a longer conversation with like he's high up on that list now last night was just a handful of questions but i tried to make him count so that was really cool and to also get to thank him for being one of the most humanitarians that we have as humans yeah killer mike shout out to his grammy win for best album of the year it's a really yeah. good album has some really good features but yeah man magic city that's a bucket list stop for me like, yeah. If I ever get to Atlanta, which I'm sure the cost is ridiculous because obviously it's the most well-known strip club in the world. But yeah, if you hear any rapper from Atlanta and they don't shout out Magic City and some of their lyrics, is he really an Atlanta rapper, though? You know what I'm saying? Like that's Magic City's the place. It got Lemon Pepper Lou, Lou Williams. The dude left yep. the bubble because the food's so good. The chicken oh. wings and stuff. He better be in it. He better be in this documentary because that was – and now they always want to make excuses about the Clippers and blame Doc and shit. Yeah, whatever. You got dudes leaving the bubble to go get some chicken wings, man. That's so, how epic Magic City is. I wish I'd done a little bit more research now or talked to you about things because there was one NBA player that I saw on the red carpet last night. By the way, the, the red carpet was fucking chaos. 
Like there were certain people that we were supposed to get to speak with and there was a fraction of them. Still very thankful for that, but it was a shit show because Magic City was well represented by management and then also the talent too from over the years. So you have some uh, former dancers who are showing up and talking about what they loved, like the highs and lows of Magic City, as well as current dancers too. And the current dancers, uh, they did not change their dress versus uh, what they're normally doing in the club is my guess. Or maybe they're wearing even less than that, which I guess means nothing at all. <laughs> mm, that's awesome. By the way, yeah. BK, I, I picked your brain last night about a potential guest, Big Boy, yeah. who was at the theater last night as a part of this, as you can imagine, as a member of Outcast, the uh, ATLians. He did not end up walking, and I was bummed about that because Killer Mike and Big Boy were the two guys that I wanted to speak with more than anybody else that was on that list. He didn't walk? Did he crawl? Was he in a wheelchair? What do you mean he didn't walk? Yeah, he didn't walk the red carpet. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that Magic City uh, City documentary has to end with Kirk Cousins now. You know, the newest Atlanta Falcon. Like, that's how it's got to end with him wearing all those chains that he wore on that flight back home from Minnesota. I think you were talking about this yesterday, Zay. Like, that's that's how it's got to end right there. <laughs> Kirk Cousins in Magic City. Yo, them Georgia folk, they going to embrace Kirko, man. That was Kirk Cousins' best move. It's best moves i've been seeing all the money that he's made you know over the course of the years and everybody's been talking about he's been gripping the nfl i get that playoff wins not many but as far as kirko fitting in with the culture when he put them chains on man when he went on that netflix documentary series quarterback and you got to actually see him as a person and you're like wow kirk cousins he's pretty relatable like his stock went up He's been very yeah. smart with him and his agent and his marketing team. They've been very smart with just how they've been going about showcasing him. And yeah, Atlanta, if you got Quavo from the Migos talking about you and stuff like that, yo. <laughs> yeah, Kirk Cousins, he definitely has his own suite in Magic City coming soon. People underrate Cousins business savvy. Wasn't he the first quarterback to get a fully guaranteed contract? Yes, he was. Four or five years ago? Yeah, yeah, and he's made upwards of $325 million in guaranteed money in his career. He's over 400 altogether, but just in guarantees, he's over 325 and he's won one playoff game in 12 <laughs> years. Hmm. Can we stop shitting on Dak? Dak's got two. Can we move the conversation to Kirk Cousins, please? Hmm. Goodness yeah. gracious. But you're, I mean, I, I agree with Zay 100%. Like, I think the injury helped Kirk Cousins rep a little bit. I mean, Dak mm. got, Dak was playing great. His last year before he got his first big money deal with the Cowboys, he was playing great. And that's when he got hurt in the COVID year. And I, I honestly think the Cowboys, like, he didn't have a chance to play bad to cost himself some money. So he mm. got the big money deal. The Cowboys fell apart. They missed the playoffs and Dak got paid. Same thing happened in Minnesota. Like, Kirk was playing pretty well. He got hurt, so the team fell apart, and they missed the playoffs after making it the year before, and then everyone's like, oh, shit, this guy must be really good. We got to pay him, and Atlanta went out there and paid him. So I think the combination of the injury and the Netflix special like just totally changed the narrative of Kirk Cousins into like, uh, oh, this is awesome. Atlanta's now going to be a big-time contender. It's like, no, like it, it's still the same Kirk Cousins. Let's not forget. I've only had to root for Kirk Cousins as a guy who has had him on my fantasy team, and it was a bit of a roller coaster ride. I'm not crazy about being a Bijan fan, and as a result, a uh, an Falcons fan, and having to put my NFL faith in Kirk Cousins. I agree with you on that, BK. Yeah, yeah. Look, he's a major upgrade over what they've had. Like, I I don't think it's a bad move by Atlanta. They had to do something because since Matt Ryan, they've had nothing in that spot, but. You know, they can win the NFC South. They probably should win the NFC South because that division's really bad. But if you're all of a sudden expecting, you know, primetime Kirk Cousins, remember those jokes about how shitty he is in primetime. Maybe it's a good thing the Falcons are never in primetime, so maybe he'll play really well. But playoff games are in primetime usually, and Cousins just hasn't been able to step up. So just like Dak, right? Like the, the big contract you get when you're a quarterback, your legacy is determined by what you do in the playoffs. And for this to work in Atlanta, it's not going to take just regular season success. They're going to have to get to the postseason, and they're going to have to win some games with Cousins. 
Yeah, watching Atlanta this past year, like seemed like Arthur Smith was a huge problem. I mean, having Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke, you know, interchange as quarterback, that doesn't help anybody either. But the fact that B. John Robinson wasn't the focal point of this team in 2023, come on, that's ridiculous. So now there's a big balance there. I mean, Kirk, a lot of expectation. And this was a franchise who could have brought in Lamar Jackson, who just won MVP last year and just got Derrick Henry over at Baltimore. So if you're an Atlanta fan, you're being realistic. If you see what you just said, DK and Trey about Kirk Cousins and just everything that he hasn't accomplished yet, you're a little pissed off. You know, Kurt, even though he's cool and stuff, he's still going to have a lot to prove. And, yeah, that contract that Baker Mayfield got, that don't mean nothing to me. Like that team, Buccaneers, they overachieved this year. But I expect them to take a huge step back, especially playing a first-place schedule in 2024. And that just leaves Kurt Cousins and the Falcons. Yeah, it's, it's the South to lose for them. If the Falcons OC is smart, he will feed Bijan Robinson early and often. And by the way, Algier is a nice change of pace for Bijan too. And let Kirk Cousins operate uh, off of play action, which is good for a guy who doesn't have a ton of mobility. Uh, you know, Tannehill was a little bit more mobile a few years ago with Tennessee. I just love uh, doing something like that with all those weapons around him, giving those guys like Pitts, like Drake London, even a sliver of time to create some space to then catch the football and make some plays. Indeed. All right, Trey, I know you got to bounce here in a moment, but uh, Pest Wranglers today, you up for a live? Let's go record it today, please. Oh, you can't handle it. The pressure is too much. It's, yeah, it's All too right. much. Here's a word for our friends over at Pest Wranglers. Hey, it's Steve from Pest Wranglers, and I don't know of a single mosquito that owns a home with a backyard, but they sure like to hang out in your yard and make you miserable. Pest Wranglers can fix that for you. Our mosquito treatments are designed to kill adult mosquitoes as well as keep mosquito larvae from developing for up to three weeks. Use us all summer or just once before that big party. No contract, no hassles, no blood-sucking mosquitoes. Check out our reviews and see what others are saying about Pest Wranglers. Pest Wranglers, effective, reliable, affordable. Online at pestwranglers.com. All right, there goes Trey off to interview Cheech and Chong. Uh, that's hilarious. Now, they should be smoking him out, right? Like he said, he just yeah. took a hit a few minutes ago, but he's doing an interview. He's giving them pub. He's trying to promote what they've got going on. Shouldn't they be offering him a hit of something? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I know Cheech and Chong, they probably get approached by a lot of people that are giving out weed and somebody of that class. You don't want to be just taking bud from anyone. So... They probably get it for free and they probably, some probably expect it, you know, like I'm Cheech and Chong. Why don't you want to, you know, smoke me out? Like if you're coming in my presence, I expect you to have that Zaza as the kids say on you, but <laughs> you're right. When you're Cheech and Chong, I mean, it's unlimited, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, they should be smoking our guy Trey out and the stuff that they got, man, who knows, especially with their tolerance level at their age. They've been oh. smoking since the 70s, even before that, probably. So, yeah, I, you know what's crazy? I've never seen any of those movies. Dude, I was about ever. to ask you that. Like, why are they still so popular? I, like, I, I, I've seen one before, I think. But like I, I, everyone knows who Cheech and Chong is. Like, they just transcend yeah. time, even though I couldn't tell you anything that they've been a part of. In the last like 20 years. Yeah, I guess they were just pioneers on the first movie and guys to embrace it and make Bud look cool because everybody knows the stigma that it's been under for all these years and just, oh, you're going to be lazy and, you know, you're a piece of shit and if you smoke Bud and this and that, you're a degenerate, all that type of stuff. And those guys, even though they were being goofy in the whole the whole time like yeah dj cult following like classic like i gotta see them yeah. i don't know what order they're in like i always see rappers like wiz khalifa had an album with one of the covers of their cover like you know some, something like that and i've always been a big wiz and currency fan and i just kind of hear always teaching chong references guys yeah. were talking about smoking bud but i never looked into the movies ever I don't know just because it's old school, but yeah, man, the fact that they're still doing stuff, like I'm just glad they're still alive.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Up in Smoke, that's their original movie or their that's first it. movie. That's the one that I've seen. That came out in 1978, dude. That's yeah. more than 45 years old. And still, like, I, I think even kids would understand the Cheech and Chong reference. Like, they might not know who the hell those guys are, but they've heard of Cheech and Chong before. And For it's sure. like, I. I just, yeah, the cult following, it's more than just the cult following. Like they, they have transcended time. Once again, it's generational with Cheech and Chong. So good for them. Uh, maybe that documentary will be fun to watch and it'll kind of explain the story of why they are as big as they are. But yeah, you're right. Like certain rappers and just other pop culture stars have referenced them enough to where uh, people know what you're talking about when you say Cheech and Chong, even if they couldn't tell you anything those guys have been a part of. Yeah, Great. and them being in Austin, that makes sense. Like, Austin is known for some of the greatest potheads of all time. You know what I'm saying? From Ricky Williams to Matthew McConaughey, you know. I throw Willie Nelson in there, even though he's not technically from Austin, and neither are those two guys I just named. But Austin means a lot to those guys. And, yeah, we yeah. embrace the ball around here. So they're in the right place. They're in the right place. Because you call it, it's called Zaza now, but I've never felt so oh, old in my life. Oh, you haven't heard that one? Yeah, that's the that's the new Gen Z. That's what they call it. That, <laughs> that Zaza. Yeah, yeah. Urban uh, Dictionary. I'm getting now. old, man. Yeah. This is like the, this is like the first, saying, synonym, first synonym for weed that I haven't known in my entire life. And, of course, I just turned 30 like two weeks ago, and now it, now it's hitting me. Now I feel it. I didn't feel it until right now. Now yeah. I feel old. God. Hey, man, it's going to keep happening. Dog. I just got with gas when the kids say, oh, I got that gas on me. And yeah. they're like, what? What do you need that gasoline for? Like, you don't have a car. And it's just, no, bro, I got, I got that gas on me. That's like a good boy, you know? And now they're calling it Za. These kids, man. Uh, <laughs> Chip yeah, Brown, yeah, what up? I've heard again. What up, fellas? Chip, what was uh, what were the slang terms for marijuana back in back in your day? Oh, ganja. Now, oh. yeah, that one, that's pretty that classic. One, yeah, that one still sticks, I think. Ganja, Mary Jane. I'm just trying to think of some of the old, the old uh, nicknames. Were you bumping that Mary Jane by Rick James back then? No, I, I. Oh come on! Oh. That's disappointing. I mean, yeah, I was listening to Rick James. You know, super freak. But uh, no, I didn't get into the uh, to the dro until much later in life. Oh, I'm not asking that. I'm just asking about the song <laughs> Mary Jane, like which you basically oh, yeah. answered my question by listening to Rick James. That's what I was getting to. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, the answer to that question is yes. Okay. Oh, oh man. Yeah, Rick James. He had the great braids. You know, oh, man. I don't know. He was on a lot more than just the Mary Jane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think I've got. Yeah. I can't remember which, which album I have from Rick James. It might be Street Songs, or I might have cheated and just gone with the greatest hits. But I got, I got something in the room over Mary Jane's Yo. classic. Oh yeah. Yo, man, he produced Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time. That's yeah. a hit. I love that song. Don't listen to the whole album that Eddie dropped that year. That's, that, yeah, you can watch that album. Party All the Time. Yeah, man, that's it right there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. All right. We got all these terms coming in, too, on the, on the YouTube <laughs> comments line. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That might be something else that you're hearing, DJ. Oh man, that's funny. God bless. All right, yeah. fellas. I know, I know y'all got some football and some UT women's hoops to get into today. So I'll uh I'll bid y'all adieu. Y'all have a great show. BK, okay, you're the man. See you guys. Hey, in the immortal words of Judy Brown, happiness is a choice. We're happy you're spending some time with us, Chip and Zay holding it down. One to three middays right here on Texas Sports on filter got my man zay we are uh we're in the middle of the nfl free agent frenzy zay and it feels like everything's moving and the cowboys are just standing still my man king henry's going to the ravens 
King Henry to the Ravens. Aaron oh. Jones is going to the Vikings. That would have been a good pickup for the Cowboys. Aaron Jones, he played in yeah. Green Bay with Mike McCarthy. Yeah, you think? Especially with what Minnesota's getting them for, like seven mil. That's seven it. Mil? That's it. Seven mil? Yes. That dude was a boss in the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. Like, and he's going back home to Texas. He's a UTEP guy from El Paso. Make it make sense, Jerry. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand. Dallas is the only team in the National Football League that hasn't made any moves. Gotten worse. Losing guys. You know, like, like Tony Pollard. Yeah. And like the Bengals were going to release Joe Mixon. And the Texans are like, hold on. We'll trade you a conditional late round draft pick for Joe Mixon. Yeah. Yo. So now Joe Mixon's going to the Texans. I'd look at Damian Pierce. I look at Damian Pierce if I was Jerry. It might fit, you know. We, you know, we talked about yesterday with John McClain saying that all oh, he in under Zan Stone reads and stuff. Hey, make him understand here in Dallas. Go get them for cheap. They're clearly done with them in Houston, you know, because they got Singletary there. So go. That's the dude had a really good rookie year. There's a lot of promise in him still. Last year, don't look at that as much. Like go after him because right now it's getting really thin around the market for what the Cowboys need. And I know they want offensive line and stuff, but as Deuce Vaughn's your only roster of running back, love me some Deuce. Round Rock Products, Central Texas, big time Wildcat at Kansas State. You know what I'm saying? Love me some Deuce, but he ain't, he ain't pushing the needle. He ain't pushing the needle. So, yeah, this is weird, man. This is a very interesting time. And the Cowboys I don't know if the Cowboys move. misjudged. The running back free agency, like the the fact that it running back became like the position of the first couple days of the free agency frenzy. But you got to be ready to move, man. Yeah, you got to have a plan. I'm not sensing a plan from the Cowboys, which Jera, the I mean, he's got a Super Bowl capable team although biotis just signed with another team i think the commanders uh so they lost their center they're losing tyron smith ay 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 yeah that's what i'm saying like all everything that they need they're not going after you know is that going to throw it 50 times a game oh god like, no that that'd be awful that wouldn't make any sense that you that know? would that would doom. So that like that, that's what doom. it's looking right now. I know. You know, like I just, are they going off of what the Patriots used to do what, by getting some random bum off the street? Somehow they know he runs a four or five and then throwing them back there well, with Brady and getting it done. Like I, I don't and know. And seeing, seeing the, the first couple days of free agency, it makes you realize now that the Super Bowl window was last year. It was last season. That's why I'm so impatient with Dak. Like, you know, I look at the Falcons. The Falcons bring in Kirk Cousins. The Falcons just want to get to the playoffs. The Vikings were trying to get, they, they went to an NFC championship game under Zimmer. They lost to the Eagles, and the Eagles won the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. The Falcons, they haven't been sniffing the playoffs. So Kirk Cousins, the standard, drops a little bit. Now Kirk just has to get a team to the playoffs. They're not writing songs in Minnesota off of Lizzo. You know, why Kirk Cousins, you know, got to, why Kirk Cousins no good when he got to be good? And you look at the Wait, wait what is that? Hold on. I don't know. I'm butchering it, but they, they made a, a song like yeah. They rewrote. Is... They rewrote a Lizzo song and said, "Oh, you know why Kirk Cousins no good when he gotta be good." Damn, that's my girl and, Lizzo, man. Well, you gotta you look at the Cowboys now, and you're like, the standard is the Super Bowl. That's why I'm like, 
I don't know if Dak can handle it. I don't know if Dak's got it. And that's what's so frustrating. And now you have less weapons. You have less of an offensive line than you had last year. And it doesn't look like the Cowboys have a plan. I mean, I saw Jane um, from the NFL Network who covers the Cowboys, Jane Slater. She said, she quoted a source saying, we will make moves within our means. You're telling me Aaron Jones at $7 million is not your means? I mean, what did Tony Pollard sign for? Three years, $24 million? He's getting... Huh? $24 million, yeah. Yeah, he's getting $8 million a year. Like... You should be able to afford seven, eight million bucks. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Spawn? Deuce Vaughn? Deuce baby. Hey, you know what? Let's throw all the chips down, man. Let's all bank on Deuce Vaughn. If that's if Jerry knows something and Big Mac knows something and Steven knows something that we don't, let's let Deuce Vaughn go out here and eat, man. You know what I'm saying? He could be the next Barry Sanders because that's how they acting. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm trying to be positive. You know, you always talk about me being doomsday. Let's see if we flip it back around. Maybe Deuce Vaughn has something special with that Kyler Murray type frame. Let's see. Let, let's see if this is the case because you're right. They ain't doing nothing. Did they, you know, why? what are we looking at? Or somebody in the draft. You know, we talk about Jonathan Brooks and how that makes sense, him being a Texas kid from Hallettsville. Like, but Jonathan Brooks is still coming off an injury. So is there is there something that we don't know? It's just, it's very odd. And Ike, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, you got Singletary going to New York now. So the Texans had to go get Joe Mixon. I'm sure they're keeping Pierce, which makes it even worse for the Cowboys. Like I don't know who's out there. J.K. Dobbins, he's still available. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, he's still available. But and Clyde Edwards, Alaire... I don't know. It was weird because he did so well his first season in the league. And then as soon as Isaiah Pacheco came, Andy Reid just didn't really use him. But then Pacheco got hurt this year and missed the game. And Clyde edwards Lair balled. I think it was against New England. He balled. Had a touchdown through the air and stuff. I like, like I like Clyde edwards Lair. Me too. So, I don't like him as much as I like Aaron Jones. But, nah. I mean – if that's what we're looking at here. Yo, I'm I'm not saying this is the reason, but this probably has a lot to do with it. Dalton Schultz, what he said, those comments, man. Like, I know everybody in the NFL talks and stuff, and this isn't, you know, a secret. But for a lot of people that know how the Cowboys operate, and you talk to other guys that now are your teammates that used to be in the D and they're out here telling you, yeah, I mean, Dallas is cool and all, but it's different and different's not good for everybody. So if teams are looking at Dallas and I'm like, mm, I don't know, it looks pretty toxic all around. Like, do I want to be a part of that or do I want to go somewhere else and not have to worry about, my owner getting on radio every week and possibly talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Just again, we're the new generation of player. Like in the nineties, those guys were different than they are now. Just how they were raised, how they move. Things are different now. So Jerry to some guys might not be relatable. My guy might not want to deal with that headache or Mike McCarthy or Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I have to think that has to be something to that because they're right there. Like, Michael Parsons is always talking on his podcast and stuff. Like, it's just the circus, man. Like, it's not as buttoned up as it should be. And if I'm a free agent and I look at that, opposed to think about Derrick Henry's scenario, going to Baltimore, who was one game away from going to the Super Bowl, and if Todd Munkin would have ran the ball, they probably would have been there. But now you have to run the ball because Derrick Henry's going to Canton. That's an easy decision. Baltimore over Dallas, easy decision. 
easy. It shouldn't be because, again, think about the cities. One city had the show Dallas where everybody was having all this big money and stuff. And then one show had or one city had to show the freaking wire. You know what I'm saying? Which one, which one you want to go to? <laughs> like, that's I'm, I'm just being real now. And this dude picked the wire. Okay. That that just that tells me a lot, man. Especially with Dalton Schultz comments last week on Pat McAfee's show. I mean, I feel like Dak choked in the playoff game, and now the Cowboys are choking in free agency. And it's like Come on, man. You you all have had a good window here. Good window. Dan Quinn running the defense, Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence. Now you've lost Dorrance Armstrong. And you're losing guys. You're getting getting picked apart here. Biotish is going to the commanders. Tyron Smith. Oh man. I just texted a friend of mine who covers the Cowboys. I said, what the hell are they doing at running back? He texted back, Brooks. Oh, wow. Well, who knows? Okay. I mean, I don't know if he's messing or not, but I'm going to say, where can you get him? Yeah. Um, I mean, I like it. It sounds good, but. How ready is Jonathan Brooks going to be in September to play NFL football? Like, that's a lot. I have a lot of faith in Jonathan Brooks, but I also am willing to be patient with Jonathan Brooks. You know, like coming back right after the season and just being thrown like into the fire sounds a little nuts to me, especially with Dallas. You know, it's not going in Indianapolis or a Jacksonville or, you know, it's Dallas. So to put all that on a rookie that's getting over an ACL injury, I'm not saying don't take him, but are we just banking on him being a thousand yard rusher in 2024? That seems a little unrealistic. 2025 and beyond, now we talking. But that window that you're talking about, are we expecting – the former Texas running back to come in and be the guy that helped get you to a championship or Super Bowl. I, I don't know. That's interesting to me. That's a lot to put on a rookie. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot to put on a rookie. That's, it's a lot to put on a rookie coming off an ACL. I mean, the Falcons last year had Tyler Algiers and Bijan. You got to have two. You got to have. You got to have two. I don't know. <laughs> Deuce and Jonathan. <laughs> Deuce and Jonathan. Come on, all big, man. Let's all big get 12. it. Let's keep all it big in 12 Texas. Backfield. Let's keep it in Texas, baby. Let's do the it. All big 12 backfield. I love it. I love it, man. I, oh, my Lord. Yeah, man. Thank you. By the way, you just can't help yourself on throwing that strand, my God, Dak Prescott, new man. That season, all that stuff. Why are we talking about the past, man? What are you talking Nobody, about, new man? Talking about he choked and stuff. Come on, man. Dan Quinn's leaving. You got probably defensive players crying in the back corner because they coaches leaving. They ain't focused on Jordan Love. They ain't focused on Aaron Jones. You know, it's not just Dak. Yes, he threw that pick six. Yes, he wasn't great, but. Come on, man. Let's give my guy Dak some grace. 2024, if he gets Jonathan Brooks, Deuce Vaughn there, maybe get another running back in, a couple of guys to protect him. Let's go. I need okay, some more. but I want to see it. Like, it's happening, and nothing's happening. You know what I'm saying? It's a distraction. He's distracted all the time. Let's, you know, now he got the new baby girl. He's a father. Ain't no more time to play games. I'm telling you, fatherhood has changed Dak Prescott's life. Oh, my God. It's changed his hilarious. life. New outlook. New outlook. New Seeing outlook. the world different. Seeing the world different. Understanding that, man, look, my responsibilities have gone up. Not just me being a father, and I don't know if he's married or if it's his girlfriend or baby mama or not, but and supporting my baby mama, let's just say that, and I say that in the 
utmost respect, but also being a little more patient with my guys, understanding how to talk to C.D. Lamb because, again, now he's a father. Now, now he's talking different. Now he could, you know, give C.D. Lamb those talks and be like, hey, man, calm your ass down. Your Oklahoma ass down. I get it. You went to Norman. There's just going to be some things about you that aren't going to be good. You can't help that. That's just you went to that university. You can't help that. You're corrupt. But you're a very good player, one of the best in the NFL at your positions. Hey, don't trip. We going to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Dak Prescott, I expect Dak Prescott to get to the Super Bowl this year. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I expect that. It's just like Steve Sarkeesian. Championship hey, for us. Hope is not a strategy. <laughs> hope is not a strategy. In the words of Mike Tyson, hope is not a strategy. Here's the thing. Aaron Jones grew up a Cowboys fan, grew up loving the Cowboys. When he came down and beat the Cowboys ass, scoring three touchdowns for the Packers in that playoff embarrassment by the Cowboys, he couldn't wait to talk to Emmett Smith on the field. <laughs> How do you let him get away? He would have been perfect for the Cowboys. Yeah. I'm just surprised. I'm, like, I'm sick you, about you it. You can't whoop our ass and then expect us to pay you. You know how Jerry that's, thinks. Well, that's just dumb. I, 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 I never said it was smart, but pride. That dude, Aaron Jones has still got some, he's still got some gas in the tank. He's a he's a great locker room guy. He's mm -hmm. he's positive energy yeah. he's a playmaker he's only 29 hey i mean it's not like Derek uh jerry hasn't done it before he went in and got dion after yeah. they they ass in 94 with san fran he said I, I need that guy and they won a championship because of it so it's not like jerry jones is opposed to doing that but i don't know again I, i'm i'm trying to be optimistic and think that they know something that we don't with your guy Talking about Jonathan Brooks, hey, for the long haul, makes sense. For 2024, that's a big question mark, man. That means they're taking him in the second round because I don't think he'll be there. I don't know. He could. He could slide. But if everyone's saying he's the top running back in the draft, I don't think you can plan to get him in the third. I think you're going to have to use a second on him, especially yeah. if that's your plan. Like yeah. you can't mess it up. And I know we were talking to Clarence Hill the other day and saying, well, the Cowboys can't be drafting a injured player. Well, they did that with the Notre Dame linebacker, Jalen Smith. They took him when everyone else was like, uh, we don't know if his nerves and his leg are going to reconnect or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he played. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. I mean, Rodney, I'm with you. It's like, I mean, I guess they better hope that's the the plan because all the groceries are getting picked. It's like you're getting to the store. Everyone's preparing for the storm. And you got there and there's there's no water left. There's no toilet paper. Mm. Michigan's running back, Blake Corum. Okay, well, I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I would love Jonathan Brooks to go to Dallas, but I would saying, too. It's a lot. It's a lot to put on a rookie. Yeah, but try to Hallettsville. Yo, but Jonathan Brooks. Let, let's just not. Let's not talk about. The injury. Let's not let's say the injury never existed. You could argue, which again, just hypothetical, you could argue Texas wins a national championship with Jonathan Brooks staying healthy. And that dude, until he got hurt, was a focal point of this team. Yes, Steve Sarkeesian loves to throw that thing, but it ran through Jonathan Brooks. Then Quinn, you were second. 
unless if Sark would have just mucked everything up and put the ball in Quinn Ewer's hands. But Jonathan Brooks was the man this past year. Dope Walker Award, he saw that thing, and then he gets hurt out for the year. So if we're not talking injury, it's a no-brainer. But that's not where we are. And again, with ACL injuries, it's not the same. Like, as you said last week, it's not the same as it was back in the 90s. Like, you tell your ACL, you're basically done with football. You got to hang up them cleats. But nowadays, with modern medicine and how these surgeons are and stuff, like, yo, you get back right real fast, especially depending on your work ethic and physical therapy and stuff and doing everything it takes to get back. And I think Jonathan Brooks is one of those guys. So if you want to invest in that and you're banking on Dak Prescott, like play until he's 42, even though you ready to give up on him, you know, Jerry ain't as long as Jerry's breathing, he ain't ready to give up on Dakota. So let it's still, you're right there at the Super Bowl. If it takes Jonathan Brooks an extra year, I think he's worth it. I do. But it's going to be tough to come up short again in 2024 just because all the expectation and aspirations that the Dallas Cowboys have. If Dak comes up short again in 2024, the window's closed and you have just wasted a three-year Super Bowl window on a quarterback who's getting worse in the playoffs. Like, he played well in the regular season. I'm not going to lie. He was an MVP candidate. Then he gets to the playoffs and looks like he hasn't practiced. He and I don't know what the hell is going on with him and C.D. Lamb. But here's the thing. Dak, they played the 49ers. What was it? Like 15, 12. What was that score two years ago? Yeah, it was two ugly. years ago. 16, 12. Sounds right. I don't yeah, know. 17, 12, something. And he threw two picks in that game. This year, they get beat 48-32, and he's turning it over all over the place. I'm just – I'm like, I, you've shown me who you are when it matters. You've shown me who you are when it's crunch time. Yeah, 19-12, like- <clears throat> they lost. And I, I know he played well against the Bucs, but that was the Bucs <clears throat> with a despondent – Tom Brady after the breakup. I'm I'm like, I'm not ready to crown <laughs> Dak for that playoff win. But if Kirk Cousins is out here getting broken off the paper, he's getting broken off in Atlanta. It's just kind of like, where's the upgrade? You know? Yeah, but like I said, Kirk Cousins, the only expectation is to make the playoffs. For Dak, it's getting to the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl. Let's get Hummer in here. Let's bring in the the national college football analyst, expert, guru for 24-7 sports, the one and only Chris Hummer for our Tuesday football conversation. Hummer, how you doing? What's up, y'all? Doing good. Doing good. You're you're a Dallas Cowboys observer, would you say? Are you a fan? Yeah, big fan. Big fan. Okay. So I'm like sick to my stomach that all these running backs are moving around, including Tony Pollard to the Tennessee Titans. But Zay and I were talking about Aaron Jones the other day. It's a Texas kid, grew up a Dallas fan, beat Dallas's ass in the playoffs. He signs a one-year deal with Minnesota for seven mil. Come on, Cowboys. That was That was the guy. Yeah, I was I was disappointed Aaron Jones wasn't going to be a Cowboy. Um, I think he does a lot of the same things that Tony Pollard is able to do as a receiver. Um, but I also think he's probably a bit better of a runner inside. It is a risk to pay. Well, how old is Aaron Jones now? He's like 30. 29. He's only 29? 29. Yeah, I think like everything I said, I would have loved the Cowboys to sign Aaron Jones. Um, so, yeah, no. Um, it'd be nice to make a move. Yeah, sign Aaron Jones if you're the Cowboys. So. Um, that is this morning. I assume Dallas is going to draft a running back. I think that's the right strategy. You get them in a little cheaper. You get three or four years of service out of them. But um, it would have been okay, nice. Well, let's so let's let's play that out. If they they use the second round pick on Jonathan Brooks, who 
by many's estimation, is the best running back in this draft. Coming off an ACL. Are you ready to put all that on a rookie? Not really, um, to be honest. I think if Dallas is going to draft a back um, early and have them be the number one guy, I don't know if you can go with Jonathan Brooks coming off an ACL injury like that. I think you'd have to look at somebody like Trey Benson or perhaps Blake Corum, uh, Bucky Irving from Oregon. I think those are some of the top backs in this class. Um, I would have loved the Cowboys to sign a veteran free agent to pair with somebody like Jonathan Brooks, but I don't really know who that would be at this point in the market. Although it is a very crowded running back market in terms of free agency and maybe Dallas is going to be bargain bin shopping, which I, I really do think that is a smart move at running back. But I also think, $7 million for Aaron Jones is a pretty good bargain, to be honest. Yeah. And this is like Zay and I were just talking. The Super Bowl window is closing on the Cowboys. Like they just lost Biotish. They're losing Tyron Smith. Like the Super Bowl window was last year. That's why I'm so fed up with Dak. But I mean, you're losing guys now. You're losing pieces. Biotish, Tony Pollard, Tyron Smith. I mean that's a lot of that's a lot of holes to fill. Yeah, I mean, Gallup. That I'd be fine with that personally. That's <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean it's a it's a difficult place for Dallas to be. I don't. I've been of the opinion. I've been very critical of Dak Prescott too. Um, I've had many curse words come out of my mouth surrounding his name over the last couple of years, but. The reality is, like, he's a very good starting quarterback. He's better than Kirk Cousins. I heard y'all discussing him at the tail end of it when I hopped on. He is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL without much question, in my opinion. And he makes you relevant as long as he's healthy. Um, you just have to hope you can overcome some of his shortcomings with the other players on the roster. And for me, this offseason for Dallas, that's much more about signing a couple offensive linemen to have around him that unit struggled quietly last year and also adding some interior defensive linemen that can take some of the pressure off the pass rush and help stop the run a little bit better. I think that matters. What Dallas does at those positions matters a lot more in my opinion than who ends up starting a running back. So I'm, I'm going to give you three running backs that are currently available. You tell me which one you would like to see if the Cowboys with what you just said about picking up one of those rookie running backs that are in the draft right now. They got Clyde Edwards, Elaire, JK Dobbins, AJ Dillon. <laughs> Those are some pretty appealing options right there. <laughs> uh, I mean, personally, I, I remember covering JK Dobbins in high school. I love the kid. Um, would love to see him in Dallas, but he's just never healthy. Um, LaGrange kid. I think he would welcome an opportunity to come home if, given the possibility, but um, he just hasn't proven the ability to stay healthy. Um, so I guess A.J. Dillon out of that group, he hasn't been particularly effective in his career, but what he is is a huge body. Uh, I think he's like 6'2", 240. Oh, he's um, you can put him in in short yard situ situations, which is where Dallas struggled last year, really struggled uh, to punch the ball in um, in short yardage, somewhere where they really missed, missed Ezekiel Elliott last season. So if you can sign A.J. Dillon and then find a more permanent solution in the draft, kind of like A.J. Dillon was for Aaron Jones the last two years, I don't think that'd be the worst thing in the world. I mean, J.K. Dob I mean, uh, J.K. Dobbins is good when he's healthy. I mean, you get a. I mean, I don't even know what you would pay him for a one-year deal, like two million. I mean, he's, J.K. Dobbins has only had. Well, I'm looking at his stats right now. So the last three seasons, he's had a total of 100 carries. Like. Period. He just doesn't stay on the field. Like it's really unfortunate. Um, JK is a really good dude. He works really hard. Um, yeah. He just has I agree. On the field and, and you're spending more than two or $3 million in JK Dobbins and banking your running back room on him. You're making a mistake in my opinion. Yeah. So I, I love Aaron Jones. Like I love that dude. I think he's, he's great energy in your locker room. He's a great team guy. He's good in the community. And El Paso's it, finest, man. El Paso's finest. Yeah, I remember when he played against Texas. He ran for a buck 47 against the Longhorns. Everyone's like, who's that guy? Who's that one really good player for UTEP on the field yeah. against Texas? Um, I mean, what are we doing with uh, 
with little uh, Mighty Might from K State. <clears throat> what are we doing? Oh, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn. I mean, <laughs> like he's he's their only scholarship running back right now. <laughs> well, like. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. Deuce Vaughn was put in a... It was a curious draft for Dallas to pick Deuce Vaughn, given that Tony Pollard was going to be your main back. You would think Deuce Vaughn would be more of that complimentary uh, change of pace piece. But in reality, with Tony Pollard being your number one back, you had what I would consider two change of pace running backs in a lot of ways. Um, Deuce Vaughn didn't get a lot of touches this year. Um I think he had 22, 23 carries. Um, look at the stats now. Uh, but he showed some flashes. He didn't really make much of an impact. Um, I hope what Dallas can do is feature him a little bit more next year and maybe a little bit more selectively. He's one of those players that has to have the ball in the open field in the NFL to succeed. Um, he's very shifty, but he is definitely very small. So um, I'll be I'll be curious about his long-term fit on the roster, but... Uh, you definitely need some bigger backs around him if Dallas hopes to have a manageable backfield next year. Um, it's just, it's tough because, in my opinion, like I understand why they picked Deuce Vaughn. Like, uh, Chip, you also covered Chris Vaughn, uh, Texas yep. like, scout for the Cowboys. It's a great story. Yeah, no, awesome story. And like they took him in the later part of the draft and he can help you. But I also um, wonder what his role on the team is, especially because the Cowboys already have Cavante Turpin who fills a similar capacity in my opinion as a change of pace kind of option. I know Cavante Turpin also runs routes and does other things at wide receivers, but he is going to be your kick returner, which Deuce Vaughn has done some at Kansas state. Um, he's going to be the guy who gets the ball and for swing passes and screens in the open field, kind of like you would expect to set up for Deuce Vaughn. So it is, in my opinion, kind of redundancy a little bit to have them both, but Deuce Vaughn's an easy guy to root for. And I hope he's successful. Yeah. Hummer, one of the craziest football career stories is Baker Mayfield. I mean, going back to his Lake Travis days, he's a walk-on at Tech, ends up going to Oklahoma, winning the freaking Heisman, being the number one pick. The Cleveland Browns say they're done with him. He's on the scout team for the Carolina Panthers. And now he just secured a three-year, $100 million contract. Like, the fact that Baker has landed on his feet again, which that NFC South is a little more heated now with Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, but – how crazy is Baker Mayfield's career in your eyes from just seeing him back to his Texas Tech days to where he is now? I mean, shoot, go back to his freaking Lake Travis days. It's crazy. Like he was a he was the guy who wasn't even really supposed to start at Lake Travis. He didn't get that job until his junior year because of an injury. And uh to see him where he is now is impressive. Um I, I'm not surprised Baker Mayfield did well in Tampa Bay, personally. Um, he is somebody that people always rally around in the locker room. His teammates have always loved him, um, dating back to high school, then at Texas Tech, then at Oklahoma. And even on the Cleveland Browns, um, he's somebody that the community always loves. And I think he got a pretty raw deal in Cleveland. He played hurt his final year there the entire time um, because Cleveland had a chance to make the playoffs. Um, I think his stats suffered greatly because of that. But he went number one overall for a reason. Sure, he's got some limitations that um, some of the other top quarterbacks in the NFL don't have. He's certainly not Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, from an arm talent standpoint, he's definitely not um, somebody like Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. But what he is is somebody who sees the field really well. He's a person that motivates his team, and he had a great year for Tampa. I mean, I loved having him on my fantasy team this year. I tell you what, I drafted him in Dynasty like five years ago. I thought that was a lost cause, and he carried me all year. So I'm. it's cool to see uh, his career continue this way. And I, I don't think you can argue Baker Mayfield's like a top 16 quarterback in the NFL. I think he's proven that pretty clearly. Yeah, yeah good timing. Good timing last year. Made it to the playoffs, won a playoff game. <clears throat> he threw – he threw for more yards last year than Tom Brady did the year before, if I'm not mistaken. So it's yeah. not like that offense was better with Baker Mayfield than it was with Tom Brady um, in 2022. Um, and no slight to Tom Brady, you know what I mean? But like Baker Mayfield was very successful last year. Um, and I don't think it was that much of a drop um, from Tom Brady to Baker Mayfield last season. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
I'm looking at some of these other, you know, free agent moves. You got you got Derek Henry going to the to the Ravens. You got Mac Jones going to the Jaguars. Uh, Gardner Minshew is going to the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, if as you look in that division, Hummer. Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles. Does that make you more or less afraid of the uh, of the Eagles? <laughs> more, <laughs> more. I mean, I still think Saquon Barkley is one of the three most talented backs in the NFL. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely a little worried about the Eagles as a Cowboys fan. But um, Saquon Barkley gets to go home basically for him in Pennsylvania. Um, I think it's a great signing. I happy they're spending their money at running back and not for linebacker or some uh, defensive tackles because Philly needs both of those positions to be upgraded. But yeah, I mean, I think the Eagles are one of the most well-run teams in football. Um, I would put the Cowboys right up there with the Eagles in that way. I think they do things very differently. Um, but the Saquon Barkley signing is a strong one. I think the Derrick Henry signing is more important um, for the NFL at large than Saquon Barkley. I think the Ravens have really missed a consistent running presence in part because of um, J.K. Dobbins' injuries the last couple of years. And putting Derrick Henry in that backfield with uh, Lamar Jackson, like, that's going to be a pair that's hard to bring down, man. Like Derrick Henry's a mountain and Lamar Jackson is a fish. Like You can't touch him in the open field, it feels like. So um, that's going to be a fun pairing. Yeah. Hummer, you know, Mac Jones going to Jacksonville, that makes me think that this Trevor Lawrence thing, they're getting a little um, impatient with Trevor Lawrence's development. I mean, we know Trevor Lawrence, all the hype that he had coming out of the state of Georgia, being the next big thing and winning with Dabo and being the number one pick. Mac Jones, obviously what happened in New England happened, but both of those guys, a lot of NFL guys thought they had a lot of optimism with them coming into the league and that doesn't look like the case why do you think that is with Trevor Lawrence and do you think he could still be what he was supposed to be coming out of high school yeah I mean not not good radio but I have I have no idea I think Trevor Lawrence has been really effective I think Trevor Lawrence has always been uh I think he's lacked some risk, risk aversion even going back to his days at Clemson at Clemson he got away with it because he had some of the best receivers in the country and had a more talented team than almost anybody he played week to week. But I think Trevor Lawrence has always had a bit of a problem uh, reigning in his propensity for putting the ball in uh, stressful situations. Um, he is still extraordinarily talented, though. Um, and I still think Trevor Lawrence will work out over the long term. Um, Mac Jones is a more surprising disappointment to me. I thought he would be very functional at, wor at worst in the NFL. I thought it would be a lower tier starting quarterback, but you can tell being on the Patriots and with that offensive line and their lack of receivers really broke his confidence. So I think, I think that's a good um, upside bet for the Jaguars to have him back up Trevor Lawrence. And I mean, Mac Jones and Trevor Lawrence are two of the probably 10 best college football quarterbacks we've seen in the last 10 years. And to see them both in the same, in the same room is pretty interesting. Yeah. The Cowboys have made a move. They've signed long snapper Trent Sieg. There we go. Hey, Chip, he's he's one of the 32 best long snappers in the world. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't, don't give up hope yet, Cowboys fans. I mean, he played uh, the previous five years with the Raiders, and they're getting him for – Um. well, he made $1.23 million last year, so I – Bet it's slightly higher than that. Hey, Chip, the Cowboys needed a long snapper. We're just a dread. Like, can you imagine where NFL teams would be without a long snapper? I know. You need I know. a holder, too. Like, if I know anything as a Cowboys fan, you need a long snapper and a holder. Neither one of them worked out uh, for the Cowboys when they played the Seahawks back in the day. So, this is an important signing. Oh. Man, I'm just waiting for the Cowboys to get a quarterback who's a gangsta like Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman. I mean, 
Tony Romo and Dak Prescott are two of the biggest fool's gold quarterbacks of the last 25 years. Sadly. What's up with this Tony Romo slander? Oh, man, he's been, he will slander a Dak or Tony Romo any chance. What did Romo ever do? Tony Tony Romo Romo had more second half comebacks. Yeah, because he threw interceptions in the first half. (laughs) He was like James Thomas being the all-time leading rebounder at Texas because he was getting his own missed shots. Had him right where they wanted him, Chip. Had him right where they wanted him. Tony Romo, baby. He made it exciting because he'd throw two picks in the first half and then he'd throw for four touchdowns. Hey. You can't come back, Chip, if you're not behind, and you would be bored if you were a Cowboys fan, and it wasn't a little interesting. So I still think, I still think that 2007 Cowboys team, uh, where Patrick Creighton dropped that pass on that um, a fourth, I think it was a fourth down attempt late in the fourth quarter against the Giants. Against the, the Giants, team. yeah, it was the best Cowboys team that we've seen this century, and uh, that was definitely not Tony Romo's fault that that game didn't go Dallas's way. That was the year I think that. Giants upset the Patriots the first time. Um, and I think that was a Super Bowl worthy roster. And I think yeah. t- the narrative around Tony Romo would be a lot different if Patrick Creighton had caught that pass. Okay. Patrick Creighton, where Patrick. are they now? Yeah. Hey, Hummer, are you surprised Nick Saban's doing all this talking now that he's retired? No, he's a professional talker now, Zay. Like, he's, he's just like, y'all, uh, yeah. he's going to be on college game day. I think Nick Saban is motivated to see changes in the sport. Um, he acknowledged it today um, in Congress saying like nothing. I think he said essentially like he's coached in college football for 40 years and nothing resembles what he signed up to do. Um, anybody who says Nick Saban didn't retire in part because of the landscape is lying to themselves. Um, and it's not just an age thing. It's a job thing. And I think Nick Saban is just as motivated as anybody else to secure changes that bring stability to the sport, um, which is why he's in Congress today with, I mean, not not to get political, but he is definitely friends with Joe Manchin, the outgoing West Virginia Senator who has been out front in terms of trying to get an NIL deal um, through and a change in the college athletics deal. I have no idea if it'll get passed. I don't think Congress patches much of anything. And I think college football is going to continue to float in the wind, but Sending somebody like Nick Saban, the most notable name in the sport, to Congress is not a bad idea if you're trying to jump up support. Yeah, I mean, we're going to pay attention to what Nick Saban says because he's Nick Saban. He's the best to ever do it. And the talk about, you know, the NIL and, and you know, that being a primary reason he left the game and it's not the game I used to know. Okay. Well, it's the game we have. And how much of that is Nick Saban, not liking having, he used to have a monopoly, you know, he used to be, his program was great at under the table. And because he was Nick Saban, Guys wanted to go play for him. They knew they were going to get developed and be NFL players. But, I mean, isn't some of this a little disingenuous, Hummer? I No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I can certainly understand why fans would feel that way, that Alabama had a monopoly for so long and the best players, and they dominated the sport um, because of some of the advantages they had. But this is, this is a system – that is completely broken. I don't know how anybody can look from the outside and see a functioning um, business. Like, first of all, like we talk about college athletics, like it's a business. It's one of the worst run businesses in the world. If that's that's the true. Like, it is horrendously managed, and the lack of stability right now is just not good for the sport. Like, and there's no question, players are in a much better place than they were a decade ago. Like, they're able to be compensated, but having states and this has all been state driven. Like the reason why we've gone down this path the way we have is because of California initially creating the NIL um, marketplace the way they did by passing a law. And then the way the world works is if you can gain an advantage, you're going to gain an advantage. And we've seen states successively pass their own bills designed to 
provide advantages to their own schools. And we've seen schools push the envelope completely. Schools like Miami and Tennessee and Oregon and even Texas have ruined this for the rest of the people. Um, NIL was supposed to be just about a player's name, image, and likeness. It is now a way to funnel under the table salaries to players. And that's created a chaotic environment that's not good for anyone. It's not good for the athlete, in my opinion, because many of these athletes are getting ripped off. It's not good for, obviously, the coaches, because the sport has changed around them completely. It's not good for programs. A lot of the money they were fundraising before to put in facilities or to do whatever is now having to be funneled for NIL. So donations are down in a lot of schools. It's not good for the little guy. Um, we've seen that with conference realignment. We saw Oregon State and Washington State get left out, and they're not going to be the only two teams left out over the next decade. Like This is going to continue to shrink, and it'll be great for Texas. It'll be great for LSU. It'll be great for Ohio State. But like, I could definitely see a world one day where Rutgers, the Big Ten looks at Rutgers and says, sorry, bro. And the same thing with the SEC and Vanderbilt. Um, so it's good for the haves, not great for the have-nots. And it's just chaos all around. So I don't, I don't think it's disingenuous for Nick Saban to push for change because it's needed if college football ever wants to be a stable business product, if they want to have a straight path forward. And the only way we're going to see that is federal change because states are going to continue to pass laws that benefit their own states. Oh, they right. missed the window. <laughs> they missed the window to just cap it at 5,000. Hell, 5,000 for your 500 student athletes. Like, Federal Judge Claudia Cohen said in the O'Bannon case, if they'd have just listened. Yeah, and like I, I completely agree. And the NCAA schools, I mean, this is completely disingenuous of them for years, the way they handled this. Like Texas, I mean, what was tech chip? What was Texas athletic budget in like 2015? It was probably like 150, 160 million dollars. Yeah. And like, what is that like? I think 10 million maybe goes back to the school. The other $140 million was spent on contracts, salaries, um, athletic improvements, facilities, fundraising, like all, all that stuff's not necessary. Like sure. Student athlete welfare is necessary. You want to have the best tutors. You want to have the best training table. You want to have the best facilities, but even that, like to have $150 million a year as a business and to ra like rationally say you can't, pay your workforce is ridiculous and they had the opportunity as you said to get out there and make it a very small sum you could have paid them ten thousand dollars a year now student athletes are getting cost of attendance stipends of like eight thousand dollars a semester at these schools um they definitely missed the boat and they're all paying for it and it's all because of i mean it's all because of greed like they it was a beautiful system like it was one of the few systems in the world where you had a really profitable business that did not pay its labor a set it, right. I mean, it's not a pyramid scheme, obviously. Like, that's not quite what that is, but it had whiffs of a pyramid scheme and a way like you essentially pass the buck and you push the thing down and have your labor force uh, feed the rich at the top. Anyway, getting out of hand, but yeah, no, they totally missed the boat on that. Hummer, you and Chip's colleague Brad Crawford at 24 7 Sports dropped his top quarterbacks in the nation with Carson Beck and Shadur Sanders ahead of Quinn Ewers at three. You agree with this with Brad? Uh, no, <laughs> I would not have Shadur ahead of uh, Quinn Ewers. I don't even know if I'd have Brock uh, ahead of, I'm sorry, Carson Beck ahead, as Brock Vandergriff, the former Georgia quarterback, getting a little confused. I think Quinn has been less consistent than Carson Beck was last year, but I think the upside is higher for Quinn. I think Quinn led his team to the playoff last year. Carson Beck did not do that. I think Shadur Sanders has everything catered to him in that offense, and he was really good, but um, I don't know if I'd have him above Quinn either. Um, I think Quinn has a really good chance next year to win the Heisman Trophy and to establish himself as the top quarterback in college football. And, I would have had him at two and not a three in that ranking. Yeah. Didn't Colorado change out their whole offensive line? Yeah, uh, trying to upgrade around Shadur. But, like, that's the thing with Shadur. Like, I think Dion, Dion got onto the offensive line as the issue all, all year. Um, he heaped the blame at the feet of the offensive line. But I think we've talked about it with Caleb Williams before. Nobody holds the ball longer than Caleb Williams in college football, or he holds it a long time. Nobody held the ball longer than Shadur Sanders. He 
extended the play on every snap. And that's why he was getting beat up. The ball did not come out on time. And I think that's why you saw some of the tension uh, with Shadur, Sean Lewis, and Deion Sanders um, at the kind of the breaking point of the year. Um, and I think Shadur, as good as he was and as many plays as he made, needs to learn to rein that in a little bit if he wants to get to where he wants to go with the NFL. Yeah. All right. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, spring football starts on March 19th. Any, uh, any storylines involving the Longhorns you're, you're interested in? I wrote about spring, it's classic spring content. I wrote about spring football questions for every SEC team earlier this week. Um, and I think the most obvious one for Texas and the one I'm most curious about is what does that defensive tackle room look like? I mean, obviously, Texas has two guys that you would imagine plug in there with Vernon Broaden and Alfred Collins. But are we going to get a peek at Alfred Collins potentially taking another step this spring? Um, I'll be curious how Texas compensates for the lack of Andre Sweat and Byron Murphy on the inside and how the defensive line, specifically on the edges, comes along next to those defensive tackles. So I'll, I'll definitely be watching the defensive line for Texas this spring when I get started. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. We had Casey Hampton on yesterday, and uh, he had some interesting thoughts. But, I mean, he, I think he feels good about Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton. And – and now it's about capitalizing and recruiting on the success of Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat. Yeah, I'm sure Bo Davis is saying the same thing at LSU. Um, but yeah, and I mean, also, like, you just you need some of the younger defensive tackles to emerge as difference makers too. Like, part of the reason Texas was so successful last year is Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy only had to play around 400 snaps for the year. They were fresh. They were allowed to rotate. And you have two starters right now for Texas going into the spring, but do you have the three, four, five um, in that rotation? You really need to see guys like Aaron Bryant and Jure Bledsoe stepping up this spring as well. So that that is that's the position from top to bottom on the depth chart, I think is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Last one for me, Hummer. When you're looking at a lot of these mock drafts and you see where Kansas City is sitting at 32, Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell's name is coming up a lot. Which receiver from Texas fits in to what Andy Reid does more? I mean, given the way Andy Reid used Tyree, Tyreek Hill, um, Tyreek Hill only had, it felt like four or five routes in an offense. And it was just chuck it and Tyreek's going to make a play. Um, I don't think Xavier has quite the hands of Tyreek Hill, uh, but you would imagine that being a more natural fit. Although Adonai Mitchell, man, like, I would still take Adonai Mitchell over Xavier Worthy in the draft if I had a choice. I think he is a potentially special wide receiver. I think he is a num true number one receiver if he continues to develop as a route runner. He has the ability to win 50-50 balls. He's fast enough to beat a player over the top. He's explosive enough out of his breaks to create separation. I think he does everything you would want a number one receiver to do. And that's the guy I would target if I was the Chiefs personally. But like... I mean, who doesn't want to see 4 2 1 with Patrick Mahomes, right? Like, it'd be a lot of fun. So, um, I don't think you go wrong with that choice if it is there, but I would personally select Mitchell over Worthy. Hummer, you're right. We love talking to Hummer on uh, on Tuesdays. Um, you got a different, you're in like in a different location this time. Yeah, man, just working out of the kitchen. Uh, about to go back outside. The weather's perfect over here in Austin, as y'all know. So, excited yeah to you, you a team. south by guy hummer you get out to any south by events or anything if i get out to south by i mean avoiding the whole thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, I i will usually go to a couple panels every year but this year uh i was skipping I'll just skip where'd you go to high school hummer walks a okay yeah i was gonna say spoken like a true austinite no, man. Uh, but I've been here. I've been here like a decade now. Like, I, I've yeah, you, you I went really... to UT. You're an Austinite. Yeah, you I don't. I don't, I, you can't. I don't need the South by business. I went to I went to Birds to get my hair cut uh, last week because it was looking rough, and I have never seen that place busier, man. They were almost out of beer to hand me to sit there and get my shortcut because they were so busy with South by, and that was as far on Congress as I wanted to get uh, for the next two weeks. Interesting. All right, Hummer. You're the best. Let's do it again next week. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate you. All right. There he is. Chris Hummer, national college football analyst for 24 seven sports. Um, get over to, well, you can follow him on Twitter, Chris underscore Hummer. Um, but get over to 247sports.com. You can read his story about the top question for all the SEC teams heading into spring football. Of course, a lot of SEC teams are already in spring football. Texas is starting late after spring break. Um, Zay, did you watch the Texas women's basketball game last night? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Almost blew that thing, Vic, but hey, got the Shea Holly, together. baby. Yo, she's my favorite player. It's not even she, close. She delivered, and that team was unraveling. And Madison Booker, I, I feel bad for Madison because we saw this kind of in the OU game up in Norman where Madison tries to do everything. I mean, she's trying to help her team, but she's missing shots. She missed a lot of shots down the stretch of that OU game. They ended up, you know, they ended up losing it on a last second possession. Um, it was starting to happen again. Madison was trying to take shots. She was taking bad shots. And Shea Holly, you know, great kickout pass from Aaliyah Moore to Shea, who buries the three from the corner with a minute left. It gets Texas a little breathing room. And then she, on the next trip down, gets that, you know, gives Shea, Shayla Gonzalez that head nod to, you know, basically feed her a backdoor. Um, uh, yo, Vic Schaefer, man. Passed. Vic Schaefer, that's immaculate, man. That's one of the best plays. You're not supposed to get out-of-bounds play layups, especially sideline out-of-bounds play layups in clutch time. That shouldn't be happening, you know, and I'm not going to completely bash the Kansas State coach because that is unacceptable. But also everybody in the last two minutes is even more locked in than ever because, you know, that's winning time. So to get Shea Holly that open on the sideline out of bounds play, Vic Schaefer, that's that's elite, man. That is yeah. great play calling. Uh, then so Holly induces a travel by – Serena Sundell of K State, and just like that, ball game. Texas, it's ball game. Yeah, yeah. So. Shay Holly, like again, she's not going to be a woman that you see in the WNBA. If she wants to play, she could probably find somewhere overseas. But she's getting her masters. I'm sure she's going to go on and do great things. I could definitely see her being a coach. But She's the exact player that you need to win championships. Like you go back to, you know, former NBA teams that were dynasties like the Lakers. Yeah. Kobe and Shaq did their thing, but if Derek Fisher wasn't there, they wouldn't have those rings. Like you need guys like Derek Fisher. You need guys like Bruce Bowen, you know, players like that. And Shea Holly, she's that like, she's going to knock down the jumper, like the, her art on her shot. It's so pretty, man. Like, I, I wanted to take more shots. Like, if I'm Vic Schaefer, I'm running plays for her to get more shots, especially the free up, as you were saying, Madison Booker, sometimes she feels like her responsibility gets too much. Like, she doesn't have to do that much if you're running plays for Shea Holly. And Shea Holly, she's going to pick and choose when to take her shots and stuff within the offense. She's really good about that. But, yo, that shot. It's, it's too pretty for us just, you know, her to take like five a game, if that. Like before, she didn't score against Kansas State until yesterday. Those things can't be happening. Like she's too good of a shooter. She needs more reps, and that's going to expand everybody else's game, like a Shaylee Gonzalez, like a Leah Moore, like Taylor Jones, you know, to go crazy and get open looks. But, yeah, I – defense first team all defense in the big 12 like she's exactly what you need and i love what vic schaefer said after the game he went on about a two-minute rant praising shay holly and what she yeah. brings to this program and what she brings to this ball club and yeah, yeah. as you're saying chip like that last minute and some change she took over 
knocking down that three, getting that back door on the sideline out of the bounce play, forcing the travel. Like she took over, and she's going to be huge if the Texas Longhorns want to make it to the Final Four like we all think they can. Yeah, and Deanna Gaston, too. I uh, thought she, you know, stepped up when th- this time I think they sensed that Booker was, you know, trying to get her shot because she can. Um, but it 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 got away from them at OU and it was starting to get away from them here. They're they were the road team for sure. The crowd at those conference tournaments wants the upset. They're Sure, there are a lot of K-State fans in that T-Mobile Center, but all the fans start cheering for the upset. They got an upset earlier in the day. Iowa State beat OU, pounded them. Yo. And those freshmen. Yo, Audie, Audie Crooks. Audie Yo, Crooks. man. She's no joke. She ain't no joke. She ain't She's, no joke. I mean, 26 points. Yo, her footwork, She's, man. Freshman. Man, yo, and you ain't gonna move her. You're not gonna no. move her. She gonna get to her spot. She's she's built like Charles Barkley. Yeah, she's exactly. She looks like Barkley out there, and she got light feet, great touch. She's a tough matchup. Which you know, Ioka Lee, she got hers, but I thought they should have double teamed her a little bit more. They were leaving Taylor Jones on an island a little bit too much for my liking because Kansas State. They weren't knocking shots down from the outside, you know. I thought, I, I thought Ioka Lee got tired. Yeah. She wasn't working as hard to get the ball in the second half as she was in the first half. Yeah. I mean. And, and she ended up with 25, but she had 18. Yeah, she in the first 25 half. tired. Like, yeah, I just, it, it was, I don't know. I would have thrown her a little bit more double teams early on. So they want to just stick around in the game because. You, you're up 14, you know, you got to give them different looks. Yeah. You keep that same look, they're going to figure it out, and they're going to adapt. And that's – that's leaving her on the island, like, they just started cutting off of her, and they started doing things a little bit differently in that second half, and that's how the comeback, you know, happened. But, yeah, oh, shoes. Audie Crooks, I like her game, man. Yo, the fact that she got to Ames, yo, we're lucky that she didn't pair up with Caitlin Clark because she's an Iowa girl. If she would have paired up with Caitlin Clark and went with the Hawkeyes, yo, they would have been undefeated this year. Thank goodness for the nation's sake that she must have some Iowa State ties with family or something. I don't know. But that's an Iowa girl. I'm pretty PO'd the fact that you don't pair her with Caitlin Clark in this last season because that would have been a ridiculous duo like Tarazi or Sue Bird or something. I don't know. But that's the fact that they let her get out of there. And she must have family ties. It might have been like a Texas, Texas A&M situation where their her parents, you know, went to Iowa State. I don't know. But, yeah, I love her game. Like, she's a tough matchup. And Taylor Jones, Gaston, you know, Leah Moore, they got their hands cut out for them tonight. Yeah, tonight, 8 o'clock. Um, you got Texas and Iowa State for the Big 12 Tournament Championship. It's the third straight Big 12 Tournament Final for the Texas women. They won it not last year. They lost to Iowa State last year. And it was a whole different cast. Like, you got to give Bill Fennelly a lot of credit because he brings in three stud freshmen uh, and at Audie Crooks, Addie Brown, and um, the Harrison girl, and they pair them with Emily Ryan, the point guard, who averages almost seven assists a game. She had 10 assists in the win over OU, and Texas drummed them in Austin in their only meeting in the regular season. But if Texas goes into this game thinking it's going to be like that, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough after. It's gonna be a tough night tonight. They gotta, they gotta do a great job of scouting, and they gotta be ready to go. And Deanna Gaston, she makes a big difference. She did the best job of defending Ioka Lee because she's athletic 
and six two. She can get around front. She can, you know, play behind, play in front. Um, and she's strong enough to kind of keep keep them from getting just totally deep, you know, post uh, position. But yeah, I'm interested to watch this game because obviously Texas was the preseason pick to win the conference with Rory Harmon. Obviously, no Rory Harmon, but they still have a chance to win the Big 12 tournament title. And I know Vic thought this was a team that could go to the Final Four before the season with Rory. Are they good enough to get there without Rory? And if they keep getting performances like they got from Shea Holly and Deanna Gaston last night, and Shaylee Gonzalez was really good shooting the ball early, and then she started missing. Um, she was really good shooting the ball early. I was like, oh, okay, here she goes. And then she missed five shots in a row as K-State was coming back. Texas missed 10 shots in a row. That's how K-State got back in the game. Yeah, she, uh, Shaylee Gonzalez had a really good left-handed finish in clutch time. And Gasson's had a good putback off of a rebound to just, you know, stay afloat and take it into the last minute where Shay Holly went crazy. But yeah, you can't take anybody lightly. And if you look at Madison Booker, if I'm her all off season, I'm working on my off the dribble three. Now you're banking on Rory Harmon to come back. So her role is going to go back to just being a scorer instead of a point guard who has to score for her team, but they give her so much space at the top of the key. Like her defenders always at the free throw line because they know her mid-range pull-up jumper. It's absolutely money, and they want to get rid of that. Like, and Madison Booker does a great job of not just settling. But I'm Vic Schaefer. We're working on the three ball all year long, all summer long. That's all we're working on. We know you can do everything else. If you get that three to your game, you're in that Cheryl Miller, Brittany Griner, Diana Taurasi category of one of the best to ever do it. Because she has all the intangibles, man. That jumper, I can't get over it. It's as sweet and smooth as you're going to find it. Like, again, I'm not not being sexist here. Letting y'all know, this ain't no sexist moment. But we just know when it comes to women shooting the ball, a lot of the time they shoot it from their chest and they push it into a pure form. While you see yeah. just like the best, like a natural pull-up over your head shot. That's what she has. Like, that is so rare. Like, we're, again, Maya Moore had that that's who she reminds me a lot of myra maya moore who went to uconn and then went for play for the minnesota lynx and was just one of the best basketball players that you're going to see playing for gino she had that smooth pull-up jumper to her game and it separated her from everybody else in women's basketball madison booker can be that so if she just adds that three ball to her game that hey Sky's the limit for her. Sky's the limit for this team. And, yeah, they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. And I still do think, you know, without Rory Harmon, they have a big chance to go to the Final Four, especially when in the Big 12 tournament. I don't know, you know, just looking at the rest of the nation, what that means. Because Stanford, they lost to USC. So Stanford, I they've lost to USC twice. They lost to them in uh, the Pac-12 championship, and they lost to them in the regular season. So I Stanford, if Texas wins – they should be that number one seed, you know, yeah. over Vanderveer, my girl, with that bob, that classic bob that she's had for 40-something years. I need her to be over that. You know what I'm saying? And, hey. It's a classic that, bob. That classic bob. Tara, that's my girl. That's my girl. She don't play. She don't play. She look like a college principal. She don't play. I love her, man. She be slapping your knuckles. <laughs> Slapping those knuckles with a ruler. Yeah. Tara, Tara Vanderveer. Vanderveer. I love her, man. She's great. All right. Let's bring in our man, Hank South, recruiting guru, horns247.com. Hank, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are y'all? Doing good. Doing good. I wasn't sure if you were uh, with that uh, dateline on the, on the stampede, if you were up in, in, uh, in Big D Dallas still, or if you were, you know, out uh, 
out and about, but um, welcome back to Austin, my friend. <laughs> Appreciate You're it. a Cowboys fan, aren't you? Yeah, or no? I mean, I, I don't really have any NFL allegiance. I just like whoever helps my fantasy football team. And I like following <laughs> the Texas guys in the league, so. Yeah, we were lamenting earlier the Cowboys not making any moves in the yeah. running back room, considering they lost Tony Pollard to the Titans. Hey, just but, uh, Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. How about that? It'll work out. Wouldn't that be something? All right. Well, let's go back to uh, let's go back to your your coverage of the Under Armour next camp up in DFW over the weekend that you featured prominently in the uh, in the Stampede. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what stood out to you? Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was a good camp. Um, went up there on Sunday, um, and we got Houston this weekend as well. So they're doing them back to back. So I think Houston will probably have a handful of more guys in, in terms of, uh, you know, the 2025 class and, and Texas targets. But I mean, you, you look at this Dallas roster and, you know, I think it starts with the offensive line, you know, both, uh, well, all three of their, you know, arguably, arguably biggest targets in the class um, were there in, uh, in, in Michael Fasusi, the five-star tackle from Louisville, um, Ty Haywood, the five-star tackle from, um, from Denton Ryan, and then Lamont Rogers uh, from Mesquite Horn, who's, a, who's a, I think he's a top 50 prospect um, tackle. And, and, you know, that's, those are the big three really for, for, uh, for Texas that, that they want to, um, you know, at least hit on one of them, if not more in the class of 2025. All three are very high on Texas, you know, uh, went into the event kind of, you know, with, with Haywood in particular, you know, we were kind of hearing that, you know, maybe Oklahoma was trending for him. Uh, there aren't any crystal ball picks, but, you know, we were able to talk to him and uh, he seems relatively wide open and, and he seems very high on Texas. You know, I actually got a better and, you know, better feeling about where Texas might stand for him. I don't think he's leaning to Texas yet, but I think they have as good a chance as anybody you know, um, from, from talking to him, talking to people around him um, on Sunday, he's going to take all sorts of visits this spring. He's going to be back at Texas for the, um, for the spring game on April 20th. And he's going to take an official visit in the summer. Um, same with Fasusi. Um, I, I actually crystal ball picked um, Michael Fasusi to Texas last Friday. Um, I, I think they're in good shape for him. And I, and I still feel that way after, after being with him at the camp this, this weekend, um, you know, he, he, he said nothing but great things. He, he was talking about how, you know, Texas is making him feel like a priority. Um, you know, he feels like their top guy. He probably is, you know, if, if I'm not going to rank him, but, you know, he, he's, he's up there. I, I, I would argue he's probably the top offensive line target. Um, you know, you could probably interchange a bunch of a few of those guys, but Fasusi's up there for sure. Um, he's going to be back on campus April 9th uh, to see a practice. And then he's coming back for an official visit that June 21st through 23rd weekend. Um, and, and so they'll have him. And then, uh, some of the biggest news that came out, uh, was Lamont Rogers who, um, hasn't, there hasn't been a ton of Texas buzz with him, but I, I think they really are starting to pick it up with him in, in terms of, you know, the kind of putting the pedal to the metal and, and, and trying to, to make a push for him. And, and he's going to be back on campus on, uh, March 29th. So coming up in, you know, a few, a little over two weeks. So, um, Texas is going to have all big three, their offensive line targets back in, I think beyond that, um, the two other biggest targets in attendance were uh, were DeCorey Moore. I mean, that goes without saying. The kid's absolute just freak athlete, number one wide receiver in the country. He is committed to LSU, um, but Texas has been, you know, kind of just chugging away there, trying to change that. Um, talk to him. You know, he he's still very interested in Texas. You know, it, it, that's very evident. He's going to take an official visit in the summer. He's actually coming back for the spring game as well. So at least two more visits from him. I think we'll probably see some closure in his recruitment around August, like we kind of did with Colin Simmons. And I think Texas has a legitimate shot there. Mike Roach reported yesterday that um, he's only communicating with four schools now, and it's Texas, LSU, um, Ohio State, and um, totally blanking on the other one. Um, why am I blanking on the other one? Uh, A&M, maybe? I think, it, you know, I think it's a Texas-LSU battle regardless. But, oh, I'm sorry, Oregon, duh. Yeah. Um, Texas, uh, Oregon, LSU, and Ohio State. So I would expect him to officially visit all four of those schools. Um, he actually has family in the Austin area, and, and his family is big Texas, big Texas fans. And I think that might be helping kind of the cause for Texas. Um, you know, he, he told me that, you know, his mom kind of made him look at Texas early on. Um, and he was glad – he said he was glad she did because he, he really loves Texas. Um, 
So we'll see. He still says all the right things about LSU. Um, but again, you know, Texas is pushing there. And then Riley Pettijohn, the linebacker from McKinney. Um, I really like Texas's position there with him. He's, uh, I think he has a top six out, top five out, but um, he's not naming leaders or anything. But I think Texas is doing a good job there. I think he and Johnny Nansen have really just clicked. Um, and, and, you know, they're treating him like the, the top linebacker on the board, which he, which he probably is. Um, and, and again, another guy we'll, we'll see a bunch of visits from this summer, but probably make a decision shortly after those visits. And I think Texas has, has, uh, the inside track for him. So there's other guys, but, uh, those are kind of the big, you know, five names of note, you know, we were kind of keeping an eye on, on, on Sunday. So you think Texas, um, this will be a big year for the offensive line. And if, if possible, they would take all three, Ty Haywood. I mean, they would take those guys, Michael Pasusi <laughs> and uh, Lamont Rogers in that class. Yeah, you know, if those three wanted to come, I, I don't see any scenario where Texas would turn those guys down. Um, you know, I, I don't envision those them all three going to the same school. I think, you know, I think A&M will probably get one of them. I think you know, I think they'll get one of those guys, and I think it's Fasusi right now. But they are, you know, trending up with Lamont Rogers, and and you know, I think in a pretty good spot for for not. I mean, I don't want to say they're like trending for Ty Haywood, but I think they're right there in the mix for Ty Haywood for sure. I think the visits are going to determine a lot with him. And I was talking to a source about Ty Haywood and um, you know, Michael McCall. Hey, what's up? Um, went to high school with him. Well, I went to all elementary school and high school with him. Uh, Holy shit. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, Michael? Um, but no, yeah, he, uh, uh, what were we talking about? Offensive lineman. Uh, yeah, Fasusi, I think is the guy right now. If more wanted in, I, th I think, you know, they would take him. but you know, the, the offensive line class is deep in the state of Texas, you know, beyond those guys, you got, I just wrote about Tyler Thomas this morning. Um, uh, prospect from uh, Dickinson. He's going to officially visit uh, Texas in June. He's actually, you know, said Texas is the school he's leaning to um, in the past. Um, Jackson Christian, another, uh, sorry, my phone's ringing. Another, um, a guy, uh, Port Ages Groves. Or wait, yeah. And then uh, he, he's officially visiting in the summer. I mean, there's a bunch of Byron Washington. You got John T. Newman. There's some other guys they haven't offered. Um, so it's a pretty deep offensive line class. A lot of guys Texas is interested in. And, you know, I definitely think they're going to sign more than three high school prospects um, in the class of 2025, as opposed to, you know, what they did in 24. Yeah. Have you talked to some of these players being recruited about the new additions to this coaching staff with Johnny Nansen and Kenny Baker, what their thoughts are on them. You just mentioned all those offensive linemen. I'm sure Kenny Baker knows that and getting a good jump on it. Yeah. Um, nothing but good things to say. You know, I think uh, particularly Nansen already, you know, with, with having been on campus for that junior day back on January 20th, he really hit it off with a lot of guys and and we knew he was a really strong recruiter just based off his track record and and what he's been able to do at his other stops and so that wasn't a huge surprise you know kids really like him they they like his football knowledge they think he's a great developer and and you know that that was also kind of the points they were talking about him like i said riley pettijohn loves him um another top linebacker target and excuse me elijah bo barnes he loves johnny nansen i, I think he has i think nansen has him in in uh in texas in good shape for for bo barnes as well um, but then, you know, Kenny Baker, that's going to be a fun one to see this spring. You know, all these visits are getting lined up, um, you know, over the next three, four months. And, uh, you know, we're going to get to see kind of how he is as a recruiter. You know, so far, coaches haven't been able to he, – he hasn't been on the staff, you know, long enough to really be out on the road that much um, as a Texas coach. And so, you know, with guys visiting campus this spring and, you know, um, as they kind of make a push for this defensive line class, we're, we're going to get a good idea. And, and one guy, you know, they could make a splash with, quickly is or already have been you know is ethan utley the the um top 247 defensive lineman from nashville he's actually announcing a decision on march 28th and uh we spoke i spoke with him the other night for you know 10 minutes and and he was talking he, he was saying he really liked kenny baker he loved the hire you know just guy he really connected with likes a lot and you know you talk uh, another good you know indicator of of uh you know how great of a you know recruiter slash coach they are is you know the what the high school coaches are saying and you know when he got hired I mean, I saw coaches all throughout the Southeast of the Carolinas, like they, they're all talking about home run hire for uh, with, with Kenny Baker. So I would anticipate him being a, a really solid recruiter. I've already talked to another big uh, borderline five-star defensive lineman, Malik Autry, that Texas recently offered, who's committed to Auburn. He was raving about Kenny Baker. Um, he, he said he, they were talking on the phone and 
he was like, man, I can't, I didn't realize how good your film was. And, you know, they really just hit it off and, and Autry's excited to get down to campus and, and, and visit with, uh, with Baker as well. So sounds like all the reviews are really positive and, you know, we'll get a, obviously get a better idea as the spring goes on with, uh, you know, as they continue to add commits and into the summer with this kind of this loaded official visit season that's uh, coming together again. Um, do you have a, do you have a preference, Hank, uh, talking to Hank South recruiting guru horns 24 or seven, do you have a, a personal or what do you like most about Fasusi at offensive tackle? Um, you know, do you have, do you, among him, Ty Haywood and Lamont yeah. Rogers, do you have a favorite? I think, and someone asked me this yesterday on the board. Um, uh, I think Ty Haywood's probably the most college ready, just for you know what obviously, you know, watching their film, you know, seeing them in person and, and sizing them up. He seems the most college ready. Fasusi, I believe, is still relatively new to football. Um, but I think he has the highest ceiling just because, you know, in in, in that sense, he's He's kind of a raw prospect. Um, he's obviously very dominant, but you know, a guy that hasn't even hit their potential yet. And, and you know, you could bring him in and, and turn him to, into something really special. So I think ceiling is higher on Fasusi. And obviously, you know, you kind of lean to uh, to ceiling kind of with with some of these projections. And I think he could be really special. Ty Haywood, I think you could plug and play immediately. And then Lamont Rogers, maybe a little bit of a mixture of both. Um, what I did learn about Lamont Rogers is he actually plays soccer. He's like what six? I don't have a measurements right in front of me huge kid plays soccer i think he's the goalie so good luck scoring uh scoring on him but i thought that was awesome that you know you don't you see football players playing basketball or you know running track you don't see soccer a lot and so that kind of just goes to show his athletic profile and you know um you know everyone loves the dual sport athletes and usually it's not football and soccer it's uh football and something else so gotta gotta give uh lamont rogers props for that yeah Hank, you've been huge on Jared Gibson running back for Texas, freshman coming in. And I don't know if you've seen that video of him working out with B. John Robinson and the yeah. picture that they took. Like, you got B. John out here with his shirt off. This dude's flexing while Jared Gibson's just pointing all nonchalant. He looks like he's as big as B. John. It's ridiculous, yeah. man. And Again, we know it's a shard choice and, you know, Steve Sarkeesian, they're going to have some decisions to make on playing time. Obviously, Jaden Blue and CJ Baxter have the upper hand right now. But, yo, that dude, talk about being college football ready yeah. as a freshman. He is that and then some. Yeah, absolutely. And there was another – there was a picture the other night, too, of all the running backs at dinner. Uh, and he was standing off to the left and just looked like the most built guy there. Um, but yeah, no, Texas is in a really good position, you know, with, with him, you know, like you said, they have Baxter and blue that, you know, can, can handle the bulk of it. So they don't have to rush, you know, Jared Gibson into it. They can kind of, um, you know, put him in as they need to. And, you know, but maybe he, he ends up, you know, demanding more carries, you know, just because you just can't keep him off the field. So, um, I, it's a great situation to be in for Texas in terms of depth. Um, you know, obviously with Brooks going down last year, we saw how important that was, you know, that, that you need guys ready to go and, um, you know, I think Gibson can can certainly be that guy in year one, having already enrolled and coming from program coming from a program like IMG. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Tashard Choice, he uh, um, Christian Clark reminded him more of Bijan, and that Jarrett Gibson reminded him more of Roshan Johnson. Yeah, I, I remember when Christian Clark committed. We wrote uh, on the Facebook caption. I think one of us wrote. Uh, Bijan 2.0 and we got we got flack for it they're like oh he's not Bijan you know his high school colors looked I think Sark mentioned this in his press conference he was like you turn on Christian Clark's tape and I think Sark wrote down Bijan 2.0 question mark as his notes so you know it wasn't that far-fetched you know he's from Arizona similar col uh, high school colors you know still making big plays left and right so Clark you know another guy that you know it's just all about you know What's the, the saying all about business? Like he, do, he doesn't mess around. He's like, he's a very focused kid. I think he, he comes from a really good high school program. And, you know, I, I spent some time talking to his coach and he seems like the real deal as well. Maybe not as, you know, immediate impact of a guy that like Jared Gibson could be, but maybe a guy we see, you know, in a year or two or a couple of years that, you know, like, man, this kid, this was a really good pickup for Texas in that, in that class. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's a crowded room. There's no two yeah. ways about it. You got Savion Red in there, Trey Wisner. You've, you know, obviously got Jaden Blue and and CJ Baxter. Jaden Blue is draft eligible after the 2024 season. So we'll see what kind of year 
he has. I mean, Sark's running backs have all been coveted by the NFL. So yep. um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like we were looking at this this draft class and how it's going to be, you know, star studded and, and guys going left and right from Texas. And it really looks like it's setting up to be like that next few years, you know, as, as we go along, you know, after, even after next year, you know, like Anthony Hill, he's probably, he's gonna be a first round guy, you know, <laughs> the, the lineman they have coming up, uh, you know, we'll see Sadir Mitchell, Dre Bledsoe. I mean, this, this could be a pretty uh, special little run for Texas. Yeah. Spring football starts on the 19th. Hank, any storyline you're watching um, in particular? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really excited. And I was mentioning this to you earlier. It's just as, you know, we, we saw how good this uh, this wide receivers class was and, you know, what they're bringing in to replace what what's going out. But, you know, I'm excited to see Jonte Cook. You know, he's uh, he was a guy that was really kind of flashing last fall. And we were thinking, oh, man, you know, maybe he can, you know, we'll see him kind of explode this year as a freshman. And uh, and we, we saw him at times, but obviously, you know, he wasn't needed as much just with how productive the other guys were, the starters were. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know, now that you bring in Isaiah Bond, you bring in Matthew Golden, you bring in Ryan Wingo, all these, you know, star started guys that that's kind of been the conversation about receivers. You kind of forget about, you know, John T. Cook was a, uh, was a highly rate, rated recruit as well. And, you know, how is he going to go out there and compete with these guys and kind of earn his, earn his, uh, his share, um, this, this off season. So that's, that's um, the wide receivers in general. I think defensive line will be fun to watch. Um, you know, there you, you can go in several different directions, but you know, I think those are kind of maybe the two position groups I, I'm most excited to kind of key in on. Um, you know, with, with what with what Texas lost at each spot, and you know, these new guys, not necessarily all of them new, but what the guys filling in are, are going to look like. Yeah. All right, Zay, you got anything else? Hank, how you liking the basketball team? Uh, I'm I'm ready for March. I mean, the, the women's basketball has been fun to watch. I'm excited for that game tonight. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens with the big 12, but you know, they're, they're, they're playing pretty good, pretty good basketball. Um, if they can stay healthy, um, you know, Kendall Weaver has been so much fun to watch uh, over the past few months, you know, last month. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I'm I, I'm totally going to be that guy that has Texas going all the way in one of my brackets. So you know, <laughs> as I always do, um, but you know I, I think they have the makeup to like someone. Uh, what John Rothstein tweeted, you know, Texas isn't that you know eight seed you want to see in the round of thirty two for any team, which I think is true. You know, they they've proven they can play with anybody, and so you know we'll see if they can put a complete game together. The Baylor game the other week, other night was. A little frustrating to watch. Um, but again, you know, when you go cold and the other team is shooting, you know, what 75% from the field, it's going to be hard to, to hang on to a lead, but you know, they, they've shown they can, they can do it, you know? And so we'll, we'll see. I think it'll be, it'll be a fun tournament to watch. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hank, great stuff, man. Let's do it again next week. Sounds good. Thanks guys. Appreciate you. All right, Hank South breaking it down. Get over to horns 24, com. Uh, to keep up with all the incredible recruiting intel uh, provided by Hank and Jordan Scruggs, who, of course, you listen to here on Texas Sports Unfiltered from 11 to 12 with Jeff Howe. Um, all right, Zay, let's get to the commentaries. Before we do that, a couple words. Apple leasing, getting you into the car you really want to be driving because they lease every make and model of car. Um, so they don't care what car you pick. They just want you to be happy and you get in two, three years, you decide, Hey, I want to, I want to change making model of car. No problem. The easy lease, everything about app leasing is easy. If you had a bad leasing experience in the past, probably because you leased from a dealership, they're not going to let you out of your contract. They want you to stay with their uh, vehicle. So you're not going to be able to change make and model of car. That's why Apple leasing is different. And you're not paying for the future trade in value of that car. So you're getting into a better car than you thought you could afford. And if you're like me and you only buy used cars because you don't want to pay for that uh, future trade in value because it is the single biggest markup in a new or used car, Apple leasing, baby, it is the answer. Go to appleleasing.com, give them a call 346 9977. Tell them Chip Brown sent you. And the Brain Vault mouth guard. I mean, changing the game. 
you hear about all of our, you know, we're talking about Bijan Robinson, all the Texas players who have gone on to the NFL. They've got brain vault mouth guards. And it's developed right here in Austin by Austin's dentist, Dr. Greg Eckert, Dr. U-E-C-K-E-R-T. Um, and it's proven, patented to reduce the effects of concussion. If you've got a competitor in your household, or maybe you are, whether you're playing in a beer league, basketball league, or you're playing your kids playing lacrosse, cheerleading, uh, flag football, the Brain Vault Mouth Guard is the answer. Play hard, but play safe. Go to brainvault.com to set up a fitting. And when you're ready for the big screen of your dreams, audiovisual consultations, our man Tom McKay. No need to go shopping, no need to punch holes in your drywall. Let Tom and his crew bring everything to you. That's what they're there for. They're the experts. They've been, they've done it for me in three different houses. Uh, they've set up your some of your favorite restaurants in Austin with the big screen, surround sound. Um, they can do surveillance, electronic shades, new lighting for a room. AVConsultations.com. Let Tom and his crew bring everything to you. Write down this phone number, 255-8678. Of course, area code 512. And if you're wanting to check out the Texas women's basketball game and enjoy a great meal, how about cover three tonight? Check out the Big 12 tournament championship game and the Sean Adams prime rib sandwich uh, or the ruby trout or any of cover three's incredible burgers. How about the buffalo chicken sliders with the Parmesan fries? Yeah, you got it. All right, Zay. Um, I am excited. I'm excited to watch this Texas women's basketball team tonight um, because I was impressed, very impressed. I felt like I was watching a replay of the Texas-Oklahoma game up in Norman. I was like, oh, man, this is going to get away. Everything's going against Texas. They missed 10 shots in a row. They were having some turnover issues. They were missing some shots. Felt like Madison Booker um, was, you know, she's trying. She's trying to make something happen for her team. And at one point, um, Vic called a timeout, and you could see him say the words, calm down to Booker. But it's easier said than done. I mean, she's carrying a lot of weight on her shoulders as a freshman point guard trying to run a team that she knows is talented, that she knows uh, should beat K-State when you're controlling the game for 30 minutes. Uh, that's why I'm so impressed with what Shea Holly did, what with what Deanna Gaston did late in that game. Um, Deanna Gaston ended up fouling out with 19 seconds left, but she was playing great defense on Ioka Lee. She was muscling up some tough inside baskets, but Shea Holly hits the three that breaks the tie. Um, I mean, it felt like an avalanche was coming down on Texas, and then Shea hits that three. The only three she took in the game, and she nails it. And then the great inbounds play with Shayla Gonzalez finding Shea Holly for the backdoor layup, and and then her defense on um, on Sundell inducing a travel. It was the you know biggest sequence of the game for Texas and. You just like to see a senior recognize what's going on and say, I got this. I got this. I'm here. I'm here for my team. I'm not going to let our freshmen, um, you know, feel like she's on an island. And, and it was a great pass by Aaliyah Moore because Aaliyah got the ball inside. She got double teamed. Aaliyah kicked it out to Holly. Holly drills the three, puts Texas up. 64 61 and then um they you know come back down the k-state misses a three they come back down and the inbounds play to put texas up 66 61 they end up winning at 71 64 and their third straight big 12 tournament championship game you gotta love that uh, vic schaefer uh, was very excited about the fact that the women are playing at the t-mobile center Instead of Municipal Auditorium up there in Kansas City, of course, Vic will be playing in a whole new conference uh, next next year. But um, 
it, it was it was a great game and I'm I'm excited to see them take on Iowa State and and see if they can you know close things out a little better. Iowa State travels like crazy to that Big 12 tournament. They have one of the best fan bases, especially their women's program. Um, they're gonna they're gonna be really loud at the T-Mobile Center tonight. So Texas is gonna definitely feel like the away team. Um, I was kind of looking forward to a Texas Oklahoma rematch, but Oklahoma got paddled by Iowa State and Audie Crooks. We we talked about her six foot three. She's built like Barkley. She gets where she wants to go. She knows what shots to take. She doesn't take bad shots. And and you better be ready because she's a talented freshman, man. And same with Addie Brown, the six foot two freshman forward who went for, I don't know, she went for uh, 16 last night above her average. Both players scored above their average. Um, they're two leading scorers for Iowa State, both freshmen, both forwards. So Texas has the size to defend. And Deanna Gaston, I expect another big game from her defensively and, you know, coming through with some, some big buckets. Yeah, I mean, Madison Booker, going back to her and just all the responsibility that she has, and she, sometimes she gets to the point to where it looks like she's doing a little bit too much to try to make a play. That just comes with the adjustment of being a scorer and now being a scoring point guard. You know, you got to be able to feel the game out, like playing point guard after the quarterback spot. Like it might be the toughest position in sports. Now, a lot of baseball people will probably disagree with me. And that's valid because baseball as a whole is hard as hell. But I'm just saying everything that you have to be responsible for. If you want to be a really good point guard, a your head's on the swivel. You're thinking about not only yourself, but you're thinking about the rest of your four teammates and how they are on the court and how, you know, their confidence and attitude is because you got to keep everyone in sync. And Madison Booker, again, she's a freshman. She's looking at Shaylee Gonzalez, who's a fifth-year senior, and looking at Shay Holly, who's been here for the last four years. You know, like, that's a lot. That's a lot to lead those troops and be given that responsibility. So, yeah, sometimes she could get a little out of character, but her character is scoring, and she does that better than anyone in the Big 12. That's why she's co-player of the year. So, yeah, I think Vic Schaefer helping her out. And I, like I said last week, Rory Harmon being on the bench has been huge because Rory Harmon could be that person to talk to Madison and let her know, hey, look for this, look for that. You know, if you're getting double teamed or coming off of a screen, you need to hit a Leo fast. You know, you can't allow to keep dribbling because you're looking for your shot. Hit Aaliyah first, and Aaliyah is good enough to make moves. Like, she made a move last night, Aaliyah Moore. She was going left, Chip, and she fakes, spins, like she's going back to the middle, and the girl from Kansas State bites, and she stays left and then finishes with the right. That's super skill. That uh, She's really talented. I love Aaliyah Moore. And then her just enthusiasm. She's always yelling like she's that vocal leader that the Horns need. And they missed her a lot last year due to that injury. And I'm glad that she's back and that, you know, every time she falls, I get a little nervous just because, you know, with that brace and stuff, you always get a little nor uh, nervous from the Oklahoma product. But, man, she's tough. So just little things like that, you know, again, Rory Harmon being on the bench, the coaching staff as a whole, keeping Mass and Booker you know, calm and collected, knowing that she has to score, but also do a good job at getting her teammates involved. That's going to lead to the horn success if they want to go deep here in March. Yeah, I always get a little, I'm always a little flinchy about the officiating in women's games. It gets a little touchy. I wish they would let them play more because yeah. it's fouls. I mean, Madison Booker played seven minutes in the first half. And she did commit, you know, she picked up two quick fouls um, and played seven minutes in the first half. This is your leading scorer who is averaging 20 points per game in Big 12 play. So uh, hopefully they let him play tonight. It should be a good physical game. All right, let's get yeah. to the right call, my man. All right, but before we get to the right call, I want to throw one more thing at him. If I'm Vic Schaefer, at certain times, just if Shaylee Gonzalez is struggling or so, 
I would go to a three big lineup with Deanna Gaston, Taylor Jones, and a lot, uh, Leah Moore. I, I would do that. Not a lot. Don't do it a lot, but just to shake it up, especially with somebody like Audie Cooks and just how physical she could be and how much space that she takes up rebounding. I'd put that lineup out there, you know, because those Aaliyah Moore and Deanna Gastons, they're skilled enough to play on the perimeter at times. It just depends up depends on the matchup defensively for them. But offensively, that could be a big mismatch for the Horns. I love what when Nona Tona, what's her name? When when in Tonda, oh, uh, Jacalenga Mwen and Tonda. Say that again. What? Jacalenga Mwen and Tonda. Yeah, I like her. When in Tonda, I like her. She I needs know. some more minutes at times too. I like She's her. She's so long, and she'll she'll take over for Shay for Shay Holly next year. Hopefully, she recognizes that. I know I, she. Had, I thought Shay's coming back because she wasn't. She didn't get recognized for Senior Day. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe Shay Ali was here. not for senior day. Shaylee Gonzalez was a part of it. Somebody else. Shay Holly was not a part of senior day. I think she's coming back. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think she's coming back. Cause even though you know she what? is a senior, I think that COVID year she gets it and she did not get any love on senior day at all. Okay. Yeah, which is big. That's yeah, huge. Before he Harmon does have out. a COVID year, I'll uh, I'll tell you what. While you're getting ready to do the uh, the right call, yeah, I'll look that up. I'll throw out a text. Yeah, look that up. But all right, before the right call though, Covert B Cave. You know we got to shout them out. The Covert Automotive Dealership that have been doing it in the Greater Austin area for over a hundred years. They're tired of seeing you in those hoopties. They're tired of seeing you in those beat up vehicles paint coming off and stuff check engine light on that's just that gets annoying it gets annoying having to put thousands of dollars into your car and then two weeks later another thing happens you know you're tired of taking your car to the shop hey go get a high quality new or pre-owned vehicle at covert b cave and that's what they do that's what they specify in. They want to hook you up. They got seven terrific brands to choose from, Dodge, Chrysler, Cadillac, Jeep, Ram, and GMC. And look, covertbcave.com, you'll see all the latest specials and inventory, so you're not surprised. You're not surprised when you get to the lot and you're like, oh, they have this. No, you should be able to understand and know what you're getting yourself into. That's why covertbcave.com is so valuable. Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now, not ever. All right, Chip, the right call, man. Today I uh, saw something that is very um, personal, might be a little too deep of a word, but I also saw something that is very close to me, might not be close to others, but I was named after these gentlemen. I wanted to see them, you know, I want to see them cool. I want to see them put away all the differences. And those two gentlemen are Isaiah Zeke Thomas, somebody that you are very fond of coming from your Detroit days and Michael Jordan. And look, this beef has been going on for almost 40 years. Well, definitely 30 something, but hey, we're getting into almost 40 of how long it's been. Those bad boy piston Jordan rule days. And Isaiah Thomas, he's talking again. He went on Draymond Green's podcast. Draymond asked him, is there any way that him and Jordan are ever going to be able to squash the beef? And Zeke said no. Zeke said until MJ goes on national television where it could be put out worldwide and apologizes for calling Zeke an asshole on the last dance, Zeke ain't forgiven no damn body. And look, man, they too old for this. They, they too old for this. A, a part of me, like the human side of me, is out here saying these guys are too old for this. Squash it, you know? Like, squash it. Y'all, this is too petty because, again, life's too short to be getting salty about these things. But the petty side of me, the ignorant side of me, the – devil on the left shoulder side of me is saying this is what sports is all about i i want that i want a guy to mess up your career so much 
to where he was such an issue during your 20s and early 30s and your playing days that you're still pissed off with him to this day. I, I could respect that because that's what I love about sports. I love that competitive nature. These guys are alphas. You know what I'm saying? So what's your what? What's your take on the 92 dream team? Because that that team was coached by Chuck Daly. Yeah. yeah. Pistons head coach coming off the bad boy Pistons championship years. Yeah, you can't have Christian Leitner on that team and not Isaiah Thomas. They were dead wrong for that. Don't tell me that we needed Christian Leitner to, for a body for bigs. No, you had Carl Malone, you had Patrick Ewan, you had Charles Barkley, you had David Robinson. You're fine with bigs. I, so you could play Scottie Pippen as a four at times. You're fine with bigs. Isaiah Thomas deserved to be on that team. The fact that Jordan and Pippen just were bitching about it and stuff like that, like, come on, man. And they, But it also goes to, hey, the battles were that tough. Like, the battles were that personal that they felt that way about Zeke. But, like – Again, Zeke was just a point guard. It wasn't like Zeke was doing the dirtiest stuff on the squad. He wasn't Rodman. He wasn't Lambeer. You know, he wasn't those dudes. Rick Mahorn. He wasn't those guys who were really delivering the punishment. But, yes, Chuck Daly coaching that team and not having Isaiah Thomas on, but the freaking dookie Christian Leitner on. I know Coach K was an assistant, but come on. let's let's. What are we doing? What are we doing? That, that's trash, man. And, and you had Magic, who's yeah. tight with Isaiah. Yeah, kissing him on the cheek all the time before they play. Mwah. You know, don't don't tell me the 80s were all tough and stuff when I got Magic and Isaiah kissing before the game. Like, yes, it was tough, but, you know, let's not discredit this new generation. Like, guys weren't friendly in the 80s. They were friendly. And Magic didn't go to bat for them. Like, Magic and Isaiah Thomas, they just got cool a few years ago. They had a really good uh, NBA TV or I don't know if it was ESPN type like documentary special where they're reminiscing on the past and then they both break down and cry and hug it out because they've settled their differences. So Magic and Zeke, they weren't tight for the longest time. And I don't know why, what happened with that, but yeah, Bird was on that dream team, like all those guys. And I, it's still – Kills Isaiah Thomas to this day that he wasn't on that squad. But, you know, I, and if I'm Isaiah Thomas, like, a part of you was an asshole. You should take that as a compliment. I don't know why he's looking at Mike and being like, oh, he called me an asshole on national TV, the last dance and stuff like that. And But also Isaiah Thomas being from Chicago, he has a story on helping Jordan when Jordan transitioned from Chapel Hill to the Bulls. And Isaiah Thomas was giving them game on, hey, man, don't go here. Don't go there. There's a lot of gang-related activity around here. These are the people you need to stick around, and these are the people you need to stay away from. So Isaiah Thomas kind of feels like he really helped Jordan get acclimated to Chicago culture, and then Jordan is just completely disregarding that. Like he's completely saying, you know, or not saying, that Isaiah Thomas was a part of that in general, and that rubbed Zeke the wrong way, especially with all the crap that Zeke had to go through being a Chicago native and then being hated by all Chicago natives for playing with the Pistons. That hurts too, you know? So I I feel their pain, but also they too old for that shit. So I'm, I'm in between. Well, Jordan, situation. Jordan also blames Isaiah for the walkout when the Pistons walked out of the arena before – the game ended when the Bulls finally beat him. Again, that's another compliment if you're Mike. Like, yeah, that was a bad look. Very classless. Very classless. Like that shot with Zeke ducking and dodging and stuff, trying to slither his way through the locker room after getting swept by the 91 Bulls, that was a very bad look. But if you're Mike, that's a compliment to you. Like, you were the threat. You weren't supposed to get over on them. They thought they were going to have a three-peat, that Pistons team. And then the Bulls mucked that all up. They had a lot of pride. So, yeah, it was a bad moment, but 
Uh, the fact that they held on to that so long, like that got blown out of proportion. I get it, Mike. The year before that game seven, 1990 Eastern Conference Finals, Jordan went to, up to all those guys and he gave them their credit. He shook their hand and said, hey, good game. Y'all beat us fair and square. We'll be back next year. And then Zeke completely threw it in the shitter the following season. But, man, these dudes, it's been 30-something years, 30-something years. And Zeke's out here looking for an apology. And again, goes back to all the people that Jordan has scorned from the last dance. It's not just Isaiah Thomas. You got Luke Longley and Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen going on tour, the No Bull Tour, talking about how much BS was put in that documentary to give Jordan that love and to hate on the rest of his guys. So again, Mike, we all love him, but he ain't no saint. He ain't no saint. He ain't no saint. That is for show. And my parents named me after both of them. Isaiah Jordan Collier. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. So that, that's why it's always personal to me. When I see these arguments and rifts between the two, it's just always, it blows my mind. Because it's like, what? Like, we were you really named after these guys? And they hate each other so much, like probably more than any Hall of Fame players in any sport that you're going to find. Like, I don't know a hatred more than Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, bad boy Pistons, Chicago Bulls. Like, you're going to have to find one for me. Like, maybe, you know, those Cowboys, Redskins, or Cowboys, Giants, or Eagles, I don't know, but it's some um, serious hatred between those two dudes yeah yeah no it's deep it's deep i remember uh and you can't you can't reason with michael jordan i mean this is a guy who gave a 30 minute hall of fame speech mf and everyone who ever doubted him or crossed him and that's what made him great yeah but it's a pain i mean it's it's high maintenance yeah. I mean, he was unbelievable, but he was like a violin, man. Oh. High strung and was going to get it done his way cuz he knew he knew he was going to deliver, so he expected everyone else to follow in line. Yeah. But mad genius, you know? Mad genius. That's why them damn shoes that come out every single year just up the price, and these fools are waiting out to get them to this day. To this and day. He can thank Mama Jordan for that deal. True. That's true. That to Viola. me was Viola. That was the greatest part of the movie Air. Viola Davis. Um, all right. Well, I see Megan and Rocky in the Tuesday fire the cannon room. Hey, how's it going? Crazy. What's up, y'all? Um, I have my Derek Henry in honor. I'm used to going that way. In honor of the <laughs> last day. <laughs> he gone. He gone. <laughs> he gone. Mm, That's man. okay. And Zay, my daughter has something in common with you. Her name, middle name is also Jordan. Ooh. But she's named after... Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block. Oh my God! <laughs> my two kids are Jonathan and Jordan, both named after the New Kids on the Block siblings. Wow. So, did you see them when they came back through on their tour? I'm sorry. Did you see the New Kids when they came back through on their tour? I've seen them about sixty times, <laughs> and my daughter too. I love the New Kids on the Block so much. They've just Oh, I love them so much. Yeah. You got to do that. And we'll, we'll be back in June. I think they're back in June. Austin, Houston, Dallas, all in like a three-day weekend. So we're thinking about doing all three. We have our tickets to Austin, but we're thinking about doing all three that weekend. I mean, why not? Why so not? you be in the stance, uh, uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. She uh, does uh, that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. Big time. You got so. a favorite song? Um. I mean, yes, yeah, step by step. 
is actually my favorite because when the video came out, it was it was the black and white and they threw in the color and then Jordan had his break dancing. And the best part is Jonathan actually sang a line. My favorite was always Jonathan, which is why my first son's name is Jonathan. And they um, he actually like sang a line and he never <laughs> sings. So that was like, oh, wow. he sings. <laughs> he was 20 years See? in and he finally sang a song. Look at that. <laughs> I love the new kids out of the block so much. Yeah. Oh, new kids <laughs> trivia. Oh, she would win. It doesn't matter. You do one of those drinking trivia games, she would kill it with new kids on the block. Zero yeah. question. Zero question. Love so it. yeah, Zay, Isaiah <laughs> Jordan Collier, you have something in common with Nadia Jordan Osborne. <laughs> hey, there we go. There love we go. it. Well, y'all, right. great take job. it away. Have a great right. show. Yeah, thank right, y'all. Thanks, guys. Have, have a great, a great day. Cheers. <laughs> We're back. We're back, Megan. We're back. We're back a day early. A little early. I know. I like it. I yeah. Like so it. we'll tell them the reason is uh, Katie and Trey um, have stuff today. So right. they will be back tomorrow, the usual Tuesday. My hair is all crazy. The usual Tuesday show. So we said, oh, we'll switch. We'll come and help on Tuesday. They'll cover tomorrow, Wednesday, and yeah. we're all here. All good. Got to love it. Got to love it. Always here yeah. for the TSU family, right? Yeah. Teamwork makes a dream work. Absolutely. And right. I have to say, I'm wearing, like I said, my. Derek Henry, homage to do we, do we homage need, to 22. Do we need a moment of silence for for Henry not not being with the team anymore? Are yeah. You, are you okay? No. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, why can't Daniel go? Right. <laughs> yeah, you're Aggie that you love so much mm. and, and you're always bragging about. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about all of Henry's accomplishments before and after, before and during the Titans. Yeah. And why it's really, really sad. I don't blame him for going. Yeah. They, it wasn't cherished. They, the team didn't cherish him the way I did. Yeah. If only they had your heart. I know. Why am I not managing the team? <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. We've got some NFL news. We're definitely going to talk a little bit of Texas football, some happenings there, okay. some Longhorn legends going on, making some money, perhaps. Yeah. Got to talk a little basketball, both men's and women's, of course. You know, I got to get my baseball oh, talk in. So baseball. we were at the basketball game we against OU senior uh, night, and we brought back for you yeah. senior night. Um, <laughs> posters and we put them up i mean officially it is 3 4 p.m and oh you still saw thank you thank you it's so, amazing gotta love that little little question with the coaching going on there do you see that the the rumors that depaul was gonna steal ou's basketball coach depaul first of all depaul was gonna steal ou's basketball coach and then he lost to texas and now he's like oh that was never that was never a thing that was gonna happen <laughs> he lost and, texas Oh, again. again. What was that? Let's, let's make sure we say O oh, oh and six right now. O oh, and seven. O oh, and seven. That was yeah. the seventh. Oh, hey, Ike. Right. What up, ladies? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, gotta love that. You know, you gotta, gotta, I guess, beat Texas to be able to step up in your job. So, you know, you should always beat your <laughs> rivalry. I think Texas basketball has a different rivalry. They've been able to hang with Kansas lately. And, um, and right now, you know, there's, there's other teams, Texas tech really hates Texas and you want to win those games. Sure. But when it comes to big 12 rivalries, Texas, OU in every sport, yeah. you need to beat your rival. Yeah. And when you don't do that, it, it, I mean, I don't mind it when, when, we're all, when we're on the end of winning it. But listen, the thing that I always crack up about, you know, they talk about this all the time. Everybody talks about being a rival with Texas. We know that everyone hates Texas. Hell, embrace the hate was the thing right. last year, right? But you got to, what was it? What was that report that said Texas was like the most, has the most rivals of any team? There's like 13. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, 12 or 13 teams yeah. that identified Texas as their rival. As who, their one big rival. Who would you call Texas's rival. Oh, you. Okay. And? And 1A, 1B Aggies. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. See, I would definitely, I mean, oh, you for sure. No question. AM, yeah, that's in state, right? Mm -hmm. Like big brother, little brother. We know how that goes. But I would also offer Arkansas. I could I could make an argument from the Southwest Conference days and from just the vitriol there. No college student alive remembers that. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. There's they may have remember, heard old no. stories. But the, do they have that? They will again once they go. No, they already do. I was I was at Arkansas. I, was in I, I don't want to hear anybody talking about Arkansas. I'm just I'll, I'll just say people, everybody. I want to talk Texas sports. They mentioned OU. They mentioned you know Aggies. They mentioned 
you know, all these other things that we actually play all the time. Yeah, but all the time they talk about tech and all that. But I'll tell you, every time we play people played, mention tech twenty times when they mention Arkansas. Yeah, but that's because we play tech more often. I know. So I'm saying nobody's thinking about Arkansas. But we don't play A and M that much, and we talk about them. But as because we actually compete with A and M for recruits, and we do play them in baseball, and we do see them in other times of the year. That's what I'm saying. We have play, we've played Arkansas a lot in baseball, and like in Omaha, no, we've played them plenty. They you will never here. convince me they 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 do, they do not girl. take up a minute of my day ever. No, that's so, fair. So that's they fair. a rival to me. Just wait till they no. start. Wait till they start showing up in town. Uh, yeah, like I said, they're I'm, not a rival to me. I was in Fayetteville a couple years ago that with that god awful performance. Just because they really really hate us. Doesn't mean I consider them a rival. Yeah, but I really, really hate them too. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't consider them a rival. <laughs> uh, what are know. we rivaling for against Arkansas? Baseball. Yearly. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I would argue that. No. No. I'm saying like, okay. So one sport a year we have to worry about them. <laughs> well, we that's not a rival to me. Well, basketball. No more than like every now and Vanderbilt, again. you know, or other schools that you 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 show up and play a sport uh, against them. I don't know. I think there's not too much. His, I think there's too much history there to not consider them a rival. Not but, at all. Not, they don't, they never wants to, I say, Oh, I'm worried about what Arkansas thinks. No, I'm not saying I worry about what they think. Then but I'm going to rival when no. something good or bad happens to your team. Who's the, like, Oh, they're going to, they're going to make fun of me. I don't care. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think care of it. about Arkansas. I don't think about it in that terms. You'll I, never convince me they're right, but I absolutely they, will. They, I don't care if they hate me. I that's fine. I, I absolutely, I I'm indifferent to Arkansas. That's fine. And you, I would, I would argue that you were probably in the minority with that. I don't talk to anybody who cares about Arkansas. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've talked to plenty of people that care about them in the sense that, like, we we don't want them to do well in anything. Their fans are pretty vitriolic. Like, I will tell you, I I, I would There's call, a lot of fan bases with trash fans, and I just don't Yeah, I agree. Them. It's just a little different with the history there. And, again, okay. I'm old, and I remember the, you know, the issues that we had with them when we played. I remember, too. I just don't care days. about them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about them. All right. So, anyway, um. You have a lot going on this week. Oh, my God. This this week's a crazy week. It actually kind of worked out that we're here a little bit early. I'm looking for yeah. yeah, looking for a new place. I've, I've been in, the you know, for those who don't know, I live in a fifth wheel camper. Love it. Love the tiny living. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Not so in love with the the park that I've been at recently. Like, I've been there for two years. Mm -hmm. And it, it's they've got some nice amenities. But, you know, Internet's been out for a hot minute. I work for from like home. a year. You've had no yeah, internet. it's been a hot minute. And it's part of in the contract. Like, oh. This is part of what you're paying for is internet at your site. That's great. And so when I'm like, hey, guys, it's been, you know, four, five, six months. I work from home. I need reliable internet. They're like, ah, eh, sorry about your luck. Sorry about your luck. So, I, man, I don't get that. So anyway, looking for a new space. And I picked the worst time to do it. I'm We're spring talking break. spring break. The lunar eclipse is coming up. The, you know, it's the rodeos in town. South by is here. So looking for available spots. Just terrible planning on my part. But. Here we are. And I got to tell you, some of these prices are insane. Like you would think, you know, we've seen the, the, you know, apartment prices go up. You've seen cost of living go up. We all know that. But like, I would think if I'm bringing my own house, right, I'm bringing my own thing that I live uh -huh. in and I'm looking for a place to live. Like, what, what would you estimate would go like to park your camper for, per month? And you've got, you know, and keep in mind, this doesn't include water or electric, like, but it does, it does have internet. It does have some services like trash pickup and things like that. What would you, in Austin, Texas, what would you think that would be worth? I mean, at least 20, 30 bucks a day. Yeah. But you get a month rate. So six, 700. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more than that. Is it's, it? Yeah. Every place I've looked at is between like the eight, nine, 10. Some of them are up in tickling 1100, 1200, 1300 uh -huh. in Round Rock, $1,300. I don't know. Again, I, I'm, I know I'm the old person shaking my fist at the clouds and yelling at them right now, but that just seems outrageous to me to bring your own like dwelling and park it somewhere. Oh, hey, that'll be more than how like did you live in apartments in Austin? Back in the day, years ago, yeah. Like, like what I lived when years ago, we're when probably I, showing our age here. Yeah, like, when I lived in UT, like I lived at Old Torf in 35, yeah. our rent was like 520 a month, yeah. For a one, it was one bedroom, but five twenty. But you're like the heart of Austin, yeah, Texas. right at yeah, right near downtown. Uh, again, uh, this is the now. You can, now that's like your HOA fee, girl, <laughs> right? Like you can't even sniff a one bedroom like studio efficiency for five hundred a month. That's that's your like you said. That's your HOA fees. That's right. your that's your parking for the month to be able to park at the place that you live at. It just seems crazy. Just seems crazy. So 
I don't know. That's been a fun little hectic. Got that going on. You're about to uh, run around too. Get more jet setting. I had you for a week, which was lovely. Um, I mean, jet setting. It's <laughs> Mexico. You're, yeah, you're going no, no. To a different. It's, yeah, different going, going back to our house, in Mexico, and we weren't going to be able to go because the flight prices were insanity. Yeah, and apparently they've always so oversold everything still because yeah. they messaged us already. Like oh, they, you know, they messaged. Jk. Jk. Yeah. Like you do want to change your flight? You can. You know, they <laughs> offer you money already to like. No, I don't want to because it took this long for the for prices to go down just enough for us to book a flight there because they right. were getting ridiculous, which doesn't make sense because that's the week that all the families are trying to get home, yeah. you know, like, like families on vacation. And that's when they raise, you know, a $200 flight is now $1,400. Well, because everybody wants to go there. That's crazy. We're, we're just old fuddy-duddies today. Yeah. Just bitching anyway, about pricing things, on but everything. Some things are really, really good. <laughs> that, that is true. South that is by true. Southwest is not. Do you go to Southwest? Uh, absolutely not. Again, I'm going to just like ride this fuddy-duddy train. I don't either. It's too much travel. I don't. I don't understand. It. I'm not cool enough to know. I'm like, not hip enough. I I'm will not say that. cool enough to know like where people are, and yeah. I only I only know something already happened because other people post about it. Like apparently, you can go like see Bon Jovi the movie, and then John Bon Jovi has a Q and A after, and it, but it's like Thursday at two in the afternoon. I don't know, but people know these things are happening, and I never know. And then you always hear later that oh, so and so was playing guitar, and somebody you never heard of. Yeah, and then. Um, all of, you know, the Beastie Boys jumped in and joined him. Like, what? How do you know these things? I, I, yeah, I've never been that tied in. I don't know. And, and it, I, the places that, not that I ever go out and party all the time or do anything like that, but mm -hmm. even the restaurants you want to go to, oh, you can't go here tonight unless you have this wristband that they only gave to corporate people. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get it. And then you can get into free stuff if you volunteer, but I don't have time for that either. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I, I, to me, the prices are crazy. I remember, I don't know anything about South by Southwest. Well, again, I think that the, the the last time that I was down there, uh, I was there, I was working with a startup company and we were down at like Chive headquarters or something like that. And I was looking and just wandering around downtown, you see regular parking spots, like $80. And uh -huh. again, that just breaks my soul going, no, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. I can see a lot of these acts next week for like nothing or yeah. a $5 cover versus your $1,500 passes. Yeah. And you're right. I am not trendy enough to know I don't, I'm, I'm where to cool be. I'm not enough for South by. That's but, they, but they have film and music and tech and they do. sports. And we like saw well, Steve, Texas is down there. Yeah, yeah, we saw, yeah, UT did a thing at um, Antones or something mm -hmm. two nights. And then Stephen A. Book Smith House. interviewed Sarkeesian and Worthy, and they were at this panel. And I mean, there's some cool stuff happening. I just don't know about it until right. it's over. <laughs> yeah, I think I watch that like I watch, you know, like the Oscars. Like I will not watch the event itself. I'm like on Twitter. Okay, now I know who won. I'm good. You know, yeah. I catch the highlights like that. I, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't have four hours to see who movies. I didn't watch anyway. Right. Like other than the Barbie movie, I didn't know any <laughs> of the movie. That's, well, Oppenheimer. You were. Aware I tried to watch Oppenheimer, and it was so boring and so slow. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't have to pay for it because we watched it at home, like, I guess a month ago. We tried to watch it. Yeah. It was not for me. I was not their target audience. We turned it off about an hour in. Yeah. It was just so you only hard have, like, to follow. Roughly dark... five hours left in the movie. Yeah. I, I I was like, two more hours of this, I'm out. Yeah. So anyway, I, if you loved Oppenheimer and it was good. For I mean, it was not for me. The Barbie like movie it. was for me. Right. <laughs> no. Oppenheimer was not for me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, right. shout out to Ryan Gosling, though, oh. for owning and he I'm just sang kidding. that song so well. Yeah, he did. For for Christmas, which arrived late, but we finally gave it to him. We gave Richard a hoodie that says, I am Kenna, and he loves it. <laughs> yeah, that, the, yeah, the fluffy hoodie. All That's right, pretty did, good. Um, Austin Rodeo, which is actually near where you are now. Yeah, right now, it Crazy. is. In the yeah. carnival. When I was a kid, we used to go to the carnival. But yeah, yeah. All no, right. it's good. Yeah, it's, it's just a lot going on in Austin right now. It is yep. a busy. Hey, and great time to recruit. I feel like this is a good time to tell recruits, hey, come come in for spring come break. We out. got South by, we got the rodeo, we got the lake, we got beautiful weather. This yeah. is like this is when everybody decides it's a great time to Unofficially move to Austin. Coming through Austin. Yeah, because yeah. it's because it's pretty weather outside. It hadn't quite reached hundred and fuck you outside yet. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's talk about some things Texas did do over the weekend because there's so much happening. Yeah. Um uh, uh, congratulations, Texas men's tennis. They have yes. the first hundred Big or so win. people got block T t shirt, which yeah. is so cool. What such a cool shirt? Um, men in tennis beat number one Ohio State, yeah, yeah, that was a big deal. That was really good, yeah, and here then, in Austin, yeah. And congrats to Leo Nugbauer. I don't, yeah. I don't know how to say your name, I should go look that up. Um, <laughs> national championship and heptathlon. Can you name some of the sports in the heptathlon? I know that some you of the run. events, I know that you run, <laughs> I know that you jump over things. <laughs> I know that, you know, I am not an Olympic sport person, generally speaking, but 
What what do you got? What is it? I mean, it is. It's, it's like distance running. Field. Yeah, it's like distance running. You've got like the javelin, yeah. long jump, de- uh, two hundred meter shot put, hundred meter hurdles. See, high jump. You run. You jump meter. over things. You throw things. I mean, I was close. But you think about <laughs> it. To do a hundred meter hurdle is a completely different event than two hundred eight hundred meter run, yeah. which is completely different than long jump, which is completely different javelin, and you have to be able to do them all. all. Well. Yeah. That's, that's that's pretty insane. crazy. Yeah. That's insane. Congratulations to him. That's like total athlete. That's yeah. what Bruce Jenner was, right? <laughs> yeah. With At that, one point, yes, yeah, that is true. Gold medal in the hip, heptathlon, right? Yeah. Or did he do decathlon? Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't. Anyway, the, a lot of different events. That's pretty amazing. Congratulations, Longhorns. Yeah, that's very that's cool. So some of the stuff that folks don't pay attention to too much, um, you know, but you should. Tennis is always tennis is consistently good. Consistently. And people forget about that little mini scandal that we had here in Austin with, with tennis. Yes, the, the get, admissions the scandal, scandal. Right. And the cool thing was like Texas tennis was really good. And then the coach got caught up in it, got booted, and never missed Texas tennis and never they missed went on to win the national championship that year. Exactly. I mean like two you, or three years ago. And and they're remaining. They've remained in the top ten. They do well. Mm-hmm. Like it, they're they're a lot of fun to watch. Am I the so. only person that drinks my coffee cup not holding the mug? I mean, yeah, not the holding handle? the handle. I don't think I do. I don't. Is that the? I don't like the handle because it hurts. Is that the, it hurts the, the like the white girl, I always, the no, basic I girl, like when you cup like your mug? Even if it's hot, <laughs> I'm having a tea. Anyway, um, um, all right. So let's talk about some Longhorns. We have lots of Texas football to talk about. Yeah. Um, DBU, Denver Broncos University. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How many? How many Longhorns are at the Denver Broncos right now? Three? I'm I Four? counted five now. Goodness. I went back and looked for more. Yeah. So welcome, uh, Brandon Jones. Yeah. Three years, 12 million, 12.5 guaranteed. Could be up to 22.5 yeah. potential in there. Caden Stearns, yeah. right? PJ Locke. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't PJ Locke from like Bastrop? Yeah, he's nearby. Close by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh defensive tackle Malcolm Roach just signed with the Broncos, two years, eight up to eight million. And little Jordan Humphrey still with the Broncos. So that is Five. I'm gonna have to start rooting for the Broncos. Aren't no, I? you don't have to. You can root for the individual players, <laughs> yeah, but you don't fair. have to root for the Broncos. That's fair. But this is kind of like what the Titans used to be for a while when we had four or five Longhorns on the team at yeah. one time. Bo Skay, Vince Young, like we had a good group. Um, uh, the, the the brothers. Um, I'll think of it in two minutes. Um, we anyway we had a good group. The Foremans. No, 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 no. Before Which that, brothers? the DBs. Um, if you can think of it, Still let me know. Up. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Ask Trey what's up. He'll he'll give you the info. <laughs> yeah. How Griffin. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh Michael Griffin. So we had a bunch of Longhorns for a mm-hmm. while all on the same team. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Now that's turning out to be the Denver Broncos. For a little while, it was almost the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens had uh, quite a few Longhorns. Yeah, they still do. If I had some Longhorns. So if you're a Denver Long Denver Broncos fan and a Longhorns fan, Lucky you. You're, you're a happy person. Right like now. our like our friend on Twitter, Texas dude. Yeah. The dude. The he's, dude. Yeah. He's he's a big long, uh, Broncos fan. So yeah. that'll be cool. Good for you. Yeah. You get some. Cheese. And Brandon Jones making that money. You think AM is going to release a new a video? video for him? <laughs> <laughs> Just congratulating him, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that was still to my to this day. That's probably still one of my favorite like recruiting jokes. You yeah. know, like AM jokes. Like, that was and it was a well made video. It was really good. It told the story of where he grew up with yeah. his mom and his siblings, and it followed him like through his was it like his senior year or something like I don't mm-hmm. remember, but it followed him like in his hometown. And they put together a whole mo- mini movie on Brandon Jones, thinking and it was one of the first, right? They were yeah. one of the first to do that like media saga media yeah. of of his life and really trying to entice him in. He's like, cool, that's really cool. Thanks. I'm and he, then he committed to Charlie Strong. <laughs> yeah. Was he Ooh. part of that class that just shocked the nation class? Yeah. Uh, the Charlie Strong class where they ended up number three in the nation. Yeah, where everybody it, was like, yeah, Texas Malik is doing Jefferson, things. Yeah. And then Finesse, the kid, the Finesse kid, <laughs> Brandon Jones, Caden Stearns. It was like a whole group of just yeah. like, damn. And it was like on signing day, they they announced. It was a shock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Was, and then womp womp. <laughs> but fortunately, those individual players, because they were talented, have excelled. despite the record at Texas, have gone on to <laughs> still be in the NFL. Yeah. Malcolm Roach, little Jordan Humphrey, a lot of those guys are from that time. Yeah. And they're all with the Denver Broncos. I, well, Maybe you. I won't be mad. At, do you do you play fantasy football? No. How do I not know this about you if you do? You don't. We would know. I No, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to root for another player to do well against Same. my own team. Same. That's my thing. But if I did, I'd be like, all right, it'd probably be. I don't know if the team would be great or terrible or if we have enough, although we There's may There's too now. many players 
and matchups to keep. Tra- it's a full time job if you want to be really good at it. Right. I'd rather. Would you, I would, I think I would it's just, happening while Texas is happening. So what? I'd, too that's much. too much bandwidth. If I, I was more of an NFL person, then maybe. I think I would just like every year just make a team of all Longhorns and you know like have three kickers and whatever you know it'd be yeah. I'd, it'd be terrible. I'd be terrible at fantasy that's football, right. but I, that's what I would have to do. But hey, you know. That's almost what the Broncos are doing. So love to see it. They're DBU. Love to see it. So, all right. Well, that's good. You got to gotta love that Texas vibe out there. Will that be? Yeah, I like the, the DBU, Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos University. University. <laughs> Ridiculous. We are DBU. DBU Ridiculous. is back. All right. So um, a couple other things about – one more thing about the NFL before we move on. Yeah. Um, the uh, – Derrick Henry. Yeah. Are we? Is that one more thing? Or are we <laughs> go, more thing. going back to the thing? Yeah. All right. Well, I want to talk about it real quick. All right, bring it. Okay, so I know he's had injuries before, but I just want to say, like, it, and it isn't, of course, in the past, he had, you know, the Heisman, but Walter Camp, Dope Walker, all these big-time awards, massive talent, produced and produced year after year. I'm just really sad that he is, and he's going to be a great fit at the Baltimore Ravens. Like, they need yeah. someone like him, that yeah. thunder, and he's like thunder and lightning. He's he's amazing. I'm just I'm really sad that he, he's leaving my team. We don't I don't know what we have left. Yeah. I mean <laughs> you, I mean you got your Aggie still. We have Tannehill. Through and through. You know how many times he saved Tannehill's ass? Yeah. Yeah. But when Tannehill I mean, that injury only bug. threw INTs and then an injury then bug has Henry, been kind of a big deal though. Henry would break off a 60 yard touchdown run. Like, yeah. But I can I can appreciate <laughs> that the injury bug has been has been biting him a lot recently. Yeah. So, but all right. You said one last thing about the NFL. There's I'm it. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's more. There's more. Go I ahead. I gotta bring up Michigan State. You know my number two team. Yes. The Sparties. Yeah. Kirk Cousins out there making Kirk some money. Cousins. Yeah, they're making some money, right? Yes. Just uh, got signed by Atlanta, so it's gonna be Kirk Cousins and Bijan. I'm not mad about that. That doesn't hurt my heart. Yeah. At all. I mean, we know Bijan can you know, catch some passes out in the flag. Speaking, speaking of running backs that can make a quarterback look good. Yes. I feel yes. like Bijan's one of those. But, yeah, that deal that Cousins brought in, guaranteed $50 million, right? Gar- am I do I, am I remembering that correctly? Guaranteed I, it $50 It just million. says it's up to $180 million Yeah, $180 potential. million contract. That's probably like MVP of the Super Bowl. Or money. it was like a $50 million signing bonus or something oh, like that. I mean, that's – now, listen, I, I love – Is he worth that That is my money? question. I love Kirk Cousins as much as, you know, the average Michigan State fan. I, I think he's a good quarterback. I don't know if he's – How many teams Is this the new with? standard? Is this the new standard? That's just going right, I guess, for a quarterback. A quarterback, although Russell Wilson might argue that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wonder how much uh, Arch is going to get paid in his first con- – his, maybe his second contract. I want to see – I want to know what Arch's money is. Yeah. Woo! I mean, if, like – Mahomes, his after all the packages and extra incentives and marketing and blah blah blah, yeah. talking like a billion billion dollar area. That's insane. That's and, insane. You know, five hundred seven million plus all the other money and stuff. And so that's just. I mean, if Baker Mayfield is getting a hundred million, yeah, we should all get a hundred million. Yeah, I listen. I think that is. There's a lot going on. We know prices are going up and up and up. And uh, you know, there was a lot of teams made moves. I want to say every team made a move. Lots of teams, yeah. Except for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, the <laughs> Cowboys. Listen, <laughs> I don't know why anybody expects any different. I mean, this is the status quo for the Cowboys, right? They are they do well in the draft though. So they keep relying on the right. draft and developing. How's that working out for their Super Bowls? Not for their Super Bowls, <laughs> but for their regular season. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know. You're gonna explain Jerry Jones' decisions. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, another another vaunted Arkansas razor back there for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it, crazy stuff going on. I again, I I used to be a Cowboys fan, not so much anymore. But the jokes almost write themselves at this point with the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like again, who absolutely who expected anything different out of Jerry Jones coming off of this free agent period, right? Like. I just don't know. It's, it's I don't know. Well, let's see what they do in the draft because they have been drafting really well the last few years. Yeah, yeah, that's so. fair. That's fair. All right. All so right. speaking of Arch, because we brought up, I think he's gonna make dang good money one day. Yeah. Uh, but he did turn down money. We talked about this last week with mm-hmm. Rod Babers. Um, he did turn down the NCAA that massive <laughs> check for six six hundred dollars. That's two zeros. That's two. Two zeros yeah. in that check. That's right. And hang on to it. Don't cash it and spend it all. Right. Time. Listen. 
<laughs> that six hundred dollar check um, for his name, image, and like was part of the NCAA ESP the sports game, right? Mm -hmm. um, NCAA. Yeah, NCAA. Sorry, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, NCAA yep. sports game. And his comment was, and I want to get your thoughts on this. I play football on the field, not on a screen. That was the comment he put out. And Rod Babers had a fantastic, um, you know, he was theorizing last week that, yeah. oh, he's playing the long game. When the big game comes out, he's actually going to be on the cover and then big money's <laughs> coming. Like, hold off, hold off, make him wait, make him want more. And then, boom, he's on the cover when he's a starter. Um, according to Babers. According to Babers. He this is oh, his. He's, he's a good, you know, that was, that was a fun, he's a genius theorizing all experience. the elements of the football world. Yeah. So what do you think with, about that comment? I play football on a field, not on a screen. I mean, I think it's a fair thing to say. I think, I don't know, he's probably going to piss off a lot of like middle-aged dudes. <laughs> and they're like, what? A bull, but I play football on a screen. I, I don't know, man. Is it Was it accurate? Probably. Was it the best advised comment? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not because you're right. Like what happens next year when they're like, oh, we want Arch on, on the cover of 26. Now he's like, I play on the screen. Right. <laughs> right. Like you might not want to burn that bridge or maybe he's just made up his mind and absolutely isn't going to take any deals. Maybe like that. he's not. So maybe the conversation was there. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know. I, I think we're going to overanalyze anything that Arch Manning does or says or farts or whatever. <laughs> right. But yeah, I, I don't know. I It doesn't offend me personally. I think there are going to be some people that will look at that and kind of chuckle. I think there will some people that might get in their feels about it. The only thing I would offer is that if you know for sure you're never going to take a deal to be on the cover or you're never going to be in the game, fine. But maybe don't slam that door shut. So maybe much. say right now. At this point. At this point in this year. My I'm focus like, right now. My focus right now. Because, <laughs> I mean, thousands of of players are eligible to be in this game, right? So it's not like saying, oh, because you opt in, all of a sudden you're distracted. Right. But there are some players, uh, just a handful, and Arch being one of them, Arch mm -hmm. being one of them, that he's not causing the distraction. The distraction comes with, you know, follows him, I, right? You know, the, 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 sil the silliness follows him. He's not the one saying, yeah. come pay attention to me. That's not how he is at all. Yeah. Even just saying, I opt out. Why are you opting out? You know, that caused a drama. <laughs> that was drama in, in every other but week. But not by him, by No, other, no, no. Yeah. And it, part of this is, I mean, we're part of the problem, right? We talk about him too all the time. But, but it is a thing. He is a name that people are interested in. Texas is a high profile school that people either love to love or love to hate on, mm -hmm. you know? So of course you've got this perfect recipe for, you know, just media shit storms, right. And mm -hmm. sound bites and things that people want to try to, to make into a story that isn't really a story. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've seen and heard from about Arch on campus is he is, he's laser focused on football. He wants to be at Texas. He's happy where he's at. He's mm -hmm. happy with the plan. But yeah, like we say, I mean, God, you remember when the kid lost his ID, Right. And he's done that a couple times now, but he loses his ID or people are stealing it. We TBD. Right. Mm -hmm. But that became a story. Like, why? How many times did I lose my ID at UT? Quite a, quite a few. Right. But it's yeah. not it's not the end of the world. It's not some crazy ass story. So I don't know. It's, it's to me, it's always going to be this Arch Manning. And, and you do feel a little bit for yours. Right. Because Quinn. Quinn's having himself a time. He's, yeah. he's putting up numbers. He's winning at Texas. That's the thing that hadn't happened in a long time. So. I don't know. Is there a controversy? No. But are we going to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, you mentioned <laughs> like he's enjoying being at Texas. Um, I, I posted this a few days ago. Third and Longhorn, our friend Rod Babers with Derek Johnson and that whole amazing crew. Legends. They, legends. Yeah. The legends of Longhorns. They have this amazing show where they talk to current and former players. Yeah. This week, they talked to Michael Taft. Uh, your boy. Your boy, Mookie. <laughs> <laughs> they talked to Michael Tapp and yeah. um, he talked to, he was of course the one who hosted Arch Manning on mm -hmm. his recruiting weekend. And it's really cool to hear him talk about what, how that went when he was there and go find it. That's third and Longhorn is the podcast is a show up there on YouTube. It's on YouTube. And the latest episode is Michael Tapp. Yeah. And they talk about, which we talked about with Rod last week, those last white DB. Yeah. <laughs> He was the one that and being overlooked, and he's like, "Well, I was kind of overlooked because I was white." <laughs> yeah, and he speaks and, the truth, and he's a baller, and he's athletic. But how he bet on himself, and how he came to Texas, you know, he had a full ride to Rice, but he turned it down to walk on at Texas. Just his story and how he has the number sixteen. We know because one of his yeah. best friends, um, a kid named Coker, passed away in an accident. 
And then, you know, right away after that, Jake Ellinger, one of his other closest friends, passes away all back to back. Yeah. And just how he overcomes all that. But it was, which is just incredibly incredible. In and of itself, yeah, yeah, just inspiring. But also, he talked about hosting Arch Manning. And he's like, well, what did y'all do? What did y'all do? He's like, you know, we throw the ball. And Arch wants to go where the pretty girls are at. So we went to where the, Can where the cute them? girls are at. And Can they went to the them? lake where the cute girls are at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, can you blame him? This yeah, is Yeah, he's like, I want to hang out in Austin. Yeah, and so that was pretty cool. Like, you know, they talk ball, they talk, they threw the ball around, they didn't stress too much about, you know, the city kind of sells itself, the university sells itself. Coach Sark, you know, we talked about how uh, yeah. Manning's, you know, can you know, trusted in Sark. So he was in line with that, but hosting him that weekend. And they talked to the guys were talking about how they get a little stipend. You know, to take to host Little funny money, yeah, yeah. To host the, yeah. the the players, the the potential recruits, uh -huh. and they were laughing about how like, oh, he didn't he didn't really want to go out to eat or go, you know, be bothered or whatever. And like, you get to pocket that money, <laughs> right? It's like, thanks, man, thanks for the boost there, and then right? Turned to one of the guys, I mm. forgot, like, how come you were hosting every weekend? Because <laughs> he was pocketing all that money. <laughs> they were laughing; it was funny. That's anyway, so go go check out uh, Mookie's. Michael interview. Taft's yeah. interview. They yeah. talked about how he got the name. It's actually Sam Ellinger, J J Jake and Sam's mom, that they gave, gave him, him that name. name. That's cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, he's, he's very inspiring. And very inspiring. All he's had to overcome yeah. to, to play now. And you're looking Texas. forward to him. Oh. You, you, he's, he's your breakout player the 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 year this year. I mean, right? I, That's think, your I think he broke out last year. But yeah. I I feel like he's going to be one of the most successfully successful statistically this coming year. Because I already said he's going to lead the team yeah. in interceptions next year. All right. Well, I already said that. We've got it. We've got it on. Paper. I've said it many uh, times. I know you have. I know. Yeah, we're going to hold you to it. Yeah, going to hold you to it. So, uh, yeah, you know, I do want to give a quick shout out to mm -hmm. one of our friends in the Westlake area. Again, we got to say hi to a boss. Like, oh, yes, for he's, sure. He's our dude with Longhorn Laundry. Uh, again, we talk about this. I, I hate doing laundry. I hate having to mess with it. It is a pain in the butt. And fun thing, uh, a boss though, he runs Longhorn Laundry, which is a really cool thing where they will come pick up your laundry from mm -hmm. your house, do it, clean it, press it, make it smell nice and fresh. And then they seal it and then they deliver it right back to you. Cool thing too. He's actually a sponsor of Westlake Athletics. Now, yeah. So got to love it. He's here supporting, got some NIL deals with Texas athletes. He's out there just really in the fabric of Austin and, mm -hmm. and loving it. So if you guys want to give him a try, definitely check him out. It's longhornlaundry.com. Uh, you can also uh, check them out and be sure to mention fire the cannon, give them the code FTC two zero that's FTC 20 and you will get $20 off your first order. Or if you want, you got some questions, you want to just call them up directly, give them a holler at 512-470-1005. Again, that's Longhorn Laundry. It's our dude, a boss. You may know him yes. as the, the burn orange man. See him out and around on a, on campus and at different games. So if you see him, take a selfie with him. Say hi. Tell him fire the cannon sent you. He loves taking the selfies. He does. It's a good time. He's a good dude. So All right. Yeah. I just posted it onto the chat so people can see longhornlaundry.com. I posted it first and then I'm <laughs> – anyway, code FTC20. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So Texas football. Yep. Spring spring practice starts in one week from today. So, yeah, they got to check in on Sunday. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of guys are out of town right now visiting family for spring break. But mm -hmm. Sunday they get serious. You ready? Oh, I'm excited. Well, yeah. So that means by Wednesday when we come back to our regular show on mm -hmm. Wednesday, we will have some hopefully some good nuggets from people who are there reporting on who's who's looking good. We get, They re released the roster a few days ago with mm -hmm. heights and weights and measurements. And so we've seen some, especially some of the younger guys. Any surprises already. for you? Um, I what was kind of cool, but not really a surprise because his mom already told us it happened. Ryan Wingo yeah. put on 20 pounds already. Like, dang, these, yeah. these kids are coming in. Like, um, yeah, Tori Beckton's going to put those kids, he's got them working in the off season really well. And when you get that nutrition and that regular schedule and uh, I mean, they just start really changing their body. So that will be exciting. Um, so spring practice starts a week from today mm -hmm. and then uh, they're going to be practicing three times a week for the five weeks, which leads up to spring game, April 20th. Um, but also the, on the 20th is pro day. Mm hmm. All right. So let's let's go back to the spring game real quick. Yeah. Um, do you think at the spring game, okay, let's say who do you who are you looking most forward to in the spring game, like that we've seen like heard about in the offseason or improved since last year? Yeah, I to be honest with you, I think I'm really excited to see how all of our portal transfers are meshing with the team. 
Like, is Quinn, does Quinn have the chemistry with him? Is he finding his guys? Does he have his go-to, right? We know After that. 15 practices. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a short amount of time, but they've had a little bit of time together, a little bit of time to get to know each other. And they're coming in off times too. QB led. Right. Uh, Player, yeah. yeah. Pl Player -led, led meetings and things like that. But yeah, I'm excited to see like how, how's, uh, you know, Golden going to work out? Like, is he, or is he going to be there, uh, you know, working well are they they have that connection i know it sounds silly but quarterbacks we always know this they have their favorite they have mm -hmm. their go-to guys and we did i mean just it would be an outright lie to say we didn't lose a lot of production on from oh, from our starters right we did, statistically yeah. we lost a ton but this is where sark is really earning his money in my opinion he brought in so many from the portal i don't think texas skips a beat but having that chemistry having that connection being able to know where your guys at and and those portal guys who are a little more senior, but also new to the team, new to Sark's play calling, things like that. Are they going to be able to pick up? Have they picked up on the playbook? Do they know where they're supposed to be? Are they mm -hmm. hitting their routes? Are they, you know, I'm excited to see that. I think that's going to be really important. And I got to be honest too. I'm excited to see our running backs step up, right? Mm -hmm. We, we lost Brooks, you know, we, we got, we've been spoiled for choice here recently. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, so I, you know, seeing that next CC4, step up again and him be being excited. I'm excited to watch him. Um, you know, blue, I think it's his time. I think he's got some, some power ready. I think he's itching to go. He's waited his turn. So yeah, man, I mean, I I'm focusing a lot on the offense. How about mm -hmm. you? How about you? Who, who are you excited to see? Um, I would say, well, I'm excited because they're going to let him loose a little bit more. I think this year, Arch yeah. Manning, I want to see, I know Q Quinn is QB one. Yep. There's no question about that, but I'm just saying, I want to, I want to see them get loose a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see John Tay cook, especially because, okay. you know, yeah. he didn't, we, we've seen the difference between like, you know, even Tom Herman before Sark, where he rotated the receivers all the time, mm -hmm. fresh legs, fresh legs was his motto. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you big bodies too, you know, um, very different style. Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. big body wrote and then the rotating was her and every coach has their own style for their system. And then Sark is very different. He puts his guys out. They're going to play almost every snap. They may get a breather, but they're going to come right back out. And there is speed space, like just different styles. And it could right. be the games evolving, but just either way they have different styles. And so I, John Tate Cook, he was young. He's a composite five-star top talent. No question about his ability, but um, when he did get out there, he didn't always make the most of his opportunities. So I, I'm excited to see a, a, a year, another year in the program, right? Another whole off season in the program. Mm -hmm. And with that added competition of bringing, like you said, bold and golden bond, like bringing yeah. in all these other guys. And one of them is not on campus yet. I forgot which one. The, I think it's the Oregon State one that's not on campus yet. Mm -hmm. But um, two of them are already. And I want to see how he steps up with that added. I mean, I know they're all different positions, but they're all still fighting for a chance to catch the ball, right? There's still only one ball. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I'm, I'm really excited to see John T. Cook step up this off season yeah. and show us why he was a five-star and start earning more of that trust yeah. to get on the field. Well, that's, and that's a fair point. You know, he's, he's been with the team for long enough now. He's, He's going to be one of the guys that really understands the playbook. And this mm -hmm. is a really good opportunity for him mm -hmm. to step up into a leadership role, yeah. right? It, it's a great opportunity for him to say, hey, I know you guys are new here. I know this. Is, let me let me show you the ropes. Let me show you what to do. And, and that's one thing that, you know, we pick out these special players. We say, man, if, you know, if you look in the past two, three years, we talk about this culture change with Sarkeesian, right? We talk about that. But, and part of that is these players stepping up to say, yeah, I'm, I'm taking ownership of this seeing those player led meetings, seeing players come up, having guys like Rojo, anything for the team, right? Mm -hmm. Guys like Whittington, anything for the team, having them step up and, and, and really lead and take that role, I think is a cool thing that's developing and maybe underappreciated mm -hmm. as one of the key things that coach and staff, you know, coach Sarkeesian and his staff have started to develop with Texas. So yeah, I think that's a great point. I think cook really has an opportunity to step up and say, Hey man, like, been here for a minute now. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I can do. Also, let me help you get better. Who was it? I mean, Baber says this a lot. Iron sharpens iron, right? Mm -hmm. And and you don't get better unless you're practicing against the best. So yeah, I, I think I, I'm really looking forward to that too. And I do want to touch base on something that you mentioned, you know, a little earlier. You talked about Wingo putting on that 20 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. This is something we talked about a little bit last week, but I again I want to hammer on this. Tori Becton deserves all the credit in the world. You had mentioned just a second ago with Tom Herbin's teams, 
we saw a lot of guys bulking up, right? We saw those bigger, badder dudes, but we also saw a lot of injuries, a lot of soft tissue injuries. We saw some issues that to me, it got to be a little problematic, right? And we talked about this with Babers last week on our show, which we really, truly appreciate him and Katie joining us. Um, but you see now, like Becton's come in and now he is the director of football performance. They don't even call it strength and conditioning anymore, right? right. This is a whole new way of thinking where your nutrition is a part of this, you know, your how you're working out is part of it. But it's not just about cutting right? It's not just about bulking up. Right. It's also about that flexibility. It's also about what can you do to maintain speed while also having strength, right? right? What can you do to protect yourself? Again, we're seeing this. We talked about this with Christian Jones, you know, and, and T sweat and Byron Murphy running these crazy 40 times for big dudes without braces on their knees, right? Like right. we've got some big guys that can truck it. They put on smart weight. They put on healthy weight and they cut in the right ways, but they're also athletic and they're flexible and they are able to take, you know, make those moves that, you know, under Tom Herman, we weren't seeing that with guys. So again, different, I, yeah, different training styles, different, certainly different, everything, philosophy. everything different between the two. Right, right. Right. So again, I think that's something that might not be honed in on so much and we don't talk about it a whole lot, but I do think it's part of the fabric of these coach Sarkeesian teams that is that's really making a difference in how Texas plays and what they do on the field. So and how they're um they've stayed relatively healthy over right. the whole season. And that starts, of course, in the off season, right? The yeah. way they build their bodies. You know, and unfortunately we did, you know, we saw Jay Brooks go out with that ACL. That's that was an unfortunate yeah, the way he was landed on, it was it was really tough. And Texas has been in a really great position to have depth at different positions, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've done okay there, but yeah, you're, you're, I just, it, that stands out in my mind with the Tom Herman, you know, classes. We just saw a lot of soft tissue stuff. Do you remember the game? I think it was against, who was it against? Was it against Oklahoma State or B, or it might have been against Tech at home where Bijan just like folded up and his oh, head bent he did like backwards. A yoga pose. It was crazy. And truly, I mean, again, this was a Tom Herman team. That, that kind of stuff is scary. Mm -hmm. Right. But Bijan is that crazy player that takes on the additional and does yoga and does the, the those extra steps. But I think right. you're starting to see, you know, him having that flexibility certainly helped him in that position. That could have been a really nasty, nasty injury mm. ended up not being. But I think we're starting to see our players more and more get into that kind of mindset. It's yeah. not just about the weight room. It's not just about this. It's about being flexible. It's about having different kinds of strength and, and being tuned up properly. Right. right. So I'm loving it. I'm loving it. All right. What about on defense? Who are you looking forward to seeing in the spring game? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to say I'm going to pick out a specific player. I'm I, I, Taff. Okay. Your guy going to step up, but I am interested to see what our secondary does because last year that was to me, one of the spots that was a little touch and go from time to time. Right? <laughs> I'm being as kind as yeah, I can. That's very nice. I'm being kind as I can. Uh -huh. the, the secondary had some questions. Um, so yeah, I'd really like to see if our DBs are going to step up how they're playing. Are they ball hawks? Are they guys that are just going after it? Are they mm -hmm. able, are they swarming the ball? Do they know where it's at? Do they have those instincts? Are they able to make those big plays, game changing plays? So mm -hmm. again, we're only going to be 15 ish, you know, practices in by the time we talk about this next week. But I do think that's going to be a really key thing for Texas to make a step forward. The other thing that I do want to pay particular attention to is that D line. We are losing two big dudes. The two best the dudes two in the best country. Dudes in in like, the Big 12. Yeah. And I would, yeah, I'd argue in the country. Yeah. And and that's going to be, those are some mighty big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say we've got guys that will step in and replace Murphy and replace Sweat, right? Like I, you don't replace those kind of guys. Now, do we have players that can step up and make a difference? Absolutely. And that's what I want to see. I want to see if they're in and and they're making the blocks, they're making the, you know, getting through, they're they're making smart choices, making good swim moves. Are they the athletic bodies again? Are they ready mm -hmm. for that? Can they get to the quarterbacks, right? Can they can they shut down the run? It's going to be again, big shoes to fill, so I'm excited to see that. How about you? Alfred about Collins. You? Yeah. Alfred Collins. I big out. Yeah, yeah. I remember because so a few years ago when he was still like freshman, mm -hmm. he had that amazing athletic play in the Alamo Bowl, mm -hmm. right? And I that there were sparks and moments like, oh, this yeah. this 
this is an athlete. Like he's, we know he's big and strong, but he was like, had that quickness with his hands and eyes. Mm -hmm. And that was exciting to see. And then he's had moments. And I think what they wanted to do is piece together more consistent, high level. Yeah. The same with Sweat and Murphy, there was sparks and moments. And then they just put together consistent mm. yeah. full season of, you know, everybody gets tired. Everybody has moments, but overall they were consistently good mm -hmm. and great. And for if, if Alfred Collins, who cho chose to come back for another year, if he can have that kind of season or anything close to it, then that would really help with this transition into the, because he'll be with, you know, Vernon Broughton. We have Sadir Mitchell coming up. If we have these, uh, you know, it's a consistently good rotation, especially when you're going to go face, you know, SEC running backs week after week, the linebackers are going to be there to help more, but because they'll have more depth than they did last year. But I'm just, I'm, Thinking like for me, Alfred Collins pops into my head, and then um, I want to say I had I had it in the yeah Jalen Gilbo, already lots of good reports out of his off season mm -hmm. that he's coming strong. So let's see let's see what these um, with DBU like you mentioned we they they've got to it's got to be more than what we had last year because of course we and we've talked about this before the stats are kind of skewed when you look at. Texas gets up on people, so then they start throwing, right? Mm -hmm. And that skews the stats a mm -hmm. bit. But at the same time, there were some big that could be cleaned up. Yeah, and, absolutely. And they did start shifting more pressure, playing more physical. Like they did, like towards the end of the season, there was a shift in that philosophy of what they were running. And maybe now that they've recruited these younger guys that are more physical and that's more of the style, yeah. you know, Muhammad and, you know, we have these, these uh, with Derek Williams, you have these younger guys that can be physical. And then you have coming up, you know, Xavier Filsamy and these other guys that are known for being physical at the line. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they're trying to get to. And they have the speed to turn in chase. So that will be, um, I, I, I'm feeling that that they will be improved from last, this past season. And now the question mark goes to the DA only because you lost two of the best in the country. Right. Well, and something to bring up, too, that, you know, it's that looming elephant in the room. Bo Davis made a huge difference with, with our guys, right? And we mm -hmm. know that he's left to go coach his son at LSU. Um, so Kenny Baker coming in, got the pedigree. You know, he's he's mm -hmm. he's got the pedigree, did well for the Miami Dolphins. Um, but there's a lot of question marks there. Is he going to be able to step in and have the same kind of impact that Bo Davis did in the development in, in training our guys. So yeah, I, I think to me, those are two very big question marks that we have, you know, for the defense that it's a little scary, right? It's going to take time to build those relationships with not only the kids on this, the, the, the young guys on the staff, the roster now, but you know, the potential right. recruits, like that's going to be, an off season of adjustment, but what recruits are saying already is when they get to meet Kenny Baker, they're really excited about his energy and, and enjoying like, he's got like a choice, like a yeah, coach choice. And, kind and of he, you vibe. know, he connects to the um, Islander community. So I think that that's going to help too. So we'll see as the, as the time comes. Yeah. What's going on. Yeah. No, I, again, a lot of questions there, but I think we'll be able to get some peeks into that with the spring game. And, and once those practices really get fired up, um, you know, and we may, we may be, able to talk to a player or two here and there and get some, <laughs> get some insight on how they're feeling about it. So yes. yeah, I think uh, again, a lot of, a lot of really positive things on the 40 acres happening, a lot of positivity coming out of the football program, a lot to look forward to, but definitely some questions that are pretty big that need to be answered. So yeah, yeah. definitely looking out for that. Okay. So um, Texas pro day, March 20th, mm -hmm. That's right. Like they start camp on, they start spring camp on the 19th. The very next day, Wednesday is when they have pro day on campus also. So it's going to be a very busy time yeah. on um, at Texas football. So we, we know they had 11 guys at the NFL combine mm -hmm. and they can choose now. Maybe they didn't run or do a certain event or time a certain thing or measure a certain thing. Mm -hmm. They can choose to do it at the pro day with, you know, when the NFL teams come. And what was really interesting is Quinn is throwing at the pro day. How you what feeling? Do you, what do you think about that? I like it. Listen, I like it. I think, especially, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, all of this, you know, Arch Manning gets all of this attention, good or bad. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it can be distracting. It right. can be problematic. And you do kind of want to, now listen, Arch and Quinn are roommates, right? Like I'm sure these guys are laughing it off and iron sharpen and iron, right? They're mm -hmm. making each other better, but I think it's a good move. I like the idea that we see Quinn and what he can really do. He is in a position now 
like this is make it or break it time. This isn't time to like shrink down into the into the shadows. You need to step up. You're the leader of this team, which by all accounts we've seen, he's become vocal. Mm -hmm. He's taken the leadership role. He's leading those practices. He's really getting into guys when they're not where they're supposed to be. Right. I don't think you can sit here and say that you're the leader of the team if you're if you're not going to show off what you got, right? Like at a certain point, and he gets to do it without everything on the line, exactly a year in advance, exactly. Yeah. Like you're you're getting plenty of time to see where his strengths are, where he's developed, which we should see quite a bit of development with mm -hmm. that accuracy. Um, again, this this narrative that he doesn't have the arm strength is insane to me. That's ridiculous. The accuracy from time to time could be questionable, right? But it's about, you know, you mentioned this word earlier and it stuck out in my head. And if okay. I have to pick a word for this season that I want to define this season, it's consistency, mm -hmm. right? We need to see that consistency from both the O-line, the D-line. We need to see the consistency from DBU if we're going to be DBU. We need to see the consistency from Quinn Ewers. He has shown flashes of brilliance. Mm -hmm. Those long bombs, like some of the throws he had at Alabama Ugh. were amongst the best I've ever seen from a college quarterback. When the lights were the biggest, he performed. He shined, right? He had some amazing throws in the championship game. Right. Just dimes. Right. Yeah. It just, exactly. Just yeah. throwing these dimes where nobody else could touch it except for his guy, exactly where it needed to be. 50 yard, you know, 45 yards in the T air. The throw at TCU, which saved the game, which was um, Adonai Mitchell's falling to his back catch. Yeah. But that throw with the pressure in his face, he has that potential. He right. has that skill. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I want to see this year from the team as a whole. Let's let's define this season and this team by consistency because mm -hmm. Texas is damn good. Texas has the talent. They have the ability. We have the play caller. We have the coaching. We have the players. It's just that ability to execute consistently at a top level that's been a little touch and go, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, I, I like the idea of seeing Quinn there, seeing where he's performing and doing well. And then, you know, are there some questions? If there are some holes in his game, we get to see it early. And mm -hmm. he's got another year to work on it. So, yeah, I, I like it. Do you see any downsides to it? Um, I think it will be, especially after this, this, fortunately for him, this comes like after they've had their whole off season mm -hmm. and then all of spring practice. So he will have some good timing, not necessarily with the guys he's throwing to at pro day, mm -hmm. but he will have worked on a lot of skills over camp. And it's a good opportunity to show what his body looks like now, right? Because one of the knocks, of course, on Quinn, not his own fault, but one of the knocks on him is that he hasn't played a full season. Right. And um, he, for one reason or another, he's had to miss games, right? And the NFL, if you know, from what we've heard, they want they want nowadays they want college kids to have started 30, 40 games. Right. You know, they want three and four year starters who are experienced and seen it all and gone against good competition. And at this point, Quinn has two seasons under his belt and hasn't started all the games. Mm -hmm. Another full season, which could be 13, 14, 15 games right. if they keep playing well. Right. Um, that would be that would go a long way for him at the end of the year. And coming in as one of the Heisman odds favorites, you know, going into the season, there will be scouts who are all already eyeing on let's sure, see, what did he look like last year what is he looking like today how is he looking through the season and then by the time you get to next year combine slash pro day which will probably be in the combine maybe he wants to still do something at a pro day mm -hmm. but the they can piece together chart that growth and if it's on if it's on its way up that looks amazing for quinn but i think it's pretty cool that especially because it helps the receivers he's been throwing to them over this past year mm -hmm. right and I, I hope like I don't I don't know yet what Jay Witt is doing, but he didn't it, it didn't like fly off the page his numbers and performance at the oh, combine. I know he did well, but it didn't fly off the page like go up boards or anything. So I hope that this is an opportunity for like Jay Witt to shine sure, sure. and get a little you know get a little spotlight on him. Other guys have already shown you know that they're worth what people were predicting. Right. You know, Worthy Mitchell, uh, Murphy, Murphy, Sweat, Sweat. Yeah. they all did themselves huge favors at the combine. Right. So this is always a good opportunity for people for players like Jay Witt or even Christian Jones to show a little more sure. he, he he got you know his he's in draftable people are saying he is draft yeah. draftable fifth sixth round but maybe there's something he can show a little more mm -hmm. um or they get to spend more time with him mm -hmm. so yeah 
Yeah. No. And Jalen Ford, he didn't compete in everything at the combine either. So right. maybe he's a little healthier or maybe there's something different he wants to do here to show a little more. Cause I, from what I'm hearing, he still needs to show a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do Just, you see? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it's a good opportunity. And again, when you're at a program like Texas, who has the ability to put on these big pro days yeah. and get the names and get the scouts and get the actual I wonder how many show teams out. are coming. Pro right. Day. That'll be really interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great opportunity for guys who didn't quite shine as much as they would want to at the combine to get some extra reps and to get in front of those guys one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one and just really show out what they can do. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Um, I would be curious to see like, where is Jay Brooks in his recovery? Where is he as far as healing? Is he able, cause we know with the combine, he didn't, he didn't participate. Is this something where, you know, just a, a month later, is he going to be able to show out at pro day and maybe show that he's recovered. Okay. Or is that too risky? I would say, I mean, I don't know if, if, if I would say if he wasn't well enough recover, of course, it's only been, a, it's only been a few months right? and he has, he's on his recovery trajectory. What's the advantage when he's What's already the, the number one running That's, back on the board? Yeah, definitely. What, what, more, more down potential downside. Yeah. Than upside. There's potential risk. If it's too early to be rushing back testing and putting, uh, you know, not his best numbers up. Yeah. What's, what's the point when he just needs a few more months and go through an off season Stay with Stay healthy. Yeah. Let an NFL team pay him to Full recovery. recover. Yep. No, that's, that's, I like that. I don't see the, the benefit in that. So the, the combine, the NFL pro, Texas pro day mm -hmm. is like we said, it's uh, March 20th, next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be on ESPN slash LHN mm -hmm. at 8 PM. It's being aired at 8 PM our time. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a replay of what happened during the day yeah, it's or they're, they're, they're waiting till the evening to go live because also on that same day is Alabama, Ohio state, USC, and some other teams. So, and you know, the NFL scouts have to send people to all these different, mm -hmm. whichever ones they want to go to that day. So they send them to all the different schools. So I don't know if it's happening during the day and then they're airing it that night, or if it's not happening till the evening, but either way we can see it at 8 PM that night. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And then again, when you're going up on the same day against Bama, against Ohio state, against USC, that's something where this is where the power of Texas really shines through, yes. right? Having that control, having that ability to get the message out, get the media out, have really great media teams covering this stuff, mm -hmm. um, both through ESPN, but also through the University of Texas. You know, they're really good at getting those clips and getting that out there and really shining a spotlight on the guys that need it. Um, now, we also mentioned, too, I, again, you know, we're doing this the same day as Bama. I do think there there's going to be a lot of question around Bama. Right. I think there's going to be some curiosity there. We know this is kind of the last of the Saban crew right. coming through. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Of course, a lot of questions at Ohio State with Day um, going on and how are his players going to perform? Um, so, <laughs> they so, have a lot. Yeah. So it'll be it'll definitely be interesting. But that, again, is where Texas as the brand really shines through. Now, a &M has their pro day on the 18th, a couple days before Texas, Texas. does. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that strategic? You think that's that's meant to be, you know, oh, I'm, sure do there's, Texas. Uh, I'm sure there's a million reasons why they pick a day. Mm -hmm. I don't think they worry about, oh, when's Texas doing theirs? No, I think they do. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they didn't have as many players at the combine. I want right. to see speaking. I want to see if there's I'm, and I've tried to find it. I didn't see anything yet, but I'm sure names will come up. Are there any Texas um, seniors who are going to perform at the pro day who weren't invited to the combine so there usually are a handful because sure. that's why you also bring it home right that's so right. that you can give more players show a your guys off yeah. so i'm sure those names will come out in the next couple days and i'll be looking for that because um there's always a few players that not everybody gets a combine invite right, right but right. there's still you know potential there to show like hey you missed you missed out on me yeah so th that happens every now and then you get a player that shines at the pro day absolutely so that's definitely something to keep an eye on too now it's it's crazy. I a lot going on. It is we talk about this and we always worry about oh it's the off season for football. Do we do we have enough to talk about with football? My uh, God, we always have. There's always crazy stuff going on there. Now, yeah. did you see this, Rocky? The uh, there was recently the college football alerts set out the best college football win percentage of all time. Did you see win this percentage? Yeah, yeah win yeah, percentage. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, were there any surprises for you on there? I got, I got to hear it. I got to hear it. I want to hear what you got. To okay. Say. So we'll tell y'all one and two, of course, Ohio state and Michigan mm -hmm. rivals are the top two percentage wise. Percentage -wise so yeah. They've beat up on a lot of teams over the years. They have 73.4% and 
winning mm -hmm. percentage. So winning three out of four games is the best in history. It ain't bad. That ain't bad. But <laughs> over, you know, 100 years yeah. or whatever. Also then Alabama, yeah. Notre Dame, Oklahoma. I was surprised to see Boise State so high. But then I thought, well, no, they've always been – um, for their level of play that one of the top teams, thank you for the, oh, look at that. Thanks. This is for Megan. Oh, thanks. We'll do happy hour in just a second. <laughs> They've always been one of the top levels of uh, play for their, you know, um, conference. Yeah. Even when they changed conference, they were still a good winning program, but I didn't realize they I guess 72.5%. I was like, I need to go back and look how long they've actually had a football program. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I was that, that caught my eye, but then Texas 70%. 70.2% winning. Seven yeah. out of 10 games in history, Texas has won. That's pretty good. Yeah, it is. It is. I think one that that stood out to me that, that was a little surprising just because of recent <laughs> turmoil is Nebraska. Nebraska hanging tight at number 10, despite being absolute trash for the past decade. They Nebraska, won enough early. They won enough on. early. Yeah. And again, one of the older programs. Yeah. But you're talking, they're hanging in at number 10 at, at a 678 winning percentage, which is still freaking impressive. It is not that far off from some of these others. You know, USC, Penn State, they're all still right there with them. And Nebraska hadn't done shit in a minute. So uh, still one of the most loyal fan bases. So, but yeah, I think that one, like you knew Nebraska was really good and you knew Nebraska had done a lot, but they've been just so piss poor recently that you do kind of go, dang, you're still in the top 10? All right, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's the Blue Bloods, Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, mm -hmm. Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas, USC, Penn State, Nebraska, Tennessee. I mean, those are all, of course, that's how you become a Blue Blood. You win most of your games through history. Right. But what was funny is App State, this was kind of funny, App State <laughs> is number 16, and they've dominated for a long time in their division. Yeah. Um, they made, I know they moved up, but for a long time, they were really good. And A&M is number 23 <laughs> with 60%. Yeah. Six out of 10 games they win. Yeah. But in look, their history. Look, I, I. But they're the top 25 of winning his program. Top 25 out there. And, and you got to say, again, I do think you take some of this with a grain of salt. You know, you're talking Boise State. You're talking App State. Like the, the level of competition. I think even Georgia Southern shows A &M up on A&M is there. behind Georgia Southern. Right, right. And which, Washington. Which, again, yes, it's fun for us to go, hey, look at AM down that. But, but the competition they play. The level of competition is also yeah. different as well. And again, I think Texas hanging in at number seven, you know, for a minute there, it, you know, Ohio State and Michigan, we know that they go back and forth. Texas was amongst the most winning programs. They were in the winningest programs, mm -hmm. battling for that top. And then we had that just bad decade of football. Yeah, that'll hurt you. But there is some opportunity here, again, for Texas to kind of catch up. We know that Alabama, who's at number three, has a lot of questions, right? With Saban gone, Notre Dame always seems to be kind of hit or miss. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, um, Oklahoma still sucks. So hopefully that's it. That's an opportunity for Texas this year. But to, when you've played thousands of games, right. it takes years to move that percentage up a little bit because, it, I mean, you have to win another hundred games to go up a percent. You know, like it just takes thousands of. It just takes forever yeah. to change, sorry, to change that percentage well, because you five and seven to, seasons weren't helping. No, 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 it does not <laughs> help. But also like, you know, you're playing 10 to 12, 13 games a year yeah. for say the last 50, 60, 70 years. I know Texas football goes on longer than that, but before that they sure. didn't play as many games a year, seven, eight, nine games. No, that's absolutely yeah. true. So it takes a long time to move that needle again. But I think that's something worth noting too. Like we're talking about the new college playoff structure this year the, the college football playoffs you, we have potential for it to play 15 games in a season that's a lot of football gotta for have the college depth. kids that's a lot you gotta of, have depth you do have the depth but again that's more of an opportunity where you know before you're playing nine games in a season that's a that's a heck of a lot more games to be mm. able to to really prove who you are or you know get hurt i guess this is the I mean, unfortunately there, but, now we have you know 85 scholarship players plus right. whatever walk-ons right isn't the leatherhead time where uh where you, you got I three guys know. three guys that are playing you know both, both ways yeah the kicker is also the <laughs> is also the quarterback yeah. is also the db is yeah. also, and he's yeah. smoking his pack of cigs in the <laughs> at halftime like going through it yeah definitely D different times for sure yeah. but you know you but definitely oh that's a lot of it, it that's absolutely. a lot of football they're going to play next year absolutely. and and they want to i mean the better you are the more, longer you keep playing well and let me ask you this are you worried about the longer season you know we we had this conversation this past season with texas this was a really good opportunity for texas to win the national championship right mm. because 
it is that shortened playoff. You only have to go through four teams or three other teams versus this full gamut of 12. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they're talking potentially 16 at some point. At a certain point, much like the NFL went through this, we're worried about the safety of the players. Let's keep playing more games. Yeah. Some of those don't match up, but do you are you concerned with this potential for extended play? I mean, of course, you want to see your team make a deep run. Do you do you have concerns about it being a, a potential 15 game well, season? Right now they have um 12 plus a championship game if you make it, plus two Texas would have had two more. We would have had 15 this last year too. And now imagine and now two it could, more. Yeah. Sorry. It's it's a lot of football. It is a lot of football. And you have to just really, you know, build that depth, mm -hmm. get lots of rotation early when as much as you can early in the season so that players are experienced and can come in in key moments, which mm -hmm. they might have to late in the season. You hope that earlier in the season you get everybody plenty of playing time. So you not only rest players, but also like build experience because you're going to need all 85 all plus get. some yeah. to get through yeah. 15, 16 games. Right. Woo. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a grind, man. And you know, I, I think this is also, we are going to start to see that separation of the haves and the have nots. Mm. Do you have that depth? Do you like, I think it's in NIL era, any team can have some really solid talent starting. Right. But when you get into the grind of that season, the, the 12th game, the 13th game, the 14th game, do you have the depth to cover the potential damages that can happen after that much football in that short amount of time. Right. I, I mean, look at the winning percentage. It's always been historically it's haves and haves nots. Right. Winning is Ohio state, Michigan, Bama, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas, USC have and have nots. I mean, that's, it's, it's just going to keep that going. It yeah. doesn't, it's not all of a sudden to become that it's just going to keep maintaining that. No, that's fair. And that's fair. maybe it exaggerates it a little bit more, but we'll see now that, you know, maybe group of fives have more opportunity to get into a playoff or, you know, someone who didn't necessarily win their conference championship, but they played really well that season. Those teams are going to have more opportunity to rise up and, you know, upset somebody or get, get a shot, yeah. which they didn't have before. Yeah. And I don't know. Which do you prefer now that Texas made it, finally <laughs> made it into the final four, the playoff four, uh, or now you have to worry. It's almost like more like March Madness. Like, oh, what's the actual matchup? Right. Like, what if you are one of the best teams, but it's just a bad matchup? So that that is where I do have feelings about things. I and why, why would I dare say something so controversial? I don't know that a playoff or a tournament style is the way that you truly determine the best team in okay. the nation, because on any given night, you can have, you can pit two teams against each other. You know, I'll use this example, Appalachian state and Texas A&M on any given night, Texas A&M probably has more talent and you, they play 10 times in a row. a and is going to win nine times out of 10, right? Are they though? I'm just saying. Are they though? Like we're speaking in hypotheticals here. All right. Calm down. But yeah, but you see what I'm saying? Like, but on that one, any given Sunday, any given Saturday, that's what's going to make it so exciting. Right. So it's going to make it. So I mean, it's part of what brings the excitement to March Madness. Like we all love to watch that Cinderella story come up. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that that team, the Cinderella team that makes it that, you know, St. Mary's Holy VCU Church of, and Shaka Smart. Yeah, listen, they I, should hire him. Does <laughs> does that mean that that Love team that. is the the best of the best of the best? No, it just means they're playing really good basketball right then and there. Yeah, a and yes, after a long grind from a football season, when you're in your again 14th, 15th game, your depth matters, your coaching matters. I, I'm not saying that doesn't play all a role, about the matchup, but it's that it's that the, the specific matchup and how you're bracketed and how you're seated. Mm -hmm. it, there's just so much that goes into it. Now, all of this to say, I am not poo pooing the, the the playoffs. I'm excited about it. I think it's it's going to be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's that this or March Madness, as much fun as it is, as entertaining as it is. I don't know that that's the best way to pick the number one team in the country. I don't think it's the truest way to pick the number one team in the country, but it sure is a lot of damn fun. Yeah. I, it's also, I could, I see that, that, you know, Oh, just, you know, we have the speediest best shooters, but they have these bigs that just stand and block everything like, okay, well that was not a good matchup for us or whatever, but 
also at the end of the day though like the team with the depth and that can just keep finding ways yeah, to win yeah i think it doesn't necessarily determine the five best players on the court but maybe the best crew of staff and depth and you know when the assistants have to be scouting the other team and preparing yeah i would and agree with adjusting that. the coaching staffs like all of it comes together so I'm fine with that being the winner because we can't just say, well, you played this group of teams over the season and you played this completely different group of teams over the season. And we're going to say you were better. No, I get it. I get it. And again, you know, there's, there's no perfect system. No, certainly. And the shoulda, coulda, wouldas will always exist. I mean, hell, look at us. We, we still, to this day, talk about 2008 university of Texas football program, right? Juan Cosby, like we, that team, in my opinion, the 08 team was a better team than the 09 team. But the 08 team, Texas Tech just had that crazy play, the crab tree catch, and that killed the 08 team's Longhorns national championship aspirations. Had they caught Tech on any other day, any other night? I would say it was the voting that year. I don't All know, those man. coaches' polls. But, and the- but I'm saying if that team, if that play, that singular play hadn't happened, had had Gideon made the interception, had our guys, our, our all-legendary, all-American cornerbacks, stopped Crabtree, actually got him out, intercepted the ball, pushed him out of bounds, no matter what, that would have changed that team's trajectory, right? So so in my opinion, the again, the 08 team was a better team than the 09 team was, but they didn't have the opportunity to prove that on the national stage because of that one game on that one night that played out the way that it did. That's what meant, that's when every game counts and that's what sure, it should be. Every sure. game should matter. At the end of the season, you, every game should matter. Like nothing mattered more this year. Um, like losing to Oklahoma stank. That was a back and forth yeah. drama game. That it stank was. losing that game. But rivalry go, game. Yeah, yeah, rivalry. Going into Alabama, that game mattered. Sure. And, and at the end of the season, if Texas didn't stay ranked ahead of Alabama, unless they fell off and lost five games or whatever, if they had still had one rivalry lo- rivalry loss and they kept you know competing and winning and yeah, winning that, and winning. That early September game made all the difference if, in the world. If they didn't keep Texas, as long as Alabama and Texas both had that one loss, one mm-hmm. loss, if they didn't keep Texas ahead of Alabama, that just tells people that game doesn't matter. Yeah. And at the end of the season, every game had to matter, especially when you're you know taking a big shot going on the road doing what they did all of it has to add up and this year it could be the difference of sitting out the bye week and getting to rest and watch games and scheme and plan and yeah and prepare right your your game plan or having to roll out a team you know with no with few days notice of who you're playing and travel to somewhere maybe and the craziness yeah. right so this year being in the top four is is going to be like you're yeah. not just in it you get that bye week yeah Whew, that's Ab- gonna mean a lot it does it absolutely makes a difference it, you know like we see in the nfl playoffs like having that playing in the wild card doesn't mean that you're out but it sure makes the row a lot, a lot harder, harder to hoe. yeah i mean yeah. There, there's no question there um yeah, again, I think it's going to be fun. I'm not, again, I'm not poo-pooing the, the tournament style. I think it'll be fun and entertaining, but yeah, it's really an opportunity. And to your point, you know, you're saying that game early, Texas playing Alabama, Texas having the big balls, you know, these, those games are scheduled years ahead mm-hmm. of time. Texas having the balls to say, yeah, we're going to schedule Alabama. We're going to schedule against Georgia's and we're going to schedule Michigan. against Michigan and Ohio States. And we're mm-hmm. going to have them early in the season. We're not going to do this cupcake thing. And we also anticipate playing a really tough conference schedule. It's a gutsy move, right? Because winning percentage ultimately does matter. Mm -hmm. And if you lose, you really screw yourself. Yeah. But, but when you win, those games make all the difference in the world. You're absolutely right. Had Texas not played Alabama at the beginning of the season last season, I don't know that Texas makes the playoffs. I don't know right. that they convince most of the nation that they deserve to be in right. those top four rankings. So yeah, because beating at even even though Oklahoma State was ranked at the end of the year, they weren't some stellar, you know, record breaking team. So they beat even handling them solidly at the end of the season or finishing the season with you know, Tech and Oklahoma State, that's not world-breaking that's going to make people have to put you in the playoff. Right. So that Alabama win was always the ace up the sleeve all season long for Texas, and those games have to matter. And I, even though the committee is crazy and does weird things, 
at the end of the day, I think that even though there was the Oregon drama too, yeah. I think they got the Oregon top drama, four team. FSU drama, yeah. And, and the, the, the fact that all, you know, the two playoff games went toe to toe last minute, you know, like brawls, like they were good, good games told, tells you that that was the right matchup, right? Yeah. Like those yeah. were good, good games. Yeah. But again, with matchups, Texas got, uh, an unfavorable matchup for them with that you have you know Washington with the three three receivers that could go in the first round of the NFL this insanely talented sixth year whatever quarterback and our struggle at the time was the DBs and and they picked us apart Penix had again that that's yes. another good example Penix had a lights out career game yeah just a freak show and of we a game. knew that was the matchup Texas didn't want at that time sure and nothing you can do about it and if Texas had played Michigan or even Alabama I would think they would have a better chance of getting to the championship game mm -hmm. that was the of the three that could have played that was the worst matchup and and it turned out to be Texas hung in fought back got in it and was a play away from making it you know more but that's it's all about matchups yeah agreed agreed so it, it was, it's going to be nuts. This year is going to be a ton of fun to watch. Again, I, I want to say there's a lot of positivity on the 40 acres. Football mm -hmm. is going to be doing some things really excited about that. So we'll keep an eye out there. Uh, but yeah, before we jump into this and before we jump into talking a little basketball, cause I want to talk some rivalry still. I, yes. I appreciate this, this grind. Maybe we could give a quick shout out to our partners at Covert BK. Okay. Yeah. Covert Auto Group. Yeah, absolutely. Fam family owned group of automotive dealerships that has served the greater Austin area for over a hundred years since in since they, why did they write this? Since its inception, the team at Covert <laughs> Auto Group, since they started, the team at the Auto Group has been committed to providing customers with high quality selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, as well as outstanding customer service. So make sure you check out Covert B Cave. Um, they are on 42 acres in the hill country. It's an easy drive from downtown, easy to get there. Um, B Cave, they are... Uh, they have a state-of-the-art new dealership. We saw mm -hmm. it recently. It's beautiful. Gorgeous, yeah. They have Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. They also have Covert Ford and Chevy in Hutto and Ford Lincoln in Austin. So you can go to covertbcave.com and see their latest specials and inventory. So thank you, Covert B Cave, for sponsoring it. Texas Sports Unfiltered. Absolutely. Always part of the family, and they always take care of you. Yes. So, Got to love it. Got to love it. All right. So- we were this past Saturday. We had the opportunity to participate in a rivalry game. That and it came out our way again. I, I got to just do this reminder. It's four seventeen, Rocky. And oh, you still suck. Thank you, thank you. So was was a great senior day. Good give off. And again, and we have our. If you didn't see earlier, we um, have our senior night poster. And our, they put out nice things yeah, for the seniors. I and the it. kids, the students had shirts. They did. They made them cute shirts. They did. Yeah. You got to love it. So, you know, Texas just laying it on to Oklahoma. It was a fun game. It was loud. It was rad. What do you think about the Moody Center for, for Texas OU? What do you think about it? It was raucous. It was the, the crowds were in it. The students were all in their seats. The everything was full. It was sold out. It was a great game, great atmosphere, especially for being midday Saturday. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere. Everybody was loud. We, it was us two, and then Richard and our other friend Seth. We we had thank you yeah. to the, our friend that gave us the ticket. Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, Ruben like huge Ruben, hookup. Yeah, it yeah, was awesome. Thank you, Ruben. He messaged Megan and was like, "I have four. And like, we'll take them. We used them. We filled the seats. And thank you. Yeah, Ruben, thank you. They were we had a ton of fun. We were plenty loud. Don't worry about it. Oh, we, we cheered. We were loud. <laughs> and then our friend Titan Mateo, my Titans friend, yeah. gave us a parking pass. So thank you, everybody. That yeah, was, was great. great. We, I was, yeah, it was great. But thank you to. But we, yeah, I mean, Texas just came in yeah. and and ran through Oklahoma again. The final score was ninety four to eighty. But I don't think that was really indicative. I mean, there was a little bit of back and forth in the game. They tied it up. We were up by like eleven or twelve, and they tied yeah. it up. And then Texas was gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, this is something. I said this earlier about the football team, what I want to see and the word I want to define the season is consistency. Hot damn. If if this men's basketball team could play with the consistency and, and the intensity that they played against OU and they played in some of their bigger games against Texas Tech, you know, they played well at Baylor until they didn't. Uh, but but having that consistency, if Texas basketball could could play with that and really keep up that energy level, this is a team that could they have the talent. They have the potential to make a deep tournament run. 
again, it's going to be the matchups, which wherever they get seated after right, this right, weekend. Right. right. Again, but watching Texas here, I would say, heck yeah, they should get, they deserve the higher the seat. The offense can take, compete with anyone. It's their team. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, no, but it was a fun game. Definitely. Uh, I have to say this, that sticks out my head. Brock Cunningham, once <laughs> again, God love him. And this, we, we did finally wish him farewell in this, his 17th year of eligibility. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I got to say, as, a, as somebody who wears burnt orange, I love the guy. I oh, absolutely yeah. love the guy. One of my favorite players to go down in Texas history. Now, I, the winningest basketball player in Texas. Well, that's because he was here for four years. I know, years, but, but still, yeah. they won enough games yeah. while he was here. To Brock Cunningham has won more games as a Texas Longhorn than, <laughs> than any other than any of these famous TJ Jer Ford what? jerseys and one and done. jerseys in the Raptors. Yeah, Brock Cunningham is your winningest yeah. Longhorn. Hey, raise the ever. jersey, raise, raise the it. jersey, no. raise the jersey. They should put his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wouldn't that just piss they everyone? Retire that number thirty. Right? He's number thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elizabeth, we. Talk to we we talk about Brock a lot. We love his intensity. He he's an aggressive player. There's no well, question. He's from the hood of Westlake the, Hills. The, them dirty, dirty Westlake <laughs> streets. He's from the dirty game. <laughs> no, no doubt. But but listen, I mean, he is one of the guys. Is he do you think he goes down in Texas history as a favorite or as a, a hated guy? By Longhorn? Yeah. Oh, loved. Yeah. Loved, loved, loved. Yeah. I mean, they do George Knight for him. Yeah. They, they when he comes on the field, people go crazy. When he shoots a three, they go crazy. And the applause they gave him when he was right. coming off the even he was though, the last one to be recognized for on um, senior. Yeah, day. yeah, yes, they held him for the mm -hmm. last and everybody the, his cheers, everybody every, people know that he's gutsy and tough and he does he is getting a little, you know, slack, slack, slack for being a little too handsy, a little, a little too handsy, too shovey, too finishing things. I, I would love to hear from the commenters. Like, guys, is Brock Cunningham a person that you love and want seven more years of? Or is that that kind of play doesn't shouldn't live at Texas? Is he not the guy, you know, for you? I, I'd love to hear what people think. I mean, if he was on the other team, I'd be like, hey, that jerk, get him he's out of here. Player. Right. But on my team, he's just a little tougher. <laughs> Listen, you know, we did see it even in the OU game. I think there were a couple, there was certainly one, if not two, that of uh, uh, penalties and fouls that he got that one, he was just standing yeah. with his arms straight Literally, up. And straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Didn't, didn't move his feet. Jump. Didn't jump. <laughs> Didn't, I don't think he even touched the ball. He's he just didn't standing touch there. Anything and just they called a foul straight up and they called a foul and he stood there. He was like, "What?" And looked at the ref with his hands still up, like, "I didn't do anything." That that to me, that's pure reputation. And again, that doesn't have any place in the sport. I hate reputation fouls. They drive me bonkers. Certainly, terrible calls like that. Now, we talked. Richard says, "Yes, you need an enforcer. <laughs> Love Rock it. the enforcer. Rock the enforcer." <laughs> And like we need to get him like some creepy mustache to be the, oh, the no. enforcer. But yeah, I mean, I would agree. You know, he's gotten praise from other Big 12 head coaches, basketball coaches saying, you know, as somebody that you play, you don't like him. Right. Yeah. He is. He seems he's tough and he gets under your skin and he does all these things. But every team needs a Brock Cunningham. And I think that's a fair statement. You need a guy that's going to be the leader. You need a guy that's going to get people riled up. I mean, when when Brock is on his shit. You gotta admit that the crowd goes nuts. He mm -hmm. gets under their skin. He embraces the hate. He does embrace it. If anybody embodies that phrase, it is certainly Brock <laughs> Cunningham. Listen, he broke Texas Tech fans. I'm not saying they were perfect to begin with. Lord <laughs> knows they had some issues. But watching the absolute utter meltdown, they of were Texas Tech called fans, off by the cops. Who, Some of them, who a couple are, of them, who are notoriously awful, yeah, and notoriously aggressive. I've never heard that about them. Never, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm definitely pulling yeah. this out of my butt here. But okay, but yeah, like let's, <laughs> watching that fan base who loves to give other people shit and just run their mouths constantly, watching them just go to pieces over a player like Brock Cunningham brings endless joy to yeah. my soul it is something that will i will fondly remember of brock cunningham for forever <laughs> is breaking texas tech and breaking their fan base so much so that when we're not even playing texas tech they're still talking about C brock cunningham yeah. so much so that if we're playing texas tech in a different sport they're talking about brock cunningham we'll do we'll jump into that in a minute but um yeah i mean it was a great game texas showed out ronnie terry had his guys on it and i will say this Coach Terry was making timeout calls at the right time. Mm. That's something we don't always see from Texas, right? There's right. there's some problems where 
they he lets the momentum shift a little too long. That that goes on We've a little seen too long. That. Yeah. And rather than stopping it. But I thought this game, anytime OU started to come back, Terry was on it and was like, all right, cut this shit out. Let's get it back together. And Texas played a really solid game. Um, so we are coming up, obviously, on tournament play. Well, let's before we let's just give a quick shout out to sure. Hunter. Yeah. Tyrese Hunter. Yes, yes, good call. Good call. Player of the game. We 30 points, Ooh. nine for nine free throws. He couldn't miss. Yeah. He was on fire, three for four yeah. from three points and seven assists. That's always nice too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out. Hunter had a great game. Yeah. It, that that was really nice. He had um, as many points as the next two players combined. Yeah, listen, that, which was just dis- yeah, and that's where I say the consistency because Hunter hasn't. He's been kind of absent mm-hmm. in some of the games coming up, especially inconsistent. And he balled out on Saturday. Absolutely Senior guy, out. He helped. He he helped. Yeah. All yeah. right. So let's see. Oh, the comments aren't showing up. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. All right. So moving on. You you mentioned tournament yeah, play, play starts. Yep. Starts tomorrow night, Wednesday night. How do you feel about Texas's odds here? How, how are you thinking they're going to do? Well, again, they match up well with Kansas State. They oh, see here we go. Yeah, okay, right. Seth, that's a good point. We got to bring this up. We did see Red Panda. Oh, Seth was with us at the game. <laughs> Our friend Seth, absolutely, and Red Panda, absolute. Listen, she's talk about somebody who has been around for Texas for a long time. Mm-hmm. I, I remember Red Panda halftime shows. She was on. She was on one of those shows, like America's not America's Got Talent, but one of those kind of shows on TV where like. Wow, this woman's amazing! Yeah, and that, then she started touring. I mean, yeah. We've been seeing her at Texas basketball games for, years for now, a long like. time. Yeah, and she's still, yeah, she, she's, she's the woman. If you don't know who Red Panda is, she's on this massive, tall unicycle. She's now an older Asian woman. She's yeah. older now because she had gray hair and wrinkles, and she still is amazing. Yeah. and she's balancing on this <laughs> massive. Which is hard enough Shit. just to balance. She has to climb a ladder to get on it. Yeah. She is balancing on this super tall unicycle. And then she's putting bowls on her feet and flipping them up onto her head. Catching them with her head. Catching them on, on the head. unicycle. And then she's stacking up bowl, 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 like uh, end up to end. Up to pipe, yeah. Yeah, yeah end she, to end bowls. And then flipping them yeah. and they're stacking on her head. Yeah, she starts with one and then goes to two and then three. And they're all staying on her head at this time. And she goes up to, I think it's like five or six five bowls or six that she bowls. catches. Now, I got to say, we got to work on Hook'em's throw a that little bit. That was awful. Hook'em couldn't get it up to her. Hook'em, Hook'em damn near knocked That's her. That's how high she was. She, was. she couldn't get him up to her. Hook'em she damn almost near. fell over trying to reach the bowl. He was oh. Hook'em damn near knocked her off the unicycle. That would have been the show. But <laughs> Thank you, Seth. We could not, we'd be yeah. remiss if we did not. That's a absolutely. massive love to Red Panda. That's absolutely she's true. She's incredible. And she's now, I guess she still just makes a living touring doing these little halftime shows. Yeah. yeah. Good for her. Yeah, there you go. Love it. You want Red Panda to give a pep talk to the football team about consistency <laughs> thank you friend that is that is you know what tweet cdc right there tweet him of all the ridiculous stuff he gets tweeted i feel like that's not so ridiculous we got- well heading into the <laughs> heading into the uh big 12 tournament the, yeah. the, the basketball men's basketball and we'll talk about women in just a minute yeah. but the sark did go give them a, a pep speech you know a pep mm-hmm. talk about you know greatness and you know this moment and it's it's on texas basketball tweeted that out a little clip of it but that was really nice of sark to go and and give them some some love and some inspiration i will say this this is one of the things that i that i really respect about texas is certainly since cdc has been on campus is watching all of the sports support all the other sports and Mm -hmm. watching you know volleyball showing up to baseball and baseball showing up to softball and you know football being at basketball and you know we've got football and basketball and swimming at volleyball it's just cool you don't see Mm -hmm. that you get a little spoiled at Texas because you go, oh, yeah, it's just common to see the student athletes no matter what game you're going to. But that's not necessarily the case. No, we've, we've got a friend that that works uh, at Oklahoma. And that was one of the things they mentioned there was it just shocks me how separated each of the sports are. They just they don't interact with each other. They don't support each other. So I don't know. I think that's super cool to see see them show up and, you know, get your football coach pep talking your basketball team. I think that's, that's pretty awesome. fun. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So they have. To Wednesday night, they Kansas State. They match up well against Kansas State. Mm-hmm. So if they can get past Kansas State, they could face Iowa State on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. If you know Iowa State will be there, and then I think the Iowa State matchup that could look really good if they beat a you know top team like Iowa State going into the bracket weekend because sure. brackets come out on Sunday, uh, this Sunday, March seventeenth, St. Patrick's Day. They come out, and then the games start Tuesday. Yeah. 
Tuesday, Wednesdays, those four, first four games. We're jumping four into in, it. four out games. Quick, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. already next week, a week from today, March Madness. Can crazy. you believe that? It's crazy stuff. And Texas Spring Football and Pro Day. <laughs> and oh, man. Yeah. It's, a, again, things. a lot going on. But yeah, I think Texas, you know, we talked earlier about Texas having that Pro Day with football. The tournament, again, to me, that's a really good opportunity for Texas to step up and and show off what they can do and earn those higher seeds. Get get those favorable seeds so that mm -hmm. they don't have the harder road to go through a March Madness tournament. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Definitely going to be tuned in against Kansas State. Um, really something to keep an eye on. Can Texas keep consistency? Do we see DeSue show out? Do we see Hunter show out? Do we see Ace Miss show up, right? Like, do, can all of our guys that are capable of showing out and showing up do they do that? Put like, it all together. let's put it all together, let's man. All let's together. Do Why it at not? the right time. Do it like the women, the women's basketball. <laughs> they're putting it all together. Absolutely. Madison Booker just leading this insanely good team. They won over Kansas and then Kansas State. We own Kansas, <laughs> Kansas State uh, last night. And so tonight, 8 p.m., yeah. Iowa State. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Th so thank you, Jason. Synergy. synergy that's it that's exactly that's it word. i like synergy. it we're, we're gonna our it corporate good speak to here say it synergy it's our corporate speak here i like it i like it so texas played iowa state the women already played iowa state earlier a few weeks ago in austin mm -hmm. and they beat them 81 60 yeah that's a beat down so they get to play them again tonight for the big 12 championship mm -hmm. uh what happened oh you women where'd they go i don't know I'm not sure no yeah. Do they, they must have lost somewhere. Yeah, crazy, way. crazy. All right. What are you thinking about the, the women's basketball team? Right Listen, now? Again, I think this is another team that deserves all the love and praise. And again, I do want to give a shout out to Danny Davis, who has some excellent, excellent coverage of yes. specifically of Texas women's basketball. This is a fun team to watch. And in a year where we hear about Caitlin Clark and we hear, you know, women's basketball tickets are starting to sell for more than men's basketball tickets. Like this is an exciting year for women's Good basketball job. and Texas, despite all of the hardships that they've had, despite, you know, players that we, you know, we expected Rory to play. And then she's out early in the season. And what really has defined this Texas team this year has been next man up. It's that next man up mm -hmm. mentality. Again, we saw Shay Holly. I mean, she was nails, ice in her veins last night. I, she was just draining buckets when we needed them. She stepped up when Texas, you know, again, Booker has been incredible. But when Booker had a little bit of a slump, Shay shows up and just is draining him. Won the game for Texas, truly. I mean, it's okay. just, it's an exciting time, time to watch women's basketball, exciting time for Texas basketball. And I got to say, we, we talk about this with coaches like Vic Schaefer, but you got to love the man when the jacket comes off, the, you know, he's, he's worked up, he's fired up the whole, you know, the, the moody gets rowdy when that jacket comes off. His players know what's up when that jacket comes off, but to watch him after you really get the sense that this is a player's coach. How he one of the things that stood out to me that I noticed during his presser when it was done, you know, when the team was done and the women stood up to leave, he stood up as a sign of respect for them. Right. Stood up, said, you know, spoke to each one of them, showing that respect. They go off and then he finishes a presser. I think that's Aww. a cool thing. That's just a, you know, in, in a Such world. A gentleman. Yeah, just in a world. But him showing that mutual respect for his players, they play hard for him because of it. He's an excellent coach, but holy crap, those girls love him mm -hmm. and would would you know go to the ends of the earth for him. And I I think that that's showing in the way that they're playing, the way that their ball game is just evolving is really impressive. And in a world where you have Kim Mulkey saying, "Oh, wish she would have hit somebody else," you know, crap like that. It's good to see coaches like Vic Schaefer stand up for have his girls, some class. have some class, talk through it. So. Did you did you catch any of that brawl between LSU and uh, yeah and South it was Carolina? on it was on Twitter and ESPN and then um, of course people were putting the quotes the two the two different quotes from the two uh -huh. different players I mean coaches of oh you know I'm gonna be accountable for that and one coach saying I'm gonna be accountable we're gonna yeah don't stay away from yeah. South Carolina yeah and then the, and then Mulkey be like oh bro down like oh she's such trash yeah like in the moment I think Don Staley really just that juxtaposition of her saying you know. This is a competitive game and, and athletes are here to win. And they, on both sides, we're playing really tough. And maybe it got a little out of hand. You know, I take responsibility for, for what my players did. That's on me. And immediately right next to it, you got Mulkey saying, oh, I hit somebody bigger. We should come yeah. after somebody hard. But we've been talking about that woman being trash for a hot minute. Yeah. She can coach her ass off. Let's be clear. She's an incredible coach. But, man, it was it was kind of fun to see that, you know, 
next to each other. Just she's really always highlighting. opposite of the way other people well, behave. That's fair too. That's fair too. So yeah, yeah a lot going on, kind of crazy times in basketball. So again, uh, the women will take to uh, see if they can get themselves a little little uh, championship, championship going. Yeah, yep. win everything on the way out. Yep. The Te Oklahoma women won the Big 12 regular season. So the chance mm -hmm. for Texas to get, get a, piece of, a piece of it with mm -hmm. the conference championship on, on the way out the door. Mm -hmm. So men have an opportunity to do that this weekend as well. So, I mean, good job, ladies. We'll yeah. see you tonight. We'll be watching tonight. It's, the game's at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. um, 8 p.m. ESPN 2. ESPN 2. Yep, there you go. Yep. All right. So um, let's talk about – Let's. We have, there's still so much know, to talk about. I know. I know. Texas baseball. Ugh. Ugh. Man, that's another. Consistency. You know what? I'm just going to get a shirt that says consistency. That's what I want. Just consistency, right? Okay. Texas started. They kicked off a Big 12 conference play uh, this weekend in Lubbock, our favorite place to go. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves The Lubbock. best city ever there. Lubbock is absolutely the best. Um, and did they ever come out swinging? Texas baseball shows up on a cold and windy. It was looked like it was. It was snowing. Freezing. It was in fact snowing. But the wind looked brutal. Yeah, it it was pretty pretty intense. Uh, but Texas comes out swinging and beats Texas Tech twenty two to eight. I mean that's just that's bonkers, right? And two of those for for Tech happened in cleanup trash time. I mean this was bottom of the ninth. They got a couple of a couple of runs in. It was just an absolutely dominating performance. Now we've talked about this. Texas pitching, a little bit woeful, inconsistent, a little inconsistent, a <laughs> little inconsistent. But I got to say, Texas Tech's pitching was absolutely worse on that night. Texas Yay. bats heated up once again. We see Porter Brown just with a moonshot to to right field. It's really nice to see him find his swing again. Yes. He's going off Otaco like he's. The dude is hitting again, and it's good to see Porter Brown back. Peyton Powell extends his hitting streak. Uh, again, he's got a long way to go before he reaches Dylan Campbell. It's early in the season. Streak, but it is early in the mm -hmm. season. Um, but, yeah, Peyton Powell now has had a hit in every game that he has played in this season. That's so great. I think he's, what is that, week 15 now? Um, but, yeah, I mean, long way to go. Still a lot of baseball to play, but that, you know, Pow Pow is showing up, showing out. Pow -pow. Hey, you got to call it the yeah. Pow Pow. It's a Peyton Powell. Got to love it. But. Uh, and this game was this match was really important because, again, Texas coming off. Now, I'm not going to put too much weight into that tournament, you know, that we had at Minute Maid. If we played at Globe Life, if we played at Minute Maid, Texas just didn't do well. But they came out 0-3 from that. Then they lost a really tough game against a really good Texas A&M program. Right. Yeah. So they're going 0-4 in those games. And that's that's not where you want to be heading in to conference play. The fact that Texas was able to again, they lost on Saturday. Um, but came back on the rubber match, took the series. The fact that Texas went into a really difficult, hostile place to play in Lubbock against a good tech program. With the weather. Yeah, they're ranked. They were ranked 17. Right. They're ranked ahead of Texas. Look, yeah. And and so going into number 17, number 16, depending on which poll you're looking at, in Lubbock, under not great conditions, certainly not on Friday, got a little bit nicer throughout the weekend. But to go in and take the series to start, Big 12 play. I think that was a really, really important piece for Texas this season. Um, again, it's it's that inconsistency with our our pitching caught up with us a little bit. Unfortunately, oh, go ahead. I was going to say we got to give love to the pitcher that did step up. Yes, Whitehead. Yeah, we have to give love. Ace because, Boogie. Yes, because there it was. There's some you know getting back into the swing. There was a little some struggles earlier, and now like not only was it the a great performance to keep that really solid lead for that Texas had in the game, mm -hmm. but also he was able to save arms for the rest of the weekend. Absolutely, that was huge. When you're going, you know, you have these long road season, these weekends, saving arms is huge. Absolutely, so that was so. So props to Whitehead. Well, and that's something that I I wanted to point out is. Our starters, again, LBJ, we know has got the arm, but our starters this series didn't go very deep. I think they averaged something like two innings uh, each. That you got to get. I mean, if, if Texas is going to have any hope of a postseason of, you know, regional, super regionals, Omaha, you've got to get more out of your starting mm -hmm. pitchers. You just do. You can't have them go for two innings and then fizzle out. So, yes, huge shout out to Ace Whitehead. Boogie coming in and laying it on. Now, typically, Boogie comes in in like a reliever situation. He comes in, plays an inning, plays a couple innings, and he's good to go. Gets those critical outs that we need. This time, he showed up in that first game, game one, you know, having a little soreness in his shoulder. Showed up, 
showed out absolutely ice in his veins, probably because he was in Lubbock. But <laughs> but again, <laughs> everything runs through Lubbock. Yeah. Every time that since they've said that, they've lost everything to Texas. It's just it. like what what's running through Lubbock? I mean, everyone's running through Lubbock. I mean, everyone's running over Lubbock. <laughs> yeah. But so, I don't know what. No. I, but yeah, Boogie showed up uh, again. He had you know got the the critical outs, gave up a few runs, but all in all, he finished out the game. So Texas was able on a Friday night to use two pitchers total, which is phenomenal. Again, you want to see your starting pitchers go a little bit deeper than they did a little bit, you know, a little bit more LBJ's had a little bit of trouble controlling his fastball recently. And, and that's something that he really, really shined with last year. So we've got it. I'm hoping that coach Pierce can step up, get that, that coaching in there, help him find that again. Cause when you don't have that fastball, when you're not able to place it, when you let it get away from you, oh, things get ugly real fast. So, uh, again, huge shout out to Boogie for picking up on that Friday. Uh, Texas came in on Saturday, uh, struggled a little bit more. Again, it's defensive errors. This is something we've talked about yeah. since we've been talking about Texas baseball this season. The defense really has got to get their fundamentals figured out. Again, this is an incredibly talented team that just isn't making plays when they need to make them, letting simple things go through them. Uh, again, I think Texas had – I need to go back and check the box score, but I'm pretty sure Texas had something like two or three errors in this game. Mm. And that was the difference in the game, right? You're letting extra runs in, got away from them a little bit uh, on that Saturday game. But, again, you got to talk, you know, looking on that Sunday rubber match where Texas really could have fallen apart and just let things go to shit. They didn't. Uh, so on that Saturday game, they lost, you know, seven to two. Tech took right. that. And then on Sunday, on the 10th, which is my sister's birthday. So oh, happy shout birthday out to my to sister. sister. Uh, yeah. I mean, Texas came in and closed it out. It was a great game. Now, Tech got up early. Again, pitching was a little questionable up front. Uh, we had Tanner Witt trying to to fight through some stuff again, finding this pitch again. Um Tech got up. I want to say it was three, Seven, three to nothing. Three, six, three. Well, Tech got up. Well, three. It was three zero, and then three one or two, and then they got up like six I think three, they seven, got up, three. I think they got up by four. Yeah. And then Texas chipped away, and then Tech came back. But again, Texas persevered. The bats warmed up. They found their pitchers again, or they found their pitches again, mm -hmm. and Texas came through to win the game nine to seven. Now that was an exciting game. Whew. I don't want to underplay like as many questions as we still have about this Texas team, certainly going into big 12 play. I don't want to understate how important it was to get that win on Sunday. You always win on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. To get that win on Sunday, take the series against a really good on the road against a ranked team in a hostile, a ugly, hostile environment, windy, cold, right. like everything. Hostile it's, in yeah. every sense yeah. of the term. Um, again, the, the, the weather got a little bit better towards the end of the, it the weekend nice for them on Sunday, but I don't know. Yeah. It got a little bit better towards the end of the weekend, but that is not an easy place to win. No matter where you're at, the wind in that park swirls around like crazy. It's something you saw it again on Saturday. Specifically, you saw balls either hang up in the outfield and just drop or carry way farther than you think they're going to. It is hard to gauge in the outfield where a, a hard hit, you know, pop fly is going to end in that field. And so Texas coming through with the win series, win, give them props. Uh, next game coming up is actually tonight. Tonight. Weird to say, you know, so when, much uh, tonight. when we're not on a, we're not on our Wednesday schedule, but yeah, uh, Texas plays UIW. So that'll be the university of incarnate word. Yes. Incarnate word. So, UIW. Yeah. It could be university of Illinois at Wofford. <laughs> it's university of incarnate word. incarnate word. Megan uses the letters and I'm like, okay, well, which OSU? There's like 12. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, yes. they play there tonight and this, this starts a 10 game home stretch for, for Texas. So yes. good opportunity for Texas to get some wins under the belt, get some momentum um, as we continue that big 12 play. Uh, so we see Texas against, University of Incarnate Word yes, UI tonight. Yeah. And then the weekend series is up against BYU. Now, this one's a little bit different than normal uh, because typically we would play on a – oh, I'm sorry. It's not uh, BYU. That's uh, softball. We've got Washington, Washington this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Yep, and then we come through. So, again, look for Texas to really – with some non-conference games here, we want to see Texas baseball be more consistent. I'm sorry. I know I sound like a broken record, but for the love of God, we've got the talent. We've just got to get it. The the pitching has to be more consistent. We have to get more out of our starters and we got to get our defensive errors under control. The defense basic fundamentals has to be cleaned up, 
has to be cleaned up. Right. So yeah, but and again, then, and then also a week from today after the long weekend with Washington, they go right to that Air Force. Tuesday, my favorite. The Tuesday, Wednesday Air yep. Force game, which is always exciting and always special for the two. The Texas and Air Force have like a really special relationship now. Absolutely. And that's just a really great time to honor those kids that are serving and playing a sport yeah. and, and and students. If, yeah. if, if y'all have an opportunity to go out to the dish during one of the Air Force games, please do it. It is it is one of the coolest environments. It is There is just a crazy mutual respect that you just don't often see mm -hmm. between two teams. It's a lot of fun. Looking forward to the love fest online between the two uh, going off. So yeah, it's going to be going to be a lot of fun to watch. So um, before we jump in to softball, got some, yeah, we'll cover some stuff to talk quickly, about. Yeah. Again, we talked about how much there is going on, you know, tonight. You've got March a lot of madness stuff. is coming. March madness is coming. And now is the absolute perfect time. If you don't have the TV set up or the man cave or the she shed that you want set up, you need to call AV, AV consultations. This is the best time of year for sports. Everything is nuts. There's tournament time. There's baseball. There's spring training. There's combine. There's all kinds of amazing sports going on. And you don't want to be watching it on some crappy system. So give them a the call. Stop spending your time and money driving around the city, wasting it on game day, wasting your money and time on game day, going to bars, spending too much. <laughs> Make your home the place for family and friends to gather with AV consultations. They've been in the business since 1988 and can hook you up the way that they've hooked up thousands of Central Texans over the years. So whether you're looking for that home theater, like I said, get, get your man cave, get your sports den going on. You got a she shed, you got a workout. Or even if you're looking for security options for your home, AV consultations has you covered. So give them a call 512-255-8678 or check them out at avconsultations.com. Good job. Go get your setup. Yeah. Call yeah. them now so you can be ready for March Madness exactly. in a week. Exactly. All right. So let's make sure we um, give the softball ladies some love. As soon as they hit number one in the country, Kill me. they lose to Houston. <laughs> they take the series. They did. At Houston. They did. But they did drop the game. And then today they dropped what? Respectable LSU, yeah. number three in the country. Yes. However, they dropped another one. So um, you're going to get mad at me for what I'm about to say. What? Nah, they didn't have that consistency that they have. Oh, they're inconsistent. It, listen, well, I mean, it's it's nobody expects them to go undefeated, but losing at Houston to start the series was a little rough. Didn't help. Certainly, no. certainly didn't help. Again, Texas, kind of their own worst enemy in these games. Again, LSU, absolutely a respectable opponent. Again, that game happened today. It was an early game today, mm -hmm. um, but they dropped the game seven to four. The problem with that was LSU just got a big in the first inning. Texas had several defensive errors. It was just simple, simple fielding errors or poor choices um, that were literally errors that I think, uh, again, I'd have to check the box scores on this, guys, this is off the top of my head. But I think Texas had something like six errors it, it, throughout this game. It was it was a rough mm -hmm. one indeed. Now, Texas comes back. They're chipping away. They, they're a good, capable team. But that first inning just put them in such a hole. They weren't able to dig out of it. So, unfortunately, lost that game 7-4. to four. Uh, So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how that plays they out. They will probably not stay number one again. Probably not going to be at number one. Oh, you will be back to number one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, I don't know, compare LSU's record to Oklahoma. Oklahoma still hasn't lost since that one game, right? Right. We would have heard about it if they did. Right. So, they're probably back to number one. Yeah. Texas now has three, you know, losses accumulating. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, this is a critical moment in the season for Texas. They've really got to pull together, make sure that they close out strong, make sure that they show up well. Because again, <laughs> you've got a stretch coming in with big 12 Oklahoma's looming large on the horizon mm -hmm. for them, for Texas to have a run at the college world series in softball. You've got to win these games out. You've got, you've got mm -hmm. to win your, certainly your conference games. Again, next conference series coming up for Texas is versus BYU. This is one at that home, I, right. at home, right? Now, again, this is normally where you'd see them play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You actually see a Thursday, Friday, Saturday game. So it's going to be a little weird for it's Texas. spring break. You're home with your kids. Take them to see the softball. It's not, yeah, y'all should definitely go check them out. The, we're, what makes this a little bit weird is it's BYU and they don't play on Sunday. Right, So. right. So again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, check out some softball action. Again, Texas looking to bounce back after that loss to LSU today. So uh, yeah, now another sport that new, we don't talk about. Brand new. You gotta love it, man. This is a brand new, it's your first time to ever catch <laughs> Texas Beach 
volleyball. volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. So get your tiny, 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 tiny panties and <laughs> get, get your short shorts out. Get your shortest, shortest, <laughs> short shorts out. Pull them up your butt and be ready. Be ready. And bend over in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Beach volleyball. Beach volleyball is here, y'all. So a fun thing, though, again, if you're not checking it out, you definitely need to see beach volleyball because you see a lot of the same stars that play on mm -hmm. the court. This is a great opportunity for them. There's a lot of crossover athletes here. So mm -hmm. check it out. I mean, it's always fun. Texas, again, this is a new sport. They competed a little bit last year. They came in about halfway through the season and it was kind of that toe in the water run. Yeah. This is the first full season for Texas beach volleyball and the first time you're going to be able to watch them play at home. Yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, again, this is at the Whitaker Sports Complex. That's something that I think folks need to. So Wednesday, March 20th. Well, this weekend, they're away in Long Beach. Yeah. So if you can find it on some rando streaming, <laughs> it's happening all week long. But, but home next week, 20th. Wednesday, yeah. there's like a little round robin with Houston Christian, Washington and um, Texas. Mm -hmm. So the Whitaker, Whitaker Fields, I guess, the yeah. most area. It was the intramural fields. At intramural one fields. Yeah. yeah. The Whitaker the is the beach IM now. fields. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's easier to park. You can actually park right at the IM fields. And fun fact, there's in the triangle, there's some really great little bars across the Oh, there's the way. tons of great stuff in yeah. the triangle. Good, yeah. Some good pubs and pizza. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really nice. Like you can go actually park easily <laughs> and walk up right. to. And admission's free. Game. Missions free, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Missions free to that. So check it out. I mean, again, it's a good way. If you haven't been able to hit volleyball, it's a good way to check it out and see what's going on. So yeah, I think that'd be really, really fun to see. So you got something for us. You're brewing. I see this look on your face. What's going on? No, I was just getting our next music ready. Oh, for, I like it. Um, get I it like off it. your chest. Okay. No, I like no it. Rush. I was well, just, I was just trying to be ready. Okay. Well, that's fair. All right. So yeah, beach volleyball coming up. Lots, again, lots of action on the 40. Tons going on. Lots to be excited about little bit to bitch about we'll do it all nah. we we do we do yeah it all here. yeah so but that's okay so yeah. yeah tomorrow i leave bright and early 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 tomorrow morning but and i'll but i'll be following along from far away absolutely how everything's going here on the in austin <laughs> love it love spring it. break south by rodeo everything i know how does people how do people get rental cars or hotels they don't in this city they don't yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's crazy so yep all right. all right so we we have a thing that we haven't done in a while because we haven't had time <laughs> So today, let's make some time. Oh, man. And it doesn't have to be, right? It doesn't have to be negativity. It just needs to be a minute of saying, getting something off your chest. And I'm going to play the music. Put it in the like, book. You can't handle the truth. Say it with your chest. I never told anybody that because I'm such a good friend. All right. I'm setting the timer on my clock. So we give ourselves one minute. Uh, stopwatch. We give ourselves one minute to... Say what we need to say. <laughs> All right. All right. This, this is not sports related. I, I'm All right. Gonna, ready? Go. I'm going to tie this back into a thing that we were talking about earlier. It is South by Weekend. We've got the rodeo here. There's a lot going on in Austin. This is certainly the weekend that I like to play a game called Homeless or Hipster. Okay. Because you've got so many people coming into town. And I mentioned this earlier. This is when people decide they want to move to Austin. Oh, yeah. Right? They or see, ACL weekend. Right. They see this beautiful weather. I feel like ACL is still hot. South by you've oh, got this spring, gorgeous lately. the yeah. spring weather. It's so nice. Yeah. They all this stuff to do in Texas. So they decide to move here. But I get confused because I can't tell if you're a hipster or if you're a homeless person. We know that homelessness, uh, the unhomed are, are getting a little bit out of control in downtown Austin. But I still can't tell who's who. I really just need some clarification. Some of them like it's it's just crazy. You look you've clearly spent a lot of money to be here. This is an expensive place to be. Oh, yeah. But I still can't tell. Is it the it's the beards, the crazy outfits? I don't know, man. Homeless or hipster? It's a fun game to play. There it is in the Austin. They Texas. could be both. It could be both. Or neither. <laughs> or neither. Absolutely. Are you a tech bro or are you yeah. a Austin? I don't know. I don't know. All right, that's fun. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Ready? All right, bring your rant. Let's go. All right. Um, I posted something about this, but I need to talk about it. <laughs> get the, it off your chest. Girl. Yes, get it off my chest. Adults who are now blasting their phones in public spaces <laughs> with their annoying music or silly videos or things that they're watching. It's bad enough when kids do it on a plane. You're like, oh, I'll give this kid some headphones. And they'll come around and be like, put some headphones on. But now 
kid, the kid, like you go to a restaurant and it's annoying enough when a kid has a blasting iPad at the next table, but now adults, I've been now <laughs> two or three different places in the last couple of weeks waiting for my title, waiting at the eye exam place with Nadia. Yeah. And, and the adults next to you are going, blah, 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 like blasting <laughs> their cell loud. phones. I'm not even talking about on a phone conversation where they're talking too much and you hear their business. I'm talking about like with their phones on so loud, whatever <laughs> they're watching. Wait, Put it on headphones. Put it on mute. Put do something else. I shouldn't hear. That's just rude and annoying. And we should know better. Yeah, wear headphones. That's we the, that's should know better. And you may even if you don't have headphones with you at the time, <laughs> do something. Turn agree. off. Put it on mute. I will say when the trend started of people speak, and now I speak on. I talk on my speakerphone a lot. I think I just I hear it better, but I don't do it in public. Right. Yeah. Now is this pandemic of epic proportions that we're talking about with? loud talking and having your phone playing whatever you're watching loudly is this a function of us going to the completely wireless headphones and people just losing them all the time because that's my problem if i can't keep track if you don't have that. headphones with you and often i'm like oh i left them charging or whatever so don't, just don't play don't play loud music <laughs> in little fair. faces right it's it's a waiting room and you're blasting some comedy. <laughs> the other day we were at the eye blast place and the guy is blasting. And not that I'm offended by bad words, obviously, but in a yeah, you're friends with a, me clearly. In you're an not eyeglasses lobby. You're blasting a comedian who's just like f f f blah, blah, blah. yeah, like really yeah. Anyway, it's too much. It's we'll too give much. a quick. Our friend Steven says, "Hey, Rocky saw an article that stated that girls wrestling is the fastest growing youth sport in America. That's awesome. For a while, college wit girls rugby was the fastest. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Here you go. Adults that have yet to grow up with no self awareness. Very, very unbecoming. <laughs> I don't I, think it's being snooty. I don't, I don't think. think it's, it's, I don't think it's being snooty to say that either. I think it's just like yeah. It's it. I just keep learning that." Common sense isn't common. No, it's not anymore. And, you know, Jason, you bring up a good point. Maybe this is something from people. These are folks now that are becoming adults that were raised on phones, right? Like we're from a generation where at a certain point we didn't have phones for our childhood. And then we got phones. I don't know. I'm and I, still pretty. The old guy next to me was blasting. Really? Like maybe he was just deaf. Maybe he doesn't know how phone headphones maybe work. Maybe he was just deaf. But yeah, I agree. I think it's there's something kind of odd about not respecting other people's space, right? Like maybe I can't hear it, but you're right. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like there's no reason to blast whatever you're watching so that every, first of all, I don't want to know your business. I don't need to know your business. I got my own business going on that I got to take care of. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. And I think it is just a, is that a, is that a symptom of a larger problem? I don't of, like, know. It's we, really we don't, basic etiquette to not that's what blast I'm saying. your. But that's what I'm saying is that it's a symptom of a larger issue where we just don't have respect for our fellow humans anymore. So it's all about us, right? Like mm. not, I'm not going to be aware of other people's experience or opportunities. I'm just going to, I'm in my own little world and only care yeah. about what I hear and what I receive. It's, I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's it. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't get it. But even on a plane, people are trying to nap and kids have, cartoons where the voices are, you know, the voices on these cartoons you don't realize it Too until much. you're trying to sleep on a plane when the kid behind you is like what are you watching yeah. and they're oh put well, some headphones on this kid well you better keep us updated on your flight tomorrow if it you're because it's an early flight right 7 a.m yeah 7 a.m flight if, if you got somebody blasting some, uh, some i'm sure they will i'm sure they will well, usually they'll we'll come hear around rocky. Like, put headphones on and then two seconds later the kid's blasting it yeah it will hear rocky from the skies yelling at the literal clouds at that point about it's on there it's they're annoying doing, but, no, i agree with you i i again i this apparently has been my old fogey session this this episode because <laughs> we're so old we, yeah I, I am i feel like the old lady uh, shaking her cane at things everywhere <laughs> yeah. oh no i will not be let off in cuffs i would just put my own headphones on <laughs> and try to ignore it that, now that is a, a fair solution is that i mean is that too much for you to have? like i don't know i agree i think people need to have more respect for people's space around them mm -hmm. people need to be more cognizant i don't think we have that quite as much but there is a pretty simple solution, right? Just put your own throw headphones, your headphones on, on. But yeah. yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Still annoying. That was my that was my rant. But like, that's a good one. That's a good one. Just I appreciate that. Think about people around you. So, yeah. yeah, they don't want to hear your. Stuff. You know, I didn't even get to talk about the uh, Brock Cunningham like in exchange during Texas baseball with the uh, Gasparino and Cash. Oh man! Again, Texas Brock Cunningham has broken Texas Tech fans because there was an exchange. Again, we'll get through this real quickly. Gavin Cash, who who was committed to Texas, 
Mm -hmm. Before he played at Texas, decommitted and went to Texas Tech, had some words to say, is what it is. Whatever. Go with God. Have have a great time out there. Um, Will Gasparino, our freshman. Uh, Gasparino. Yeah. So he had a great little hit, great little knock, and he's trucking it through first, right? Right. Cash is playing first. Catch catches the ball and is straddling the line right right in the oh, runner's yeah, way. He's Gasparino, straddling the way. Gasparino collides with him, and all of a sudden it becomes this huge thing of Tech fans just, oh, we've got another Brock Cunningham on our hands. <laughs> Taking just playing dirty. I'm like, this is basic baseball. You don't block the runner. Even I know you don't. Runner to first. Yeah, the runner to first has. And I went and slowed it down. Listen, this whole thing was reviewed too. Yeah, Gasparino was found. Yeah, he's fine. No, no problem. No further incident. I mean, he was out. Yeah, no further incident. Right, but this had happened with Cash before. Literally, the play before Cash was in the same spot and had a collision. Right, and then you see this now with Gasparino. Now Gasparino's a big dude. He's listed at 6'6". Six, six. I promise you, he's bigger than that. Yeah, he's tall. He's a big kid. Move out of the way. Then he's trucking, right? It is the first baseman's responsibility. And if you slow down and, and really watch, Cash catches the ball. And once he's got it and secured the ball, he actually stabs his foot out mm-hmm. in the line of where Gasparino is going to be running. I don't think that was unintentional. Maybe it was a smart play on his point part to try to get Gasparino in trouble. But just... Again, I'm going to tie this back to how Brock Cunningham is absolutely dist- broken. broken and destroyed the Texas Tech fan base. That oh, they man. fuss so much about that. So, all right. Well, this was a fun little Tuesday. Woo, we talked a lot. We did. We, we had do. one less day to have things to talk about. Now we have so much to talk about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well, hey, good job, Megan. Yeah. So, we appreciate y'all being here. Thanks for joining us on our unique and special Tuesday. Please stay tuned. Uh, Wednesday during our regular time is the time to see Katie and Trey. Yes. Uh, they will resume, they will take our spot and have their show there. So until next time, y'all, I'm Megan. I'm Rocky. And we are Fire the Cannon.